Good morning, my bearded bastards. How y'all feeling out there? Hope you're doing pretty well. Hope I can be heard pretty well. <laughs> Just mixing my audio right now here. One second. You'd think I'd get this stuff ready beforehand, but here we are. Let me see. Here we go. One second. One second. Uno momento, my good bastards. But yes, today, Dwarf Fortress arrives on Steam. Again, I, I let me know if my audio is crap right now. I'm, I'm excited. I'm very excited just about everything here. <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a good day, I think. We're going to go into Dwarf Fortress. We're going to see what this Steam edition is all about. And we're going to have some fun, I think. Dwarf Fortress type of fun, you know, of course. Turn down the music a little bit here. A little bit. A little bit. My mic looking. Okay, I think we might be good here. Please, please feel free to scream at me if this is a uh, if this is not good. Thank you for your support. Jeez, you guys are already donating. Get out of here. I haven't done anything. My goodness, it's first thing in the morning. Thank you. I appreciate it. Truly, but no. But yeah. Very exciting. I hope you're all feeling pretty good. My good goodness gracious, who has a face and a beard? Yes, of course. I know, I don't, I don't usually, this is, probably got a lot of new faces here. I was doing live streams for a little bit, just on, um, you know, playing a Dwarf Fortress before, but, like, today's a little bit different, right? It's, uh, Steam Dwarf Fortress. And another, we got, math, 22 minutes. It's coming. It's coming. And, I, and like, I don't know anything about it, really. Like, I know some things about it. But, but like, pretty pretty general knowledge honestly like you'd think I'd be keeping a little bit closer in touch with like all the little updates and the news and stuff but um quiet voice compared to the music it's good <laughs> loving the poster yes <laughs> pretty cool right um I, I I regrettably don't know who made this my friend sent it to me my friend Dwarf Comics sent it to me and um 
Yeah, it's pretty good. I think somebody on Reddit made it a while ago and like put it up for free so you could print it. And so that's, that's where that came from. I got all my, my Krug Smash crap piled around me because I'm just so excited. I've got my one of my, my Krug Smash shirts up. Very snazzy, right? I've got like this little horn beetle over here from Scorch Fountain. Oh, isn't that adorable? I'm like, I'm feeling it today, I'll tell you. Over here we have Moldath, you can see this Moldath. Ain't that a lovely little thing? His helmet comes off too. Sometimes, I'm afraid I'm gonna pull his head off. It comes off, but it was cool. Yeah, all kinds of crap. But yeah, hope you guys are feeling good today. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a hell of a day. Is it backwards? Is what backwards? The helmet? I don't think so. Yeah, I've got I've got merch. I've got merch. It's like a I got a, a Teespring store. It should be like I would imagine down in like the little thingy below this video here. Um, there's like usually like a little bar down there with a couple items in it. Yeah, if you search Krug Smash on Teespring, you'll see some stuff. I just like redid it. Honestly, it was looking pretty shabby for a while, and still it's not looking as good as I like it to look. But um, you know, I've got some stuff up there, including a T-shirt like this one here if you were so inclined holidays are coming you know for that Krug smash enjoyer in your life you might want to pick up a new shirt or sweatshirt or something I suppose uh, but yeah steam it's coming I wish I had more to talk about at this particular juncture maybe I started this a bit too early but um, it's not too bad I got 20 minutes I burned away too just then 20 minutes what the hell am I gonna talk about ask me some questions or something quick <laughs> oh, Mankirk. Thank you very much. I got, I got a whole bunch of support here. Jeez, you guys, what the hell? Irae, Irae, Terrell? My goodness. Um, what the hell, dudes? Thank you so much. I haven't done anything, though. You can't reward me for just sitting here. <laughs> that's that's not good. I mean, I, I appreciate it immensely, obviously, but... Um, why is my name Krug Smash? It was the name of... Well... Krug was the name of my first Dungeons and Dragons character back in like 2004. It was a half orc named Krug who liked to smash. He wasn't very smart. Krug smash. That's all he said pretty much. And it was my AOL screen name after that when I was talking to my friends. So it just kind of carried over to this. I mean, it, it works. It's a weird name. Like I'd probably change it if I could go back in time. But what am I planning? <laughs> Says Sassort. I, I don't know. I'm, well, I'm, I'm planning to play Dwarf Fortress on Steam in another... Uh, 18 minutes. 18 minutes! We're almost there, my beautiful bastards. This is exciting, ain't it? It's gonna be pretty good, I think. Again, I don't really know anything about this Steam release. I haven't been really watching many... I didn't watch, like, the tutorial videos that were up on YouTube. Um, I didn't even see, like, the... The, uh, the soundtrack thing that's out. I know it's playing in the background right now. A lot of the new music is. But, um... I just assembled this this sound right here. I put a bunch of the sounds together and uh, just just for the background to have something back there. Um, but I didn't even listen to them. I just kind of like listened to a little snippet and I just threw it into the background. Anyways, I don't, I don't really know anything other than just general knowledge about the Steam release. Like UI, graphics, music, Dwarf Fortress. That's all I know. I just, and there's some assumptions I'm making too. Like they're going to change around the... Uh, you know, how, how everything's controlled. There's going to be, like, mouse support and stuff now, which is going to be interesting. I, I think it's going to be pretty difficult for me to play, honestly, but, again, I guess we're just going to have to see. Um, you know, you play a game for 11 years, and you get used to the quirky ways it works, and, you know, then it gets changed up one day. <laughs> it's it's going to be a bit of a, a learning curve to get back on track, don't you think? I do think. My God, guys, what the hell are you doing? Grail. Grail, thank you. Grail Chaser, thank you. Um, do I ever get burned out in Dwarf Fortress? I, I don't. <laughs> I know, like, I've been a little uh, skimpy with the videos lately. It's because I've been doing that live stream thing and whatnot, and um, I did trip a bit on making edited content recently. I get that. But, you know, I've been doing the live streams. I figured I would just fill the empty air with live streams until Steam release comes out. And now, like, I don't know if you saw, I put up a trailer yesterday. I plan to do an edited video like I used to do every two weeks now. That'll help me to not, like, kill myself by working too much and also get out some nice high-quality content, I feel. I, I don't know if two weeks is 
often enough to keep my channel alive, but we shall see. Maybe I'll throw some other stuff in there in between, too. Maybe maybe a live stream every now and then. Like, I, I don't know. I'm not too sure. I guess we'll see. It's going to work out. It always works out. I mean, that's kind of like how I play Dwarf Fortress, too. It's It'll be fine. Everything's fine. It always just works, right? So, no worries. No worries. What the hell, you guys? Strike the earth. Strive for glory. Always. Always. Oh, my God. And you thought D was to designate. Yeah. Hmm. 15 minutes? 15? No. 16 minutes. It's getting there. It is getting there. Very exciting. What is my favorite fort on the channel? My favorite fort on the channel is whatever one I'm currently creating. As soon as I get done with the fortress, I don't want to see it anymore, and I'm totally sick of it generally. And I'm disappointed in what I've created. But that's just me. I think most artists are kind of like that, honestly. Not to say I'm an artist. I'm probably not. I'm just a YouTube entertainer. I'm not much else than that. But, you know, it's just like, you know, if you, if you did a... A lot of people feel like that, right? Like, you, you, you draw something, then you think it's crap right after. Right? Like... That's just kind of how I am. Like, I'm super invested in whatever my current project is, but, like, after that, it's... I don't want to see it anymore. I'm done. I don't, I don't like, re-watch my series or anything like that. Hell, when I'm done with the episode, I don't watch it half the time. Like, <laughs> you'd think I'd give it, like, one good watch to make sure there's no editing errors and stuff, but... I guess I just don't. <laughs> it's just me. Uh, you guys are too damn kind. So much skull horror stands, <laughs> you know it. <laughs> skull horror was great. That was a great fortress. I, it's a shame that it couldn't have been a long series, but like at the point where I had stopped it, I couldn't have really done anything else. It would have just been like a boring withering at that point. It, I, it was just like. Also, I think that's really important too. You know, like you can't really push a series beyond where it stops being interesting. Sometimes, you know. Scorch Fountain. I'm looking at you, I guess. <laughs> that one should have just ended at some point, but, um, eh, live and learn. It's all fine. It's all fine, you know? Um, there's not gonna be a point where my channel or anything is just gonna, like, and, like, that's it, you know? Like, it's a roller coaster. Up and down. It's like riding the sea. That's what I like. How time is it? 14 minutes. 14 minutes. Could you make a, a psychopathic dwarf fortress? The, they're all psychopathic dwarf fortresses, right? Like, I mean, p people have complained in the past about how my fortresses always inevitably turn up evil. And, like, I just, I, I feel like it's just the way dwarf fortress works sometimes. Like, I don't know. Like, if you look at anything too hard, then, uh, in dwarf fortress, it, it all feels kind of screwed up in a way, you know? Like, the dwarves are, they're, they're a raucous bunch. They're a raucous bunch, those guys. What the hell? Je Jeff Helton, thank you very much. Jeff Helton, Yakum Flam, Yakum Flam? Woo! Says Yakum Flam. <laughs> Thanks, dude. What the hell, you guys? Yeah, they're all psychopathic dwarf fortresses. Definitely. Uh, I, I'm glad you liked how Scorch Fountain was wrapped up there. Um, I don't know how that's pronounced, but you know I'm talking to you. I'm glad you liked it. It was fun. It was satisfying, too. You know, it's always. That's part of the challenge for me. I like. Because the stories that come out of Dwarf Fortress are often tarnished, you know? Like, obviously, if you wrote your own story, it's going to be a lot cleaner. Whereas the stories that come out of Dwarf Fortress always have little loose ends or, like, stuff that just doesn't make any sense. Stuff that is unexplained. But, you know, you tie it up as best you can, you know? It's like a big ragged ball of strings, and you're, like, just trying to ball it up as best you can, and then I present it to you. Here you go. It's not quite a yarn ball. It's like a, a, a yarn lump, I suppose, and these little strings. We're just going to tuck those behind there. I'm not going to see them so much, but here you go. There, there's your dwarf fortress, and like, I, I don't know. I, I like that, you know, trying to make a story out of something that really isn't a story a lot of the time. It's more like just a series of events sometimes, you know? I just like it. Um... Let me see here. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Have I ever tried Wildermyth? I don't know what that is. I have no clue. No idea. 948. 12 more minutes, my bearded bastards. 12 minutes. Just 12 minutes. I can't believe... Because, like, Dwarf Fortress on Steam was announced, if I recall correctly, March 13th in 2019. That's wild to think about, right? 
like 2019, so that's I mean 2021 to spend three and a half years going on four years almost. That's wild. Yeah, I mean nearly nearly four years. That's crazy. Um, but here we are, <laughs> just moments away. I'm very excited. Cards on the table too. Like I, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this. But I've had a Steam key since Friday for the game, and I have not touched it. I, I should say I, I opened it once to, um, to just make sure it, like, you know, worked with OBS and stuff. But um, I haven't played it at all. Uh, it, it's been difficult. <laughs> it's been pretty difficult. Luckily, I was pretty busy this past weekend, though, so I haven't really had much of a choice, you know, but... Um, I already told people too that I'm gonna play it on stream. I want to play it with you guys. I want to just play it live, you know. And so here we are. I'm a dwarf of my words, damn it. You can hold me to that. Would I consider playing Cataclysm again? Yeah, I would. I mean, I would consider it. Obviously, it was fun. Something about it though, like I really like the random generation aspect of Dwarf Fortress and the fact that like you're not gonna. Plus, like, the fact that Dwarf Fortress has, like, a Legends mode. Like, if Cataclysm had that, that'd be excellent. Like, if you could see, like, a written-out history of your world and stuff, I think that'd be a lot more, um, engaging to me, you know? In Cataclysm, you're more playing, like, moment-to-moment, -moment, and you're dealing with creatures that... creatures and items that just exist in the game, you know? Like, you're never really gonna see something that somebody else hasn't seen before, from what I understand. I, I haven't played the game since I made those videos, actually. But, like, cat Cataclysm is more, like, procedurally generated events than creatures and items, if that makes any sense. Plus, like, Dwarf Fortress has the whole history thing. I don't know. All I know is that, like, Dwarf Fortress is a game that I couldn't get sick of personally. I love Dwarf Fortress and everything about it. Um, I'm sure if I played it for, like, 12 hours in a day, I'd probably get sick of it till the next day. But, like, I mean, I've been playing it for... 11 more more than 11 years now i'm not sure but i don't get sick of it i do not and that's i'm not pulling the wool over your eyes or nothing max zero thank you over under 30 minutes until steam until steam hugged to death what does that mean <laughs> um th thank you very much watching your stream at work since playing the game might take too much focus probably 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 will just nine more minutes it's coming it is coming caves of cud uh, I, uh, that's one that's been suggested to me a whole bunch of times. Yeah, and I've just never, I've never touched it. I don't own it or anything like that. Nothing against it. I just, I just haven't, I guess. Like, you'd think I'd be into more games that are like Dwarf Fortress, but I'm really not most of the time. Like, uh, like RimWorld, I've never played RimWorld. Um, you know, there's a certain s section of the audience that's probably going to be like, they're not the same! And like, I know... They're not the same. I know. I get it. But, like, you can't deny that they're similar in some ways, right? Um, similar enough where you'd think it would appeal to me to want to, like, learn the game or something like that. But, I don't know. Just, just haven't really felt like it, I guess. That's just how, how I roll, I guess. I tend to play games that aren't like Dwarf Fortress most of the time. Um, I don't know. Noida? You ever play Noida? That's a fun game. I really like that. And for some reason, it kind of scratches the same itch for me that Dwarf Fortress does. In a way, it's weird. I like, in a game, figuring out problems. You know, I like having a certain set of tools that I can use to overcome problems. You know, I, I think that is... My biggest joy in games, personally, is, like, figuring out problems. You know, using a, a whatever things I've got at hand, you know. It's just fun for me. Seven minutes. Seven minutes. We are getting down there. No, it is great. It's great. I love it. I love it so much. Oh, my goodness. Got to breathe. I've got a nice big old thing of water here. And so I'm actually going to be hydrating today. I've got it in my, my special Mario glass that I love. <laughs> <laughs> that should be enough water for a couple hours, I'm thinking. 
I'll be very, very, very careful not to uh, spill my water like I did during my last stream. That was horrible. That was really bad. That was. <laughs> I was still pulling water out of here at, like hours later. That was not good. Full, up, full up glass just dumped all over my desk, all over my drawings that I did, which I did. I salvaged them. They're fine. So my God. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hell. Let me get up to the lab here. Fruity Brew. Hey, Krug, glad to see you. Hope you enjoy the Steam version. I worry I might have some issues at launch. I guess we'll see. Th thank you very much. Um, it's it's probably gonna be fine. You know, worst comes to worst, we encounter some bugs, and you know, it's whatever. That, that's what the whole stream is about. We don't know what the hell we're gonna see. You know, be ready. I mean, if I've got to tell you to, you know, beware the bugs when going into a game of Dwarf Fortress, Steam or otherwise, then you don't know what the hell Dwarf Fortress is. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine, no matter what the hell happens. You know, sudden crashes could happen. It could happen. I don't think it'll happen, you know? Like, it's, I imagine, been tested a little bit, so... Um... It'll probably be fine. I'm not too worried. I'm gonna jump right in. What kind of fortress should we have? Like, as soon as we start, like... All that's going to be in the game right now is Legends mode, which I do want to look into, and Fortress mode. What kind of fortress should we have, though, do you think? Anything in particular? I mean, I guess in order to get, like, the full taste of Dwarf Fortress, we should probably have a nice... Just, just go average with things, I would think, you know? Like, we should have access to goblins, elves, humans, dwarves... Maybe necromancers? No. <laughs> you've, even though it's like Steam release, I, don't, I still don't know if I want to deal with necromancers, man. Of course, I, I don't know what's been changed for this version either. Maybe necromancer antics have been toned down a little bit. I really have no clue. It's exciting though, huh? Four minutes. Getting down there. We are getting down there, ain't we? <laughs> An ordinary biome. Yeah, I think it should just be a pretty, pretty general area. Of course, we'll see how we're feeling when we get in there. I mean, I can imagine we're going to be doing a, a few forts today. I, I mean, as I, I said down in the description that I'm not going to stop before 7 p.m., but I might go beyond that. 7 p.m. EST. This is going to be a, a nine-hour long thing. Nine and a half because I started like a, you know, nearly a half hour ago, at least. So. So yeah, it's gonna be good. Can I thank you guys for all your support? Like, all of you, 100%. Like, your kind words and um, monetary support. It, it just, it does an, an awful lot for me and my family and um, just my willpower in general. It's, it's really good to see and helps me out a lot, in a lot of ways. I just, it means an awful lot. I, um, I appreciate you guys helping me be able to do this sort of stuff. And I think this new era of Steam release, for as pessimistic as I am sometimes, I think it's going to be great. It's going to work out 100% fine. No matter what. Like, you know, I see people afraid of, like, how the community is going to change or, like, I don't know, this, that. But it's going to work out. Just like in Dwarf Fortress, it always works out, you know? Three minutes. Two minutes. Pardon. <laughs> oh my god. Can I do a Steam giveaway, please? No. No, I can't. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. What, like Steam keys? I, I don't have those. I'm just some jerk at a computer. Actually, I really don't know how I could do that. You love my earring. It looks so good. Thank you very much. I actually made it out of a clip from when I used to work at the kennel. It was like a little clip to use to hold cages closed. And I just like, I lopped off the whole top part of it and just like, uh, I cut it in half and jammed it in my ear. <laughs> On that note, less than two minutes, dwarves. That's exciting. I've always wanted like a big earring. I was going to polish it up today, but I don't have any uh, steel wool around, so... Figured it's fine. I could just be a grungy dwarf. 
Less than a minute. Less than a minute. Should I keep my face on? You know, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of my face while we're playing this. Okay. I have to imagine that's fine. Get rid of my ghoulish visage. Here we go. Who's ready for some dwarf fortress on Steam? Eh? Hey, it's gonna be pretty great, methinks. I'm gonna have to pause the music if it starts kicking up another banger. Okay, I'm, I'm pausing the music. As we prepare to embark into a new era of dwarves, stories, fortresses, blood, magic, and wonder. 10 a.m. Let's do this. Just gotta resize this window here, one second. Two shakes. It's also, it's a shame, because I've got to have the music turned down a little bit. So you guys can hear it all, you know? Here we go. This is as far as I've seen into the game so far. You guys can see this fine, right? Can you hear it somewhat, at least? Like, I can't have the music turned up too, too loud. But. I hope this is fine. Alright, just, just start screaming at me if it's not good for some reason. But I imagine we're fine right now. Let's do this. Now then, um, <laughs> I, I'm like strangely apprehensive going into this. I suppose we'll just start by creating a new world, eh? Just like you do in Dwarf Fortress, using my mouse, which is very strange. Okay, uh, it's gonna be a little bit of reading, I imagine, but um, we'll, we'll get through it. Let's take it slow. No reason to rush, right? Welcome to Dwarf Fortress. Prepare to guide your stout charges to fortune in a world fraught with many perils. You'll begin by creating your world and watching the region's history unfold. Once this process is complete, you can prepare a group and send them out to seek wealth deep in the mountains. As you dig deeper and more citizens take up residence in your outpost, your doings will attract attention, both wanted and unwanted. Deal with challenges as they arise, and you might one day find that your humble settlement has grown to become a mountain home, the center of your civilization. Um, should we, like, th these are the typical settings that you have here. World map size, history length. Um, I I'm thinking maybe we should just go with what they've laid out here. You know, no, no reason to go too, too crazy, eh? They do have a detailed mode down here, which, let let's have a look here. Um, okay. I'm using the mouse wheel to play Dwarf Fortress. That's just strange to me. They've even got this little slider on the side. Wow, okay. And yes, this, this is all looking pretty much like the uh, custom world settings, advanced settings in like world generation. But like, man, oh man, I I, uh, I guess I don't really know what I'm looking at half the time. Um, That's fine, we're, we're just gonna, we'll, we'll go back. <laughs> we'll go back to that last thing, back, back to main menu. Okay, never mind, create a new world, okay. Yeah, we're just gonna create this world right here. Um, standard, fully standard. Let's see, we're not going to get fancy or anything like that, okay? Loading object files, got all kinds of little vanilla pieces here. Sure. How is the music levels, by the way? I hope it's good. I hope it's good. Creating Athira Etha, the Plains of Prophecy. Okay, you can see the world over on the right side there, this big map. That looks really sleek. It's really cool to see those little settlements and roads. Structures popping up as time advances like this. It is kind of a shame this menu is like right in front of the map. Um, I don't really know why that would be. We could see too scrolling underneath the, the world creation there, all like, um, you know, in the early summer of 92, the crystal opal fiend Ular Bythero, the Lamb of Dogs, was struck down by a giant roach in the Hill of Enchanters. That's just something, some notable event that happened during world creation just now. Very interesting. Um, okay. I'm gonna keep this world and return to the main menu or play now. Play.
play now? Is that just Dwarf Fortress? I think they've got Legends mode and Dwarf Fortress mode in the game currently. I just said keep this game and return to main menu. I want to check out Legends mode before we even get into the game. Just to you know, have a gander, see what's up. It should be pretty cool. A giant roach. Yeah, it looks like a demon was killed by a giant roach. That's actually incredibly weird. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, start new game in existing world. Okay, so we just created that world. Uh, Athera Etha, the Plains of Prophecy. Okay. Um, I imagine we'll have the option afterwards, after this fills up, to go into either War Fortress mode or Legends mode. I think. I think. War Fortress already in the Steam top sellers. Yeah, I don't. I don't doubt that. Music down just a bit. Okay, that's fine. Music is a bit loud. Okay, a couple people said that. Wonderful. We'll get that turned down slightly. How's that? Is that just just uh, you know keep screaming at me? I'll keep an eye on the chat. Adventurer coming soon. Legends. I got Fortress mode. Okay. We'll try out Legends mode. I just want to see what. Okay. Um, explore the history of the Plains of Prophecy. Let's select a category below to begin. Um, all right. So these are the categories of people that we can see in this world here, like historical figures. Usually the most interesting category, in my opinion. Now this list here. This shows us all of the notable figures in the world pretty much that have ever born who have ever died okay like starting with up top here we have a, a dragon nifi newenia kura nifi fetti or nifi spark diamond the jewels of flickering female dragon and if we click that you can see everything she's done and every year she's done it um it looks like she's had 88 uh, other kills mostly in good fondled um not too sure what good fondled is actually i i had heard that there were links added okay that's really cool so i can click good fondled there and go straight to good fondled's page which is a human town or uh, just a town I guess, you, generally that's a town is a human town um okay it looks like this dragon spent an awful lot of time terrorizing this human town known as good fondled and oh cool there's tabs at the top too so we can actually go straight back to niffy this th that really helps out parsing your way through legends mode in a big big way that's really exciting okay okay um very 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 cool i like that drunken fountain yeah you could just keep opening up these things and see stuff like that that's really cool i'm a big fan of that just the whole um those quick quick link is that what you call it? just links i guess that's really neat i have to imagine uh, most of this is pretty much like you'd find in normal dwarf fortress except they added those those links in so that's cool. It's just one more. I'm, I'm going to see it again. We've got Lucky Pearl, the earthenware slab. I'm going to click, click that. It was created by the Gecko Demon, Wealthy Death, the Contingent. Wealthy Death, the Contingent, was a Gecko Demon. It was the only one of its kind. A huge gecko twisted into humanoid form with external ribs. It has a bloated body. Its slate gray scales are jagged and overlapping. Beware its poisonous sting. Okay. Okay, yeah, that's that's really cool, that whole link thing, and the fact that they are saved as tabs up there. If it was just the links, like, sending you from one page to the other, that'd be exciting. But th the fact that they got those tabs saved up top, that's really a slick idea. Big fan. Um, but yes, uh, I'm going to say done. And it, like I like how quick that was, you know? Done brings us straight back here, and we can jump straight into fortress mode. Let's do it. We have a calendar here showing us... Um, we're going to be starting off in Granite. We have the days ticking by before we start on the 15th of Granite. Um, whew, okay, this was a part that I was anticipating somewhat. It's offering up a tutorial. Now, like, I'm inclined to be like, I don't need a tutorial to play Dwarf Fortress. I know how to play Dwarf Fortress, but I also don't know what's been changed, if anything. And I, I'm kind of thinking it might be a okay idea to start a tutorial. Um, let's see here. What do you guys think? Should I jump into a tutorial or should I just kind of try to figure things out myself? <laughs> I'll go by the whims of the chat and just tell me what the hell you want. <laughs> and while I take a gander on here, thank you again for you guys' support. I know I haven't been thanking everyone individually, all the, the supporters out there, but um, it's much appreciated. Six shot savior, um, Fizban. What the hell? Thank you very much, my friend. Uh, 
Fruity Brute was intended for Dio for DOS compared to this release. Yeah, I can see that. Mm -hmm. Skip it, skip it, skip it. Tutorial, skip it. Do it, do it. Tutorial, no tutorial. To try it just in case. <laughs> it seems kind of um back and forth. No, no. I'm seeing more no's and more skips than anything. So. We're going to skip to tutorial. We don't need it. This is Dwarf Fortress. I've played Dwarf Fortress for 11 years on your own. If this is your first time playing, please heed the embark warnings about aquifers, salt water, and other hazards. Some locations are challenging, even for experienced players. It'll be a very short game indeed if you don't know how to deal with them. After you embark, help is available by pressing the help button in the top right corner, including all of the tutorials. Okay. Handy. Yeah, we don't need that, though. Oh, that's, that's really, it's still very strange for me to navigate around using... The mouse and like seeing changes over on the right there can i zoom in i was hoping i could zoom into the map a little bit using like the mouse wheel but that doesn't seem to be something i could do can i zoom in at all um oh okay i i guess i can uh very cool okay left click right click you can like left click to like zoom in oh that's really neat so like this little island down here i could zoom in and just see that island as as it is that's really neat I get a kick out of that. Um, what else? How about like this town over here? Okay, so I can zoom in on this town and it doesn't give us like a little map display of the towns themselves. It just gives us a big red, like there is a town here sort of a thing. We don't get to see the details of the towns. I was really hoping we get to see like the buildings and the streets and stuff, but um, that's fair. This is kind of how Dwarf Fortress functions normally. Um, it's fine. Over here we have a cave, pretty much the same thing. Over here we have... Like, I don't know what this is. Okay, so I'm very used to seeing, like, purple areas on the map be, like, the danger areas. But um, that doesn't seem to be the case anymore. It looks like this this brownish area over here, like, this dead section of forest is a sinister haunted place. Okay, click and drag to navigate map. Okay. Uh, clicking, dragging, right-clicking. Doesn't That doesn't seem to do much. Arrow keys? No. Going to the bounds? Yeah, I, I guess I don't know how to, um, okay. Click and, you, the middle mouse button. Okay, there we go. Okay, duh, duh, it says right on the screen. Okay, middle mouse button. Yes, we can have a look just like that. And also the, the wasp. There we go. It's so weird having, like, normal-ish controls to figure out my way around this stuff. That's a, that's gonna be a, a challenge for me, I'll tell you that much as, as we go forward. Having just these different controls here, which I, I guess I knew already, but here we go. Um... Okay, I was saying already that, like, we should have a place that's kind of general. I really don't know how to sort my crap out at this point, though. Um, down here in the bottom right, the, the south east here, we can see some settlements, a bunch of dwarven settlements, I assume. Like, these, uh, these mountains here are populated by dwarves, I think. And we have some, uh, let's see, a warmth paddle, a human town down here. Okay, uh, a human hamlet. Uh, human hamlet some human places okay what is um I'm looking for like an elf place we have a dark goblin fortress so like this place over here i can't really see these icons so good maybe i should fiddle around with my resolution a little bit we'll see like we'll get into actual fortress mode and see if this is a too if it's too zoomed out still you know um do 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 that's why i do tutorial no it's it's fine relax relax about it my god we're gonna we're fine we're sorting our stuff out uh, I got a volcano up here. Oh, that's pretty cute. Over here, we got uh, more dwarven settlements. Well, uh, down in the bottom right, we have choose origin civilization. So I'm going to click that and see uh, we got a bunch of these dwarves here. We can choose one of these dwarven civilizations. And you can see on the map, the one that we're choosing is highlighted in blue. Okay, so this one, the intense ring over in the east. Then we have the gears of squashing over in the western continent and the autonomous mansion down here, that's in the southeast, the the frigid south. The blockade of bases over here, that's in the east as well. And the Lancer of Oiling. This one is, where is this one? Oh, that's, that's in this mountain range as well. We have three different civilizations in this one mountain range over here. One down in the south, the frigid south, and then one over here far to the west, far away from the other ones. I think maybe that one sounds kind of interesting, but... Ah, screw it. We'll go with the Lancer of Oiling. That's near these other dwarves and stuff. That, that should be fine. Um, you know what? Screw it. We'll we'll do one that's even closer to, like, the humans. Um, 
I, I need to know how to see like who their neighbors are. Usually you can hit tab and do that, but I, I don't see a way to do that on this one. That's fine. Um, the intense rain. Population. Oh, you can see the population of the actual civilization down in the bottom right. That's really handy. Population about 1,400 dwarves. Number of sites 15. That's really, really cool. I love that. That's that's really neat. Um, okay. Cool. Uh, we'll go with the intent to ring. How about it? doesn't really matter. Find Embark location. So th this is an actual search right here, I suppose, to, like, find what kind of, um, you know, uh, a place I want to. You know, I can cut out certain things if I don't want an aquifer or something. I can actually search for that if I wanted to. Do. Normally, I just do this by hand. Um, I don't know how to get back to, like, how it was. Okay, here we go. Okay, uh, that wasn't so bad. So... At this point, I suppose I could just like, you know, navigate around like this until that tab on the right gives us some, you know, information that we think looks good. I like that. Okay, if we hover over this one, it says iron, gold, silver, copper, nickel, zinc, platinum, tin, lead. So all of that is in this area right here. That's really cool. This is the forest of flying in the sizzling land, a tropical coniferous forest. It's hot, heavily forested. It has um, other vegetation is thick. Lots of bushes and probably stuff to eat. Surroundings, wilderness. Okay. Elves. Oh, it says it right here. Neighbors, elves. Nearest site, half days travel northeast. Humans. Um, humans and goblins. That's really cool. Okay. Now we're cooking. Now we're cooking. It just takes like my eyes are just so used to seeing that tab on the right giving certain information to me that I never even th thought that like neighbors could be there. <laughs> my God, this is going to take a lot of getting used to. Uh, tutorial or not you know <laughs> my goodness okay so i'm just gonna pick a pretty general area over here i suppose uh give, give me a nice nice foresty area how about or or something huh a rocky wasteland could be cool too i kind of like that rocky wasteland no trees hot temperature <laughs> you know i was like hey talking a pretty big game about doing like a a simple little start here but i I do like me a rocky wasteland. And I, I kind of like the idea of how that might look in the, the new graphics here. So let's click it. Let's see how that goes. Okay. Can I... Hmm. What do I do right here? Do I, I just click another location? Click embark to place your fortress. Oh. Right click to zoom out. Okay. Okay. Cool. Oh, we can move around like this too. That's really cool. Nice. Hell yeah. Oh, I like that. We can really get in there. Okay. Okay, now we're cooking with gas. So, I'm looking over here, right? And we got this place right on the edge of this rocky wasteland. Right? And, and um... Let me see, I'm gonna click Embark. Okay, you can actually choose how big the Embark location is, too. <gasps> That's really neat. Okay. Um, we're just going to go with the recommended size, though. I don't want to screw anything up. Um, how about we'll do it right here? Kind of like somewhat on the wilderness area, but also kind of in the Badlands as well. Okay. Volume low. What, my voice volume or what? I'm not too sure. Anyways. Um, yes, we're going to... I'm going to click right here. Select an area with a light aquifer. Water might need to be pumped out or carried away. I mean, I'm, I guess I'm pretty accustomed to light aquifers and door fortress, so it's probably going to be fine, I would imagine. Yeah, it'll be fine. We'll just we'll confirm. This this all feels very um, door fortressy to me. It doesn't yet feel like something completely alien, which which I like. Volume good. Volume is fine. Voice volume low. Sounds fine. Seems fine to me. Okay. Whatever. I was kind of mumbling there, so uh, you know it's gonna it's gonna kind of fluctuate sometimes. Play now, okay? Or prepare for the journey carefully. I think we'll prepare for the journey carefully. Um, also, I'm seeing economy, normal or hard. That's really cool. I'm gonna go normal. Enemies, hard. Oh, that's really cool. Custom settings. <gasps> what is this? Wilderness sensitivity. Less equals sooner. Forgotten beast wealth divisor. Uh, 
The Forgotten Beast Irritation Minimum? What the hell is this? Mega Beast Attack Period? Seasons? Hmm. So it looks like there's there's an awful lot of ways in here to like customize your experience while you're playing in Fort Mode now. I love that. That is really, really cool. Huh. I'm not going to mess with any of this stuff, though, okay? Like, th there's so much here that um, I'm not going to bother. Civilizations can attack. You can say yes or no. Oh, that's really cool. Curious wilderness creature can come to cause trouble. Yes or no. Oh, that's that's really cool. Okay. That's really neat that you can do all of this, like, right before you embark, too. Very interesting. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Enemies, I'm going to keep the enemies as normal. Economy is going to be normal. I'm also going to prepare for the journey carefully. Okay. Now then. Starting off here, we see our, our seven dwarves. We have Arib, Sarvesh, Urvad, Asab, Moril, Udib, and Kekrost. All peasants. They don't have any skills. I don't know what the hell they're doing. Okay. Um, And, I mean, this all looks pretty much like it did before. Um, we got a bunch of these skills here. Uh, crucial, we have, okay, then they are sorted out into crucial skills and labor skills, combat skills, and other skills. Okay, I was a little scared when I went down here. I was like, oh, but how can I, I, I can't have my, my people be a comedian if I want to do, but that must be over here somewhere, right? Um, yeah, we've got everything, consoler, flatterer, you can put skills in everything. you got ten skills that you can allocate any way you'd like for the most part. Um, that's really neat, really neat. So, I, 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 just to make a general sort of a settlement here, I'm going to have one be a miner. I could put five points. You could put five points in a skill and then like five points in another, but it's whatever. We'll, we'll save some of those points so we can buy some items too. How about Sarvesh? Do you want to be a woodcutter? Sure. We're going to have some wood that's got to be cut down. I'm sure you could be a carpenter too. How about you, Irvad? You want to be a mason? Sure. Absolutely you do. You, Asab, what do you want to be? Hmm? You want to be a planter? Sure, you'd be a planter. Why the hell not? Need a planter, you know? Maybe get some uh, some food from a, a farm. <laughs> you know? Um. So someone says, oh no, why is it not alphabetical? Yeah, you know, I guess that would be kind of helpful. This, this is, this is kind of laid out like it normally is. Um, you would think it'd be alphabetical, but, um, you know, it's, it's whatever. It's fine. I find it easy enough. They, at least they got tabs now, right? <laughs> Anyways, um, planter, we got someone could be an engraver. I guess I'm, I'm really just starting this out just like I would normally for the most part. Some sort of crafter. What do we want to craft? We want to craft some stone. We'll have one person be just a stellar stone crafter. And you could be a stone crafter too. We'll make some amazing stone crafts to trade. How about, okay, and their, their names are, you know, they uh, get these different colors, too. These are going to be the colors that designate what they're doing exactly, which is pretty neat, too, how it just changes on the screen right here. Okay, um, we have a lot of, like, labor and stuff. That's fine. Yeah, we'll just go with the crucial ones there. It's, it's going to get us settled absolutely fine right now. Um, okay, now, items. Uh, let's have a look here. I'd imagine it would have a setup... Pretty much like it does normally, uh, somewhat. Got our anvil, copper battle axes, copper picks. Okay. Um. Yeah, it's not looking too too bad. A little overwhelming. My eyes don't pick up the information like it used to, just because it's new, you know. Um, I I do for the most part like how it's laid out though. Like I feel like it's just a matter of getting used to it, like normal dwarf fortress, you know. It is a bit more concise. I like it. Yeah, I got, got our whole selection of seeds here. Got some cloth, anvil, wine, whatever, whatever, whatever. It's, it's all fine. Don't need, don't need anything too fancy. I'm going to go over to animals. Let's get some cool animals. Oh, neat. And you got the little icons, too. Of all the different animals that we could bring with us, elephants. We could just bring elephants with us? What the hell? That seems weird. <laughs> Why can't we just bring elephants? Uh, got elephant, like, all the, the animals are pretty normal for the most part, I think. Like, yeah, alpaca, keep, pea, hen. And then just elephants slammed down here at the bottom. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's probably fine. Um, maybe we're gonna take a couple elephants. We're gonna take a male elephant. 
and a female elephant because we can afford them. <laughs> gonna have a couple elephants. Gonna dash up this fortress a little bit, make things interesting. How about? Can we take more? Can we? If we can get rid of some of our maybe important items to get elephants instead, because I think that'd be really cool if we did that. Um, yeah, we don't need a wheelbarrow or a step ladder. What we need is elephants. Get rid of these splints. If dwarves get wounded, it's your own damn fault. <laughs> Purring maggot leather quivers. Um, nah, nah, man. We need some. We need some elephants. We need some elephantage over here. Yeah, we're going to get another elephant. Where is that? I'll get two female elephants and one male. There we go. Okay. Elephants. Boat murdered two. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Uh, that, that should be fine. Fortress name. Okay. Uh, yes, this is going to be an interesting thing because it's um the naming system. Is It, it looks pretty much the same. Uh, I, I really love how there's a random button for each of these categories. That's really cool. Okay. So it comes with the name Nish Libad, Traded Praised. But you can hit random, Pear Hatchet, Lance Submerges, Paint Bound, Oily Authored, Die Authors, Lancer Confined, and none of these are suitable for what we're doing here. We're in this rocky wasteland. Um, th yeah, that's really cool how you can just like randomize certain aspects of the name now and blush the tightness oh boy and blush the crew the beak of sneak <laughs> and blush the beak of sneak <laughs> i kind of like that but um i don't think it really conveys what we're all about here right um we're all, all about them fans i think so like I, I i just automatically went here to search you know it was like my um my instinct to just go here and search i didn't even like look at this thing beforehand i was just like okay let's search on this which is really cool um tusk tusk trunk <laughs> i'm trying to see what words we can have in here so it's gonna be tusk terror tusk terror okay i like that <laughs> buffet and exact the beak of sneak <laughs> i don't know what the hell the beak of sneak is supposed to make me feel but it does make me laugh which i do like um, yeah, I think we're going to go with that. Bufat Tangzak and Muth Ostuk. Tusk Terror, the Beak of Sneak. I like that. Sure, why Why the hell not? Gr uh, group name. We are going to be our dwarves. The group of our dwarves who live in Tusk Terror, the Beak of Sneak, are going to be called the... The... <laughs> I'm trying to get like the beak of sneak the sneaky beak <laughs> oh my god that'd be funny the fam what is this word familiar familial how do I change it what is that the um, what is familial under right now how can I change that no no clear the clear that one okay no, that is this one right here the sneak I can't make this be the sneaky beak Oh, that would have been funny. Uh, uh, the beak of sneaking. There we go. We're enough us took the beak of sneaking. All right. Problems. What is this grayed out tab? What does that mean? I need to know what this means. That looks so cool. Oh, I don't know, man. What the hell does that mean? They just putting that there to tease me, huh? What does this mean? What is problems? Oh, I wonder if you can make it so you, like, start out with a problem, you know? Like, start out with a single dwarf. Or, like, start out, you know, with no food or, like, something, you know? Some sort of a disaster has befallen your dwarf straight out the gate. That, to just to dash things up. That'd be really cool. Anyways, um, group symbol. Okay, so, the symbol of the intense ring. Which is, what, what is the intense ring? Um, th that's our, our, our civilization. I am choosing... The, the the symbol of our group here, the beak of sneaking, which should be an elephant. It's an image of an elephant, okay. And <laughs> I I don't think I can make a beak, unfortunately. Um, the elephant. What should I, what should the elephant be doing? <laughs> the elephant is laughing. <laughs> I love this game. <laughs> I 
Oh my god. Every once in a while I have to take a step back and realize what I'm laughing at exactly. It's like a toddler if you jangle keys around in front of their face and they're laughing. They don't know what they're laughing at. It doesn't make any sense, but boy, they sure are enjoying it. <laughs> Our symbol is an image of an elephant. The elephant is laughing. The elephant is screaming. <laughs> I love it. It's wonderful. <laughs> oh my god. It's so, it's so brain dead. I love it. Um, elephant and a dwarf. Oh, uh, actually, I'm gonna delete that. We're gonna delete the dwarf. Instead, we're gonna add. Uh, oh, number. Okay. Zero for unknown or plural. Okay, okay. Wait, wait. How do I come down here? I'm. Hmm. Can I get rid of this? Can I make it just zero? I am a little confused about this number. Uh, I wanted there to be men, many people, many, many people surrounding the elephant. Dwart. Um, yeah, I, never mind. There's an image of an elephant and a dwarf. I, I don't really know how that numbered thing is supposed to work right there. Uh, that's going to bother me, though. Let me try it one more time. Let's see. Down at the bottom. I'm going to click here. Okay, that worked right there. I, I've got a feeling there's some sort of like buggy stuff up there. Maybe if I click up here in the naming or the, the search bar first. It looks like both are highlighted, the number thing and the search bar up here. So I think it gets a little screwed up. That's got to be some sort of a bug, right? Whatever, it's fine. Um, the image of an elephant, a dwarf, and... <laughs> and dwarfs. Let me get rid of the single dwarf. Okay, okay, there we go. Uh, surrounded by, gotta make the elephant be surrounded by the, the dwarf. The elephant is surrounded by the dwarves. Okay, wonderful. And the dwarves are laughing. And the dwarves are screaming. Okay, we're done. Oh, and the name, we gotta come up with the, the name of this icon right here. The Livid Crafts is fine, that's one I came up with, that's fine. We've, we've messed around enough on this whole thing. The symbol of the Intense Ring. Uh, I don't know why it's calling us the Intense Ring, though. Um, we're called the, we're the Beak of Sneaking. Very weird. Anyways, okay, I think that's gonna about do it right there. We have our three elephants, we have our, our dwarves. I think we're pretty much good to go. Don't you think? So let's get straight to it. Gonna embark. Uh, are you sure? 11 points remain. 30 unpicked skills. Is that different? Is the... Hmm, one second. One second here. Uh, usually these points that you can assign to people is, is... Is tied to those points that you use to buy items. Is that different now? That's interesting. So I can just assign points to people and, um, you know, not cut into my item points i suppose that is interesting okay one of these crafters here then I'll, I'll make a mechanic that's interesting okay this other crafter here i'll make also be a an herbalist too maybe we can go gather some plants out here um th this guy too will make an herbalist why not the um field grower over here this engraver we can put him on some work oh so that's interesting yes you can assign all of your dwarves as many skills as you want up to 10 points and it doesn't cut into your item points anymore interesting interesting that is a change I, I don't know i don't know if that's um very good or what I, I think it's just kind of a, a lateral move in my own personal enjoyment of the game uh this engraver here i'm gonna make the engraver also be a a brewer how about let's where is brewing brewer it's got to be on here somewhere it um it does kind of stink that this isn't alphabetical maybe brewer is under Okay, Brewer is under Crucial. That's going to help new players, but it seems a little weird that it's Brewer is under Crucial while Cooking is under Labor, you know? Um, that's fine. Anyways, um, continuing on here. Okay, five, five more points for both of these guys. This Mason is also going to be... I don't know what the hell I could put you on. Where's an Engraver? I'm going to make this Mason be an Engraver too, and this Miner, you could be an Engraver as well, sure. Done, done, done. Embark, let's go. I am ready. 11 points remain, that's fine. Preparing map. Okay, here we go. Getting into the game now. Wonderful. Wonderful. Brewer is crucial. It's not. Not not totally. Like, it's important, but it's not crucial, I wouldn't think. 
a dwarven outpost, you have arrived after a journey from the mountain homes into the forbidding wilderness beyond. Your harsh trek has finally ended. Your party of seven is to make an outpost for the glory of all of Rainu Lathel. There are almost no supplies left, but with stout labor comes sustenance. Whether by bolt, plow, or hook, provide for your dwarves. You are expecting a supply caravan just before the winter entombs you, but it is spring now. Enough time to delve secure lodgings ere the wolves get hungry. A new chapter of dwarven history begins here at this place. Bufat Engzak Imath Ostuk. Tusk Terror, the Beak of Sneak. Strike the Earth. Okay. Okay, and um, the game is automatically paused, I would imagine. Straight into it here. Whew. Okay, it's going to take a, take a second as I look around at all these frightening new icons um okay i just I'm, I'm using the mouse wheel this is going up uh, the screen gets a little bit blurred out but that's because we're rising up into the air when we do that it's very interesting how do i zoom out here we go zooming out wonderful we've zoomed out all this way here using the middle mouse wheel we can kind of pan around and see everything oh that's cool i, I like that music too it's a shame you can't really hear the full effect i wouldn't think okay okay ah yes moving up i really love that you can see now the multiple z levels that is to me the biggest cool thing so far with this team release the fact that you can get this whole spread over on the right the top of the hill and then down over towards the left you can see it kind of goes down level by level becoming more faded as we go downhill that's really cool. And then, like, you see the tops of these trees up here. That's at eye level with us up here. That's really neat. Okay. I, and I know you could do that with, like, other mods and stuff that have been around forever. But, you know, for me, uh, someone who uses, like, ASCII-type graphics, just not generally used to it. Um, but, yeah. Okay, so we can see our dwarves here now. Got our seven dwarves. We have the animals that pulled the wagon. Of course, we needed to bring a, a stray yak cow couple of stray yaks to bring to carry the wagon couldn't have our elephants do it um i had to bring those yaks um but yeah we have a brook over here a nice little little babbling brook a eh? um can I, I can, that's down underground that's the bottom of the brook right there top of the brook i would imagine brooks work the same way still where like dwarves can just kind of like walk over them but i am unsure let's unpause the game okay there we go that brook looks really nice. I like how that water is kind of wavering like that. That's really neat. Um, we see our little dwarves just kind of milling about now by our busted up wagon. You can see one of the wheels is off the wagon, kind of denoting that it's no longer can be used. Like this is, we're stopped here, you know? Interesting, interesting. Okay. Uh, what should we do, do you think? I'm just like getting a kick out of like how everything's interacting here. I really like these graphics. It's really neat. Um, it's, it's clean. It's concise. You know, it's not bad. Certainly over here. How about these trees? Would you look at that? This tree right here. You can see this, the trunk of this tree, a pecan wood tree, a pecan, pecan tree trunk. People always give me hell if I say pecan, but that's how we say it over here. But I, I'll try to avoid raising your ire chat over here. We can look up into this pecan tree and we can see the branches and the leaves and stuff. That's really cool. You know, give you a better idea of how it all fits together like that. That's really cool. I like that. Um, yes, and over here we see a, a sand. You can see a little tab at the top. It says yellow sand, siltstone pebbles, some boulders. That's really cool. Over here we have some dense, uh, various types of grass. Rye grass, meadow grass, um, hair grass. And we have some actual plants over here as well. Purple amaranths, barley, red bean vines. Very cool. And black sand. We have this strip of black sand here, which I believe is a road. This is a road that is heading over here towards the east, out into the desert. So, I mean, it kind of seems to me like we're making an outpost for maybe travelers to stop at on their way through this rocky wasteland, eh? Yes, yeah, so we go up here. You can see, like, this, um, this shape. I guess this is the road kind of going up a hill. That's wonderful taking things very slowly as you can see i'm kind of just really trying to absorb it all i love the music by the way it, they they really did a great job with um dabu and simon swerer teaming up for this i, I think there's another, another artist as well doing music 
but I am unsure. Again, I haven't really looked into too too much. Anywho, um, yeah, we should probably get to digging. Where would be a good place to dig, do you think? I gotta figure out the hotkeys for this sort of stuff. Let's see, a hotkey for this one here. No, no, that's not working. I thought it did. No, I guess not. Um, some sort of some sort of bracket. Oh, there we go. We'll see if I can remember that. I'm not gonna remember any of the keys though. It's gonna take a damn long time to start remembering actual keys. But um, but yeah, let's see. Uh, let's see. For a little settlement, we should probably go. Maybe. Is this a waterfall, do you think? No, I don't think so. That's a shame. That would have been cool. We'll just kind of dig in over here, I suppose. We'll start start digging like some proper dwarves and just see how it goes. Do, do, do. Zoom back in. There we go. I'm going to remember that hot key before long. How do I dig? <laughs> do you think? Uh, well, down here at the bottom, it says set digging orders. Hot key M. Boy, oh boy, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna be quite a challenge to get used to these hotkeys, I'll tell you that much. Okay, you just drag a little area like that. This is much easier, I'm gonna tell you right now, for a new player to wrap their mind around. 100% easier, which is great. I love that so much. I mean, like, I remember when I first started playing Dwarf Fortress, I'm essentially a new player right now. Like, I know what Dwarf Fortress can do, but, like, not how this Steam version is controlled. And, like, you know, you look down at the bottom, you see a little pick icon, obviously that's used to dig. We drag a space. Obviously, this is set to be dug out now, I would think. Um, it says regular mining up top. So, yeah, that's that's set to be dug out. That's straightforward, at least. Set tree chopping orders. Got a stump with an axe on it. Of course, that's pretty straightforward as well. Going to highlight some trees. Maybe over, over here. We have a couple of trees. Okay, there we go. Yeah, drag the box around these three trees right here. And you have axes on them now. That's pretty straightforward. I like that. Do that over here as well. What else? Like, set plant gathering orders. I could do that just by dragging a box, I would assume, around these plants. Okay, yeah. I mean, again, all very straightforward. I get a kick out of it. Not too bad. All this, like, this clicking and dragging, though, that's not something I'm very used to. Um, I can use W, A, S, and D, though, to kind of navigate around faster, kind of like we used to, you know? That's not so bad. Okay. Um... Am I Appalachian? No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm from Connecticut, but like that's how that's how we say it over here. If you're asking about the whole pecan thing. All right, game is unpaused. You can see that flashing icon over there, and here we have our dwarf uh, set to the task. This is Arab, the miner, digging through sand right now. I do really like how the ground and the walls look. There's like that slight shadow on the wall. That's really slick. Um, yeah, that's that's quite cool. I think. I get a kick out of that. I like, too, that this dwarf right here, you know, you can see his beard, hair color, skin color, clothing, all on him. You can see he's holding what I assume to be a copper pick. Let's take a closer look at this dwarf, actually, while, while we're here. Arab. Let's see if we can figure out how to do this. I'm going to right-click? No? Oh, I just double-clicked him. Arab Notolanib Minor. Arab Ghost Rag. That's kind of cool. 62 years old. Disdains perseverance. <laughs> I hear you. Resists sickness. Avoids excitement. I hear you. Good memory. Good in intuition. Disdains merriment. Okay. Healthy. No official position. Squad none. No unmet needs. Proficient minor. Proficient engraver. I finished up some work. That was very satisfying. He feels satisfied at work and felt fondness talking with a friend. Very concise. I like this panel an awful lot. An, an overview panel. Okay. We have a couple other panels here, too. This all appears to be much more concise, which I am loving right now. Uh, items, pigtail trousers, pigtail tunic. It shows all of his items on what parts of the body they are right now. What is this? Hmm. What does this little thing mean? This, this item is part of the creature's regular clothing. Okay. That's interesting. Copper pick. This item is a tool assigned by a work detail. Oh. That's really cool. That's going to help out new players, too, I would think. You can see all their items, and you can see, like, you know, he's holding this pick because it's assigned to him as a miner. Very cool. And I do like, you know, I'm trying to tell just, like, looking at the icon up here. Like, it says he's got a copper pick, and it looks like he's wearing, he's wielding a copper pick right there. I, I bet that would change to different types, you know, depending on what he's holding. That's really cool. Um, but I don't know about his other clothing. Like, it looks like he's got... um. 
His cave spider silk right glove. These appear rather dark, but his icon up here looks to be like kind of grayish. So I'm not sure what the limit is and what is displayed. Like he doesn't have a a hat on, right? There's no hat, and this character up here isn't wearing a hat either. So I'm not sure. Well, we'll see. We'll see in time. Plenty of time. Health, no health problems. Skills, you can see his skills. Rooms, that's really cool that you could just, you know, he's got a room tab. Labor, okay. Okay, that's all accessible through here now. We have the, the labor panel. Oh, okay. We'll do available tasks anywhere. We'll only do assigned tasks. Hmm, I am unsure what that means. Will this dwarf will only do assigned tasks? What the hell does that mean, do you think? Hmm. Very interesting. I, um, I wonder if that means, like, because normally, like, a, a dwarf, is it haulers, orderlies? Oh, th th this is this is a little bit different, actually, this whole thing here, huh? Very cool. I like that. Um, I, I wonder if I can, like, turn on hauling for him. And now he'll do mining and hauling. Maybe he won't haul. Maybe I have to turn on hauling for all these dwarves individually. You know, normally that's on automatically so that dwarves will, like, put stuff in stockpiles. But maybe you have to turn it on for the dwarves now? Hmm. Interesting. Uh, you can see a bit more of his personality here. He gnaws on his lips when he's annoyed. That's fun. Thoughts. Satisfied at work. Military. Not in the military. Groups. You can see what groups he's in. That's really cool. Including his religion, the Lavender Faith. He's a member, and also uh, a member of the Beak of Sneaking. Very cool. And his relations. Okay. Close friends with everyone else here. Yeah, as, as well as Asram Enol Gitnook. Gitnook. Uh, his god. Can I see more about this character from here? No, I, I guess I can't. I don't see anything anyways. That's fine. Um, then over here, we have these two icons. I imagine this would look like the little uh, magnifying glass would look at the character. But I don't know if this... Okay, so the other one zooms to the character. Okay, okay. That's very cool. Very, very cool. Um, awesome. Let me see here. Let me see. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. I think you only have to turn it on if you turn on the will only do assigned tasks. Okay. Um, interesting. Interesting. Well, we'll see how they behave shortly, I suppose. So that whole area has been carved out over there. Now, I suppose we can learn how to build something, huh? Let's have a look. Down in the bottom. Okay, why did, why did everyone just run away? <laughs> I've got to learn how to look at certain tabs. Normally, I'd be keeping an eye on what is on the map right now. If, like, a tiger wandered onto the map or an alligator or something, I'd like to know how to do this. Let's see here. Squad, got the world screen down here. Okay, designate items for dumping and melting. Okay, high and low traffic areas. We got minecart tab down here. Establish burrows. Okay, okay. Stockpiles for item storage. That could be pretty handy. Let's look at the stockpiles real quick. Or, you know what? I, I really want to see why these elephants went running off like that. It makes me think that there might be something dangerous in the area that I can't really see right now. Um, do, do, do. Maybe over here? Okay, it's got to be over here, I would think. Open the place information. Open the citizen information menu. Tasks, place, labor, work orders, nobles, objects. Hmm. Let's see here. Do, do, do. Pets like. Okay, okay. Here we go. There we have it. Uh, so on the map right now, we only have a great horned owl and an eagle. Maybe they saw an eagle and got a bit spooked. I guess I couldn't blame them. Couldn't blame them. We can see on this tab two our three elephants and our two yak cows, as well as our citizens over here. And dead missing, we have none right now, which is great. Excellent. <laughs> I really like that we don't have anybody dead right now. Good, good. Uh, nobles and administrators. Okay, so this this shows us all our nobles too. We have our expedition leader Sarvesh up top there. Um, uh, maybe I should read through this panel real quick. Nobles and administrators. Here you can view your nobles as well as assign your administrators noble. Uh, Military leaders and other officials. Militia commanders are assigned here. Once your first leader is assigned, subsequent captain positions will appear. These can also be assigned from the squad menu. Certain important functions in your fortress can only be performed by assigned administrators, such as the manager and bookkeeper. Once they're assigned, you can create work orders, run a hospital, and count and appraise your horde. Nobles and certain administrators require rooms, and some may also make demands. 
don't show this again. Okay, that's pretty much what I knew before. I mean, this all looks pretty standard, like it did before, for the most part. Over here, it must show you, just like these things I would imagine get highlighted if they require a tomb, or a dining room, or a bedroom, or an office, or chests, perhaps. Um... Interesting. Okay, so we got that all sorted out. I'm sure that has an associated hotkey that I'm not going to remember for a long, long time, but <laughs> that's that's quite all right. Uh, unpausing the game, um, I would like to learn how to build a workshop so we can get some furniture inside there. Let's see. Place structures. Okay. Straightforward. Workshops. Okay. Uh, workshops. We have a bunch of workshops. We put a carpenter. Select, click a tile to place the carpenter's workshop. Okay, I'll place it just right here, right outside. And it shows us the wood that is close by that we can use to build it. That's pretty standard. Amount needed one. Pecan wood we'll use. There we go. Make this one out of some nice pecan wood. And uh, we'll make another one. Let's see, workshops. And how about a nice mason workshop? Actually, you know what? We don't even have any stone yet, do we? We should probably continue digging downwards a little bit, shouldn't we? And we should probably make a stockpile as well. Let's figure out how the stockpile works. Um, okay, down at the bottom we got a stockpile. You know what? Let's let's. I'm gonna make a stockpile inside, so we can start getting our stuff stored away. Nice. How about? Let me see here. Okay, there we go. There's that. I'm remembering the the zooming hotkey a little bit easier than I thought. <laughs> so we have this little sandy room down uh, in in this hillside over here. I don't really want to live here. Uh, maybe we should just continue digging down, eh? How's that sound? I think so. I think that might be might be nice. Um, okay. This is how to dig. Dig orders. But to make stairs, dig a stairwell on this level. Going up or down. Your selection must span multiple elevations. Click on a tile, change elevations, and click again. Okay. This is a lot different than it was before. But it might be pretty straightforward for new people. Let's see how this goes. I'm going to make a stairway right here. Must span multiple elevations. So I'll click here. Uh, maybe we'll just go down from here. Okay. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 17, 18, 19, 20. We'll try to go down. 20 levels just like that okay that's very cool that's going to be a lot easier for new people to understand too i would think though I, I mean right now it looks like the stairs just popped up but i don't imagine they did i i think we have to get our miner to come over and actually dig them out there we go see it's flashing now and here comes uh was it arab our, our miner yeah arab's heading down now so there we go we have some nice sandy stairways and they dug down for a little bit and I have to imagine they encountered the aquifer, which is down here. I, I didn't see a, a notification for that, though. It just kind of stopped going. You know, normally something would pop up on the screen and be like, oh, you've encountered an aquifer or something like that. But um, I, I, I didn't see that anywhere. That's fine. Um, but that's what that is right there. I would think it would have let us know, though. Like, there, there's some sort of, like, announcement window or something like that. Hmm. I don't know. I, I didn't see anything. Let me see here. I'm just taking a little glance around. Yeah, I, I didn't see anything pop up. I figured that would be kind of an, uh, uh, confusing for new people, right? Like, hmm, I don't know. Anyways, uh, I'm going to continue down, I suppose. Now, I, I guess I don't really know how to do this exactly. I'm going to continue down like this. Just go straight through this aquifer? Because that's what I would do normally. I had started the stair on this lowest stair level that we had already dug out. And it looks like that may have worked. We'll, we'll see. We'll see if that miner actually comes over here and starts digging. No? No interest. Interesting. Okay. Um, I, I don't know how to get them to continue digging down through here. Dig a stairwell on this level. Okay. Dig a ramp on this level. Channel on this level. Hmm. Let 
me see here. Uh, uh yeah, uh, I'm not too sure what to do about that one there. Up in the top right, you can see that pause and then play. Okay, it looks like they're coming over now. Maybe the guy was just getting a drink or something like that. Okay, so this is pretty straightforward. I was just being a dummy. Uh, you can see those water drops on the surrounding stone. That means we're digging through the aquifer right here. Also, I did designate this level here as the bottom. You can see these aren't up downstairs. They're just uh, up stairs. They're like leading straight upwards. I'm wondering if I can make a stairway just through this and continue on. You know? Mm, maybe. It's, a, it's kind of kind of weird setup, but... <laughs> I don't know. We're going to get used to it, I think. Um, it should be fine. We'll, we'll see. I'm just trying to figure out how these, these stairs work, you know? It's like, it's certainly so far at this point better than stairs in normal Dwarf Fortress in terms of, like, a new player learning how it all works, you know? Like, ah. Uh oh You have discovered an expansive cavern deep underground already. This doesn't bode well for our poor, poor, stupid dwarves. This is probably going to get us killed right quick. But, you know, that's fine. <laughs> It'll be fine. Um... Okay, let's have a look. This is kind of what I wanted to see. What this underground area looks like. Okay. I'm gonna... Can I get rid of the mining stuff? Like, is this just ground? What is this? Okay, there we go. This is the ground floor of the cavern. Oh, that's really neat. Over here, I think we have an axolotl. An ohm on the ground. Over here, we have some cave wheat. Over here, the tunk. The tunk. The trunk of a tower cap mushroom. If we head up, you can see the, the cap of the mushroom itself. It kind of goes up a couple of Z-levels here. Okay. That's really cool. Very, very cool. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. Just to get a bigger idea of what this all looks like. Okay, so we can see these honeycombed caverns all over the place now. Got a couple of wide ones. Over here in the top, we have this nice big water area. Okay. Okay, that's very cool. Very cool. I, I'm liking it. I, li I like the way it looks. I will say that much. Over here in the right, what is this? Rough-hewn tetrahedrite wall. So we do have some metals down here. That's really neat. Over here we have a fungi wood. That's this yellowy uh, material. A bunch of fungi wood branches and stuff all cluttered around. On the ground we have some more mushrooms. Uh, some dimple cups. Some pigtails. Over here, plump helmets. Plump helmets. This is a bat. Just a, a normal, normal little bat over here. Very cool, very cool. Over here we have some cave spider silk webs just kind of scattered around. You know, this is, um, it's kind of rem reminiscent to me of like a, an older game that you'd find like, um, like it's, you know, it's a next step after DOS in a way for me, you know, like some of those games you'd play in the mid nineties that you get on like a, on a, some, some weird disc somewhere with a bunch of like demos. Like I'm picturing realms specifically, if anybody's ever played that. Um, I always thought that was a pretty fun game. Anyways, um, okay. I'm very, like, clunkily moving around. Normally I move around at the speed of light while playing Dwarf Fortress, but I'm really just trying to... Oh, cool, if you hit U, it brings us to this tab, which, that's what it does normally in Dwarf Fortress. I guess I should, probably should have tried that earlier, huh? <laughs> Let's see, um, ah, we have a Gorlack here on the map down here in the caves. That's very cool. It's very cool. It's just like a little click, and we get to shoot right over to the Gorlack sitting down here. Oh, that's really cool. You couldn't normally see this sort of stuff. I'm geeking out, man. I'm geeking out. This is the coolest thing I've seen so far. 52 years old, this Gorlack. He's a healthy, a healthy Gorlack fellow. He values sacrifice, recovers quickly. He's got good spatial sense, strong, high social awareness, and he's quick to give up. <laughs> well, I give up. Uh, no official position. Well, I wouldn't think so, since we just kind of found him naked wandering around the caves. But, um, yeah, he's got no items. He's he's healthy. No skills, apparently. No rooms. Labor. Cannot assign work details. No relationships or groups. Not part of the military. No thoughts or memories <laughs> that we can see. I would like to think he's got some thoughts and memories, because um, he's clearly a, a fellow um, who's got some stuff going on. Interesting. It's weird that we can see his personality and stuff. That's really cool. That's really, I mean, something like that for me personally, like making videos going forward. It's cool that instead of just like, you know, having this person, which that's what a Gorlack is. It's a, it's not like a monster. It's like a thinking person out in the caves. They're kind of like these 
wise wandering underground dwellers get to see like what his personality is exactly you know and if i had to draw this character it would give me such a great insight as to like how to draw this person you know oh uh, that's that's really really cool i'm a big fan oh i'm just taking a gander down here in chat jordan phillips thank you so much what the hell that's really too kind i appreciate it um again everyone else who supported i haven't been looking down in chat so much i'm sure there's been an awful lot i missed i i'm terribly sorry but you guys are great i appreciate it so much uh, especially with the holidays coming up it's uh it helps me out a lot um but yes thank you but yeah that's that's really cool huh gorlax i i wonder like if another okay you know what um normally i, I just kind of glaze over it but like if we looked at say this eagle up here nine years old this eagle is nine years old recovers quickly it's a strong eagle and like i would imagine if like you know they're carrying an item you could see the item it doesn't have an item but like you know if it was a kia or something trying to yank one of our mine carts away flying through the air you could probably see that huh skills um it's a legendary climber <laughs> seems odd but you know it's whatever okay person what the hell is this <laughs> Am I missing something here? So this eagle is really just a fleshed out individual. She has an iron will, a great memory, a gr very good feel for social relationships, a way with words, scraw, an ability to read emotions fairly well, and the ability to focus. But she has a meager kinesthetic sense. Um, am I... <laughs> am I missing something here? Like, this is an eagle. Like, just a bird. She is made deeply uncomfortable by differences in culture or appearance. Which I suppose I could see from an eagle, you know, faced with some other creature. You know, like, fight or flight kicks in, like an animal, you know. She rarely looks on others with lust. Oh, that's f fair. Very greedy. Hoarding buttons and trinkets in her nest. Finds helping others emotionally rewarding. <laughs> Am I missing something here? Like, I feel like this panel doesn't really line up with a, an eagle. Okay. okay. On this note right here i'm gonna, I'm gonna hit, let's take a look at the the c deeply complex minds of our stray elephants how about <laughs> yeah the sa same stuff um this one here has a great ability to focus but a lousy intuition never moved by the emotions of others this is a, just a cruel elephant <laughs> very ambitious just climbing to the top you know <laughs> gotta be the top trunk around these parts Oh my god, likes to keep his things orderly. Just stacking up his peanuts. <laughs> no, no, noticeable lack, lack of perseverance. Uh, screw it. Occasionally overindulges. He's often nervous. I mean, I guess that tracks pretty well with his fear of eagles. That's... Uh, mm, okay. <laughs> that's, that's fair. Um, I... I mm, Elephant, I guess that helps somewhat. Like, it's incredibly detailed, though. Like, to a point where I'm, I'm like, it is just an elephant. Um, I, I don't know. Some of that stuff doesn't quite line up with the way I, I would think an elephant would behave. But I'm not an elephant expert. I know they're intelligent creatures. So maybe, yes, maybe this elephant is stacking up his belongings in a nice little orderly little peanut stack or something like that. Anywho, back to the task at hand. I got a little bit off track there. Um, Carpenter's Workshop. Uh, let's see. I, I just clicked this here. Straightforward. Add new task. Make bed. Uh, this gives us all the things that we can make at the, the carpenter workshop. Okay. Um, like a bed. I want to make some beds. Okay. And uh, we can set that to repeat or do it now just like normally. Okay. Um, can I... One. Can I, can, I, can I just like repeat this a number of times? I wish I could just like copy this task you know I know there's a manager in the game so like I could do that too if I wanted um oh what did I just click I don't know what I just clicked there one second sorry yeah I'm just gonna make a bunch of beds this, this whole thing is kind of clunky I guess but I imagine that is done purposefully because like you can make objects a little bit easier if you have a manager one two three four five six seven eight nine ten we'll make just ten beds for now and we'll get those all set to be done ASAP. Just like that. Okay, so those are going to get done quickly, I would imagine, by our carpenter, who I think is Sarvesh, but I am unsure. Sarvesh, go den, I nod. Good luck to you, Sarvesh. 
Anywho, um, we have Arab our miner over here. We should probably be keeping a closer look on this fellow as he heads down underground because I, I don't want him to get devoured by um, an angry elephant <laughs> or a strangely complex troll or something like that. So, yeah, we'll, we'll just keep an eye on this fellow as he goes down into the earth. Also, there is water coming down from up above in that aquifer. We should probably fi figure out a way to deal with that whole thing, too, before we uh, get too crazy. Um, Hotkeys. M to mine now. I guess that makes sense, right? Like, <laughs> usually it's D. Um, I, I guess that was confusing as a new player, right? D to mine seems weird, right? Any customization to the key vines? Um, asks, what is that? Uh, none, none of your business. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, let's have, let's have a look here. Um, settings. Key bindings. There we go. There we go. Full key binding control from the looks of it. There you go. That's really cool. Very cool. Yep. And on each mode too. That's really cool. Hell yes. So there you have it. Difficulty two. Can we change this on the fly? Like if the game starts to feel a little bit too, uh, you know, wimpy, we can crank it up the hard right now. That's pretty cool, too. Like, hmm. Yeah, I, I do like that. That's really neat. Cool. Anywho, um, yeah, full key binding control from the looks of it. That's very exciting. Not normally something I get excited about, but yeah, that, that sh should add a lot to the game for a lot of people. Anyways, back to mining. I, I gotta figure out these walls. Let's see. So the aquifer is here, here. We've got two levels that looked like they cut through the aquifer, right? And so we have to replace these walls or get them smoothed out, I suppose. Down here, set wall smoothing, engraving, track carving, and fortification orders. Okay. Uh, Going to hit this. And then we have, okay, engrave artwork into a smooth wall. Carve a track. Carve a gap in a smooth wall to allow your archers to fire upon invaders. It's not called a fortification. Very interesting. Okay. I can dig that. Oh, the game is still running right now, actually. I should probably pause the thing. There we go. It's paused. Uh, I'm going to have them try to smooth this wall. Okay. Did, did that work? Did it, it didn't really do much. Hmm. Well, let's see. I've got the game on pause now. Is anybody doing that? Interest. Oh, hey, <laughs> I saw you. It was a cave toad just kind of like waddling up the stairs now. That's not good. These guys can hurt many, many dwarves because they're just big old fellas. Uh, let's have a look at this cave toad. That's a cute little icon. I like that. I do like that. You know, I'm on the fence about graphics sometimes, but, you know, they're, they're done pretty competently. And I just, I get a kick out of it. Let's uh, have a look at this fella. I, oh, okay. I was trying to mine or smooth up this wall. Sorry, one second. And I'm noticing now that this, this wall is loamy sand. We have, um, I thought this was stone. doesn't immediately read as stone stone you know normally if it's like loam or sand it's like brightly colored in typical dwarf fortress but um you know now it's probably a, a more normal color down here this is stone i would imagine if i highlighted this yes you could see this is all designated now okay cool cool um that being said how would i get rid of this if i wanted to just like that got this eraser tool bada bing bada boom easy as that wonderful wonderful Okay, all very straightforward. I'm getting a kick out of this more and more as we go on. Not too bad. Um, okay, but <laughs> I'm going to, you know, I was going to have this thing be mined out. You know what, let's screw it. We'll have it be mined out. it would probably be fine. I'm not too worried about it. Oh, wait, it's the, never mind. The thing's not up here. Never mind. One second. Okay, we'll carve out right here. Get rid of this aquifer BS and down here as well. Carve all that stuff out. And, um... In the meantime, I'm going to take a look at this toad over here, this 31-year-old female toad who recovers slowly and has no official position in our fortress. Uh, covered with water, absolutely soaked this toad. Got it all over her, including her nose and throat, both eyes, soaked with water, of course. <laughs> Probably just crawled out of the water up there. Personality, she has a very good feel for social relationships and very good creativity. She's a creative toad. Uh, poor empathy and little patience. That does not bode well for us dwarves. She's utterly humorless. She's always tense and jittery. <laughs> Overinflated sense of self-worth. <laughs> okay. 
She could be considered rude and likes to brawl. Yeah, this is this bad notes. I got red flags popping up all over the damn place. Um, I guess we're going to follow this. This toad set the camera to follow this creature. Okay. What is this? Customize this creature's nickname and profession nickname. Can I do that? Okay. Mm, it, it, I don't know if this is this a nickname. Joyless Toad, the giant cave toad. Is, does that work? Did that name this toad? Following giant cave toad. I'm not sure if that actually did anything. Joyless Toad. Following Joyless Toad. Okay. Wonderful. I don't know why it's like centered over to the side like that though. That's weird. Why would that be? Can, can I have it center? Like wh why is it over to the left there? I am following it, but just not like, you know, directly on the toad. Oh, that was really cool. Did you see that? That little thought bubble that appeared up on the toad? It was like a little fear thing. Um. Okay, what is that? That's really neat. Like the little thing popped up above its head? Like a little queasy thing? Okay. Very cool. I believe the toad just got in a scuffle with our miner. Let's head up a little bit. I think our miner, we're going to find our miner up here doing some mining. Or we did anyways. I think we just didn't see the combat just then. How can we take a look at a combat log? Normally like a little thing would pop up. Oh. Okay. Okay. The giant cave toad, joyless toad, is fighting. If we click that, select a report to view the full text. Right click to close. Okay. Um... Okay, here we go. The miner punches the joyless toad in the upper body with his left hand, bruising the fat. The joyless toad attacks the miner, but he jumps away. The miner attacks the joyless toad, but she jumps away. The joyless toad attacks the miner, but he jumps away. A lot of dodging, a lot of weaving. The miner punches the joyless toad in the left front leg with his right hand, bruising the fat. Really sapping the joy out of that toad. Um, yeah, the, the our miner really did a pretty good job on this toad here, just beating the hell out of it, um, punching it in its lungs, and... Um, its head. We could see the joyless toad began retching and vomiting all over the place. That must have been that little green queasy icon that appeared above the toad. That's really cool. I like that little thought bubble. You know, like you could tell what it means, you know. Like I was going to say that, um, you know, the little emoji icon essentially above that toad looked like, oh, maybe it's sick or nauseous or something. And of course it is. It looks like the, I, I want to see what happened exactly. Um, the miner punches the joyless toad in the lower body with his left hand, bruising the fat. Okay. That must have done it right there. Um, Oh, maybe up here too. No, no, before that. Let's see. Yeah, this, uh, oh, there we go. The miner kicks the joyless toad in the lower body with his left foot, bruising the muscle and bruising the guts. And the joyless toad started looking sick after that. So it was like a swift kick to the belly that caused this joyless toad to start vomiting and retching all over the place. Wonderful. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> down towards the bottom here, we can see the joyless toad became enraged, but it's still retching and vomiting. Um, Okay. Okay, Joyless Toad is just over here now. There's some water on the ground, as well as some dense floor fungus. I think, let's see where our miner is right now. I'm going to follow our miner, because our miner is going to end up back over there, I believe. Uh, this is interesting. We have our stone worker who's fishing right now. I don't recall, normally in Dwarf Fortress, you have to specifically turn on fishing. So I find it strange that this one here is fishing. Uh, Irvad, the stone worker. Uh, she is 88 years old. Values fairness. Let's have a look at labor. Fisher dwarves. Fisher dwarves is turned on. I don't recall having a fisher dwarf. Maybe I did. Maybe I just, uh... Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, it's gonna take me a very long time to get used to all this stuff. I'm gonna tell you that much right now. <laughs> My god. Um... It's fine, though. It's fine. You know, just take some time. If I can get used to Dwarf Fortress as it was, I can certainly get used to this. Do -do -do. Look at this guy. Kick Cross the Stone Crafter. What is this guy wearing? He looks like a, a, a superhero of some some variety. Kick Cross, what do you got on? Uh, ooh, 70 years old. He's got a lover. Sarvesh Rope Gate. Interesting. I wouldn't feel comfortable getting all dressed up, and yet he's over here wearing his bright-ass green gloves and boots and his bright blue tunic. What are you wearing, exactly? Let's see. He's got Drunian leather left and right gloves. Um, this is a Drunian leather 
left glove. Why does it look green like that, though? I'm curious. Like, up in the icon up in the top left there, it's kind of like that beige color. Nothing too fancy. Why does it appear green on this guy, though? Very interesting. Hmm. How about, like, in his tunic there? Alpaca wool tunic. I thought it might be, like, dyed or something. I'm not too sure what determines the color of the item on the actual icon there. Um, doesn't look to represent exactly what item they're wearing, though. That's fascinating. Anywho. Uh, elephants are doing good. All of our elephants. We got those three elephants over here. We have over here Sarvesh, our carpenter, the expedition leader, making some beds. Oh. Left click for recenter and expand options. Right click to dismiss. Geshad Sarvesh Tumam, Axe Dwarf, is visiting. Okay. Okay. This, this is something unusual, because, like, normally something like that would only happen if you already had, like, um, like a, a tavern or something in place. But here we can see this dwarf wandering onto the map, 107 years old. He uh, isn't part of this fortress. Very cool. Very cool. He's just kind of, like, wandering in now. Uh, he worships a whole, whole passel of deities. He's part of a whole bunch of groups, too, including the Intense Ring, which is our civilization. Hmm. The Mountain of Muscle. He's a former member of the Mountain of Muscle. I picture like some elite group of Chad dwarves <laughs> just striding across the land. I'm part of the Mountain of Muscle. Just coming to check out the place, I guess. Uh, interesting. I, I guess we'll follow him for now. I don't really know why it centers like that. That is weird. Um, edit the recenter hockey locations. Um... Uh, I thought that might have been something. I don't really know what that is exactly. Uh, yeah, I'm not too sure. Get out of here. Yeah, I don't know why it follows people over to the side like that. It's kind of bothersome. I'm sure there's some easy way to fix it, but it's it's beyond me currently. Oh, that's really cute. We have a, a colony of honeybees over here. Look at that, though. Like, I like that the look of that icon. You know, you'd picture like a little Winnie the Pooh sort of a, a hive hanging off of a branch, but... No, we got this, like, you know, more realistic representation of it, I suppose. It's, it's really neat. Very neat. Need to change resolution, sadly. Oh, okay. That's weird. Um, yeah, well, it's fine, I suppose. Got a sparrow over here. Oh, a little sparrow icon. That's pretty cute. I, I figured it'd be a little bit smaller than this. Like, it's a good icon. It is, but it's, like, half the size of the water buffalo over here, or the uh, yak calf. Still, it's, it's good looking. I like it. I like that you can see the detail on it. I understand that some have to be bigger so you can see any detail. Realistically, to be a tiny little thing. We can see over here in this tunnel, um, we have this sparse floor fungus now coming up into the fortress just because we dug down to the caverns. I wonder how that toad's doing nowadays, huh? Did it really wander off? It gave up? It did say it's not one to persevere through certain things. So, um, yeah, maybe it just gave up. Uh, anywho, how, how do I dismiss these things here? Um, okay. So, over here, these four icons right here, these are what our notification, these are where our notifications, notifications come from. Right-click to dismiss. Okay, so you can just right-click these things, and they will pop up over there as things happen. You know, I, I will guarantee something popped up over there when we struck this water. I just didn't see it at first, but now we have eyes over there, and... We're going to see that. We have a petition over here, just up in the top left. That just popped up. You see that? Ooh, and it's got a little shine, too. That's a cute animation. I'm going to click that. Status of Geshus Furnace Moral. Wishes to reside in Tusk Terror. Tusk Terror, the Beak of Sneak, for the purpose of eradicating monsters. Oh, it didn't even occur to me that this is a monster hunter. So we got down to the caves. Somehow this uh, Geshad must have his, his feelers out to discover fortresses in the area that have access to the caverns. And he's like, oh... Got to head over there, a good hunting ground just opened up. So, yeah, what the hell? We can use a hand, you know, in case that joyless toad comes back. Yeah, you can you can live here, that's fine. Excellent. I wonder if because we named that joyless toad, if, um, like if we go to Legends mode now, could we look up a joyless toad and it will come up as that? That would be pretty cool, I think. Um, just how, I'm trying to figure out how our mining operations are going right here. So we got these two levels of aquifer all dug out now, okay? Just this, this dirty crap, damp loam, and uh, siltstone? Okay, that, that was stone. We could have actually smoothed that out. I wasn't even thinking. Duh. 
Oh well, it's fine. Uh, what we're gonna do is build a mason, I guess, up here. Yeah, what the hell? Where is it? Mason, Mason, Mason. Furnaces, clothing. Am I blind? Stone worker? Where is it? I must be blind, right? One second. Where the hell is it? Is it right in front of me? Is it gonna bite me? One second, one second, one second. What am I? What am I I'm not seeing something here. Place structures. Okay. Workshops. Clothing and leather. Oh, is it in one of these categories, maybe? Got carpenter here was easy enough to find. Stone worker? Make stone furniture here as well as blocks, which are used in constructions. Oh, is... It's called stone worker now, not a mason's workshop. Okay. Okay. Um, and you can also select to use the closest material. Okay. Keep building after placement. What does that mean? I don't really know what that means. But we'll figure it out together, how about? Anywho. Yes, gonna zoom out a little bit here. I, I keep forgetting where the hell our fortress is exactly. I've zoomed out. Okay. Let's have a look. See where our little tunnel is. Okay. Here's our tunnel. I'm gonna place this mason's workshop over here. Zoom in a little bit more. There we go. Okay. Just place it right there. Um, That should be fine. Okay. And I, I think we should have a, a mason at work at that in a second i really like how these workshops look i'm going to tell you that flat out that's another aspect i really like just the way these workshops look i think i feel like that's going to add a lot for my enjoyment of the game like it was always kind of difficult to feel the vibe of a given fortress just because you know it's like represented with ascii characters and stuff but now i'll like i don't know it's just cute that you can see like the rock blocks in there and you know it's not completed it's just like a little stakes at the corners Let's see how this looks though. We have uh, our miner over here constructing it, laying the stone down on the floor. Got a table, some boxes, and there we go. The mason is now all set. Very cool. Okay, stone workers workshop. I'm gonna make some blocks. Okay, add a new task. We're gonna make some rock blocks. Having a look through here real quick. They must have just changed it from mason to stone worker. That's interesting. That's gonna take a while for <laughs> me to wrap my mind around. Um, I thought maybe they would have made it so that they, they combined, like, stone workers and, like, a like a stone crafter. Maybe you can, like, make stone crafts here as well. But no, it looks like it's just a mason's workshop, like, typically. Anyways, uh, make rock blocks. Yeah, we're going to do that. I'm going to set it to repeat and do it now. And um, you could set details for the task, like usual, through this magnifying glass, I guess. We only have three bits of clay stone on the map right now, so we're going to have to make do. That's going to be fine. We're just going to repeatedly make clay stone blocks now. Okay, get to it. Wonderful, shouldn't be too bad. Now we have this dwarf, Gashud, the axe dwarf, the uh, new dwarf to the fortress, is going to head down to the caverns, maybe do some hunting. Maybe follow this fellow. Um, hmm. I'm seeing this icon right here. I just hovered over it. Up in the top right, it says, send this creature to a linked site or expel this creature entirely. So you could just do that now? Send a creature... Like, you could expel things, expel, expel dwarves normally, but now you can just send them to a linked site without expelling them, necessarily? Uh, I'm gonna click this. Okay, I, I don't want to expel this fellow. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I guess I don't really know what that means exactly, but... Eh, it's fine. It's whatever. Yeah, not 100% why it's not centering, like, on the center of the map. But, yeah, it's probably got something weird to do with my resolution or something like that. Um, not too sure. Not too sure. Got a notification up here in the top left. Oh, it looks like we've just discovered a whole bunch of um, stuff down in the caves. This is probably from the monster hunter going down in the caves and seeing all the stone and gems and stuff. That's what all this is from. That's very cool. Yeah, he's just minding his own business, looking around the caves now for some sort of monsters, maybe hunting down the, the joyless toad that he's undoubtedly heard reports of. Very cool. I really like that you can see, like, his shield and his helmet there. Let's have a look here. Is this a bronze shield and an iron helmet, do you think? Let's see if that's all accurate. Uh, iron shield. That's an iron shield. And, oh, he's got a interesting axe here. Hmm. Let's have a look at that. 
Rabasi Limili. This is a copper battle axe. It is encircled with bands of bitter orange wood. On the item is an image of a bitter orange tree in tiger iron. Fascinating. Okay. Okay, what other information can we get? Toggle the visibility of this item. Okay, so you can hide it if I wanted. Toggle it to be forbidden. Set the camera to follow this item. Okay. I don't really want to do any of that sort of stuff. Very interesting, though, that he's got this, um... Hmm. This axe. I don't know if it's a, that means it's an artifact or what. He's got a dragon nail crown on. That's really cool. That's not like anything I've ever seen in Dwarf Fortress, frankly. Dragon nail. Where the hell did you get that from? Very cool. Fascinating. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's have another look here. Look around. Yeah, he's just down there discovering all kinds of um, resources, gems, native gold. Looks like we've got gold down in the caves. That's very cool. Yeah, you can follow items. You can normally do that, though, um, in Dwarf Fortress. You just can set a hotkey and follow items pretty easily. It's not too bad. That's not, like, a new feature or anything. Anywho, um, I should probably set a hotkey for our fortress because I keep, like, losing where it is <laughs> over here. Let's see. Um, hotkey. No, that's that's uh, minecart routes. I try to do capital H. Okay, here we go. Unnamed recenter location. I'm going to say fort top okay and um we'll just set it to recenter on this location set the entry for recenter on the current view okay did that work it did okay handy not too bad uh minor cancels make claystone blocks needs claystone well, looks like we're out of stone already okay okay this is coming along pretty well i couldn't imagine myself getting used to this in fairly short order it's going to take a little bit obviously and you know it's probably good that i'm going to be making edited content again because there's going to be a lot of fumbling coming up but um yes i want to try to build a wall now i'm just trying to figure out how to go about that i can build like normal let's see here if we go down underground to these two layers um i want to build a a uh, wall of some kind. Um, let's have a gander. Workshops, furniture. Is this, would it be furniture? Constructions. Duh. Okay. Yes. Most terrain altering constructions can be found here from walls, the floors, bridges, ramps, stairs, and more. Straightforward. Um, I want to build some, some walls. Okay. Okay. I really like some of these icons here. Gem windows. That looks really cool. Glass windows. That looks extremely cool. I'm loving that. Hmm. Oh, and I like that there's like a little tool tip for each of these things too. I was just saying on stream before, not too long ago, like I didn't really understand the difference between like fortifications and grates and bars, you know, like what the hell is the difference between them? But like vertical bars, blocks creatures, but allows the passage of fluids and items and items can be built on any floor. Um, bars, unlike grates, do not have a quality. And so do not enhance the value of room significantly. Bars can be connected to levers. Whereas a grate blocks creatures but allows the passage of fluid and items. Can be built on any floor. Grates, unlike bars, have a quality and enhance the value of rooms. So grates enhance the quality of rooms, whereas bars do not. It seems to be the only difference. It's, that's weird. <laughs> that's still strange. Um, I, I really don't know why there has to be both in the game still, but it's it's whatever. Fortifications block creature movement, but allow projectiles through. Soldiers near fortifications are reasonably safe from incoming projectiles. Requires boulder, block, or wood. Interesting. Okay. That's fair. Anywho, uh, walls. I'm going to build some walls. And we're going to select material after placement, I suppose. What does keep building after placement? Oh, oh, that's what it means. Um, Before, like when I made that workshop, uh, it still kept the workshop up if I wanted to build another one. Okay. Okay. I understand. Um, can I, I thought maybe like I can like drag a wall around this area instead of like filling it up. Hmm. Interesting. I'm not sure if there's a way to do that or not. Uh, looks like we do have a, a fair bit of claystone blocks here. I, I'll use those. I, you know, something I'm interested to see is... Hmm. <laughs> hmm. 
I'm curious to see if like I can fill up this whole area with walls and they will intelligently build them now. I have to imagine that wasn't fiddled with for the Steam release, but I, I don't know. Probably not, but but maybe, maybe. Let's see. I'm just going to fill up this whole area with walls, okay? Again, I don't think this is going to work. I think they're going to just start building this and get awfully confused and not be able to build the whole thing, but let's just, let's see. You never know. One, two, okay, then build one more over here. It's going to be, a, I'm having a dickens of a time getting some of this stuff. Because, like, some of this stuff in Dwarf Fortress is a little tedious and always will be from, I assume, anyways. Like, selecting those blocks for each of these wall segments is a, is a little cumbersome. But it's probably fine. It's probably just because I'm not used to it, you know. Let's see how they go about building this again. They typically in Dwarf Fortress, if I did this, so set the whole wall to be built at one go, they wouldn't build the corners. They'd get like confused and stuff. Okay, that actually did work. And wow, I really like how it sealed away this whole area in darkness. So like I can't see out there anymore. That's really cool. Normally that wouldn't work. It would look different like forever. It would just stay revealed. But now it's all blocked up with stone again. That's really neat. I like that. We need some more stone. Um, okay. Getting more and more excited as we go, by the way. Maybe you can tell. Very excited. Um, uh, but yes, yes, let's see. I'm going to try to dig down again. Let's see if I remember how to do this. <laughs> we'll go down. You know what? I'm just going to do it like this. How about... Okay, dig down. Um, I had them digging down to this level. This is where we'll start some sort of fortress nonsense. How about just down here? Oh, what'd I do? There we go. We'll start carving out down here. Make a nice little, little home for our dwarves. Nice and spacious. I want to see a nice big underground area carved out. I'll carve out a place like I do normally. I like to make these little like tapered sides like this. Let's just see what it looks like with the steam graphics and whatnot. I think that might be pretty cool. Actually, you know what? I'm going to get rid of... Maybe we'll leave a couple of pillars down here. Oh, that's going to be nice. That's going to be really nice. There we go. There we go. Just like that. A couple of pillars left in there. Get that all carved out. We'll see how that goes. Get some extra stone while we're at it. It'll be pretty nice. Let me see here. I, oh, game is paused. There we go. Do do do. Got some more uh, gems and metal discovered here. Okay. Uh, canceled making those blocks. Wonderful. We see our, our our little friend over here. This fellow. Geshud, the Axe Dwarf. I'm not going to remember his name. Just kind of doing his own stuff. Hunting some creatures. Felt fondness. Talking with an acquaintance. Happy after being granted residency. Very cool. Um, I don't know. Can, okay. So I can turn task on for this guy. Which I, I don't think you can normally do. You couldn't do it before with like, you know... A, Monster Slayer would come to your fortress and they'd kind of just like wander around killing monsters and not accept any tasks, which I always thought was kind of weird, but it looks like you can give them tasks straight out the gate now. Um, that's cool. Very cool. Although it, it feels a little crappy, like you'd be like, um, yeah, you can live here and hunt monsters and, <laughs> you know, as soon as they're in, be like, okay, well, here's your mining pick, you get to work, no more hunting. What is this? We have a rotten spider silk web or uh, not sp rotten spider silk cave spider silk web with some rotten bat remains and it's got a lock on it I wonder if that's just because it's forbidden I would imagine hmm let's see here can I click okay this shows us okay oh there's like these tabs on the right side wonderful and the rotten bat remains are forbidden Normally you'd expect that in Dwarf Fortress, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to unforbid it just because it is a little weird that there's like a big lock icon on it like that. It's a little distracting, but it's it's fine. Anywho, I'm going to follow this guy for a second. Let's see if he finds anything to hunt down in the caves. Oh, hey, that's really cool. You see a little bit of combat right there. I think these are troglodytes from the, from the look of them. Yep, troglodytes. This one right here is bleeding heavily right now. It's a troglodyte overcome with terror. 23 years old. Values nature, disdains decorum, frail, terrified while in conflict, items, uh, nothing, completely naked, covered with blood, that's about it, <laughs> ability to grasp is somewhat repaired, um, uh, impaired, impaired, did I say repaired? Anyways, um, interesting, 
blind overconfidence. He he's, can be overcome with blind overconfidence. That's great. A pessimist moved by art and natural beauty. Interesting. I, I feel there might be some tweaking that needs to be done with these the minds of creatures and whatnot. Um, you know, because I could also expect to see that in the mind of an eagle from the looks of it. I'm not sure what this little half-heart yellow flashing thing he's got going on here. Terrified? Uh, afraid? Is it fear? I'm not sure. Very interesting, though. I'm going to continue following this guy. Um, here we go. <laughs> there we go. Just chase that troglodyte a little bit. You can see all that troglodyte blood on the ground now. He, he turned around and... Oh, oh, found another troglodyte. Interesting. What's that? A cave spider. This is... Uh, I thought this was a... um, Like a giant cave spider. But it's just a cave spider. Like nothing too interesting, I guess. I can't even see anything more about it. It's just so tiny. It's just a vermin, you know? Over here, we have a dead troglodyte on the ground. You can see it's just, like, on its side. Kind of grayed out now. That's interesting. I like that. Um, it's laying now in a pile of fungus, vomit, and troglodyte blood. Down here in the caves, out in the dark. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, what else is out here? I'm going to hit you just to see if there is anything else out in the caves. Just a bunch of troglodytes, and there's also a king snake somewhere, probably above ground, I would imagine. Very interesting. Anywho, I, yeah, I don't know what this heart means, but I'm assuming maybe it's like health, like how much health they have, how much blood they have, something like that. And this this guy, um, this troglodyte right here, health, heavy bleeding, sensory nerve damage. Um, where can we see? Because normally you can see their, their wounds. All right. Oh, right here. No evaluated wounds. Um, description. There it is. A savage man-like cave creature. Agile, slow to heal. Certainly not going to heal at this point. His upper body is cut open. His upper body is spraying troglodyte blood. His left hand is cut open. His left hand is oozing troglodyte blood. Yeah, this guy's not doing good. His heart is spraying. His heart is spraying troglodyte blood. His heart is mangled beyond recognition. I can't imagine this troglodyte's going to be living much longer. Um, hmm. I guess we'll see. I'm rooting for you, Trog. Let's see how this goes. Am I following this guy? I think I am. There we go. Nope, died. Just like that. Fighting another one. Oh, we saw it just for a brief glimmer of a second right there. That troglodyte's guts came out when we were on the ground. But then they disappeared when it died. This, this hunter over here, Geshud, is now apparently unhappy. He's got this, this unhappy little thought thing that just popped up in his head. What's your issue? Afraid after experiencing trauma. Horrified after seeing a troglodyte die. Uh, times three. Well, I don't know what to tell you, my friend. Why'd you kill him? If you didn't like it so much, maybe this, is, maybe this guy's not a very skilled hunter. Maybe this is like the first time he's been out hunting or something like that. Interesting. Hmm. Well, maybe don't do so much hunting anymore, my friend, if it's going to horrify you. A, those injuries. Be gone, fear. Let's see, how wounded are you? Uh, doesn't appear to have any wounds whatsoever. I guess just horrified by the wounds of the troglodytes, the ones that he inflicted with his axe because he went out hunting troglodytes. <laughs> what, do you, what do you want? I don't know what you expected exactly. You know, you put a bladed instrument inside the body of a living creature. It, it tends to murder them in fairly short order. Don't do that so much if you don't like it. I don't know. Just my own take on the matter. Maybe maybe we should take this guy off of hunting duty. We'll see. We'll see how he keeps up. You know, if he keeps getting horrified by these acts that he's committing, maybe he's just going to be a better plant gatherer or a brewer or something like that. You goon. Absolute goon. I, I guarantee this guy doesn't last very long out here in the caves. Anywho, um, back here above ground. How do I see... Okay, here's a good question that hasn't been addressed yet. How do I see um, my food stockpiles? Normally, I would hit Z, which that's zones now, which makes perfect sense. I like that. That's fine. Z is for zones. Um, that being said, how do... Open the objects menu. Nobles, work orders, labor, place information, task information, citizen information. Task information, places, labor, uh, work details. Okay, oh, interesting. Work details are one way you can control which workers do which tasks. They are the only way to assign certain tasks like mining, woodcutting, hunting, and fishing. 
Generally, almost every task will be available for every citizen, but you can both restrict both citizens and tasks. The citizens are restricted by using their specialization button. Tasks are restricted by setting their work detail to only select to do this. If a task does not have a default work detail, you can create a custom work detail. Once you assign citizens to the task, you can then set only selected to do this if you want to restrict it. I took in very little of that information. That's fine. Um, that's okay. I, I, what the hell was I just looking for before this? I was looking Oh, food stockpiles. Okay. Let's see here. Labor, work orders, um, work orders that, okay, this is like a, 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 the manager thing I was talking about before. We need a manager in order to assign work orders. We'll get that soon enough. Objects, objects. There aren't any crafted artifacts here. Your workers will rarely make them on their own. You may also send a squad to obtain one. Interesting. Okay. Creatures, how to receive food. I imagine it's pretty straightforward to see that, right? Maybe you guys are screaming in chat about it. About it, and I'm just stocks button at the top, food stockpiles, stonks up there, stonks. Oh, this just giant stocks button, stocks. You can see every item in the fortress. Click on, blah blah blah. If you don't have a bookkeeper, blah blah blah. Mm, I think this is just stocks. Like this is like the stocks menu in normal dwarf fortress. I could see it here, but like. I was hoping for a Z button quick reference thing for, um, you know, like actually seeing, like normally you could hit Z button, it shows you everything at a glance, like really quickly, you know. Place information, stockpiles, workshops, farm plots. Hmm. I am unsure. Unsure. I maybe I'm missing it. I'm gonna look in chat again. Let me see. Need a bookkeeper to see foods. I I wouldn't think so, right? K is stocks. But yeah, but like th this is stocks, which is fine. Is this the only way to see your food supply now? That seems a little clunky. I wouldn't think that they would do that because food and drinks are pretty necessary. Like before, it was you hit Z button and you could see your food and drinks immediately. You know, like it would show all your food and drinks immediately. Um. Let me see. I, I'm going to assume there's a different way to do it, honestly. Cause, like, this was possible before, but there's also a really neat way to do it if you just hit one simple button. Task information, please. Uh, it's got to be here. It has to be here. Like, because you could do stocks before. It just wasn't very handy most of the time. Pets, livestock, other tasks, places. Hmm. 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 I'll bet there is a some sort of a key I can hit to view this thing. There's got to be something better than that stock screen, cause like that's just like it was an old dwarf fortress, and it's a big clunky mess, you know. Give me a second here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna find this. I'm gonna find it. Key bindings. Okay, maybe it's somewhere in here. Krug smash. Increase interface width in the settings. Maybe to expand the top bar. Tutorials. Okay, get out here with tutorials. Bookkeeper. Tutorial says you need a bookkeeper. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So maybe that that is changed. I guess that would make sense. Maybe I need a bookkeeper to do anything like that. So I'm, I'm gonna assign a bookkeeper. Right down here. Nobody has any relevant skills except Sarvesh, I guess, is our expedition our expedition leader. I guess you can be it. Get that done. We're gonna go make an office. And um, over here we're gonna make a I'm gonna make a chair. A throne, I guess. A chair. That's that's fine. Do that now. And also a little little we'll make a cabinet. Why not? Make a cabinet. And we're also gonna make a table for you. Get a nice little office all set for you. How's that? Do, 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 do. There we go. Table, cabinet, and a chair. And we're going to get a little office for you carved out. You know what? I'm not going to get it carved out. We're just going to put it over here. How about? It's not going to be anything fancy. There we go. Anywho, what is this? One? Why is there a one on this now? 
Is that just showing the depth? Before there was water here, it didn't have a one on it. Maybe I hit something that did that. I'll bet there's a key you can hit to uh, make that turn on and off. Interesting. Anywho, um, yes, yeah, heading down now. How do I turn? They got these stairs are a little weird over here. Okay, I probably have to create new stairs in order to do this whole thing. Okay, so well, I do have a bookkeeper now. They don't have an office. Is that going to pop up now? See, every item in the fortress. If you don't have a bookkeeper or they don't have an office to work in, numbers may not be approximate. Okay, okay. I mean, I really do think there is a different window than that stocks thing up there. Maybe there are alternate windows after you do that whole thing. Top bar. Everyone's saying top bar. Okay. Scale the inf interface. How, how would you, how would I, how would I do this? I don't know how to do this. Scale the interface. Unsure. Interrupted by Trogodite. I'm unsure. <laughs> okay. I'm unsure. I'm gonna just not talk about it anymore because <laughs> I'm not too sure. Be in the top. It should be in the top bar. Okay. These bastards over here. Let me see here. Hmm. I, I really don't know what to mess with here. I don't, I'm afraid to screw up the stream. If not fitting width, if not, I, I, I have no idea. I have no idea. Here, I'll mess with my window a little bit here. Food, drink. Okay, that, that, that made it work right there. What the hell is that? I can see it now. Food and drink. Why did it pop up when I made the window all tiny like that? That seems kind of dumb. Technology, I'll tell you. I don't understand it. Not for a second. And yet it all disappears when I make the, make the window big. Why the hell would that be? That seems weird. Oh, and if I make it just a slightly smaller, I get to see food, drink, seeds, meat, fish, plants, and others. What is going on? I don't. I really don't understand um, how this, this uh, interface scaling works at all, apparently. So I try to make it full screen, and it just, like, eradicates all of that stuff, which seems weird to me. Can't this bar at the top just be, like, a little bit wider? How about? Hmm. Very weird. Maximum interface width to the same as your resolution. I'll tell you what, I, I don't I don't care right now. I'm not going to fiddle around with that anymore. We'll just assume I've got food for everyone until I start starving. It'll be fine. I'm not too worried about it. Anywho. Um, yes, we need a nice office, don't we? Nice little office. So heading over here to our, our carpenter workshop that we were working at. Uh, I, yes, we made those items real quick. Real quick. Oh, that's a problem. Our elephants are starving. Um, they need food. They're not on a pasture. They're out in this, uh, this desert area over here. Same as our, um, our yak cows. So we got to make a nice pasture for them over in this, this nice grassy area over here. And I would assume I could do that like normal by making a pen slash pasture. Okay. Um, and just kind of dragging an area. Okay, just like that. Wonderful. Um, <laughs> okay, accept. Wonderful, this is a pen pasture. I'm going to select animals to be placed in here. Okay, there we go. I'm going to place all of these animals in there. And now I would assume, like normal, people will take those animals and bring them over to the pasture. And just two shakes. Of an elephant's tail. There they go. Okay, wonderful. Yep, you can see the dwarves just dragging these these nice, well-behaved animals over to the pasture. There they go. And they should just eat the grass that is right beneath their feet. And I'm hoping these elephants don't devour all the grass in short order, but I, I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. We need to make a nice elephant pen. I'm a little afraid that these elephants are going to die and we're not going to get any other ones. You know? Um. We shall see. We shall see. Got some mushrooms growing up here now. Full on mushrooms growing. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Um, let's see. Furniture. I'm gonna build. You know what? I was gonna get. I was getting that stockpile or the, uh, the bookkeeper's office ready so we can see our food stocks. But apparently that wasn't the problem. Anywho, over here uh, we're gonna start 
building. I, I gotta build some stairs. I gotta, I gotta seal up this area down here. It's getting a little screwy for me. <laughs> One second. Constructions. Uh, stairs. Uh, select material. After I'm gonna use the closest material, I guess. And... Hmm... So if I just put a stair here, will it be an up-down stair? Will it just be an up stair? I... I don't really know how this will work. Yeah, I'm having a little bit of a hard time figuring out the whole stair thing. But it should be fine. Let's see how that works right there. Yes, that, that looks to have worked fine, just like you would assume it would. It's an up-down stair that's going to connect up these up-down stairs, down to the bottom right of this uh, little screwy area over here. That, that should work. That should work. Game is paused right now, as, as always. I keep pausing the game accidentally and not realizing it's uh, paused. Let's have a look over here. We have the Axe Dwarf Geshud is fighting again. Um, what are you fighting with, my friend? Down here towards the bottom, usually it's the most recent stuff. Death. This is truly horrifying. What are you fighting with? Hacks of Trogodite. Oh, more Trogodite troubles. This poor guy. That's fair. Take it easy out there, my friend. You know, I don't want you to be too traumatized too quickly. Goodness gracious. Anywho. Um, yes, the, these stairways are getting done. Look at all this, <laughs> this vomit on the ground. We have this trail of greenish vomit just heading down to the south. Probably a Trogodite, or maybe it was Geshud. Just overcome with the terror of what he's wrought upon those poor troglodytes. That poor fellow. He's really been through a lot lately. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Anywho. Um, yes, I'm going to start building. I'm going to build some more more stairways. The stairway thing, like, it seems screwy, but it's really not that bad, I guess. Like, I'm figuring it out pretty quickly. It's 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 not bad. It's not bad. Um, we're just going to continue using the closest material, I suppose. Okay, I, I could have made that a little bigger, but I'm going to have to do that again. One second. Build. Constructions. Stairs. Just like that. Okay, and so they should have this thing built up shortly. You can see down below here, we're still mining out this um, this chamber. And it's looking pretty good. It's going to be a, a fantastic little home for our dwarves. They have these dwarves out here grabbing boulders now and bringing those upstairs to the stairway. That's what they were doing. We have our one miner down here clearing out this chamber a little bit more. Not too bad. Not too bad. Um, we do need more stone, though. We're getting very little stone from all this mining, which is slightly bothersome. It's not, not terrible. We have some coal in the wall up here. I really like how there isn't a violent change in texture or color from, like, one material to the next when you're looking at the walls. Like, over here on the right, it's kind of like that's the... Got a chalk wall over there, but it's not like blinding white. Up here in the top, we have that coal, but it's only slightly darker than the surrounding stone. That's kind of nice. Um, that being said, we're going to start smoothing up this chamber, I think. Let's get it nice and smooth. We'll get it dolphin smooth so that the dwarves can come down here and just kind of appreciate their home. We're going to smooth up all the floors, all the walls, and we should probably start to get some furniture put in there as well. Um, what kind of furniture? I do not know. Why, why does it look like this now? This is what is designated to be smooth currently. But it's kind of ugly. <laughs> I don't know if I could just get rid of that or, or what. Um, it's fine. We got we got all our dwarves smoothing walls right now. It's it to get done shortly. Not a biggie. Anywho. Um, having a look up here at the Stoneworkers Workshop. We're going to make some new stuff, I guess. Uh, make, make some nice doors, huh? Make a couple of doors. Make rock doors. We're going to do that twice. We're going to make doors for our wonderful fortress. And actually, um, th this tile set, I kind of like it, you know? Um, it, it's neat. One second. Let me um, just set these things to go in before I start rambling all too much. This one over here, I guess we only have a couple units of claystone left. Uh, don't, don't do that. Add new one. Do, 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 door, make a rock door out of claystone. There we go. Do that now, please. Okay, so we're making two claystone doors. What I was going to say is I like this tile set so much. Like, just the idea of putting a couple of big stone doors out front here. Alert. What is that? Found dead. Okay. Left click for recenter and expand options. Looks like Gashud, the axe dwarf, has been found dead. Okay. Down here. Looks like 
Yeah, I'm standing next to a, a, a troglodyte here, probably killed by a troglodyte, I would imagine. I mean, what did I say? It's bound to happen, really. Let's have a, have a look at this combat and see how the whole thing panned out. Um, maybe? Can I see... This magnifying glass? There we go. Go down to the bottom here. Okay, yes, it was a pretty brutal end for Geshud there, unfortunately. It looks like that troglodyte was wailing on the guy for quite a bit. I was ignoring the combat just because I thought he was uh, going to do pretty good, but... Um, yeah, not, not very good. Wow, he took a considerable amount of damage. Like, he was fighting Troglodytes for a while, and then um, at some point, he get, uh, Troglodyte got a good punch in on him. Uh, on his foot. Threw him off a little bit. Troglodyte grabbed the Axe Dwarf by his finger. <laughs> um, uh, it kept striking. This is a tough Troglodyte, apparently. Really beat the hell out of the guy. At some point, started ripping him around, biting the guy. Uh, tried to remove the guy's helmet, I saw at one point. I think they got the guy's helmet off when he went unconscious. And then just started probably wailing on his head. Yeah, just, just punching him repeatedly in the head. Again and again and again. Twisting his neck, pulling his neck around. And um, eventually killed the guy. That's a shame. Well, not much you could do. I, I would like to maybe regain this crown down here. This dragon nail crown, which... Is laying in a pool of dwarf blood currently, but you can see Geshut over here laying on the laying on the floor. And if you go over him, you can see all the items that are with him, including that Rurasi Rurasi Lemili, that axe that he had. Which I don't know if that's an artifact. I still am unsure what that is exactly. Um, teeth, his teeth he got teeth and blood on the ground. Very cool, <laughs> very cool. I am digging it. Um, yeah, I, I like. I like this so far. I'm having a good time playing this Steam release. And I think it's it's going to work out across the board. Just from the look of it, you know? Like, one of my fears, I was rambling about it before, about like the hurdles of Dwarf Fortress and stuff, like in the old days anyways. Like, when, you're, when you first encounter Dwarf Fortress, the graphics are what throws a lot of people off. But if you get used to it, then it's the UI, which is a problem. But then you get used to the UI. And the game itself and how everything works can seem a bit clunky at points. But... You know, I don't see, I don't foresee that being a problem. I don't think a lot of new players are going to notice even some of the strange clunkiness. I think it's just going to be, I don't think it's any clunkier than, say, RimWorld, say. You know, I'm sure there's people in the audience who are going to be like, oh, RimWorld's fine, but it's it's not. It's still pretty clunky in some ways. But I say this brings it all in line with that so far, from what I've seen anyways. I haven't touched the military, though, which <laughs> I can imagine that being a little messy still. But I, I don't know, you know. Um... We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> kind of, um, Mark, Marktosis? No, my first fortress died, lol. <laughs> Merchants refused to visit me. I hope your game is better. How'd you lose a fortress already? From not getting merchants? Like, the, the game's only been out for a couple hours. Two hours? It's been two hours already? That's pretty wild to think about. Time's been flying for me. I really like on the top there how you see the moon. Next to the 21st of Felsite, late spring, near 100. Time is going by pretty slowly, too, which I really like. It's It's been two hours, but I'm not even through the first season, right? I like that. Set scale interface to no, and it shows everything you need. Okay, okay, let's see. Um, Troubled Trooper, if that works. Uh, scale interface to no. Where would I see this? Audio? Game? Video, I probably probably this right scale interface. Am I blind? Okay, here it is. Okay, well, that that did do it. That did do it. Um, okay, it made everything a, a bit smaller up top there, as we can see. But I guess that's that's not terrible if nobody minds that. I, I could see it well enough at least. Yeah, that's, that's not terrible. That's doable. Thank you very much, Trouble Trooper. Um, oh, those little buttons at the bottom, though, those are horrifically tiny. Um, yeah, I'll dick around with it one more time. Scale interface, I'll say no. Maybe I can... Yeah, uh, I'm just going to say scale it. Scale it is fine, and I'll fiddle with it in between or something like that. I'm not going to mess with it too much now. I prefer to be able to see these buttons up close. There's a lot of details and stuff that I, I've got to be able to see right now you know and um at least at this point i know that i can mess around with the interface and see what i've got to see at points you know if i've really got to get in there 
Anywho, um, looks like our little area down here is all smoothed up now, so that's excellent. Great job, dwarves. Wonderful work. Um, I'm also going to, while I'm down here, I'm trying to use keys like in typical dwarf fortress now. I'm going to build another mason's workshop because we got to get some work done down here. We're going to need a lot of stone sort of stuff. Mason's workshop, stone crafter, stone worker workshop is what we want down here. We're going to build that. And I'm also going to get to mining another another channel, another chamber out. We're going to go over here. We need a nice meeting hall somewhere, you know. So we're going to do that. We'll just kind of make a, a blocky little passage. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then make a meeting hall down here. How about like a nice little area? Not too big, not too small. I think that's going to get the job done right there. Fit the bill. Wonderful. Also, like, more important than that, we need some more stone. We need an awful lot of stone because we got to make a lot of furniture, a lot of more doors and, you know, tables and chairs if we're making a meeting hall, that sort of stuff, you know. Um, is there a way to switch to ASCII mode that anyone knows of? I, I know I haven't looked into it. I don't know. I'm not too sure. I'm not sure if there's uh, any sort of quick way to do anything like that. But from what I understand, the workshop... Steam Workshop is going to be like fully integrated like right now, so I wouldn't doubt that something pops up shortly, but I don't know. I have no idea. Let's see here. Remove this building. I just set this building to be removed. Okay. Okay. Uh, gonna set up a couple of doors. We got our two doors that we made. You know what? Should we put a floor down first? Yeah, that's fine. I'm not gonna worry about it. Put down a couple doors right up here, right front row center. Just like that. Um, interested to see what they look like when they're built. Are they really just going to be featureless stone squares like that? They might be. I guess it wouldn't. I don't know. It's got a little handle. It's got some hinges on there. That's not bad. I, that's really cool how it kind of like opens up for a second there when a dwarf passed through it. That's really cool. Do they have different handles, these doors? You might not be able to see that. It's a very small difference, but it looks like they've got different handles. I don't know why that would be. That seems weird. One of them looks like it's got like a, a handle slightly smaller than the other one. Otherwise, they look to be pretty much identical. I don't know why that would be. Very weird. Very weird. Um, anywho, I'm going to head back down underground here. And I think there's still water coming in from up top, isn't there? Maybe not. Wasn't this a uh, aquifer level? It should be. I, I would have thought more water would be coming in at this point, but maybe not. It doesn't really look like there's anything. So I'm not too sure. Maybe I'm just still getting used to things. Maybe light aquifers work differently now? I don't know. I have no idea. Up in the top left, left click to for recenter and expand options. Okay, blah, blah. It is now summer. That's what this notification is. Neat. Neato. Summertime. The sun's out, sun is shining. Hot as hell up there in the rocky wastes. Oh my god. Okay, get a nice stretch in every once in a while. Ooh, it's a lot of mining, you know. Gotta stretch it out from time to time. <laughs> Fix ye slopes, my brother in arms. What slopes are you talking about? What up top? Are you talking about all the uh, the ramps and stuff? I'm not too sure what you're talking about. All the, this like gross ramps. That are like <laughs> blocking in our doors up here. I suppose you're right on that. Normally that does bother me a whole bunch. But I'm just kind of learning at this point. But yeah, I think I know enough now to get rid of a ramp. Dig a ramp. Uh, designate constructed walls to be removed. Okay. This also designates all stairwells and ramps. Okay. Did that work? No. Nope. Um, I don't think. Dig a channel. Dig a ramp. Can I... Hmm. How do I get rid of ramps? Hmm. Hmm. Let's see here. Yeah, I would think that. Oh, that did do it. Maybe I just didn't have it highlighted before. Never mind. Okay, that, that should do it pretty well right there. Soon enough. Soon enough, my dwarves. Anywho. Hi, Mr. Dwarf Man. How's it going, Ray Lee? Hope you're having a good one today. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> what are you guys what are you guys asking exactly? Like <laughs> I see some some Discord here. 
the game is out for two hours for FFS. Let's just let them play the game. If you have questions, just buy the game or use Google. I'm not, I'm not what questions? I'm not too sure what questions. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's all good. Whatever. I don't, I don't mind if people ask questions or like, or what. I'm not too sure what you're going on about. People can ask questions. I'll try to answer the best I can, but I am floundering through the game myself. Today, it's just me floundering through the game. That's that's all that today is. If you're here to see some Master Dwarf Fortressery, you're completely out of luck. <laughs> Not going to see much of that. Oh, uh, I've accidentally selected something. Okay, I got an eraser here. Can I get rid of these tunnels? How about, how about that? There we go. I made a stairway farther down, but we don't need to do that anymore, do we? No, we certainly do not. Okay, heading up, 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 up. There we go. Down to our fortress layer. That's looking nice down there, ain't it? I like it. Okay, let's get this all smoothed up. I feel like I'm getting less stone than I typically would in Dwarf Fortress. I don't know if that's right or not, but it's what it feels like. Unsure. It's kind of neat if it is the case. Like, usually you're so overwhelmed by stone, like you don't know where to put it all. But if they really did make it so that there's less stone, um, that's kind of an interesting challenge. I do like that. I, yes, I decidedly do like that quite a lot. Um, you know what I'm going to do? Uh, actually, I'm going to make, uh, I'm going to add a new task, right? I'm going to make some doors, make rock doors. And I'm going to do that now and set it to repeat. And I'm going to make them out of, well, just make them out of bauxite, I guess. There's some nice bauxite, that reddish brownstone down towards the eastern end of this tunnel. And, yeah, we'll make some bauxite doors because we're going to need a few just all scattered through here. What we need, though, is a manager. I want a manager so that we can just kind of, like, set tasks to auto-complete. You know, we don't have to keep eyes on things all the time. Hey, what do you, what happens when these dwarves go naked, do you think? Like, the naked people are pretty commonly seen in Dwarf Fortress, but I'm curious what happens when these dwarves are unclothed. Not there's a way, not that there's a way I can like force them to take their clothes off, but like it it happens. I'd have to imagine they have some like skivvies on or something, right? Like some sort of little underwear or something. I would think. <laughs> I guess we'll find out in time, huh? Soon enough. Soon enough. Um, let's see here. While they're clearing out this tunnel right here, up in the top right, I'm seeing like these different icons. There's one, recenter on the surface at this location. Okay. Then over here, recenter at the deepest discovered area at this location. Hmm. That's really cool. I like that. Very interesting. Um, huh. Display water and magma depth, depth numerically, one to seven. Okay, so I, I had this toggled on before. Very cool. Hmm. Yeah, there's some little icons here. Uh, this is very cool. They did a really good job at making everything a lot more concise for new players. And I, I gotta say, I'm pretty proud of how this came out. Like, not that I had anything to do with it, but like, I, I'm like, um, I'm like, I'm like proud of them, I guess. <laughs> Honestly, like it, it's it, it's seeming really good so far. Frankly, I um I don't know. Like I, I'm an incredible pessimist sometimes, and like even now I'm like, ooh, but what if I haven't seen the bad parts yet? But like I'm thinking it looks pretty darn good, guys. I'm thinking it looks really good. I have to imagine this thing's gonna do pretty well on Steam. Frankly, you know, I'm excited. Oh, we got a, a human hammer man just popped up on the map. Okay. Let's have a look. Um, others. We have Edu Wishoemtha, human hammer man. Okay. Let's, uh, I'm going to zoom to them. They're, they're over here with their hammer. 37 years old. They have two lovers and a child. Interesting. It's a, a healthy person. Uh, got some items here. No artifacts or anything like that. Last dwarf. They, I, I believe this is a monster slayer as well. They've come here to explore our caverns and probably be killed by uh, overly complex troglodytes. But, um, you know, if that's what you want to do, that's probably fine. I did notice that we do have a cave crocodile in the, the not the fortress, but the caves down below. And those could be a, a really big problem. So I'm just kind of hoping they go down there and deal with the thing for us. That, that might be pretty darn handy. <laughs> yeah, um... 
Anywho, uh, yes, I got all these mushrooms. I got mushrooms just all clustered around up here. Uh, what did I just do? I, I'm like over here, like automatically going and pressing some keys that I'm used to pressing. Like I was gonna try to gather these plants real quick, but that's probably not a good thing to do. Um, right, okay, it's a G now, not not P. I'm gonna gather these plants that are growing up here. Okay, get to that. I, I know we have a plant gatherer, so that shouldn't be a big deal. I'm making doors, right? We're we're making some doors down here. Still. Um, I don't know how we can quickly see how many doors doors we have. Let's see here. Place doors. Door. Um, to click a tile to place a door. Okay. Um, I'm going to keep building after placement. Just like that. Use closest material. So that's going to use the closest doors to the location, I suppose. Am I going to have enough doors for this? Oh, okay, I don't. I've got six doors made, apparently. Interesting. Yeah, it's going to take a long time for me to get used to all this, but I'm going to get there. They have it set up so concisely that I couldn't imagine having a, a big problem for a long time. That's they did, they did a really good job. Really, really good job from what I've seen so far. Not bad at all. Good job, Kit Fox, Tarn, and Zack. You guys did a really good job. Anywho, yes, I'm enjoying myself. I like the music, how it like fades in, fades out. There's ambience sometimes. The ambience goes away. Um, you know, there, there was a lot of concern back before that like me playing the Steam release would ruin my creativity because like I would see a dwarf like one of these dwarves right here and be like, oh, that's exactly what the dwarf looks like. But even these characters, they're not so detailed where it's like... You have to draw them like this, you know. You could take these little icons and interpret them any old way. And, like, it's really cool, too. Because, like, like say this guy over here with his uh, his blue tunic and green gloves or something like that. It would be really cool to, like, draw him and put him in his green gloves for whatever the hell reason. And his blue tunic. And, like, not draw him like this icon, but, you know, similar to it. So that... When he's displayed on screen during one of my videos, you could be like, oh, that's clearly that guy that I keep seeing. You know, he's got the same color stuff on. I think that'd be really cool. I wonder, too, like, if those colors will carry over to other pieces of clothing he wears. Like, for right now, I can't see a reason why he'd be wearing green gloves and a blue tunic like this. Because, if you know, if we have a look at him, he's wearing just leather gloves and an alpaca wool tunic, which, from what I understand, looks to be pretty much gray. What the hell is this icon? Um... A Drunian has stolen a steel helm. You rat bastard. Let me see here. Hmm. Okay, that's cool. One second. Let me see here. What do we got on the map right now? We got a bunch of Drunians. The Drunians are cool. I never see those things. Here's one down here. Very cool, very cool. Um, It's a Drunian, nine-year-old Drunian male. Uh, where is the description of this creature? Let's see here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do do do. Of course, he's he's got all he's all sorts of complex. <laughs> of course, items, health, skills, rooms, labor. Oh, it's in health. That is where the description is now. That's gonna take me forever to realize to to remember. Health description. Okay, a large quadruped with a mane circling its man-like face and hands at the end of its forelimbs. It lives underground and is fond of raiding the supplies of cavern outposts. His hair is gray, his skin is brown, his eyes are purple. What a cool creature. It's a shame we don't see these more. I'd really like to draw one of these things at some point. Which I think I have in the past, but I don't know. It's just really cool. Wonderful. Yeah, these things are down here. We have a whole pack of them, seemingly. Um, if we have a look up here, you can see this dwarf who had died. Now rendered into bones. It really hasn't been that long, but it doesn't take too long in the caves, I would assume. Got all kinds of vermin down there, nibbling away. Uh, got some teeth. Boy, that thing really took off. As uh, Drunian just loped off northward there. You know, something like this is just a really cool scene down here. We got this big blood splatter, right? And then down here, off the side of this ledge, we have just a tumbled heap of dwarven bones next to a dragon nail crown that's kind of damaged. There's some tooth, some teeth, and some more blood down here. That's just really cool. I don't know. I just I kind of like the the idea of that. Um, you know, if it didn't have graphics, you, it would be up totally to your mind. But, like, just having the graphics here, I'm not in my mind picturing this angular slope and this exact 
icon of bones laying on the ground with this exact image of a crown sitting next to a pile of bones in my in my head, you know? I'm picturing what I want to picture. It's just how it works. Like, th this doesn't destroy my creativity personally at all. Um, if anything, it probably enhances it, frankly. I kind of like that, you know? I don't know. I like it. I like it. Uh, I'm kind of curious about this icon up in the top left about that Drunian stealing a steel helm. Because um, it, it's not a Drunian. It looks like a little head with big ears. I would imagine that's intended to be a kobold, maybe? I don't know what kobolds look like in this graphical release, and I'm hoping to see some eventually. That'd be pretty neat. I'm always a fan of kobolds, clearly, <laughs> in the... Uh... In Dwarf Fortress, they're really just fun. Sorry if you've, if you've answered this already, but have you decided if you're going to use this version for some of your videos? I, I don't know. I'm, I mean, probably. I'm going to use it for a while at least. Uh, we'll see what happens after they've got like... Oh man, that's really cool. Somebody must have hit this Drunian in the stomach and now it's just vomiting all over the place. Can you get out of here though? Like, we don't want you in the fortress. Go. <laughs> I've got three of them now. One of them's vomiting. One of them's panicking. One's just like sauntering through the fortress. Four of them. Okay, they've come down here. And it looks like they just keep getting scared into our future meeting hall, just vomiting all over the place. Um, <laughs> and they can't leave because dwarves keep coming down here and they get, like, panicked. Like, they're like, oh, okay, we'll head back out. Okay, we'll get back out. Okay, I guess I guess they did just leave. That's fine. Oh, no. There they go. Running back in. <laughs> get out of here, you goons. Don't need you. Okay. Anyways, we got, we got some people fighting here. I hope they don't injure our dwarves, but... I can't be so sure. Uh, not too bad. Looking at this uh, this conflict report over here. It doesn't look too, too bad. Got a farmer here fighting. Uh, I'm sure it's fine. Not too worried about it. Just got, a, got some extra vomit to clean up now, dwarves. <laughs> so get to it. Oh, dwarf. Or a Drunian vomit. Grody. Okay. Slap a couple doors down. Bada bing, bada boom. Done deal. Wonderful. Uh over to our stoneworker shop stoneworker shop hey i called it stoneworker shop automatically i'm already learning 12 yeah, 11 12 years of calling it mason's workshop already starting to slip away wonderful oh, what is up with these doorknobs on the doors because <laughs> can someone answer me that um uh, these two in the middle right here have like these squarish doorknobs these ones over here one's got a square one one's got kind of a circular little one and one over here on the left has like a like a long handle that is strange, I feel. Um, that's really going to screw with some people's desire for asymmetry, I would think. <laughs> I guess I'm pretty fine with it. it just, that seems like a weird choice to me, but it's whatever. That's fine. Keep things interesting, I suppose. It's whatever. It's fine. Where did those rubies go? We had a bunch of rubies on the ground, didn't we? I thought we did. Maybe not. Maybe I'm just a little crazy. Could well be. Wouldn't put it behind me. Um, let's see. So, if this is going to be our meeting hall, we do need offices, as I was saying before. So, where to put some offices? Maybe just some small, tiny little places. Um, uh, maybe just right over here. Yeah, that could be a good place. A couple little offices, how about? Um, nice little, little hallway. Lead down to an office. Make one over here as well. And they just won't, they won't be big places. Just kind of like that. There we go. Um... That'll be fine. A couple offices, one for a bookkeeper, and like we don't really need them right now. We need a manager, just cause um you know I like to set some tasks to auto complete, you know. That might uh might be nice if we could do that. Got a dwarf over here slopping up all the Drunian vomit. That's good. A good dwarf. Thank you very much. It's not a not a pleasant task, but someone's got to do it, and I, I thank you for doing so. Yeah, we need a lot more stone, apparently. Um, it is interesting that you got to maybe... Uh, am I crazy in thinking that there is less stone than normal? I think that might be the case. It's... I like that. I do like that quite a lot. It forces you to dig more. Normally, like... Um, it feels kind of like you're always scraping for stone. Or... Not, that's not truth. I feel like you're always just overwhelmed with stone when you're playing Dwarf Fortress, you know? Like, um, like pretty much always if you're digging a big old place. Some migrants have arrived. Okay. It doesn't pause the game automatically, seemingly. They just kind of wander onto the map, maybe. Interesting. Okay. That's fine. I, I, don't, I don't care. I didn't see them pop in at all. Let's see here. Hmm. <laughs> We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten dwarves. 
No. Hmm. Got a way to categorize these, which is pretty cool. I like that. I like that. What is this? Oh, this icon over here. Oh, this creature is a monster slayer. Okay. Cool. I like that you can see all their moods at a glance, too. You can sort through them, too. We have four individuals who are kind of meh about the fortress. Couldn't blame them. Including these two weaponsmiths, who I imagine just arrived here. Could you get over yourself? Why'd you come here? Got three of these guys. Yeah, this bow here as well. That's a new one. I thought Stukos here was Sarbesh. They kind of look similar, just with their clothing and features. Interesting. Interesting. Um, but yeah. Oh. Ooh, is that a giant ulm? I think we have a giant ulm here. <laughs> Heading out the fortress. Oh yeah, it stuck its head out. I was like, oh, it's too bright out there. I could just sense the warmth with my beady skin. Um, Arab the miner looks to be taking on this giant ulm. Careful, Arab. Careful. Oh, looks like it wounded the thing. What was that little that little bubble? That little like, uh, yeah, you see that kind of like, eh. <laughs> That's really cool. Okay. Giant Ohm. Let's see here. Sickly. It's a sickly thing. Seriously injured. 33 years old. Terrified while in conflict. I just, I really get a kick out of this. <laughs> this sort of stuff. Um, which finds a chaotic mess preferable to the boredom of har harmonious living. Does not go out of her way to help others. She, she's an, a giant salamander. <laughs> I wouldn't think she'd be helping many people. Uh, isn't given to flights of fancy. She is quick to anger. Okay. Generally acts with a narrow focus on the current activity. I mean, she's a friendly individual. So maybe our, our miner, just for no reason, decided to take some some rage out on this, this poor amphibian. Over here. That's fine. It, it seems to be kind of harmless right now. Just uh, getting injured and stuff. Ah, a Drunian has stolen some rough rubies. Oh, okay. You rat bastard. That's really cool. Yeah, Drunian just kind of... They, they must have wandered into our meeting hall there. And stole a handful of rubies while vomiting and gagging all over the place. That's fantastic. I love it. Tetrahedrite. Migrants. A um, little bit of combat there. Wonderful. I, I do like how slow everything is going compared to normal. It's 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 interesting to me. You know, I get to, I get to take it easy. Get to appreciate everything a little bit more. Which I really like. Um, okay, we carved out these offices over here. What we need down here is, well, we need bedrooms. We don't have a bedroom yet. It's like, it's now summer, so we've been sleeping out under the stars now for several months. Um, so we should probably get a dormitory, okay? We're going to do that. Um, but where? I don't know. Maybe we'll make a, a dormitory just kind of like over here. We'll, um, yeah, we'll, we'll set up a dorm. Nothing, nothing too fancy. Did I go up and down? There we go. Right like this, okay? A uh, simple little dormitory, and um, maybe not maybe not so simple, you know? It's going to be kind of a pain for us to make a bunch of bedrooms for everyone, so maybe we'll just make, like, little places on the walls where some dwarves can sleep for the time being. You know, it's not not an official bedroom, but, you know, it's, it's not bad either. You know, you could, you could, there could be worse. There could conceivably be a worse sleeping situation, I would think. Maybe. Uh, there we go. Yeah, got, got a bunch of bedrooms. Those little nooks in the wall. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We need 12 beds. I think I made 8 already or maybe 10. I can't remember. Anywho, I'm going to head back up to the surface. F1. There we go. Much easier. Uh, click this. Add a new task. Make a, make a couple of beds. 1, 2, 3. I'll just make a whole slew of them. We're going to need a bunch at some point, so we'll just make 10 and get our carpenter to do some work up here. I'm not sure how many trees we've cut down or how much lumber we have access to, but I know we cut down a few uh, trees and didn't really use the wood for much. I've oh, got a whole bunch of wood over here. There's a whole bunch of wood, a whole parcel of wood. Yeah. Good job, Tusk Terror. The beak of sneaks. Is that what it is? <laughs> the sneaky beaks? I forget what it was called. The beak of sneaking, something like that. I love it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh. My God, yeah, I'm just glancing down in the chat here for a moment. Thank you very much for your support, guys. Um, kind words and everything go a long way, but um, monetary contributions as well. Jordak, happy, happy holidays. I'm excited to get excited about you getting excited about Door Fortress. <laughs> go good. I'm excited that you're excited that I'm excited. It's great. <laughs> it's going pretty darn well so far, huh? I, I'm getting a real kick out of this. Uh, Omega Minus, thank you very much. 
just a small thanks for all the years of DF content. Oh, I hope there's many more to come, too. It's going to be a little bit slower because I'm not a crazy person anymore. Well, not that crazy of a person. A little less crazy than I was. But, um, yeah, I'm hoping to do a lot more, too. Hell, yes. Um, let's see. The miner is fighting. Somebody's going to get injured by some sort of a, a cave monster at some point. The giant old bites a miner in the left lower leg, bruising the fat. Was this the combat that we saw before? I just didn't dismiss it. I don't know. I'm not too sure. Giant Ulm is still on the map. Uh, up here on the surface now. Finally has access to the terrifying above world. And it's just kind of like stretching its legs a little bit. Seeing what's up here. They don't have eyes, right? Ulms? I don't think so. I think it's just kind of like flesh. Uh, I'm not sure it would draw it up here. It's got to be a lot less damp. Or a lot more dry up here, right? It's got to be quite unpleasant for this big beastie but you know to each of their own as, as long as it just kind of wanders off and does its own thing I don't, I don't really care i suppose oh that's cool withered dimple cup so these mushrooms that were growing up here have died and now they're just kind of like piles of shriveled mushrooms on the ground that is fascinating i like that i like the little icon they've made for that i like how they have like several iterations of many of the icons that we've seen so far um you know, back when this whole thing was announced, I had thought it would be really cool to, like, make my own tile set and just, like, overlay it on everything. But, man, oh, man, there are, it appears like there's so many things to alter. And I have to imagine it would be possible to make your own tile set, say. But, goodness gracious, just thinking about what that would entail exactly sounds a little monstrous. Um, that being said, you know, as long as it's possible, you got some time on your hands, you could probably do something like that. I guess I don't really know so far. Um, yeah. Oh, would make a good soup. What was that? The, uh, the Ulm? Is that what you're talking about there? Wep. Ulm soup would be nice. Yeah, I would think so. A nice Ulm soup. I could dig it. There is, like, frighteningly little stone that actually came out of this area over here it's interesting oh it's a, is that a, is a cabby pup oh that's really cute where are you this little cabby pup one year old onal kindled shot pet of stukos i draft feb cute high stamina tough clumsy you can, uh, you can just barely see the thing walking around over there tiny little like a blip of an icon a great ability to focus given to flights of fancy to the point of distraction Sometimes cruel. <laughs> a cruel cavy pup. Heartless little beast. You know those cavies. It's, it's like a like a guinea pig, right? Like a like a gerbil sized guinea pig, just a tiny little cavy pup. Cruel. Got that black heart, just a rotten soul. <laughs> Ridiculous. Gotta love it. Um anywho. Yes, uh, I'm going to seal up these caves a little bit. Maybe make this whole area a little bit safer for now, huh? I think that'll be good. Oh, we still got these monster hunters popping up from time to time. That's good. They don't, haven't really caused us uh, much trouble, but they haven't really done us an awful lot of good either. You know, we had that one that died out in the caves earlier. We have the human, who I'm not too sure what the hell they're doing exactly. They don't seem like a very ambitious uh, monster slayer, unlike our elephant up top, which, of course, is highly ambitious highly ambitious as we saw um let's, let's have a look here how is that human doing edu is the name where are you edu uh just kind of hanging out over here by the wagon why don't you go hunt some monsters i'm sure there's some stuff down in the caves why don't you, why don't you get your ass out there <laughs> see what's up huh <laughs> you rat bastard goodness gracious um Okay, I'm seeing thirsty dwarves from time to time, and I am wondering if that has something to do with us having no drinks. Probably. Probably. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to change this. Yep, drink. We're down to nine drinks currently. Uh, we have about 20 food, 40 seeds, 3 meat, 10 fish, 10 plants. It's really not that bad from the looks of it. Um, but, but it's time to start putting some things into it, I believe. It's, start, it's time to start putting some things into a whole bunch of stuff, I think. Um, bedrooms, for one. <laughs> we do have water up on the surface, so we're going to be fine, really. I'm not too, too worried about that whole thing. Um, yeah, that'll be fine. 
Let's have a look over here. Um, I'm gonna put some beds in this dormitory now, just using the closest beds. I guess it doesn't really matter all that much, right? Uh, place structures, furniture, bed, keep building after placement using the closest material. Boop, boop, boop. See, that is great right there. I love that an awful lot, wonderful. Look how easy it was to just place all of those pieces of furniture right in this little dormitory. I love that. That was really great. Um, Let's keep keep going. We gotta gotta put some doors down too, right? Um, doors, doors and hatches. That's in its own category. Over here, doors. Just it can do the same thing. And boop, boop, just like that. Get some doors placed down. Hell yes, hell yes. Um, see, this is moderately bothersome to me. The fact that they all have different colors of the, of the beds. Like it's okay. I do like some asymmetry, but like I would also like some agency over that if I could. I'm wondering if, like, textiles in this game just to have, like, um, you know, just, just random colors when it comes to, like, any sort of textile sort of a thing. Because, like, it used to be in Dwarf Fortress that you'd have to specifically dye cloth in order to get a, a color, you know? Like, you couldn't have beds that were all these different colors. It would just depend on the wood, which is kind of ridiculous to think that <laughs> a dwarf is just sleeping on a, a bed carved of a single log, which is what they're doing now. But um, they do have these like these textiles that appear on them. Um, I don't really know where I was going with that. Just, just thoughts. <laughs> that should have stayed inside while I talked about more interesting things. Anyways, i got to make a dormitory here. Uh, let's see how to do this. Um, got a bed. Uh, remove this building, name this building. I, I don't want to do either of those. Permanent part. Um, okay. Okay, so this item here, this pecan wood bed, this is showing me what item is part of this building. So this building has a pecan wood bed as part of its building, I guess. It's, it's, that would be a little confusing to new players, I would think, but it's whatever. They'll get used to it. Um, how do I say, I guess I haven't made any actual buildings or any or, uh, rooms yet. Normally you, like I would click a bed and you would go out from a bed and be like, this is a dormitory, but maybe it's just not done that way now. That's cool. Let's see how that's done. Um, zones to establish meetings, areas, pastures, and more. Establish burrows. Maybe it's done in zones now. Hmm. Dungeon fishing animal training dormitory oh my god did they actually go and make this all more concise i am very excited about that that was one of the things i was most worried about for the steam release completely honest i um was very worried about like zones versus rooms versus uh you know lo locations and stuff but are they all just zones now oh man that's such a good call i you know not to say I doubted them, but I, I didn't think that would be changed. That is such a good call to do that, though. Excellent. Okay, so we've got a dormitory here. Uh, accept. Okay, unnamed dormitory. I can actually name the dormitory now. That's pretty neat. Uh, we'll call this the Tus Tusky Sleep Room. <laughs> there we go. Um... Awesome. Wow, that's really cool. I like that. I like that. I like that. Very cool. Um, hmm. I, I want to see, like, there's a couple other options there. Okay, so I can just, if, as long as this tab is open, I can click a zone and see what its deal is. Uh, we can repaint it. You can suspend activities in this zone. Does not remove the zone. Remove it permanently. Add a new or existing location to this zone. Okay. Very interesting. Okay, so they've got... I was wondering how they do this. They've got inns and taverns, libraries, temples, guild halls, and now hospitals are locations as well. Very interesting. So I can make this dormitory be a tavern if I wanted to, or a library if I wanted to. So it could be both a dormitory and a library, or a guild hall. That's very interesting. Um, hmm... Very, very cool. Very, very cool. Uh, yeah. I love this. I love that. That's wonderful. Very cool. Petitions. I got a petition up here. Uh, another monster hunter. Yeah, get the hell in here. Go go kill some monsters, actually. Try, try not to die too quickly, huh? <laughs> I guess we'll see. I don't have my hopes too high. Um, yeah, I am...
quite excited about the whole zones and locations and um, building thing. Another very good call on their part. They did a great job on that. Wonderful. Um, yes, I, I'll say it. I, I should probably say it every hour or so. But yes, videos in the future. I, I, I'm going to use the Steam release, at least initially. I mean, I, I might toy around with tile sets in the future, like beyond that. But for now, I'm going to be making videos using the Steam release, I suppose. Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of my stance all along. Let me see here. I gotta make some more doors, make some rock doors, and repeatedly make doors out of bauxite. Do that now, please. And thank you very much. Bunch of good dwarves, bunch of good dwarves. So we got a dormitory now. Got a couple of offices over here. Um, and, well, I suppose I said to make doors. We need a, only a couple of doors. We need one door, I guess. We're gonna make one door, and then after that, we're gonna make um, uh, a table. A rock table and um, oh, see I, I forget too that the game isn't paused right now so like they would go and just make this table if I didn't pause the game but I want to make it out of bauxite specifically and I also want to make a chair I have to remember that the the game isn't paused now when I'm when I'm doing stuff in certain menus you know phone okay can we can we spell please there we go rock throne okay uh, out of bauxite please thank you yes get to it uh, maybe a cabinet, too. I, I know I already made some uh, wooden stuff, but rock is preferable. Always. Always. Dwarves, you know. Okay, get to it. going to make a lot of stuff for one office um, so we can have a manager sort out our tasks a little bit better. You know? Wonderful. At Kenneth. Used to be free. What? This game is just released. <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Um, do, 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 do. I'm just looking through the chat real quick to see what's going on. Yeah, these these guys are gonna be making a killing on this game. Like we've we've known that from the start. Like, <laughs> like a hundred percent. There's there's no possible way they're not gonna be like freaking millionaires after this thing is all said and done. This is gonna be a big game. You know. And it's only a question of, is it going to be big or is it going to be huge? I don't think it's going to be huge, but big is a good guess, I would say. Yeah, making some more furniture down there. Um, What else do we need? Okay, we don't we don't have a, a, a meeting hall yet, which I guess we could do from this zone thing, right? Um, don't show this again. That's, that's fine. Here we go. I'm going to set a uh, dining hall. Sure. I'm going to set a dining hall, like, right over here, I suppose. Just right over this entire area. Just like that. Okay. And, um, accept. Just like that. So, this should be a dining hall now. And I, I guess we could assign... What is this? Assign dwarf? Can you... Oh, I can give it to a specific dwarf. Say, like, this is your given dining room now, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, we can also assign a location, which might be a good idea, too. We're going to call this, um, it, okay, there we go. Um, an inn or a tavern. We're going to, we're going to put a tavern down here, okay? Set details for the assigned location. Okay. This is called the Turquoise Belly right now. That's what this tavern's called. That's the auto-generated name. But we're going to call it something else. We're going to call it the um, the, <laughs> gotta come up with something good. The, how about like tusked? Is that something I can do? Can I make this window any bigger? Probably not. That seems weird. Like I, this, all this, the scaling stuff is kind of a, kind of a bummer, frankly, but it's, it's fine. Um, It'll just be called the Cobalt Hall. I, I guess if I made the um, the interface be a little bit smaller, I'd be able to see all the names and stuff. But um, we'll, we'll get it sorted. If I, you know, obviously if I do some edited content, we won't have to fiddle with any of this sort of stuff. But um, just know that like you can change that sort of stuff if you go and uh, mess with your interface settings. But yeah. Tusk bottoms. Yeah, the Tusk wasn't even anything I could do, unfortunately. 
Uh, it looks like the game is saving right now. I'm just gonna give it a second. Here we go. Uh, it's called the Cobalt Hall. That's fine. That's that's not bad. Goblets, chests in common area, stored instruments. Okay, not bad, not bad. Um, yes, this is our dining hall. It's just got some boulders. It's a, a flat, featureless cave underground. <laughs> but uh, you know, you can you can eat in here. That should be fine. <laughs> I'm gonna make a door. I'm gonna put a door up over here, right over there. There we go. Nice bauxite door. I think those other things probably have to be made too now, huh? Let me see. Furniture, uh, table. Make a nice little little table right up here. Just like that. Using the closest material, which should be that, that stone table that I had ordered to be made, I believe. Okay. And uh, get a chair in there as well. A nice little a throne. I'm sorry, a throne. Right up here. And then a cabinet too, right? It's also something I made. Mm-hmm. <laughs> cabinet right up here not that they need a cabinet for this to be an office but i thought it would look nice you know <laughs> do i have to make okay I, I guess i would make this area a an office zone that i would assign to a specific dwarf which would be our bookkeeper right yes we have office right up here there we go gonna just assign it like that and can i okay that's that's really cool that i could just like on the fly make it a little bit bigger like that really cool Really awesome, I like that. Okay, so this is this is an office now, and I'm gonna assign it to Sarvesh, our expedition leader slash bookkeeper. Okay. Um, I could name it book keep keep keepers office. Excellent. Okay, so now the bookkeeper's gonna come in here and sort things out a little bit. That's wonderful. Um. Now then, uh, if I go here, it used to be, like, you can go to Sarvesh and, like, tell her to, like, keep really good track of, like, the, 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 like, say how diligent they are in sorting out the items in the fortress. But I don't see an option for that. Maybe they got rid of that? You know, maybe it's just, like, a standard, um, you know, the bookkeeper will sort things out from now on, maybe? Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, looks like uh, Onal, the Cavi pup, has been found dead. And there's also been quite a bunch other fighting, too, that I have not been looking at, and I just clicked and got rid of. Uh, I'm sure it's fine. I'm not too worried. <laughs> mm. Yeah, the cave crocodile looks to have caused some trouble at some point. We've got a human merchant visiting. Okay. Okay. So we got these uh, these people now just, like, hanging out in our meeting hall. Because I, I uh, made it so that our tavern here is open to the public. And so that's what these people are. They're just kind of like hanging out now. I'm not sure. Like this human merchant over here is now just kind of hanging out now. Hmm. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, wonderful. Our population is 12 right now. Okay. Wonderful. What we need, I think, is a food stockpile. We got to get uh, some food stored up. Because like we're getting more and more mouths to feed as we go. And we just... We don't have a lot of food, but, like, we could go get some real quick, but we just need a place to put it, you know? Uh, so, yeah, we'll just make a nice big stockpile over this way right here and maybe uh, also make places for, like, a, a brewery and a kitchen up top. I'm assuming that'll work out pretty fine, but um, we'll see soon enough. Get to digging. We also need a, a whole heck of a lot more stone. We have this limonite over here, which I think can be used for stuff. Limonite, it's an ore of iron. You can use it to make furniture and buildings. For furniture and buildings, too. Uh, carnelians, that's a, a type of gem. Got a little bit more bauxite down here. But we're going to need a whole bunch, unfortunately. I would have liked in here to make it be like a like bauxite furniture. But I don't think that's going to be possible, unfortunately. Uh, what is this guy's deal? Looks like he's got a kind of a crazy looking helmet on. What is that? What is this helmet? It's just a copper helm. I don't know. The guy got kind of a weird look to him. I'm not too sure. Hmm. Very interesting. Very interesting. Feels delighted after watching a performance. Very cool. I don't know. I, I'm just. I'm getting a big kick out of all this so far. What is your issue? This engraver over here. Uh, 87 years old. Has like one of those heart things. Like the the low filled heart 
icon popping up above his head. I don't know what that means. Ability to stand lost. Ability to grasp lost. I think that has something to do with their health. I would assume. Because, yeah, this guy's not doing so good. I would assume this engraver got in a tussle with maybe the uh, cave crocodile or something like that. Uh, over here we have Rakust the Hammer Dwarf. I think telling a story? Um, hmm. Can I see? I'm trying to see if, like, because normally, like, if they're doing something, you can see, um, like, more details on their their current task, you know? Let me see here. I don't see anything, I suppose. I'm not too sure. It's got to be somewhere, but I'm not seeing it anywhere. Cry and shame. Cry and shame. I'll find it at some point. Anyways, yeah, let's get to digging a little bit more. Um, <laughs> they're, they're doing their best to stay entertained here in our uh, terrible, drab, featureless meeting hall. And they're doing a pretty good job. <laughs> um, you think I'm doing a good job for my first time playing? Thank you very much. I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best. I don't think I'm doing too bad either, honestly. Um, although it is a grim reminder of the winter hardships to come, the supply caravan from the intense ring is a welcome sight. Their eyes are alight with the anticipation of inspecting the splendid products of your industrious craft dwarves. <laughs> Take careful stock of your own stores. What these merchants offer might very well be the difference between a prosperous future and a slow and meaningless death. <laughs> it's at this point he realized that he produced nothing to trade. <laughs> and he doesn't even have a trade depot. I, I don't think this is going to go too well. Um, I've been so focused on like uh, preparing things for our dwarves that... Uh, yeah, I've, uh, I've not done anything else. Oh my goodness. Hey, a stray elephant has given birth to elephant calves. Excellent. Excellent. Wonderful. Um, let me see here. Okay, outpost liaison has arrived. A bard is visiting. Uh, we've struck lavender jade. Okay. Uh, Moral, the engraver, cancels clean. Two injured. Times six. <laughs> that poor fellow. Not doing too well at all. Um, let's have a look and see how many elephants we have now. Let's... Exhilarating. Um, oh, cool. We see over here this uh, uh, quite a beautiful scene, actually, of these elephants just kind of standing in this glade. There is a whole bunch of pecans on the ground, as we can see. I, I guess that's what this is. I thought it was leaves. It certainly looks like reddish leaves on the ground, but I, I guess it's pecans just from looking up in the top there. You can see when I hover over it, the little green pecans you could see. Um... Uh, we could gather those, I suppose, but, um, and probably should, <laughs> I suppose. Um, can, can I just gather those by, like, doing, uh, one of these sorts of deals? No, I can't. Because you can gather plants. You can also set a gathering zone, which I suppose we could do. I suppose we probably should do, frankly, from our low, low food stockpiles that we, we have right now. Uh, I'm going to set a gather fruit zone. Plant gathering zones are used to lo uh, in locations where plants will be gathered frequently. Use the gather designation. Otherwise, gather designation. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. Um, yeah, let's let's do that. I'm gonna set a gather zone over this pecan area over here, and maybe someone's gonna go out and pick these pecans up off the ground and uh, get them stored away. We need to set a, a food stockpile though. We don't have that yet. Looking up into the trees, you can see how all the leaves are yellow now. That is really cool. Man, they did a good job. They really did. Look at these yellow leaves up here because of, uh, you know, autumn. You can see the dwarves down below running over to the base of the tree and hurriedly gathering up some pecans. Good job, dwarves. Yeah, they're all running over now. They must have it so that, like, gathering plants is something that everyone does now. All the dwarves. Like, you don't have to turn it on. They just do it automatically. That's really cool. I love that. Where are they putting them, though? Like, what do they do with them? They're, they're grabbing them, but... What are they doing with them? Hull pecans. I'm going to follow this dwarf and just see what they do. Over here in the, the bottom left by the elephant. Um, two baby elephant calves, by the way. That's really exciting. We're going to have more and more. We're going to make a protected place for them, though, because I don't really want them to, uh, you know, be killed. Uh, so, yeah. A safer place might be nice. So this dwarf's running over here with the pecans. Are you still, still holding them? I don't really know what this dwarf did with them. Did I set a food stockpile somewhere? Interesting. Um, hmm. Okay. 
Let me see here. Can I see pecans? Should be on here. One second. Plants? Plants? Would it be? I, I would assume it would be on here somewhere, but maybe not. Maybe, uh, is there like a, oh, seeds. It's under seeds. Okay. Uh, do they just put it in the wagon, I guess? Like, is the wagon considered to be like a, a stockpile, like a general stockpile until you actually make stockpiles now? Or am I misinterpreting this? That could well be the case. Uh, let me let me try again, though. The seeds, I'm going to go look at this one over here. It looks like they're storing stuff, pecans specifically, inside. Okay, pecans bag. Okay, we've got a couple of, of bags that are filled with the things. That is interesting. Um, hmm. Okay, so, yeah, they're just putting them in bags, I guess. Like, the, the bags maybe are just sitting on the ground. They're like, oh, we got to put this in a bag. So they just put it in any old bag, which happens to be in our wagon. They're not using the wagon as, like, a stockpile area. That's fair. Okay. Um, over here, I'm looking at our diplomacy tab. The expedition leader Sarvesh Godenanad meets with the outpost liaison Dishmab Gusilam. Dishmab Gusilam. I am your outpost liaison from the mountain home. Let's discuss your situation. Okay. There's much to share. Information added to civilizations slash world info screen. Okay, we've got some news about the surrounding world. And now we get to request items for next year. I don't really know if there's anything we need in particular. Um, I, I don't know. There's, there's so much that we do need that it feels useless even asking for something. It looks like this year, though, um, or I should say this in this update, you select the item. It used to be a slider before that you can be like, I really need this kind of item. But this time, it's just like you just select it, and I guess they, you know, that tells them that you really want that item, which is handy. I like that. Cave spider silk, sure. Plant cloth, sure. We need all that for artifacts, and I'm not too sure what that process looks like now. It probably doesn't look much different, but uh, I guess we'll see. Um, hmm. Well, then, we have finalized the import agreement. Feel free to go over the documents. Uh, it looks like these are the prices that are going to be set for the items that we requested. Mountain goat leather requested, priced at 189%. Interesting. I wonder how these prices were determined. Very cool. Um, this is, okay, okay. Let's discuss what we are willing to offer for your craft dwarf ship. A need for cloth is expected, and if you are able to provide some, the caravan will offer 189%. Uh, percent. This export agreement only applies to trades next year, not with any merchants currently present. Okay, that's really cool. Normally they ask for a whole slew of different things, but it looks like next year they just want cloth, which is really neat. Um, was that it? That might have been it right there. Okay, yeah, I, I forgot to make a... Um, oh, okay, there we go. Okay, I said okay. I guess that was it. Anyways, I forgot to make a depot, which could be a problem. Uh... I would like to see what the trading window looks like, though. So I'm going to try to fix one up real quick. Trade Depot. We're already screwing up our chances with the uh, the Dwarven Mountain Homes. I'm going to try to slap one up real quick right over here using the closest material. And, uh, yeah, should be fine. Um, it used to be before you need an architect specifically to build a Trade Depot, which I always found at least slightly baffling, like how you need an architect to make some buildings but not other ones. I don't know if that's still the case. I just figured I'd place this thing down and see if somebody did it. Um, doesn't look like anybody's doing it, though. Hmm, maybe you still need an architect. Let's have a gander, unless you're doing it. Is that what you're doing there, Asab? I think so. I think Asab's heading on over with something. Here we go, okay. Here it is. Um, it's It's being created with some bauxite stones right now. Oh, that's really cool. Okay. Wonderful. Depot, th this thing is massive, isn't it? It's a, a huge thing. Five by five. A horse is hungry. Move it to the pasture. Yes, I've been meaning to do that. I just keep forgetting. Um, let me see here. The whole zone thing. Got our, our pasture over here. And I'm going to add an animal. The stray horse full. Yes, get in the pasture, you dumb dumb. You don't want to be dead. So somebody's going to bring the horse over there. Wonderful. Man, I'm getting a hang of it. I like it. Getting a little a little bit faster, a little bit faster every second. Um, over here. 
Gonna head down. Now then, let's see here. I'm, I'm trying to clean up this entryway down into the caves. It's kind of deadly right now. Here we have Onal, that Cavi pup, who's just dead over here. I don't know what killed the thing. Um, but something did. Probably a Droonian. Those things keep scurrying in, those bastards. Not a biggie, though. Let's see here. Okay. Okay. I'm going to clean up this whole area just a little bit so we can have a, a nice safe entrance down into the caverns. It's it's a mess right now. It's not looking too, too good. I'll tell you that much. I'm going to chop down. There's a tree right here, a spore tree. We're going to get that chopped down, uh, clear it out a little bit, build up some walls in this area, and it'll it'll be fine in, in a short order. What I would like to do is make some stone blocks. Like, what is this over here? This is chalk. Let's make some chalk blocks. That could work pretty well. Um, blocks? We'll set it to repeat right now and make them out of chalk, please. Thank you. Yes, wonderful. I'm curious how mine carts work in this system. Hey, look what happened down here. Boy, I am like... I. <laughs> it's very difficult for me to pick up on stuff that's happening around the fortress, like, as it happens. We can see down here there was some sort of a horrific mess. There's three dead Drunians and just blood splattered all through the halls right now. Um... I assume we got raided again, maybe trying to come down for gems once again, but it didn't really work out for them this time, I don't think. Uh, as you can see, they're all dead. We got some combat report right here. I'll bet it's from this Drunian right here, holding a pigtail sock, um, I believe. Is it? I don't, no, it's not. It's just covered with blood. That's it. It's just sitting in this corner next to a pigtail sock and is fighting with someone, I believe. Uh, an enraged dwarf who's just pounding the ever-living hell out of this Drunian. And who ripped off one of its toes. Good job. Good job, Dwarf. <laughs> this weaponsmith. One of the new migrants. Rimtar. Just beat the hell out of this Drunian. Good job. Thank you very much for your service. I like how up here in this this uh, office, I don't even have to look to know what it is. There's some seeds sitting on this throne. Which I thought was pretty neat. I get a kick out of that. It's a little things, you know. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, over here, our food stockpile. We should get that kind of cleaned up, eh? Let's do that. Do, do, do. Da, da. Let's get that nice and smooth, eh? We'll get that nice and smooth up. And then, um, I guess we still have an awful lot of tables and chairs that we have to make, huh? An awful lot. Outpost liaison is fighting. That's not good. What are you fighting with? Uh, a Drunian. Okay. <laughs> yes, we're, we're trying to clean up our caves. We're sorry for the trouble. We're sorry we didn't get our, our trade depot done in time. We're working. We're trying to get it done. We'll get to it. Next year, it's not going to be like this. We're going to we're gonna get a whole bunch of things made for you. I got two stone crafters in the fortress, right? And, um, boy, they, they've not been doing very much. They've certainly not been crafting anything. <laughs> that, that's got to change um, for next year, right? Absolutely. Got a poet in the fortress right now. Maybe we should start making a mine. What do you think? Like a, a specific mine, right? So like down over here, I'm going to start carving out a tunnel that leads away. What is this? Is this a wild boar? It's not just a wild boar. It's down in the fortress just rampaging around with its its tusks. Just uh, creating all sorts of havoc. I'm going to make a little tunnel over this way right here. Okay. Just kind of leading off in this direction and we'll create some nice little pleasing branches kind of like this oh man I'm like a you know I'm one of those like staunch like do a fortress is fine as it is you can't improve perfection you know but like this is fine guys it's good uh, I like it anybody who's watching who's still doubtful about it like just dive in it's good it's fine you get used to it you know I, as I said before I was playing Dwarf Fortress for maybe 11, 12 years now. And, I mean, hell, I play it all the damn time. And I'm already getting used to this new version and appreciating some of the stuff that they've done to it. It's it's pretty great so far. I've not seen anything so far that I've been like, boy, that was really dumb. They really gunked that up. Like, it just seems good. I like it. I like it. Um, I mean, my only gripe, I suppose, is that weird interface scaling thing. Um, but it's whatever. I'll get it sorted out in time. I would mess around with it more. I'm sure it's an easy fix. I just, 
you know, I don't really want to subject you to that sort of thing. And it's, it's fine as it is, you know, it's really not that bad. It's fine. It's fine. Do, do. <laughs> Alex is probably seething. <laughs> what do you mean? What are you talking about? Is the Steam version of DF a different update compared to the public release? The, I mean, right now there isn't a... Are you talking about the currently available public release on Bay 12? I believe that's different. Yeah, I think Steam Dwarf Fortress is the most current version available. They're going to have a classic free version available on Bay 12 at some point, but not at release. It's still not done. And they say it's not going to take too, too long. We'll see what happens. This is Dwarf Fortress we're talking about. I'd like to think it's not going to take too long, but... I, I, <laughs> I do love Dwarf Fortress. Don't get me wrong. I just, you know... I kind of... Eh, when I hear something's not going to take too, too long... Eh, I'm not sure I believe it. Anyways, over here you can see the stink welling up from these dead Drunian corpses. They're beginning to rot and throw off a whole bunch of miasma. That's what that was. That was our first look at my asthma from steam dwarf fortress uh not too bad not too bad um we do have to get rid of these corpses though or do something with them i like that there's just a discarded sock on the ground here for some reason got a hole in it it's not looking too good this is a pigtail sock it is made from pigtail cloth the thread is midnight blue with dimple dye and it's starting to show some wear somebody was done with that sock and so they're just like yeah let's we'll throw it on the ground don't really need that one anymore it's all, it's all bitattered we don't need that one. <laughs> I guess. Dwarves. Still wearing one sock though, I'd imagine. Just not the not the busted up one. I'm gonna put a wall right over actually, you know what? I'm gonna make sure it's made out of cloth blocks. I'm gonna try this again too. Where like normally it's pretty tedious to um you know, sort out how to build things. We did that one area up top, and it seemed to work out pretty well. Like, I'm sure you probably don't know what I'm talking about, but um, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. Wait one second. I, I want to see how the dwarves build these two pieces right here. Let's see if they do it intelligently. I could just be getting lucky too. Like with that place up top, they they built all those um that that square section of walls. Like, right there is what I would expect to see. A dwarf did the one wall section, but not the other one. That is now maybe inaccessible. There they go. Okay, so they just built that one. That's, that's not a problem. Let's keep that going. I'm going to really challenge the dwarves when they're building stuff to see what they're capable of in this iteration. I don't recall hearing anything about that being fixed, so I may just be seeing things that don't actually exist right now, but... um. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I don't blame you. <laughs> but usually it's kind of a pain in the butt to build certain things. Because, like, you know, if you have them build a square that's in a certain area, like, they'll build all the walls. Whichever ones get there first are going to build their segments. But, like, they'll build sometimes in areas where it'll block off access to other areas. And so you kind of have to build things piece by piece a lot of the time. You know? It's, um... It's a pain. Uh, I, I keep, like, pausing the game on accident. I do not mean to, but I keep doing it. Probably going to continue doing it, too. Um, but, yes. Let's see here. I'm going to build more chalk blocks. Get a place over here with chalk blocks. Right over here. Chalk blocks. No, no, no more chalk blocks. Hmm. Interesting. I can't imagine they're going to build this without a problem, but I guess we'll see. Got these three segments right here. Boop. Okay, that one was done. Got these two more. And I got this one diagonal right up here. Let's see if somebody actually builds that. Got more migrants have arrived. I, um, I, I guess I would have expected there to be more fanfare when stuff like migrants arrive or like when babies are born. Normally the game like recenters and pauses. Like when stuff stuff like that happens, and maybe there's a way to turn that on even now. But um, it looks like now everything is just kind of like brought to your attention through the the top left of the screen. Like I like to be able to see when migrants come onto the map generally. But now if you just happen to miss that little notification, then I don't know, you just don't see it. Like I know in in Sound Sense mod, if anybody has any experience with that, like whenever you fight something, there's a bunch of noises that pop up. I, I guess I thought that's how this would work, but doesn't appear to be a case. It's not a, not a, you know, doesn't kill the game for me at all by any means. It's just something I got to get used to. 
you know. Um, are we gonna build this? I'm not sure. Construction inactive. Um, maybe somebody just can't reach this spot right here, which I don't doubt. That's that's okay. We're gonna mine that out. That's gonna be fine. Got a wild boar just runs down into the caverns. Boy, you're gonna be in some trouble out there. I think, my friend. Don't don't get too audacious, you pig. <laughs> Let's see here. Choose closest material. I'm gonna select it. And there we go. Chalk box, please. Yes, a couple of them. And over here too. Chalk box. Yes. There we go. Um, mm -hmm. do that here, do that here. Oh, gonna make a stairway here, I guess. There's no stairway right here. Okay. Uh, can I build a stair? I don't think I've actually built a stair yet. Have I? Um, probably not too bad, right? Stairs. Here we go. No, I, I have built stairs. That's right. Select material after placement. I still don't know if I'm doing this right, but it feels right. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. I think it's going to work. I think it's going to work. Again, it's all going to take a little bit of fiddling before I can uh, just blast my way cleanly through this game. But it's how it's set up, it makes sense. It makes a lot of sense right now. And again, I think they've done an excellent job setting this whole thing up. Really good job. Let me see here. Back to the chat. How you guys doing? What do you guys think of it so far? Like, I'm sure a lot of you are at work or just kind of like listening maybe glancing in from time to time. I'm curious to see your thoughts on the whole thing so far, you know? Um, just judging on what you've seen so far of the Steam release in, in play, give me a number from one to 10. Uh-oh, uh-oh, what is this? Your fortress is out of food. Consider placing a farm plot in some underground soil and planting seeds. Try gather, uh, building a butcher shop and slaughtering some livestock. Perhaps you can gather plants, fruit, or go fishing. Okay. There we go. That's a, a handy little notification. Normally, the fort uh, dwarf fortress doesn't work like that, you know. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. That being said, concerning, <laughs> right? Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Uh, I'm looking at these these numbers here. We got nines. We got ten. We got a six point seven. Ten nine 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 eight eight. Ten ten nine ten ten eight. Okay. Okay, looking pretty positive so far. I'm glad, glad to see that. Good job. Yes, yes, good job. Kid Fox slash Bay 12. Wonderful work. Um, yeah, it's going going pretty darn good so far, I'd say. Uh, did we... Is this place not being built? Construction suspended. Resume construction. Okay. I, um... I kind of wish buildings would resume construction by themselves somehow. Like, you don't have to manually stop or manually unsuspend some things because a lot of the times a bunch of stuff will get suspended at once and it's kind of a pain in the butt to, you know, resume construction. I don't know, there's still a lot of aspects of the game I haven't seen. Like, if I was going and making some giant wall around my fortress and it all got suspended somehow, is there an easy way to set that back up? I don't know. I am unsure. Probably. I'd like to think so anyways, but I, I, I don't know. It's all going to be seen in time, though. We're getting there. We're getting there. Um, but yes, we're out of food. This is a problem. Um, let's see here. I am going to... Cause we, we do got these rotting corpses down here. I suppose we might be able to butcher one of those things up, huh? We could also butcher up one of our elephants if we wanted, but I don't know if I want to do that. We do have our, our horse full. We could butcher up. We could also gather some plants. I suppose that's the most sensible solution here, huh? <laughs> Um, but yes, uh, let's see here. If I wanted to butcher an animal, what kind of workshop would I make? A butcher, probably. But, um, farming? Here it is. It's under the farming tab. Wonderful. Uh, I'm gonna go back upstairs. All the way back up. And I'm gonna make a butcher's workshop right over here. Outside the fortress, because I don't want that stink being outside. Or inside the fortress, you know? As you would... As you would assume. There we go. I'm uh, just going to build that out here. I don't think we have any butchers in the fortress, though. Is this something that any old person will do again? Um, I don't know. Okay. So this guy, Kickrost, is doing it. But I don't think Kickrost has butcher on. Very interesting. We'll do available tasks anywhere. So, hmm... Yes, I'm very interested to see how they've got this whole system worked out here. So here's our butcher workshop. 
All right, I'm gonna add a new task, butcher an animal. I'm just gonna set that to now and repeat to see if they go grab any dead things that happen to be on the map. Maybe those Druidians downstairs, probably not. Um, right, there's no butcherable, unrotten nearby items. Those Druidians up top or down in the fortress are pretty spoiled right now. Uh, can't really do anything with those. But we could butcher our existing animals, I would assume, by going down here to the citizen information menu. Pets slash livestock. Okay. Okay. Um, we can assign them as a, a war creature. Or a hunting creature. You can have hunting elephants. That's <laughs> frightening. Uh, we have our stray yak cows. We could butcher those. Um... But not from this menu, I suppose. Usually there's an animals tab, which is different than the pets slash livestock tab. I thought maybe they would have made it a bit more concise, but also maybe not. Um, hmm. Let's see here. Work orders, labors, places. Places. That's, that's cool. Okay, I hadn't seen this before in action. But we now have a places tab, which shows us all of our places in the fortress, like a gather fruit zone, or the bookkeeper's office, or the dining hall, the tusky sleep room. <laughs> That's really cool. Very, very cool. I like that. Um, objects. Okay. Interesting. Uh, so going to objects here, we can see we have a crossbow on the map right now named Nutug Zursul, Negative Choose, Moses Touched Shots, Family Heirloom. Okay. Stop right there, because I love that it tells you that it's somebody's family heirloom. You know, it gives you a little bit of information just at a glance like that, instead of having to dig for it. That's really handy. In Dwarf Fortress before, like, a, a dwarf would make an artifact and be like, they claim it's a family heirloom. But beyond that, there's no way to see that. Like, I think you can go to Legends mode and see it again. But um, other than that, like, you can't see that during Fortress mode. So, like you know, over time you get a whole bunch of artifacts in your fortress and you don't know what the hell their deal is half the time. Sorry, I'm stretching right now too. Ooh, oh my god. Um, but yeah. Anyways, um, what happened to the animals tab? I'm not too sure where that would be exactly. How do I butcher up some animals? Maybe I, maybe there's a way to do it through here. Workers, free for anybody to use. Okay. Very interesting. Very, very, very interesting. Add new task. Okay. There has to be an animals tab somewhere that I'm just not seeing or am unaware of. And it doesn't look like you could just butcher things through this menu here. Um, which is which is strange. They've got it placed somewhere else. Like is that's that's how it was before. But um, maybe if I go to the animal itself, like a stray yak cow. I can click the thing and like how it was before is you could um, set it from this menu to be butchered. But I don't I don't know if that's something you can still do here. Groups, military thoughts, personality. Um, what the hell? Like others in her culture, she holds craftsmanship to be of the highest ideals and celebrates talented artisans and their masterworks. It's a stray yak cow. How? <laughs> How? Look to the right. Your UI is broken. Okay. I'm I'm sure it is, I guess, huh? Look to the right. What is on the right? What are you seeing on the right? Alright, I guess I'm gonna try doing that thing again where I um I mess with this this deal here. Let's see here. Animals. What are you seeing on the right? I don't see much. Hmm. To the right, you say. I don't see anything. Hmm. Maybe it's through the stocks menu. In the animals tab, the icons were floating to the right. I don't think so. Were they? Oh. Oh. Okay. So I I just had it because of the um. The scaling issues there again. Okay, okay. Let me just verify and make sure that was the case and I'm not actually going crazy because I should have seen that otherwise, right? Here, one second, one second. Pets, livestock, yeah. Oh, okay, oh, here they are just floating way off <laughs> outside the window. I saw these words going out the side, but I didn't think to shift my eyes 
a couple of inches to the right. Okay, there we go. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Stray Mule. We don't need this. Um, what is this? Gelded? Okay, we got Gelding and... Uh, that's kind of ghoulish, ain't it? And, you know, got the Butcher's Workshop is this big bloody meat thing. And then the Gelding is like this little scalpel sort of an icon. Like, uh, <laughs> kind of gruesome in a way. Anyways, uh, Butcher... Butcher? 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 It's not doing anything. All right, I'm just gonna change back um, to this this version right here, just to maybe get through uh, sorting out this stuff. One second, pets, livestock. Uh, which one was it? Horse, foal. We'll get rid of. There we go. That worked. Wonderful. Stray mule. Boop. Stray lamb. Don't need it. Uh, reindeer calf. Get rid of that. It's gonna make some tasty sausages, I think. Um, and these yak cows. What the hell? Yeah, butcher them up. Gotta get some some lovely food. I think. Wonderful. Thank you very much, chat. Thank you very much. I um I do like being able to see a little bit better, so I don't mind this being super huge in my face most of the time as long as things are working correctly. But um anyways, yes, that's that's gonna suffice for now. We should also gather some plants. I keep doing this damn thing. It's G to gather plants, right? Yes, okay, I've, I've got that now. Uh zoom out a little bit. There we go. There we go. We'll just highlight a huge area to be gathered, right? Um, zoom back in. There we go. Wonderful, wonderful baby reindeer. It, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. It's gonna be good eating. I'm trusting. You know, you gotta trust me. You know, if you're hungry, you're gonna eat a baby reindeer. I'm telling you. Like, there's no two ways about it. You're gonna be noshing down on a reindeer, even if it is a little babe. <laughs> Why are we not mining this area? I'd like us to mine this area ASAP, please. What is our miner doing nowadays? Probably like severely wounded, stuck out in the caves or something. Oh no, that's right. We're um digging out this mine over here. Um Right, we got all these corpses and bones out here too. We should be dealing with like ASAP so we don't have to smell corpses and bones. Um let's get corpses and bones thrown out into the caves. Uh let's learn how stockpiles work, eh? Stockpiles. Okay, start painting a new stockpile. Once the tiles are chosen, you'll be able to set the details. We'll make a pile out, out here, right? Boop, just like that. And, um, except this will be for refuse, I think, is what corpses would be considered. Um, we'll see. We'll see if this works. I mean, I know how old the Dwarf Fortress works, and I have a feeling refuse is going to fit the bill, but maybe not. We'll see. I think corpses generally are like your dwarves and stuff. So a refuse stock, stockpile might do it. Just one second. A stray yak cow has been slaughtered. Okay, wonderful. Done deal. What are you up to right there, Arab? I think dwarves should be gathering refuse now. What's this guy doing? One second. Hauling chalk. Okay. Uh, there we go. Okay, so this dwarf here, Udib, just grabbed a uh, a pile of bones, I think. Uh, gonna follow this dwarf over here, going up and heading out to the refuse stockpile. Wonderful. And setting down some bones right there. Yes, we got some Drunian mangled skeletons being placed over here. What did you, what are you going with that bone? This dwarf here just grabbed a pile of bones. What are you doing with that? Exactly. <laughs> I, um, oh, butchering. Butchering the bones? Why? I think there's better things to butcher, my friend. You're just gonna get bones out of that. Like, we, we can't eat the bones. I'm not too sure why you're doing that. Um, okay. Uh, I am curious to see what comes out of this. Uh, can we have two people working in a butcher shop at the same time? It looks like we've got a an herbalist here. Who is... Oh, they're eating. Okay, no, no, no. Sarvesh is coming over to butcher the actual skeleton. Fascinating. Uh, let's see what we get out of that. I think it's just going to be bones, though. It's not going to be anything fantastic, right? Shouldn't be. Butchering, butchering, there we go. Um, let's see. We can see at the bottom there, like all of the items that are in the shop right now, including the chalk blocks that the building is made out of, and also some stray yak cow hooves, yak fat, <laughs> prepared yak eyes, and um, a couple other ghoulish interpretations. Like if we keep going down, you can see um, the stray yak cow nervous tissue, which is just like this stringy spreading mass of red that's 
absolutely disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> uh. I mean, I, I don't know much about butchering animals myself personally, but, like, I, I would think that if you went to go butcher an animal, you wouldn't, like, uh, remove the entire nervous system as, like, one big old thing, right? Um, oh, crap. We've got a ghost in the fortress now. Geshud, that uh, the monster killer that popped up and who was killed shortly after, uh, is now a ghost. Hmm. Here they are. Geshud. And, oh, it looks like Geshet is naked, too. Like, you can't really see that much, but that, that is fascinating. Let's see here. Um, where the hell they go? Uh, it's going to take me so long to get used to these menus and stuff. We'll get there, though. We'll get there. Okay, so here's Geshet over here next to this dwarf who's like, uh, I'm not too sure what to make of this whole thing. Geshet, how you feeling? 107 years old. Well, don't age anymore, I suppose, as a ghost. Um, it's interesting that we could still see, like, all of the thoughts and stuff of this person, or personality, at least, overinflated sense of self-worth, um, description, a sh uh, this is a restless haunt, generally troubling past acquaintances and relatives, this spirit has not been properly memorialized or buried, no, we don't have a tomb, we just left that pile of bones out in the caves, and, um, and that was that for the most part. But I suppose we could uh, do something about that. We don't we don't have a tomb or anything in the fortress yet. But yeah, we got to do better than that. <laughs> Heading back down to the fortress level. Down here, I should set up a hotkey. I keep forgetting to do that. Um, don't let me leave the screen without doing that. Right here. We're going to recenter on the current view. Right here. And this is going to be fortress level. Okay. Wonderful. Unpaused. One, two, three. One, two, three. I like it. Okay. Over here we got some chalk. I was making chalk blocks before, I think on repeat, but we're going to stop that nonsense for now and add a new task to make some coffins. Uh, No, no, no. Stop that. Don't, don't, don't do that yet. Try it again. I have to remember that it doesn't pause again. <laughs> um, it, they started making coffins before I actually said to make them out of chalk specifically. And so... um. You know, I, I don't want that. Let's see here. Just just one second, one second. Chalk. Or maybe maybe claystone. Claystone might be nice. Yeah, claystone coffins. Sure. Make them now, just on repeat. We're going to get a whole bunch made. Maybe get a proper little tomb set up for our dwarves. Um, I have to imagine we're going to have a couple more deaths throughout this stream, you know. It is kind of shameful to me that um, we're now in autumn, and we still don't have any tables or chairs in our meeting hall, and just a big stinking dorm for all of our citizens to sleep in that kind of sucks we got to do better um you know what Ooh, something i really want to see is what does an engraved wall look like do you think i don't know what that looks like engrave artwork into a smooth wall yes let's see what that does um you can do it on floors too maybe we'll just carve a floor like this i want to see what that looks like we have our our one engraver is not really doing so well that's the the wounded guy Oh, it looks like everyone does it, actually. Um, very interesting. I, I'll have to look some more into how, like, all the labors are assigned and stuff. Because it might be a little bit bothersome to have all of your dwarves go and engrave floors. Like, if you've got one master engraver who can make really high-quality engravings, and you'd prefer that one dwarf to do all the engraving, um, it might get a little mucked up if you've got, like, fresh migrants, like fisher dwarves and stuff, coming over and engraving stuff on your walls, you know? I guess we'll see. Um, I'll get, I'll get sorted. So we got three images on the ground of little dwarf heads right now. And I have to assume those are going to be images of, like, dwarves. Like, specific dwarves. I assume the icon on the ground is representative of what the actual engraving is. I don't know that for sure yet. Okay, I got four dwarf heads here. Uh, this first one here is, engraves on the floor as an image of a smooth pebble. Okay, so maybe not. It's just a generic... Dwarf head, I suppose. Single cut gems. The languishing mother. That's what this engraving is called. It's a image of single cut gems. Interesting. That's got to have some deeper meaning to it, I'm sure. This one here, the water of glistening. Those are two very uh, thoughtful sounding names, which isn't typically something you find in Dwarf Fortress. Uh, the image of a box on the ground. 
<laughs> so these engravers really don't know what the hell they're doing, seemingly. The Song of Banes, an image of a spiked ball, and The Mightiness of Esteem, an image of a smooth pebble. <laughs> Very weird. Um, but yeah. Interesting. I, I guess I thought the engravings would actually look like what they are supposed to represent instead of just like a generic dwarf head, unless there's a way to toggle that, which I, I, don't, I don't doubt, but I, I guess I'm not, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. Um, let's try to engrave a wall. I just want to see what that does. Probably the same exact thing. I'd be a fool to think otherwise, but you never know, right? We'll engrave this whole wall up here, just to the top end of this, this area. Might end up replacing it at some point in the future, you know, if we dig out a tunnel that way, but yeah, it's just a test. We'll see how it works. We were gathering plants. We were butchering animals. Um, I'll give those guys a second. We should make a food stockpile instead of just dicking around making funny pictures on the walls, huh? <laughs> here. Um, yeah, we'll make a food stockpile just like this one right here. Boop, there we go. Wonderful. And we're going to get um food. Put There we go. Food put down there. Okay, um, now I would assume there's a way to go in and toggle whether a stockpile can take items. Okay, set how many barrels, bins, and wheelbarrows the stockpile can use. Um, okay, well, I guess I could probably go and make a custom stockpile too. My fear is that, like with typ typically in Dwarf Fortress, um, if you make a food stockpile, it also accepts seeds. Of anything you gather outside so it could be just overburdened with thousands upon thousands of seeds at some point but um let's see here so I've got this it's okay interesting finished goods if you do custom okay okay so I, you choose one food and then custom you can customize it it's set as a food stockpile and will accept all of these items like um, aardvark man meat acorn fly meat um, amethyst brute meat, anything. <laughs> but um, I'm going to turn off seeds. No, no seeds. Okay, there we go. That's pretty straightforward. Not too bad. Um, prepared meals. It'll accept, which is just a simple toggle. Not too bad. Miscellaneous liquids like milk of lime or lye. We don't really want that in there. <laughs> I don't think either. Um, but yes, drinks and all kinds of other stuff too. That, that should be fine. That should be fine. Okay, good. I, I believe it's all set up now. We should have people bringing food down there in just a moment. I would think, I would think, um, like t typically in Dwarf Fortress, like if you don't have a food stockpile, they just leave whatever food laying outside till it rots, which isn't something you really want to have happen. But I, I'm, I'm hoping, um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Let me see here now. Um, I like the animals having personalities. I know. Isn't it great? <laughs> Jesus Christ. One cooler guy. What are, you, what are you doing, huh? Thank you very much, my friend. It's far too damn kind, I will tell you that much. Um, <laughs> what the hell? Thank you very much. I, I appreciate that an awful lot. Cripes. I, I, it just, it means an awful lot. Like, all, all you guys are way too damn kind. I just, I appreciate it. I don't, um, I don't know. You guys are just way too nice to me. I appreciate it. I appreciate all of you so much. Uh, wider, uh, I can't pronounce that. Wider stain, stain, stainbler, wider stainbler. Thank you very much as well. You guys are a bunch of freaking pros. I just, I love you. An awful lot. And like, um, as I say that, beware of parasocial relationships with content creators online. You don't know who I am. I could be a monster for all you know. Um, just, just keep that in the back of your mind. You don't, you don't know who I am. But <laughs> that being said, um, th thank you very much again, once again, all, all of you. It means an awful lot to just have you here and experience this new era of, era of Dwarf Fortress with you. It's just really cool. Anywho, um, yes, these engravings are finished. And as you can see, I kind of like, I, I don't know what I was expecting, 
Because um, I, I was, well, I, what I was expecting was to see, like, an image on the wall like you would see in normal Dwarf Fortress, like a big icon of an engraving, like a top-down view, which doesn't make any sense. But you can see they've instead opted to do an engraving, like, just as a little bit of a, a little bit of a, like a, 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 a dotted line on the wall, like you're seeing an engraving from the top down. Like, you wouldn't actually see the engraving from top down, which I kind of like to be perfectly frank that's really cool you know sometimes it really screws up the way a room looks if you got a top-down engraving on the wall and you know you can't really make out what's what and stuff i like this that works out really well um man i'm really stoked about steam door fortress <laughs> if i gotta be honest it's it's really cool so far um and, and you know as i was saying before i'm kind of like a a Dwarf Fortress boomer, just like, oh, I don't need anything, I, I'm good, I know how Dwarf Fortress works, and I like my ASCII graphics and stuff, but, like, I, this is, it's fantastic, it's really working out incredibly well, um, yeah, you, you guys are too kind, bunch of good bastards, Mankirk, how you doing, I, I assume that's from World of Warcraft, how's your wife, uh, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring that up, <laughs> I hope you're doing well. My fort's been overrun with the undead. Yeah, that's bound to happen. Uh, Steam Dwarf Fortress, you're already overrun with undead? That's excellent. <laughs> already having some, some proper Dwarf Fortress fun, it seems. That's excellent. Let me see here. Vermin Catcher's Shop? <gasps> what is that? That's really cool. That wasn't something before. I like that. What is a Vermin Catcher's Shop? I, I want to put one down. Like We should be focusing on food. Okay. Krog, let's focus for a moment, okay? Um, we need we need food. We've got a still. I'm going to put a still over here uh, using some sort of, like, we have blocks, right? Yeah, chalk blocks. Okay, make chalk blocks. And then we're going to make another one, another workshop, a kitchen. A kitchen right here. There we go. Out of some chalk blocks. There we go. Very cool. I'm excited to see how these things look when they're done. I think it's going to look really cool. I, Again, I'm really excited about how the workshops look. I think they they just have a good look to them. They, they feel really nice, you know, when they're all done. Um, I keep accidentally changing levels by messing with the mouse wheel slightly. Look at that kitchen. Would you look at this cozy goddamn kitchen? Look at that little, little oven up there with a little pan on there. Get the table, the knife, and... Oh, it's really good looking. I like how that looks. Really fun. That's going to add so much to the game for me, I think. You know? Um, I'm really hoping to, like, maybe at some point. Like, I don't know if it's possible or if it's easy or whatever. But, like, um, you know, maybe take this workshop icon, this completed image, and, like, modify it slightly. You know? Like, I, I could do some pixel art. This is it's relatively simple, I would think. You know, I could draw some new stuff on there if I wanted, you know? Make it uh, kind of kind of customize things to a fortress video if I wanted to. I, I don't know if that's possible again, but I think it'd be a, a cool little thing to do. I'm gonna prepare some lavish meals for our dwarves. You know, we we should do that. Um, on top of that, I'm also gonna start brewing some drinks. Very important brew drink from plants. Just like that. Repeat right now. We're gonna make a bunch of drinks. We're gonna make a lot of uh, lavish meals for our dwarves. We should also make this food stock barn a little bit bigger too. It's really not that big. Um, so, so yeah, uh, let's, let's do that. Whew. There we go. We're just gonna make that a little bit bigger. And, um, hmm. we do have a farmer, don't we? We probably should start farming. <laughs> Haven't done it. Haven't done it. I'm already sailing through this game. I like it. I gotta, I gotta get more used to using wasp. The W, A, S, and D keys to navigate around. I feel like that's a bit more comfortable. And, like, because I could do it with my left hand, it, it feels kind of kind of natural, too. I like that. Um, big time. How do you feel about this team version so far, Crux Smash? I love it. It's really good. It's really good. You know, I had my doubts at first, you know, as, um, as, as any logical person might. Like, uh, you know, you don't want to just accept that something's going to be good no matter what before it happens. But, like, you know, I had my doubts at first, but, man, they've been... Allied for the most part um you know it, i've been playing for how long now i started playing at 10 sharp so it's been three and a half hours and so far i'm loving it everything i've seen like it's taken me a bit to get used to it obviously but i've played the game for 11 12 years now so um that's bound to happen right absolutely bound to happen loving it loving it it's really good 
Um, definitely. Tofrelicious. Tofrelicious, <laughs> you are a real pro. Tofrelicious played that song that we heard right at the beginning of the stream. And um, was also the one who made my original Krug Smash theme song there. A real talented musician. Real freaking pro. Big time. I'll have to play that. I'm going to do something with that song at some point. I got to do something amazing with it because that thing's a piece of art. Definitely. Um... Sorry to you guys who haven't heard it yet, but you'll you'll hear it eventually. I'll get it out there more. Gonna have to. Tofferlicious, thank you very much for your support. Real bearded bastard, one of the OGs. Uh, but yes, going absolutely well so far. Look at this meal. We've got a prepared horse intestine roast right over here. Doesn't that sound delicious? Horse intestines roast. I would like to picture maybe some sort of a sausage-like configuration with that. Uh, let's have a closer look, though, eh? Uh, prepared horse intestine roast. Twelve units of it. Uh, this is a stack of twelve prepared horse intestines roast. The ingredients are minced yak tallow, minced yak sweetbread, minced prepared yak spleen, and minced prepared horse intestines. Okay. Okay, got the tallow, you got that sweetbread, yak spleen, and, of course, the intestines. Uh, I mean... Human sensibilities don't really, um, it's a, it's a dwarf thing, really, you know. <laughs> oh, <ooh. laughs> a little disgusting, but, um, you know, it's kind of what happens. I, I'm going to see how the stockpile resizing works. So I just click the stockpile, right? And up here, you got the paint stockpile, repaint it. And I could just, shoot. <gasps> look at that. Ain't that cool? That's really cool. You just like shloop, make it a little bit bigger like that. Oh man, this is so good. I'm getting a kick out of this. Big time. Again, good job, Bay12. Good job, Kit Fox. Really knocked out of the park. Big time. Fantastic. Probably a sausage, right? It, it probably is. It probably is. I'm thinking. I'm thinking it's gotta be, right? Why are the dwarves getting miserable? Because they're dwarves. <laughs> Who is this enraged dwarf right here? Um, is it you? Are you enraged? Who's enraged? Someone's not a happy camper. Um, there's got to be an easier way to sort out this thing, right? Oh, here we go, yes. Uh, you, Irvad, the stone worker, who's fishing right now. What is your problem, Irvad? What's up, Irv? Um, let me see. Irvad, here we go. Uh, zoom to the dwarf. Out here, by the pond, by the road. It's a nice day. You should be um, pretty, pretty relaxed out here, I would think. Um... Annoyed, dwelling upon having a drink without using a goblet, cup, or mug. Dwelling upon it? I can't believe I was forced to drink without an actual cup. I I'm sorry, you got a drink though, right? You just slurp it up out of the barrel, you know? My god. Uh, dejected after not being able to do anything creative. Oh, self-pity after doing nothing creative for so long. Self-pity after doing, uh, or dejected after being unable to pray, um... Horrified after being haunted by the dead. Wah! It's a ghost. Get over it. It's like air that's shaped like a person, right? Like, not a big deal. <laughs> okay, okay. I guess you do have your reasons. Um, that being said, we should probably get to work on making a tomb, eh? Um, let's have a gander. Got a couple of offices over here. Got our food stockpiles looking nice over there. Uh, meeting hall without any tables or chairs. Everyone just standing around and telling stories and stuff. We can make a tomb right over here. How about right up here? There we go. Wonderful. Wonderful. It's going to be a boring and terrible little tomb, but, you know, it's fine. <laughs> we should, we'll make the tomb look exactly like the dormitory, just like mirroring it. That's going to be some uh, uh, dark symbolism right there, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. <laughs> just four across. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to get rid of some of these things here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. Do do dee da 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 dee 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 dee. <laughs> you know, you, it's gonna be uh, kind of awkward, I guess, going into the tomb. It's like mirroring the dormitory exactly, just you know, coffins instead of beds. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there we go. That's fine. It'll get the job done. I feel. Is there, there's got to be a way to set a priority on these tasks, right? Like in, in Dwarf Fortress, how you, how you typically do, I would think. Um, that being said, how to do? Let me take a gander here. Digging orders. 
priority. Hmm. Do, do, do. Assign a miner to the work detail if necessary. The miner requires a pick. I would imagine there's a way to set the priority, but I, you know, I haven't seen that anywhere. Interesting. I tend to set things to high priority right out of the gate, but yeah, I'm not seeing that anywhere. Hmm. Let me see. Let me see. I, I, uh, th th there has to be a way, right? Advanced options. Ah, here we go. Yes, yes, yes. Wonderful. Okay. Advanced options. There it is. I'm going to set this to high priority. We'll get this carved out so we can get that poor ghostly dwarf interred. And, um, yeah, I, mean, I guess we can carve out that one side ASAP and that'll be pretty fine. Yeah, here we go. Wonderful. Good job, dwarves. Mission accomplished. Um, yeah, and, and I'll get this whole area smoothed up. Maybe let's put some engravings in here for our poor, poor dwarves. You know, I, I'm excited to actually, like, go hog wild and, um, you know, start making a video now. I think that'd be so, so cool. Um, you know, really take my time, go slow with the whole things behind the scene. And, you know, uh, this is pretty much how I play normally when I'm, I'm you know, recording stuff. Like, you'd think I'd, I'd be a bit more judicious, but I'm, I'm not. I'm just kind of, like, um, you know, sloppy-brained and careless sometimes. Um, I, <laughs> I do care, but, like, you know, I, I still, you know, get a bit, um, you know, mixed up sometimes. And, like, you know, I'll be playing the game like this here, and then I'll put it down for a little bit. I thought this was interesting right here. We have this dwarf ghost kind of inside this wall. I, I thought it was like a, maybe a bug at first, but no, it's it's a ghostly axe dwarf inside this wall, kind of like peeking out at this dwarf who's working on the wall of this tomb, kind of engraving it. And it's kind of spooky. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see here. What is this guy's name? Geshad Sarvesh Tumam. I'm going to try to make an engraving here on the wall. Okay. And I want to make a specific image. Of like normally you could do this pretty easily. Hmm. Oh, engraving smooth claystone wall. Specify image related to historical figure. Sarvesh, uh, Sarvesh, Geshad. Was this the one? Geshad. Aval? What, I can't remember if that was his name or not. I don't want to put a put an image of some other dwarf. Oh, no, Sar, oh, no Geshad Sarvesh Tumam. That's what his name. Okay. Sorry. One second. Let me let me get this thing engraved here. Uh, I gotta make sure I'm doing this right. It feels a little funny. Okay. Uh, engrave artwork and then maybe double click. No. It does feel weird. Right click and then maybe at this point. You can double click it. It's weird. I'm not too sure how I'm accomplishing this exactly. That seems a little. Um, God damn it. What was this guy's name? <laughs> was it Geshad or Sarvesh? There we go. Geshad Furnace Moral. That was that was the guy right there. Engraving smooth claystone walls. Oh, is this is this working? I don't know what I'm doing right now. Let me try one more time. Okay, I I guess that did it. I'm unsure because if I keep clicking this button, it just keeps making me select an image. So, uh, I I'll assume that worked. That seems a little, little sloppy right there. Um, I'm not too sure if that is working or not. What well, we'll see. We'll see. Here, one second. It should it should work in just a moment. Okay, so it looks like it was engraved. Uh, engraved on the walls an image of Bestra Silver Flickered, the parched wealth of Gilding, the Dragon, and Geshad Furnace Moral, the Dwarf, by Moses Tatkeskal. Geshad Furnace Moral is striking down Bestra Silver Flickered, the parched wealth of gliding, Gilding. The artwork relates to the killing of the dragon Bestra Silver Flickered, the parched wealth of Gilding, by the ghostly dwarf Geshad Furnace Moral in the Abyss of Flyers in 92. During the duel of the ghostly dwarf Geshad... So it looks like this dwarf killed a dragon, and I would have to imagine that that's why he's wearing that dragon nail crown that he was wearing. Um, 
it's kind of ridiculous, which is epic. You know, that's really cool to picture this dwarf uh, being essentially a hero, you know, <laughs> arriving at our little fortress over here, Tusk Terror, to go hunt some monsters. And then moments later, he's killed by a group of troglodytes who beat him down, yank his helmet off, and punch him in the head till he, till he dies. Um, and now his corpse, at this moment, is rotting down in the grottoes beneath uh, Tusk Terror. Um, it's, it's cool. Maybe an underwhelming ending for the guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, we'll get a coffin put up, and uh, we'll get your mangled bones uh, just stuffed in there. Just, just a moment. I'm sorry. Just uh, here we go. Um, we'll select a material after placement. Yeah, we got our claystone coffins right over here. There we go. Good. We should be good to go. We're getting that coffin put in place, and uh, I'm curious if I have to turn it on to have a corpse be put in it, or if somebody will just do that automatically. It looks like the lid is off right now, which is interesting. Um, usually you have to like look at a coffin specifically to make sure if there's something inside it. Here, one second. You must designate a tomb before this coffin will be used for burial. Okay, so I have to make a tomb zone here, I would think? I'm unsure, but that is a decent guess, I would think. Let me see here. I'm going to finish carving it out. If that's the case, I want to get this whole place carved out first and then make it all a zone. I really am in love with the way they did the whole um, zone system there. They they really made that a lot cleaner, a lot smarter. Very cool. Very, very cool. Um, very awesome. It's the wrong guy? No. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, he killed a literal dragon. He killed a literal dragon and was killed by some naked, dirty guys down <laughs> below the fortress. It just, that's it. That's the end of his story. The, the hero dragon killer was killed by, uh, nothing. <laughs> so ridiculous. All right, so we're, we're pumping out coffins over here. Um, let's mine this thing out, though, huh? Let's get that done. I want to mine this out. Get some more stone. We we got some stone over here. I am a little shocked at how little stone is coming out of all this mining over out of uh, wait, wait, wait. over here. Sorry, I got tangled up in my words right there. Um, again, I I do kind of like it though. You know, it forces you to have to dig, 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 and just keep digging, which I really like. You know, very cool, very cool. Um, why are you sleeping in here? Doran Batanfikod, the Mace Dwarf, is just sleeping in our meeting hall. We do have a dormitory over here. If you're interested, you can kind of come over and take a little sleep-ski. Why are we not mining over here? Hmm. Why not? Let's have a look. Um, oh, okay, we got two miners. One of them socializing right now. Dodok, an Arab, is making claystone coffins. I guess it must be his job to, uh, make some coffins well we can stop that i just want to get this place carved out so we can haul those mangled bones over here and get them tossed in a in a coffin real quick <laughs> you know he probably kill steal the dragon yeah i mean i guess i wouldn't doubt it the guy didn't really seem so impressive here in the fortress huh um okay looks like we have a troglodyte fighting with a mace dwarf here in the caves let me take a look here i'm gonna zoom over to the area Right over here, we have Doran, the Mace Dwarf, another monster slayer. He's got three children and is currently healthy, 35 years old. And he's taking on some troglodytes over there on the left. And you can see him fighting, fighting, beating the hell out of this troglodyte. Pools of blood, killed two, wonderful. Moving on through the caves now to do some more hunting. Okay, this guy here, I, I'm going to say this dwarf seems a little bit more competent, but be careful. The dragon slayer was killed by a troglodyte, so you never know what near end can come. Especially out here in the grottoes beneath... To, uh, to, I almost said Tomb Terror, t Tusk Terror. That's right. <laughs> Having a look at this stairway over here. Uh, the stairway's looking a little cleaner. Not too, too bad. Um, can I mine out? Okay. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out how some stuff works, okay? Like, you can't mine away constructed walls still. They have to be actually taken down. Um, that being said, how do designate constructed walls, floors, and other constructed tiles to be removed by miners? Constructed walls, floors, and other constructed tiles to be removed by miners. I thought this was a constructed wall. Interesting. 
how to get rid of things. Hmm. Building? Can I... I uh, hmm. How do I get rid of a wall? There's a, there's a wall right here. A chalk block pillar that we've constructed. I would assume that you can do that by, by hitting this little dealie over here. But that doesn't seem to be doing it. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. Oh, it just popped up right there. <laughs> it wasn't popping up on that previous menu. I had to hit escape. And then when I got back out to like... When I unpaused the game, it popped up. Or... Game is still paused. I'm not too sure. I don't really know what caused that, but that thing wasn't popping up right away. Did you see how fast that wall was destroyed right there? It used to take dwarves forever to destroy a certain wall segment, but that that was really really quick. Hmm. You know, I I'm fine with that fix right there. It always seems kind of strange to me that it took dwarves a long time to remove walls, but not like you know workshops or anything like that. It took them a long time to get rid of walls and floors and all that sort of stuff. But uh, I'm com completely fine with that. Absolutely. Wonderful. Hell yes, hell yes. I'm just liking this thing more and more. It's going to take me a little bit to get used to it, of course. But I haven't really seen a lot that I don't like so far. Hell yes. This is this is going to work out pretty darn well, my bearded bastards. I think so. Very excited to see what the future of Dwarf Fortress holds now. Um, and really, this this update is offering a lot more to me than I thought it ever could. Very impressed. Very, very impressed. I'm, I'm loving it. I really am. Let me see here. Okay. This uh, we really got to clean up these caves, don't we? Just a, a little bit over here, anyways. I'm trying to make there be one little entrance to get out into the caves, and then like one to get back in. You know, like just keep it simple. You know. But um, I haven't really been so successful on that. Gonna get some rock blocks thrown in here real quick. Up here too. Yes. 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 One second. Do 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 dee 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 chalk blocks. There we go. Okay, there we go. Now then, um looking pretty good. Just have this one little way to get in and out now. And I, I think that's gonna work out pretty good. You know what actually uh, what else we could do is like let's let's clean up these tunnels a little bit. I always like to clean up the underground where I can just to make it a little bit more spacious, that sort of stuff. Um so, why the hell not? You know, get some more stone out of the deal. It's occurring to me now that I don't really know how dangerous this version of Dwarf Fortress is. I'm kind of just playing the game as I would with normal Dwarf Fortress. Um, which is already pretty darn dangerous. <laughs> like, when are we going to see a Forgotten Beast, do you think? Is that, like, are we on the cusp of it happening? Is this version a little bit more dangerous, perhaps? We don't know. Um... It will be interesting to see, though, right? I want to see a Forgotten Beast really badly. You know, I want to see that little icon pop up and stuff. How is it going to be represented, do you think? Very excited. Very excited. I think it's going to be just stellar. <laughs> Hell yes. Um, let me see. Just glancing on chat. Uh, Darn Cha-Cha, thank you very much. Just lost a dwarf fortress to a giant lovebird. His guts were all over the floor. Loving the new addition. Thank you very much. And yes, that that is great, isn't it? <laughs> I love that. Just Dwarf Fortress. You know, Dwarf Fortress crap. You got a giant lovebird with guts spilled all over the floor. It's perfectly Dwarf Fortress right there. A giant lovebird. <laughs> Some silly shit. <laughs> Gotta love it. Um, let, let's try that thing I was doing before. I, I'm still not sure if how dwarves build things has been cleaned up at all. I can't imagine it has been. And again, I haven't heard anything about that. But maybe it has been. I'm going to try to build a wall around this area up here. Okay. I'm going to go like this, right? Drag a square around this whole... Um, no, maybe maybe that just won't work. Oh, we got stairs in the way here. Never mind. Uh, chalk blocks. Do, 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 do. A couple of chalk blocks. Uh, one second, one second. Still trying to get used to things. <laughs> wall, keep building afterwards. There we go. Chalk blocks. Chalk blocks. Chalk blocks. There we go. We'll see. If they build this all flawlessly again without, like, missing out those corners, then uh, I'm going to feel pretty perky about the, the whole uh, building system. Let's see. One, two. Okay, they're getting there. They're getting there. They're doing it smart. Can they build diagonally now? 
Is that last spot going to be built? Come on. Come on. Damn it. Doesn't look like it. It was suspended. I'm going to resume construction. I don't know why it was suspended. Maybe somebody was bothered by something. Cannot reach site. Okay. Yeah, maybe it's just uh, it's not possible still. That's fine. I guess I assumed as much. Lame. Oh, well. That's fine. Um, I'm going to try to get rid of construction again. Okay, that time it worked. It put that little icon right over the wall that I, I had ordered to be destroyed. Um, there we go. And it's so fast, too. I really like that. <laughs> That's something that I, I didn't really realize I needed in my life, uh, being able to destroy walls that you've constructed faster. I guess I don't really know why it took so long before. It seems kind of weird. But, you know, I, I guess Dwarf Fortress kind of has that effect it makes you just uh, accept things that might be strange in other games, you know? But, but yes, it's, it's looking pretty good now. There we go. Okay, so that whole thing was built. No problem. Wonderful. We should probably continue on to cleaning up some of these walls, shouldn't we? I think so. Oh, yes, this is it's looking pretty good down here. Yeah, we'll just start carving out a lot of this stone. Because, I mean, we're going to use all this stone. Might as well. Got a, a lot of stone that we need. So instead of having that clunky mine up top, we'll just start hacking away all this stone that's cluttering up places down here. I'm really not doing us too much good anyways. So, yeah. Here we go. Get to it, my dwarves. Get to it. Um, on that note, we're going to come up to the sandy area, I think. And maybe we're going to start cleaning this up a little bit. We do have all those blocks, so it seems like a shame to not put them to use, you know? We got grass and moss growing all over our stairs here. What is this? The the stone crafter Kikrost Kirarvebach and the expedition leader Sarvesh Godenanad have married. Congratulations. Very cool. Let me see here. Where did that happen? Um I'm not too sure. Not too sure. That's that's cool though. Sarvesh, our expedition leader over here. Spouse is Kikrost. I, I really like how they have these things set up. These are very, very cool. Um, just this whole panel right here. You know, it, it just lets you know everything you got to know. And I'm a, I'm a big fan of it so far. Very, very cool. Um, but, but yeah, uh, you know, she's happy. Having a look in her, her head. She's delighted after watching her performance. Feels empathy while being yelled at by an unhappy citizen. Probably one of those dwarves who was frightened by ghosts, I would imagine. Uh, bitter after getting into an argument with the unhappy citizen, I would imagine. Um, satisfied after conducting a meeting in a great setting. I can't really imagine why she considers her office to be a great setting. It's really just a a box with a, a chair and a table. Man, i got to stay on task a little bit. We have our tomb over here. we really got to do something about that dead body there. So, you know, that ghost isn't, like, haunting the fortress anymore. <laughs> um, it shouldn't be too difficult, though. A tomb okay so we're gonna make a tomb okay just like right over here just like that okay just like that except and this will be called the tomb of tusks there we go and so it's now considered to be a tomb i would assume the next thing somebody does is goes and gets that body and hucks it into this box. Let me see here. Um, where are all our dwarves? Do -do 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 -do. It's just, there's no like scroll bar on this thing. I can't tell if the things are screwed up because of that interface thing or what's going on exactly. Um, yeah, well, somebody's going to throw that body in there at some point, I would assume. We'll get to there. We'll get to there. Soon enough. Soon enough. Just give it a moment. I'm just going to keep eyes on it. I want to see what happens. I want to see like if the lid closes after somebody puts the bones in there. I would imagine that. What the hell is that? What just walked in here? Oh, it's a human. I wasn't too sure what this uh, this this face was. <laughs> it just looks like a like a muddled pile or something. But not, I can see now. It's a, it is a face. A human bard over here. Uh, Atham Flora Veils. Just got some clothes, no instruments or anything. Just coming in to maybe dance or tell some stories or something like that. That's cool. That's fine. Who's getting that corpse put away? I don't think we did anything with the bones. and Nor would I think the bones have rotted away or anything at this point. That's not how Dwarf Fortress works typically. But maybe they have. Maybe 
remains disappear quicker now. Which, you know, seems like a change that I could imagine them putting in place. Oh. We got a naked mole dog over here. One year old, healthy. No position within the fortress. Uh, covered with troglodyte blood. Must have had a tussle down in the caves. Personality. A natural ability with music. And a good kinesthetic sense. Has a little difficulty with words. Probably because the thing can't speak. Only just grunt and whine. Um... He works. He likes working outdoors and grumbles only mildly at inclement weather. Like, again, I I like the idea that animals can have minds and personalities and stuff, but some of the stuff doesn't really line up with what I imagine a naked mole dog feeling. You know, um, I'm getting off track here. I really gotta watch this tomb. I want to see somebody put the bones away. Hey, there you go. Somebody just ran up, and the the tomb is now c closed. Geshad Sarvesh Tumam, Ghostly Axe Dwarf, is uh, is here now. Um, it says this is the resting place of Geshad Sarvesh Tumam, Ghostly Axe Dwarf. Um, and, okay, it looks like one of Geshad's teeth is now in the coffin. So, the, the dwarf just picked up a, a single tooth and put it in the coffin and then put the lid on. Like, okay, there we go. Job well done. <laughs> That's fair. Um... Where's the rest of them, though? Like, put the rest of them in there, too. Like, not just a tooth. I would assume multiple dwarves get a... Okay, we got this dwarf over here. Asab, I think that's the one who put it in there originally. Where are you? Where is this dwarf? Place item in tomb. I don't know. Go to this dwarf. Okay, here we go. There we go. Get, getting to it, I believe. They're over on the left side now. Okay, they just picked up something else. I don't think it was the entire body, but just like a, maybe a fragment of it, maybe a toe or a piece of hair or something like that, and are scurrying back to the tomb to go put it in the coffin. You know, you could scoop up, bring a bag with you. You know, you could put all the bones and teeth in there and then just like head on up and, you know, get all tossed into the tomb real quick. They're heading back down now. They're just like one bone at a time. Um, it feels disrespectful in a way, really. You know, just like pick up a... a, a a tooth and whatever the hell that was just there um i have to imagine this dwarf's gonna have to pick up the whole body now right like the whole thing nope just another little piece what are you picking off of this corpse we still got another tooth and then the full ass skeleton over here um <laughs> as well as this dragon nail crown why are dwarves hanging out here by the way out by the wagon uh, I mean, I see a lot of unhappy faces. I, I can't blame you guys. I really can't blame you guys because, like, you're, you're hanging out outside. Maybe our, our, our meeting hall really isn't sufficient for anybody to inhabit because it's just, like, a long, long featureless room. Um, okay. <laughs> just got a lot of stuff to juggle. I'm over here. I've played Dwarf Fortress for, you know, 11, 12 years, and I'm still bumbling along, unsure of what the hell I'm doing. Like, the game really isn't uh, that... Un that complicated for me right now where I should be doing this poorly but I'm doing very poorly <laughs> uh, you know I, I'm just taking it in there's a lot of stuff to look at okay leave me alone here one second um okay so we're you know down down in the caves we've got a lot of stone now we need some tables we need some chairs ASAP we also need apparently some cups and mugs so our dwarves stop crying and fussing over everything um, I'm gonna build a workshop, another stone worker workshop, down here, out in the caves. Just like that. Okay, out of chalk blocks, sure. Um, we're gonna do that, and don't, we have an office upstairs, yes, and, you know what, I'm gonna make that one dwarf there, our bookkeeper, also be our manager, Sarvesh. There you go, there you go. Um, so this, this dwarf now has another task loaded onto her shoulders, and I want to figure out how to make an order. I don't know how to do that right now. Man, our dwarves are pissed. We got two of them who are just, like, out of their minds with rage right now, and then, like, six who are just kind of like, boy, this place is horrible, and three who are like, eh, kind of over it. Just, like, four dwarves in the fortress who are kind of like, yeah, this place is kind of okay. And then one guy who's like, man, this is the best place in the world. Who is that? I want to see who's who's this happy camper over here. That's you, Asab the farmer, placing items in tombs. Go figure. The one dwarf who's like picking up the fragments of this dead deceased dwarf out in the caves is like, man, I love this place. I could not get over this place if I wanted to. <laughs> Thank you, Asab. 
it's wonderful i'm glad to you know see that kind of spirit on a dwarf you know hell yes <laughs> Um, anyways, what the hell was I just rambling about moments ago before I got distracted again? Um, tables. I, it's, it's kind of pitiful how easy my train of thought is derailed at points. <laughs> sorry, terribly sorry. Um, anywho, yeah, we got food and drinks now, so we're good. We came down here. We're going to make this, um, that, that's right. We're going to make, um, the production order there. So let me see here. Alert. Okay, Geshud was put to rest. That's cool. Okay, so we actually have to put the body of a deceased dwarf in a tomb now in order to get them to be put to rest. I think how it worked before is you could just put one of their teeth into a tomb and they'd be like, okay, I'm at rest, and then fade away. But um, now you actually have to put their body in there, which is good. That's sensible. It's a sen sensible change. If it is a change, I, I believe it is. I'm not 100%, though. I often don't pay attention. A scatterbrain and all you, you see. Stoneworkers workshop. Okay, um, I'm going to. Or not, that's right. I'm gonna get the uh, the labors there. Right. Work orders. Let's see here. Used to automate tasks in workshops. These work orders are set to complete a certain number of tasks and can be given start conditions. For instance, you can create an order to make wooden bins if you are out of empty ones, to brew drinks if you are running low, or to make five statues every month. You can limit work orders to a number of workshops. You can also create work orders at specific work sh workshops from their building sheet. The system is reasonably powerful, and you can eventually automate almost all of your production if you wish. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. I like that you can create work orders from a given workshop now. I think that's a change. Um, you could do it before, but like it was, um, was kind of sloppy. Um, but it seems to be a little bit more straightforward now, which is exciting. No active work orders. I'm going to start a new one here. Okay. Um, if I go up here and say rock table, okay, um, I can make rock tables and can use any shop. Um, mm, too many buttons. Ugh. Okay. 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 There we go. Make 20 rock tables. Okay. And use... Uh, chalk, siltstone. We'll use chalk. We'll make 20 chalk tables. Um, make another one. We'll make rock thrones. Make 20 of those as well. How about? There we go. And we're going to make those out of, um, what did I say? Chalk, uh, siltstone is what we'll make the, the thrones out of. Just to make sure we've got enough stone. We really don't have that much. But that should, you know, get us all set for a little bit. Um, also, I'm not too sure who we've got for masons or who's doing jobs nowadays. Is this one of those things that anybody will do? Like, will people just start making these things? Unsure. Unsure. Yeah, why are you guys sitting out by the wagon? Like, we do have a meeting hall. I know it's not a great one, but, like, maybe you'd want to be inside rather than, like, standing out. Standing out there, you know? Um. Hmm. Unsure. Unsure. We'll, we'll get it sorted soon enough. Uh, as soon as we get some tables and chairs in here, maybe I'll destroy that wagon and we'll just see what we do from from that point forward, huh? Wolf, thank you very much. Been watching for years. Much love. Back at you, my friend. Um, means a lot. Wagons are meeting areas. Is that... I mean, that used to be how it was before. They would meet at wagons, but like as soon as you had a meeting area down, they would be like, uh... Maybe we won't go to the wagon anymore. I guess I would have to destroy the wagon in order to get them to leave the wagon. I guess there's really not a good point for them to be out here. It's kind of dangerous and all. Not that it's much safer inside our fortress, I suppose. <laughs> With all the Drunians and the naked mole dogs and stuff running around all over the place. It's, it's kind of dangerous. Kind of dangerous. Um, Let me see. Okay, so our wagon is destroyed now. And it does look like our dwarves aren't leaving quite yet. They kind of just start standing around a pile of trash up here now. Uh, <laughs> all kinds of stuff on the ground. They're just like, yeah, it's fine. Um, those elephants. I keep forgetting about these elephants. Look at that. Cute as a button. We got two young elephant calves now. The three parents. The I, I would have thought the grass on the ground would start to dis dissipate a bit. Um, but that doesn't seem to be the case. It seems to be hanging in there pretty darn well. Um, hmm. Uh, I'm wondering if... Because, I mean, obviously they're eating the grass on the ground. They were getting hungry when they were off, like, over this sandy area. But um, I wonder if they don't, like, destroy the grass when they're eating now. That's pretty cool. Looking at this tree here, if you look up, 
you can see the branches are all barren now. That's so cool looking. I love that. I was kind of wondering what it would look like after, like, the, you know, all the leaves fell off and stuff. And there you have it. That's really neat. I love that. Such a good job, once again. Bay 12 Kit Fox. Nice work. What the hell do we have on the, the ground over here? Ash Samaras? What is that? Is that like a some sort of a, a nut or something like that? Some, some sort of a nut to gather? Oh, I got all kinds of crap all over the ground. Huh. Yeah, we should be out here gathering nuts, eh? Um, that being said, yeah, let's uh let's gather some stuff. I'm gonna zoom out just a, a little bit here. Here we go. And I'm gonna set like all this stuff to be gathered because I, I think we gathered all that stuff from the area that I had selected before. It looks like all of our dwarves run outside and gather now. Okay, I have to. I, I've really gotta be able to wrap my mind around this system, but I think. It is set now so that dwarves will just do any old task unless you have them doing specific things which I really like a lot that's great I just gotta figure out how it works exactly you know kind of look at it a little bit more but um this is good so far I really like this what time of year is it 27th of obsidian late winter in year 100 we're not through our first year yet really I think we're doing pretty good you know I'd say so. We're really, I guess, not doing so well. But, um, you know, I, I like to say we're doing okay. Pretty okay. <laughs> Saving the game. There, I think the um, there's like a seasonal auto save or like or something like that. Maybe like um, bi yearly or something like that. Yeah, spring has arrived. Okay, there we go. We're pretty much at our one year anniversary of this fortress at this point. That's not so bad. Not so bad at all. I like that. That ghost has been put to rest now. So that's excellent. Let's get our tomb smoothed up. We're going to finish smoothing that up now. What else was I doing? I feel like I had something else. Those work orders. How are those looking, do you think? Let's have a gander. Um, Work orders. Uh, Yes, yes, yes. I, I guess don't show this again. That's fine. Um, Okay. 13 out of 20. Okay, that's how many left we have done. So... Uh, we've got a whole bunch of stuff made. Wonderful. Um, I'm gonna make some. I keep like just using hotkeys like I would in Dwarf Fortress normally, but I gotta get used to it. Uh, table. Okay. We're gonna put down some tables, just like right, right here. Some chalk tables. One, two, three. This guys, this is gonna be a nice meeting hall. Okay, so. Get the hell away from that wagon wreckage, and we can just come on inside and have a great old time over here. How about? Sound good? It should. Did I, I just placed a walnut one? I didn't mean to. It's fine. I'll get it removed later on. Um, let's see here. Now some th thrones. Hmm. Where is it? Chairs. Yes. Ah, uh, there we go. Siltstone. Siltstone. So it's, I guess I could just set it to closest material, and it would just does whatever's closest, which is pretty darn handy too, huh? I like that. It's gonna at some point gonna make that wooden throne be in there, but that's probably fine. There we go. This is an actual meeting hall now with places to sit and stuff. You know, it only took a year. It's not bad. A couple thirsty dwarves here. Um, I guess I don't know what our food and drink stockpiles look like because of the uh, weird interface nonsense I'm dealing with here. Uh, we've got no drinks. No drinks in the fortress. Uh, 208 food, 68 plants. Not looking good. <laughs> we got to get some more drinks ASAP. I think we probably cooked all of our stuff. And that is probably our problem, I would assume. But we're going to get everything cooked up real quick. There we go. Uh, probably need some more barrels, too, I would imagine. Let's see. Back up here to the surface, we have our carpenter workshop. We're going to add some new tasks. We're just going to make a whole slew of barrels. Just set it on repeat for now. Turn all of our wood on the surface into barrels. Um, also, you know what is funny and stupid? That we haven't made any crafts or anything yet. Remember I was saying that last year? Like, boy, we should have made something to trade. And we're going to be careful to make some this year. And here we are. Months later, we still haven't done it. <laughs> Dumb. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Maximize interface width in the settings menu. Let me see here. Where is this? Maximize interface width. Okay. Um, does that... 
Oh, oh, you mean maximum. Is there a maximize? I don't see that. Unsure. Unsure. I'll get it sorted out eventually. Just probably not on this this stream. <laughs> I don't really want to go messing around with it too too much, you know. Petrified wood. We discovered some petrified wood underground. That's really cool. Making some wooden barrels over here. Uh, craft. What the hell happened over here? A Drunian was just absolutely exploded. Got bones and blood all over the ground. Not too sure what happened to that fella. <laughs> Yuck. What a mess. Um, anywho. Yes, we got all this crap on the ground. It looks like our dwarves have migrated down below ground now, which is just wonderful. You'll love to see it. Or maybe not. I'm not too sure where they went. Where did you guys go? Where did everyone go? Oh, they're probably out gathering plants and uh, doing all kinds of other stuff, too. Look at that. Got all kinds of plants now to brew. I think we're going to be all set on drinks and stuff. Not too, too worried about it. We're going to be good. We're going to be good. Not too worried. We'll get there. Got a bard visiting. Oh, that'd be nice. Some entertainment for our dwarves. <laughs> Mine is getting all carved out now. Yes, we're looking good. What a peaceful and prosperous little fortress, don't you say? Not too bad. Not too bad. Could be worse. Absolutely. Now then, um, hmm. Well, I suppose we should start thinking of crafts a little bit more seriously, shouldn't we? We do need some stuff to trade. So, on that note, I'm going to make some little workshop areas, I guess, off of our meeting hall here. Nothing too fancy. I'm going to keep everything pretty simple for this fortress. But, um, yes, we'll make like a little area kind of like this right here. Okay, maybe a mason, maybe a craft dwarf workshop. Maybe I'll make a couple of these little crafting areas. Then maybe we'll make like a, a an area yeah, like over here that can go up and down, something like that. Um, let me see. Is this up or down? I can't tell. No, that, that's down. I, I lose track of like where the mouse wheel is taking me up or down. You know, like this is underneath and this is above. Or no, that's, that's <laughs> that was underneath. One second. Stairs. No, no, no. One second. I got my brains all turned around. One second, one second. Mining. Stairs. Okay. I'm going to start here. I'm going to go up. Just one little space right here, right above. And then we're going to start mining an area out. A nice big area for some storage. Right up here. Okay. There we go. Now we're going to get some like stone and stuff in here as well as some workshops. And then maybe up above we'll put our, our crafted goods so we can just snag them when they're ready and trade when we can. That sort of stuff. Um, yeah, the mouse wheeling gets a little screwy, doesn't it? <laughs> Yeah, the uh, the bar on the rightmost side shows your depth versus the surface. That's right. I um I often forget that, but like I, I'm also like looking at it like, huh? Like, <laughs> kind of hard to make heads or tails of it sometimes, you know. Um, usually when I'm playing Dwarf Fortress, in order to like tell if I'm going up or down, like I'll have certain landmarks. Like if I go up, there'll be a certain room, or down, there'll be a certain room. But like with this fortress, it's all just on this one layer right now, so it's kind of hard to tell. Just with a mouse wheel. But it's fine. One of those things you get used to. It's going to be fine. A hundred percent. So that's underneath. Got a little storage chamber below. Got our workshops. Going to be all set shortly, I believe. Um, doo, 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 doo. Meeting hall's looking pretty good. Got this one uh, <laughs> wooden table. Got one wooden chair in here. Seems a little strange. Got a petition. Zephon Wash Sabers wishes to reside in Tusk Terror, the Beak of Sneak, for the purpose of entertaining citizens and visitors. We need that. Badly. Uh, Zephon, welcome aboard. Where is Zephon? Where are you? Zeph? Man, oh man, this poor office over here. Like, um... Wait, what is this? The engraver Moral and Sazir has revealed the presence of the distraction of matches to the human crossbowman Gensesh Usim Sona. Sonia. Okay, <laughs> we do have that artifact crossbow in the fortress, and it looks like one of our idiot dwarves was just like, hey, we have this artifact over here, um, that could get us in trouble. Like, if information like that gets out, then, like, um, 
you know, you could, you could be in trouble later on. Like maybe that person that this dwarf told is going to go out and tell somebody that the artifact is here. And maybe someone eventually is going to be like, hey, maybe we can go yank that artifact away, you know. It, it looks like, like it happened again. The fortress attracted no migrants this season. That's not good. Usually that only happens to me when I'm like playing a fortress for a long, long time. Not, you know, after the first year's up. It's got to be because um, there was some sort of a change. Maybe we really have to be trading in order to keep migrants coming to the fortress continually. You know, we've not been good at that at all. That being the case, um, we should get started on some workshops. I haven't built the workshops here yet because I was like, you know what? We really should smooth out the floors and stuff because usually in Dwarf Fortress, you got to smooth the floors because if you don't do it before you build your workshops, then the floors don't get smooth. But I'm wondering if I could just build these things and the dwarves are now smooth under them, you know? I, that would be sensible, I feel. But I don't know. I don't know. I like how... Hmm, you know, I was going to say... Never mind. I'm not too sure what I'm talking about. Um, here, one second. Build. Where is... I'm looking for a Crafts Dwarf shop. Metalsmith, screw press, siege, carpenter, crafts. Okay, duh. Right here, crafts. Uh, this is just just crafts. What else was I going to put in here? Oh, stone workers. That's right. Okay. Um, we're going to put... A couple of craft dwarf shops in here just like that as well as some stoneworker shops just like that okay that should get the job done well enough and when we come up top here I'm also going to I'm gonna cancel this wooden barrel thing for now and make some wheelbarrows wooden wheelbarrows and I'm gonna set it to repeat for a moment <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't do that. I'm going to end up with 10,000 wheelbarrows. I'm just going to make some real quick wheelbarrows. I'm going to make uh, just we'll make like three of them. We'll make six. How about one, two, did I? Oh, one, two, three. One second. I feel, I, I'm not going to get used to the game being unpaused when I'm doing this sort of stuff. I'm not sure that's something I could get used to. I have to like keep track mentally of how many I've already selected. Because right there I was placing those wheelbarrows and like one was made while I was selecting them. Which kind of screws things up a little bit. Um, uh, the combat report, like it, it's a, uh, it keeps slipping away from me. I feel like I'm detached from the combat report for some reason. I'm just not used to it being there. I notice there's a group of troglodytes up on the surface, and um, hmm. let me just take a look here. You've got a troglodyte up on the surface, just retching and vomiting all over the place. Uh, somebody ripped off this troglodyte's finger. Um, uh, in their teeth. They ripped off the troglodytes. They, they bit off the troglodytes finger. Something happened to this troglodyte where they're just retching and vomiting and running around up on the surface now uh, in this, this bright, bright world. Let me see here. Okay, one of our work orders was done. What is this diplomacy here, do you think? Let's have a gander, A eh? Alert. Oh, a farmer was found dead. Where? Oh. That's not good. <laughs> that's, that's an awful lot of blood, man. What would it look like if you faced down a goblin siege, I wonder? Because, um, like, this is a horrific sight right here with all this blood and gore and, like, little pieces of people on the ground and stuff. Like, if you had a full-on goblin siege, it's going to be a mess and a half, wouldn't it be? Man, oh, man, I couldn't even imagine what that would look like. Um, but, yes, we just... We lost a dwarf, Asab. Who was that? Who was Asab? Was that I? I was afraid it might be Saravesh, our expedition leader, but it, it wasn't. Or Asab, wasn't that the happy dwarf? I think it was actually. That sucks if it was. Um, damn it, it was. And you know what? I know it was too because I remember that dwarf's face just by the little icon over here. That's an unusual thing. You know, I know that that was the happy dwarf because I remembered her face. That's really weird. Um, I remembered that dwarf's face in particular. That's just a, a strange thing to get from Dwarf Fortress. Um, yeah, and yeah, that that was the face she had. I wasn't even thinking to look at the dead body on the ground, but yes, that that is her. I know by her face. Really weird. Um, what's going on over here? <laughs> we, got, we got this guy who's unimpressed, 
And then next to him, there's a troglodyte who's like flexing, just like, what do you think? What do you think of my gains? Sick gains. And this guy's just like, yeah, I'm not impressed. Uh, that's not actually what's going on over here. Um, I'm not too sure. I think the troglodyte's probably um, fighting, and the other guy's just like calm or something like that. This troglodyte is overexerted and seriously injured currently. While this dwarf, Vukar the Bard, is 38 years old, five children, exhausted and seriously injured and unconscious and can't stand or grasp. Um, that's not good. His head is torn open. His left ear is gone. He's just being, I think, killed by this troglodyte. Uh, not doing a great job of protecting our dwarves. The game, I... I thought maybe the game would be toned down a little bit for the Steam release, but if anything, it seems to have been cranked up with difficulty-wise, which is great to see. I, I really like that, you know? Like, the game feels a little bit more challenging, which I like. Um, and I don't think it's just, like, this new UI and stuff that's doing it. I really like that. What, what is that? Okay, well, I don't know what that diplomacy thing was. I clicked it and it just disappeared. Um, unsure. Unsure. Anyways, um, yeah, we're going to continue playing now. What was I doing before all that? I got distracted again. <laughs> hey, can we stop dying, everyone? Let's uh, let's quit that, huh? Who died over here? We got another dwarf who's just taken down by these surface-dwelling troglodytes. I don't like that. Asab was killed. One of our miners, or D Dodok is who it was. It Dodok was killed. Um, okay, stop, please. <laughs> don't don't kill us anymore. Um. Population is at 15 right now, which isn't which isn't terrible, but uh, it's getting smaller and smaller by the moment. Okay. Um, hey, I know you're a bard, but like, you want to mine? <laughs> kind of need a miner. So, where are you right now? This guy, 29 years old, Zephon Wash Sabers. Sabers. I, I know you're gonna entertain our fortress, but we kind of need a miner right now. So. Maybe you can just, yeah, go be a miner. There you go. Pick up a pick, uh, probably from the dead guy, and uh, you, could, you could get straight to work. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Anywho, uh, new stockpile would, would be in order, I believe. I'm going to get a stockpile set up right in here. Let's see if I could just do this naturally. Stockpile, click. I'm going to zoom it right up over here, right over this whole area right here. Accept. Wonderful. Stone, click that. Custom, we can choose what stone is put in here exactly. And I'm not going to accept metal ores. Uh, no, no metal ores. Nothing. No clay. No economic stone either. Yeah. Just other stones. Just like spare stone. Stuff that can't be used for other purposes. We're going to have that all put into this stockpile right here. Um, that being said, we can also, I think, choose how many... Yes. Set how many bar bar barrels... <laughs> typo there barrels bins and wheelbarrows the stockpile can use um max wheelbarrows i'm gonna put three usually it's three automatically um but it looks like now thankfully we could put as many wheelbarrows as we want in here which I, it was always three for some reason with stockpiles but now you can just put as many as you want which is wonderful that's really cool um i'm gonna put six stockpile uh six wheelbarrows in this stockpile okay and that's that's probably gonna help um Dwarf's going to go and grab a wheelbarrow. They will go and grab a heavy, heavy boulder and bring it over to this pile right here. And then after it's here, we can have our craft dwarves or masons or whatever the hell do whatever they want with the boulders and they'll be right at hand. That's going to be great. Do a barrel roll. Exactly. Um, let me see here. Oh my god. Ugh, stretching out again. I can't believe it's 225 already. That's amazing. It's been four and a half hours almost. And, you know, my beauty bastards, we have quite some time to go. I should probably take a little break for a second, huh? You know? Probably. Let's see here. I'm just looking at a combat report. We've got a hammer dwarf visiting right now. Okay. Okay, going good. We can see one of those wheelbarrows in here. Now, I think somebody just grabbed it, actually. This dwarf over here just grabbed a wheelbarrow. And you can see them. Saravesh, our expedition leader, grabbed a wheelbarrow. And it's now heading out. Uh, probably down to the caves. Now out to the mines over here. He's grabbing a boulder. Shloop, there it is. And they're heading back with a wheelbarrow filled with boulder. There they go. And they're going to poop, pop it right up in there. And uh, that, that's it. They're Okay, they're going grabbing the wheelbarrow again. They're probably just going to do that and repeat. Just grabbing random boulders and heading back. And they're going to get that stockpile filled right the hell up, which is great. 
I think while we're doing that, we should probably should just start cranking out some crafts, huh? I think so. Crafts Dwarf Workshop. Add a new task. Let's see here. Rock, wood, bone, shells. Oh, right. We can make some shell stuff, too. And I, I know we've got a whole bunch of shells up on the surface, too. Maybe we should do that, eh? Hmm. 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 Pearl. Leather. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to make rock. We're going to make some rock stuff. Rock crafts. Just some... Some plain old crafts, nothing too fancy, okay? And we're going to set that to repeat and do it now. Yeah, go straight for it. And you know what? Uh, let's see here. Because sometimes you can set set from which workshops and stockpiles. This stockpile gives and takes items. Okay. Um, how? Select a stockpile or workshop to give to. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I think that worked. Select the down arrow. That's what items will leave the stockpile right over here. And they will go to these workshops right over here. Okay. That should work, I believe. Um, yeah. Wonderful. We're just going to start pumping out crafts, I guess. Just so we have something to trade next year, you know? How does that sound? Um, right now, repeat and get to it. We're probably going to burn through all the rock in here, I would imagine. Um, what is this diplomacy again? What is that? What the hell was it? It popped up and I, I, I left clicked it and it disappeared. I'm an, unsure. I'm sure. I have no idea. Here, okay, let's see. They, I think they're making some crafts now. Right here, yes, we've got, we've got a bauxite scepter here that was just created. I want to have a closer look at this item, though. Um, let's see here. This is a well-crafted bauxite scepter. Its its weight is nine um, units. <laughs> nine units of weight. A pretty hefty scepter, this thing. It's in a craft dwarf workshop. Very cool. And over here we have an earring, an amulet, a bracelet. All kinds of crap. That's really neat. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. Oh, what was that? It was a beetle on the ground. I just saw like a, some sort of a, a little beetle. An insect or something. Pretty cool. Anywho, um, yes, got our meeting hall. Our meeting hall is looking kind of scudgy. Not too great. What's this guy's deal? Man, oh man, look at this guy. Endoc the Hammer Dwarf with what kind of armor is this? Looks like it's gold or something like that. Um, it's a bismuth bronze male shirt. I wonder how much variation there is in the color of like armor and stuff too. I guess I was under the impression that armor would always appear a certain way. And maybe that's just the color of bismuth bronze, but like this armor looks to be for like gleaming gold in a way. I don't know. Um, we'll just have to keep an eye on it. Maybe I'm just like not seeing things right. This guy's got a bronze shield over here. Okay, and then these two other ones. This guy here has a... This guy's got a bronze shield as well. This uh, human lasher. Okay, so both of these guys over here have bronze shields, even though one is like clearly a light gray color and the other is a more bronze sort of a shade. That is interesting. Okay, just keep that in mind. Apparently, their items can just have any old color and they don't necessarily line up with what they're currently wielding. Okay, okay. Um, I don't know if that's the case with everything though. Like, let's have a look over here. Saravesh, the expedition leader, is wielding a, a copper battle axe with both of her hands and well i mean i guess that could be copper the thing that she's holding doesn't really read that way to me typically but uh, totally i should say but hmm interesting this guy's got a copper pick that does certainly look coppery down there might seem like a strange thing to get hung up on but i'm just kind of like mystified i'm really taking my time and exploring things and um it's it's cool it's it's a little fun little thing to muse over i'd say Okay. Um, also have a bronze breastplate. Oh, this guy does? Bronze breastplate? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe not. Maybe there's some other one. I'm not sure. Whatever. Whatever. I'm tired of looking at armor. Okay, so we're making those things. Um, what the hell else we're we making? Oh, cool. Got this notification up here. Somebody made a masterpiece claystone figurine of Coolette Clout Urns. Okay. Uh, let's have a look at that, huh? 
Where is that? Let's see. Where is this uh, figurine of a dwarf, I guess? Might, this might be it. This is a bauxite figurine of a dwarf. Oh, no. It's just a normal, normal, normal thing right there. Where is it? Oh, here one second. Claystone figurine of Kulet. There we go. This one right here. A masterful claystone figurine of Kulet Clout Urns, created by Kogsek Tough Bumrek. The item is a masterfully designed image of Kulet Clout Urns, a dwarf, and dwarves, and claystone by Kogsek Tough Bumrek. Kulet Clout Urns is surrounded by the dwarves. The artwork relates to the ascension of the dwarf Kulet Clout Urns to the position of Queen of the Intense Ring in 94. Very cool. Very cool. See, that's what I love about Dwarf Fortress. Like, um, you know, you always see figures of, like, you know, um, a queen or something surrounded by dwarves but like you know it actually it's something that happened in this world's history there was like a, a queen who ascended to the throne and like that is an, a figurine displaying that it just makes you feel like you're part of the world when you see something like that you know like in rim world say you don't really see a lot of that like you can make a a statue with a bunch of random crap on it but like it doesn't necessarily pertain to anything else wider than like you know a, a random generator you know, which I get a lot of that that is in Dwarf Fortress too. A lot of that same sort of stuff, but um, there is also a little bit more too. You know, um, I'm not saying I, that Dwarf Fortress is some flawless history generator or anything like that. You know, but like um, it's it's still really cool. It's got a lot going on. It's got just an extra layer of depth that I really really like. Cup. Mug, goblet. Oh, I gotta choose rock first, don't I? Yes, rock. I'm trying to make cups. I, I keep forgetting to make cups for our dwarves, which is going to enrage people in pretty short order. What am I doing? One second, one second. Um, add new task. Rock, mug. Okay, rock mug. We're gonna make some rock mugs real quick. Uh, I keep forgetting to do that, which isn't good. Everyone's just like pouring alcohol out into their hands or like slurping out of their beards like a big sponge or something which isn't good uh right now yeah yeah our population is kind of not so happy with the state of things around here which i can't blame them about if you have a look over here in our expedition leader's office there was just like eight dwarves in there i'm pretty sure half of them were complaining to our expedition leader sarvesh about how much they hate being here or like how things should be different um we're turning things around. We're turning things around. Stop complaining, you damn dwarves. It's really not so bad here. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, we do need more coffins, don't we? <laughs> On that note of things not being so bad, we do need a whole heck of a lot more coffins because there are dead bodies now rotting out in the surface. Um, let's let's uh, let's get those placed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Here we go. A cozy little tomb for our dead, dead dwarves. There you go. Put those those coffins in there and they'll get filled up in short order. This is something, like, this is another thing that I'm really pleased with. Just that you can set up a tomb area and your dwarves will automatically grab dead bodies and just throw them into these tombs. Um, a lot more straightforward than the old version. That's for damn sure. I just, I like that a lot. I really like that a lot. Um... I know I didn't make the mugs on repeat, but every time you make mugs, it makes several of them. I think it's like three or four, so it should be fine. It's not like every dwarf in the fortress is all going to be drinking at the same time, so it's fine. Diplomacy. I'm going to go up here, I'm going to left-click it, and it disappears. What does that mean? I really don't know what that means. Unsure. Unsure. Um, You know what? Let me see. The world screen. Let's have a take a look at this. Let's have a take a look at the world screen real quick. We haven't actually looked at it before. Uh, the world created at the beginning of the game is active, and others may take an interest in your outpost as it grows. Stolen artifacts and kidnapped citizens can be recovered by preparing missions from this screen. You can also cause trouble if you'd like to raid your neighbors. Raids are created by clicking on any site not belonging to your civilization. Okay. So, here we go. We got our... Um, our, our whole world over here we can i would assume left click to zoom in but maybe not um we have some okay 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 just having a look around here this is our fortress yeah tusk terror is over here like um i i, I can't zoom in on the screen i guess that's kind of a shame uh but yes tusk terror is over to the east you can kind of see it's like surrounded by yellow slightly 
the green areas are our allies, I would assume. Like, we have a forest or tree over here. Um, and then, like, the blue areas are... Let me see. I think the blue areas are our civilization. Okay. Then the gray areas are no contact. Red areas, I would assume, are at war with us. But we don't seem to have any of those yet, thankfully. Yeah, we're looking, looking pretty peaceful. Pretty peaceful. Uh, I'm going to click news and rumors. Because we did get some news before. We just never checked it. Okay. And you can see some uh, a couple things popped up over here. Like, uh, like you, you can just barely see them. Um, a square brackets to zoom. Let's see. No. Didn't work. Uh, in the early spring of 100, Osnung Prowled Takes became mayor of the Moist Road. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, just some, some some boring stuff. Not too, not anything too exciting. In the late summer of one hundred, the farm the farm was known to be in the sanctuary of meditating and construct club. Okay. Um, yeah, it's just like a bunch of little random bits of information, like locations of artifacts and. Uh, Political groups rising into power and stuff. Nothing, you know, no goblin armies on the march nearby or anything like that. If we click artifacts, okay. Um, hmm, okay, okay, relax, relax, relax. What is going on here? <laughs> I'm not too sure why it's zipping around like that. I guess whenever I go over one of these artifacts, it just goes to its location, which is a little jarring. Strange, um... Yeah, I don't love how that's set up. Okay. Uh, I don't think we're going to get anything too useful out of that, that whole menu there. I would like to see what raiding and stuff is like. Like, um, you know, normally in Dwarf Fortress, you can set up a military squad and send them out to attack others. And, um, you know, it's a sometimes mixed results. Sometimes it works out pretty well. Sometimes it doesn't work so well. I guess there's a couple of ducks you got got to get in a row before you go doing it. But, um... It, it's pretty interesting, a way to interact with your neighbors in hostile fashion, I suppose. But, um, yeah, maybe we'll take a look at that. As soon as we can, like, defend ourselves or um, not starve to death, possibly. The human crossbowman, Gensash Usim Sonia, was spotted sneaking around. I'll live to fight another day. Okay, so this is that idiot that some dwarf told an artifact was in our fortress. So I, I'm sure this human is looking for this artifact. Rat bastard. Okay. Here, one second. I gotta get rid of all these notifications up here. Where is this human? I would love to know dearly. Let's see here. Opossum. There is, uh, well, where is this person? Where is this? Gensash. There you are. Right over here. Hostile. That's okay. Here they are, right in the entrance of our fortress. Right over here. Gensash Usim Sonia. Right by Urvad Aban Asteb, our stoneworker. I don't really know that we have many options to defend ourselves at this current juncture. Um, let's see. Maybe they'll run away. I'm not too sure. Do you have any items? I thought maybe, like, hey, to be fair, I would let you just take the thing and leave. I, I'm not in love with it. If it means saving our dwarves' lives, you could just take the thing. You don't got to kill anybody, you know? Let's see how this goes. I'm going to um, unpause the game. Okay, they appear to be just leaving. There they go. They're running away. Get the hell out of here. We don't need any trouble from you. You know, can't you just, like, sneak in? Oh, my God. Um, I, I think this person's leaving, but we just got another notification here. The hammer dwarf, Endok Arithzim, was spotted sneaking around. I'll live to fight another day. Okay. Um, okay, they're just really hooked on this damn crossbow, huh? I don't know where this dwarf is. Not in the entrance like that last one. Where are you, Endok? Uh, it should be marked as hostile, right? Here you are. Oh, they're like way the hell out there. This is that fellow I was looking at before with the, um, the, the fancy looking armor. I think they're running away too, though. There they go. I've unpaused it. Yeah, they're getting the hell out of here. I don't want trouble from you guys, huh? Get the hell out of here. Bunch of ratty bastards. Well, not too sure what we could even do about that. Uh, I got a petition here. Okay. Uh, somebody wants to be a, a bard, an entertainer again. Yeah, whatever. Come on in. Could use another miner, right? <laughs> Sounds good. Um, deserts do look cool, don't they? I mean, it's it's not bad, that's for sure. 
I like it. Not too bad. Back down here underground. Okay. Uh, yes. Just getting this area up here nice and smooth out. This is going to be our crafting area over here. And then I guess up top. Let me see here. Moving up and down. Okay, I'm tr really trying to get used to using this mouse wheel to navigate around, you know. <laughs> A little difficult. But yes, uh, we're going to get this all smoothed up. we got to get this area nice and smooth. There we go. And up here, we're going to put a stockpile for probably a whole bunch of things, I would imagine. I wonder if bins were fixed for this team release. That would be really exciting, wouldn't it? I'm um, not, I mean, if you're not aware of the bin problems, it was like, a, there was a couple problems with it. Like, if somebody was interacting with a bin that was filled with items, no other dwarf could do anything with it. And the items that were inside the bin were all marked as being, like, just gone for the sake of you doing anything. So, like... I'm trying to think of an example, like, I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain, but I just really hope they fixed the bin issues, because I'd like to put a whole bunch of bins up here, you know, and store crafts in them, and that sort of stuff, might be good, you know? Mm. Oh my goodness, <laughs> not that I'm tired, I just, you know, gotta yawn every once in a while, petition, got another person who wants to be an entertainer, yeah, come on in, again. Could use another miner. <laughs> Don't know how these people are going to end up, really. Um, it's difficult for me to get attached to any character in a dwarf fortress like this one here. When um, I'm just kind of like playing, like winging it like this. I really have to be making a video in order to like care about the people and stuff, you know. Just kind of how it goes, I guess. I'm noticing nobody's putting those dead bodies in our tomb. And I don't really know why that is exactly. Um... I would like to think somebody would just grab one of those corpses and throw it right in. But uh, it doesn't appear to be de being done. They did it to the one, no problem whatsoever. This whole area over here is a... It's a tomb. Okay, so it is considered to be a tomb. There's a bunch of empty old coffins in here, but nobody's doing anything with it. Hmm. A little bothersome. A little bothersome. I don't, I don't know what my options are to get people to put corpses in the right place at this point. Did those corpses, like, fall apart or something? Let's see. Up here, we got a Drunian mangled body. Let's see. Where was that? Because we had a, a dwarf up here. Troglodyte. Asab. Here we are. Asab's mangled skeleton is just sitting out here in the sun. I wonder... Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I'm unsure. Well, okay. We got this body up here. This uh, this body appears to be forbidden. Okay, Vukar Bekhamsazir's Mangled Skeleton. It's uh, It's got that little lock icon on it, but you can unlock it. I think that unlocked it. No, that for did, did forbid it. Why is it locked? Oh, no, all these items are locked. They're all forbidden, except for the skeleton. Okay. Um, I would imagine we should be gathering those bodies and putting them down in our tomb, but nobody's doing it. Unsure why. Hmm. Vexing. Quite vexing. Yeah, I'm sure. I don't really know why that is. Very weird. Um, let's see here. Has anyone noticed how you can't seem to read the info on your dwarves' deities through the relation tab? You also can't seem to find a description of creatures anymore. You can find descriptions of creatures. I know that much. It's just in, it's in the health tab, so it's in like a, a different location than typical. But as for deity information, let's have a look. Unib over here. Um, who do you worship, Unib? Let's have a look. Uh, I got a couple deities here. Ugath. Hmm. That is the truth. Can't really do anything with this. Very interesting. I kind of wish you could, like, access Legends mode through Fortress mode. You know? Um, like, and it was just constantly getting updated. I don't know how that would affect the game. I assume pretty monstrously. But, um, it would be kind of handy, wouldn't it? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Not much I can, uh, not much I could see to do there, I guess. But yeah, so you could see creatures' descriptions. I know that much. Like, uh, look, as we saw before, this is a little confusing. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, yeah, I might, might want to take a gander. Like this elephant up here, click it, and then you go to health, and then description over here. And like, you could see a description, a physical description of the creature. A huge hairless mammal found grazing in grasslands and groups. It eats plants, which it lifts up with its long trunk. When angered, it will attack with its long tusks. This particular one is clumsy and weak. 
uh, weak and very small. <laughs> Poor little guy. Um, can we... I, my dwarves keep telling visitors about the location of certain artifacts. Don't do that anymore, dwarves, please. <laughs> That's why people keep, like, coming here and trying to murder us and stuff. I, I, I don't, don't do it. Just maybe clam up for a second, you idiots. Huh? How's that sound? Was that it for rock? Did we really turn all of our rocks into crafts already? That's kind of shocking. We got coal and magnetite. Yeah, that must have been all of our stone. Interesting. Um, yeah, I guess we'll just continue mining, how about? We'll continue on in our mines right over yonder over here. Kind of have them branching out a little bit. Um, but yeah, we, uh, we can just keep kind of branching out. Go this way. Make, maybe make them a little bit longer than we did before. How about? Might as well. There we go. Just like that. Nice branching tunnels. Like a big exploratory mine sort of a situation. I like it. There we go. Krug Smash. When you're creating a tomb, there's an option called Multi to create more than one tomb. Oh? Okay. Interesting. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I will have to look into that. Just one moment. I'm spending too much time making a mine right now. As you can see. <laughs> there we go. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Gong There we go. Okay. Um. Let's see here. Our mind. Gonna zoom back in here. There we go. And having a look. Uh. Multi tomb of tusks. So suspend activities. Remove this zone. Plus dwarf. Hmm. Select this option and any unassigned deceased citizens will be buried here automatically. Okay. Okay. Is that it? I would assume. Let's see. I'm looking for the place item in tomb task to start popping up on dwarves. I oh, I didn't have the game when paused. You know, I think that probably worked. I think it probably did. Place item in tomb. Yep, there we go. Okay. Here we go. That that should have done it. I, just, I don't want any more ghosts to pop up. You know, start spooking our dwarves, get people in worse moods. Everyone's doing pretty poor right now as it is. Got two dwarves who think this place is the worst place in the world. We got seven who are kind of... Hmm, Five who are on the fence. And then three dwarves who are like, yeah, this place is pretty okay. Again, one dwarf who's just like, this is the best place I've ever seen in my life. Which I don't really understand either. Because, like, it's it's not. Sarvesh, the expedition leader. What an annoying person. Sarvesh over here is like, this place is great. I'm running this place and it's just the best place in the world. Everyone's like, eh. I mean, we do have a lot of ghosts and people dying all the time. Plus, you know, no bedrooms. You keep bragging about your tomb. It's not great. Place item in tomb. Where is this dwarf? Let's see. Yeah, hold up, hold up. What do you what do you got? Let me see. You, 96 years old, two lovers. Go get him. There you go. Holding a tooth. Okay. <laughs> That's fair. I guess I figured they'd be a little bit speedier with like putting pieces of people away. No, that was just that Asob dwarf too. That, that first dwarf. Maybe I'm seeing something incorrectly. Hmm. I am unsure. Uh, it, Tobol, the pig, has grown to become a sow. Excellent news. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know why people aren't putting corpses into this zone right here. Um, yes, yeah, so, so somebody just uh, mentioned the whole, um, like, the zone thing there. It looks like everything's designated from zones now for the most part. Um, you know, tombs and hospitals and meeting halls. It's a very s slick move. It's when you create a new zone, tomb, multi. Okay, like, so I couldn't transfer this zone into a multi one? This is... That's not just not possible. Seems weird. I do see that 
they are putting multiple body parts into this one coffin now, which seems weird. Yes, they, they've got a couple of corpses crammed into this one coffin now. Which is bizarre. <laughs> In a tomb filled with multiple open coffins, why do they cram two dead bodies into a single coffin? Seems weird. Okay, um... If I can't make it a multi-tomb from here, I feel that's pretty bizarre, frankly. But, okay, that's that's fair. We'll see. I'm going to remove this zone, and I'm going to make a new zone. A new uh, tomb. Okay. Just, like, right over here. Okay. Just like this. And now you're saying multi. Multi is right here. Okay. Select a rectangle which contains a coffin, which contains coffins in order to form tombs. Okay, so I guess that did work. Tomb created. Okay, okay, done. Uh, I, I don't know why it filled up this whole area. That seems really weird. Um, something I'm not understanding in this whole thing, I, I, I suppose. Very weird. Um, that's fair. Whatever, it, it seems to have worked. I, I guess we'll see if they um, actually start putting bodies in here or if they remove half of the bodies from that one coffin and start putting them in their own place. It's very weird. No, now your entire fort is a tomb. Is it? I don't think so, is it? I am, I am unsure. I'm unsure. Yeah, I know I could put up doors, I guess, but it's still weird. Like, I selected a triangle or a rectangle on purpose. You know, I selected an area that you saw. I selected an area, then it just kind of automatically was like flew out to the south afterwards. When I've been creating rectangles this whole time, it hasn't done that a single time. Just very weird. And it doesn't look like they're putting stuff in the tombs either. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure what's going on with the tomb stuff. It seems a little weird, frankly. I'll try one more time. I'm going to get rid of this zone. Remove this zone permanently. Okay. Hit zone. No, not, not burrows. Zone. And uh, one more time. Hit tomb. Okay. Multi, I guess. Okay. And then it automatically fills up that whole area down here to the south, which is bizarre. Done. Tomb created. Okay, this whole area is a tomb now. And they should just start putting bodies in the open tombs, but uh, I'm not too sure. Very weird. Very weird. Everything's been pretty uh, straightforward so far, but this hasn't been. I don't, I don't really know why that is. Well, it's, it's whatever. I don't know what that diplomacy thing is that keeps popping up either. Whenever I left click it, it just disappears. If I right click it, it usually those things all disappear. All these things disappear. But um, like if I left click the diplomacy thing, I would expect something else to pop up. It just it doesn't. So I'm not too sure what's up with that either. Very weird. Can't have a tomb without at least one door. See, it doesn't make any sense though. Because <laughs> like... I know it's fitting to the doors. I get what's going on. Yes, it's it's filling out this whole area and stopping at the doors. If I put doors up here, it would stop here, I would assume. But, like, no other zone has worked that way so far. I don't think. <laughs> I'm not, not too sure. Anyways, okay, I'm, I'm over the whole tomb thing. If more ghosts pop up, then so be it. I'm not, like, totally in love with this fortress. This is basically just a little, little tester starter sort of a thing. Just to see how the game kind of works, you know? Um, anywho, that being said. Yes, uh, so we were making a whole bunch of crafts over here, which uh, I believe are just kind of sitting in the workshops right now. I'm going to move up a level, just uh, up up here, right? I'm going to make a new stockpile, okay? Uh, right here, going to click that, stockpile, okay? And accept, okay, I'm starting to get used to that whole thing now, which is great. Stockpile, uh, craft, probably finished goods, right? I think that's how it works. Custom. Gonna turn off everything. 
except for like just crafty sort of things amulets and bracelets and crowns earrings figurines what else um rings scepters i think that's pretty much it right sounds good i'm not gonna put artifacts in here though I'll make sure that's turned off just in case we get our hands on some artifacts we don't really want it thrown in with all the other stuff you know might get a, a screwed up in there and like there we go that, that should do it so dwarves should start putting stuff in here also the whole bin thing there too right it's a maximum of 60 bins that's fine I don't think we've made any bins though so far so I'm gonna make some of those we're gonna make a few actually I gotta get used to this um the work orders thing over here okay I'm gonna start a new one okay wood and bin there we go wonderful one two I'm gonna make it I it's kind of weird how it starts off as like 10 can I like type in the number I want that is weird that's fine uh, 30 wooden bins. Okay, we're going to start making that. Should be fine. This depot looks pretty slick. We haven't really talked about it that much, but it looks definitely slick, right? Got these long tables here. A uh, little place in the middle for a couple chairs. Maybe your um, your broker can have a, a sit-down with a trader or something like that. That'd be pretty cool, huh? I like it. I like it. Ugh. What is this diplomacy button? Does anybody know what this is? This blue diplomacy button that keeps popping up? I, I have no idea what this thing is. It just pops up and kind of gets shiny a little bit. Um, I, I'm unsure. Oh, alert. Engraver has been found dead dehydrated? Where? Uh, did we have somebody that was like beyond help or something like that? Like... I don't really know why um, somebody died of dehydration. We do have drinks, right? We do. We have drinks. We have drinks. Plus, there's a brook outside. I don't understand why this dwarf just died of dehydration. But um, they did. Throw him in the tomb. Oh, wait. <laughs> That's not going to work, I guess. Unsure. Unsure. Um, yeah. Yeah. Clicking it talks to the trader. Like, I, I've been clicking it. It just disappears. I touch the button. J Diplomacy doesn't appear to do anything. I am unsure. I do not know. Yeah, it keeps popping up, but uh, nothing nothing happens. Unsure. Unsure. Yeah, see, this guy's dead over here. And... I'm getting a little screwed up with the whole tomb situation because I don't really know what's going on with it. I'd like to get our bodies put away, but um, I, I am certainly unclear as to how the, how, how the whole situation works. Let me see here. Use closest material. I'm going to slap up a couple doors real quick. Uh, add a new task. Door. Add a new task. Oh, wait. One second. One second. I'm going to pause the game real quick. Stop that. No, stop it. Damn it. I thought I paused the game. Pause the game. Here we go. What's going on? I feel like I feel like it's starting to misbehave. Maybe I insulted the tombs too much, and now Dwarf Fortress is like, oh, you want jank, huh? You want that old school Dwarf Fortress jank, huh? Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Claystone. We're going to make some claystone doors, I guess. I'll put some doors up on the tomb, see if that fixes anything. I saw somebody mention that it needs doors in order to work correctly, and I don't think that's going to work, but... Unsure. Unsure. Um, try creating another small tomb with only one coffin. We'll see if it works, right? Maybe make individual tombs. Yeah, maybe. Manually assign coffins for the ones died. The human hammerman, Emtha Ostsietus, was spotted sneaking around. I'll live to fight another day. Can you get the hell out of here, though, you think? Where is this? See, like right there, if I clicked alerts, it opened up this window and gave me this information right there. But if I do it with diplomacy, nothing happens. So I, I'm unsure. Here is that bastard human. And they're just running away down to the south. As long as we keep spotting them, that's fine. I don't really want one of them to get down into the fortress before we spot them, though. Because then they're going to start going uh, a little hog wild, clubbing people in the head with their hammer and stuff, you know. Um... That wouldn't be good. 
wouldn't be good. Uh, we have a ghostly miner that just risen and is haunting the fortress now. Not good. Not good. Um, yeah, we're going to have to try something with this whole tomb situation because this clearly isn't working at all. Um, I'll, I'll try putting up a couple of doors and see if that does do something, but um, I'm not too sure. What is my opinion so far? I really like it. Big time. Really like it. Um, I am starting to see some sort of like little little janky bits here and there, but I have confidence that they'll be banged out in time or maybe I'm just misunderstanding something. All right. It is good so far, though. Definitely. They did an excellent job on this whole thing. Um, but yes, I'm going to throw a couple of doors up on the, on the tomb. One, two. Only only the one, I guess. Oh, we're still working on another. One second. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're getting there. I'll throw another door up there, and then we'll, um, maybe I gotta, like, make a zone around every coffin or something, which does seem very weird. <laughs> um, your UI width is wrong. That fixes some of the jank. Is it gonna fix the tomb jank? I guess that's mostly what I'm talking about. That seems more like the game itself than anything else. But, um, I'm not too sure. Like I was talking about before, like, you know, like some of the menus and stuff, um, like th those are clearly screwed up and yes, that's my own problem. But like, I also don't want the buttons to be like these tiny, tiny little things around the edge of the map. Then you can't see what it is and I can't see what it is. And you know, yes, you need a zone for each coffin. You say that, but like, do you know it though? <laughs> it seems weird. It seems like a weird situation to have to make a zone for every single coffin. Like, why would they do it that way? You know, it doesn't appear like it's that. If you go to tomb, deceased citizens and pets can be laid to rest in a tomb. It should include a coffin, casket, or sarcophagus, right? And when you go to do it, you can set multi. Um, which I, I guess... I, I don't know. It's just, it's weird. Weird. Very strange. Very strange. Oh, the game's fucking... Okay, I thought the game was uh, running this whole time. Apparently I had it paused. <laughs> yeah, it's going to take me a while to get used to this, as I've said several thousand times at this point. Tombs are for useless nobles. You don't need tombs to bury, you say, but, like, nobody's being buried is the thing. I've got all these coffins set up and nobody's using them. Unsure. Tombs are like bedrooms. They're only for one dwarf. <sighs> okay, so... I guess, like, okay, I'm, I'm just thinking about Dwarf Fortress as it was before Steam. Like, a tomb... <laughs> before like you would just you wouldn't even make a tomb area you would just put a coffin down on the ground and have it be open right let me see here let me see here one second i'm gonna get rid of this whole damn area remove this zone permanently okay so this zone is gone there's no more tomb here just a bunch of open coffins you must designate a tomb before this coffin will be used for burial okay so these coffins are not going to be used as per Dwarf Fortress. Um, it, it's, it's telling me they're not going to be used. I would assume i got to put a, a, a tomb zone over them in order for them to be used as per Dwarf Fortress again. Uh, that's how I got this one to work, which for some reason has two dwarf skeletons now crammed into it. Revenge of Tomb Spire. Yes, exactly. Erase the tomb room. It's gone. Build the doors, then add the tomb zone. <laughs> yeah, th th <laughs> I'm not too sure. I don't, I don't really know what's going on. Um, I, it's probably just like, like I know you guys are all trying to be helpful and stuff, but like I, again, it's like half of you probably don't know what you're talking about. The game just came out a couple hours ago, and like this the whole tomb thing is just something that we're seeing for the first time now. Um, it's all probably just suggestions by well-meaning people who think they know what's going on and and don't. <laughs> I guess I, I can try making an individual tomb over every single one of these things. 
Um, <laughs> I can't even do that. One second. Undo. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn it to um, tomb, paint. All right, what the hell is multi? Because like, if I put a normal tomb, not multi, over this whole area, it, it says like 30 coffins. Okay, up in the top there. It's like, it, it's tracking how many tombs, like coffins are in this area. So I would think that there is a point to putting a tomb area over that many coffins, right? Okay, we're back at the start. This is where I was at first. This is how I assumed a tomb would work. You make an area over a bunch of coffins, and then dwarves would be like, oh, that's our tomb. We put dead bodies there, right? Um, I'm going to accept that again. I see that it's got this one Asab farmer on here, though. So I don't know if it's, for some reason, assigned to Asab, even though there's two dead dwarves in here. I can put a guild hall in here if I wanted. That's kind of interesting. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, forty, fifty, six, seven, eight, nine, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty. Yeah, I guess this is the that is the number of squares. That is right. Man, I don't know. It's weird. It's a weird system. I I guess. <laughs> like everything else seems pretty straightforward, but I'm I'm just having a lot of trouble with the, the tomb for some bizarre reason. Multi checks for doors to make a room. Dig one tile further and add a door to each room. That's weird. <laughs> so, you ha I have to go and make a tomb zone for every single dwarf that is killed in battle in Dwarf Fortress? That seems incredibly janky to me. Um, if that's how they, they've done it for the Steam release, I don't really know why that would be the case, you know? Like, it... Like, but it seems more normal to me to have, like, a, a tomb area, like a tomb room, you know, that dwarves would just be interred in, like a catacomb or something like that, you know? And you just put a bunch of tombs in there. Like, I, I get it works one way, and I just have to accept that, I guess. But, um, it's it just, it's kind of weird, I, I feel, you know? Like, I've had a bunch of dwarves die, I gotta go make them their own separate area, and I, I don't know. It just, it also doesn't seem like the way the game is trying to convey things to me either, you know? Like, it makes it seem like you should just be able to do that by reading what's told to me in game. I didn't go through the tutorial, so maybe it tells you exactly how to do it in there. Um, I'm not sure. The dwarf in the wall is a ghost. That's what that is. It's not like a bug or something. Thinking of a mausoleum. Yeah, probably. Um, select each burial receptacle individually and a and approve it for burials like you can't you can't do that though like um th there's no way to like turn it on for burials that's how old dwarf fortress worked like you'd have to go into an area and like turn on a tomb for burial but um that's that's just not how it works right now like it tells you you need to make it part of a tomb zone so i guess if i'm understanding it correctly um I'm going to get rid of this zone, okay, and make a tomb area, like it says paint, over each one of these tombs, okay? And just accept, and then make another tomb over this one over here. People are saying you need doors and stuff, but shouldn't this work too, I would think? Just putting a one square tomb zone over every single one of these, these, uh, these coffins. If that's how it works, this seems wrong though, right? Like... If you're saying I gotta put a door on it for some reason, that doesn't make any sense. Like no other room so far, I've needed to put a door on. But we'll we'll see if this works. I guess. I don't know. Oops. Okay, so now we have like we've got a meeting hall, one zone. We have an office, one zone. A dormitory, one zone. And then we have uh, eight thousand different tomb zones. Each one on a coffin for some reason. I don't know. Maybe this will work. I'm not too sure. We'll see. I'm kind of over the whole tomb thing, though. It, it, it's like... Uh, it's one of those things I wish I could ignore, but it feels like an, like an open wound. Like I have something that's just like... 
not being dealt with and it's very bothersome to me like everything else has been very straightforward i just don't understand why this whole thing is like this you know unsure ask the question mark that's a good idea let's see here tombs give me tombs where is tombs um do we see tombs anywhere on here i don't see a way to search through this wells traps levers dig deeper um hmm happiness and stress trade bins bags survival planting light aquifers wells clothing meeting halls military ramps goals burrows justice hauling nobles zones i guess uh, certain zones like bedrooms can be placed several at a time just make sure you have the correct furniture placed in the rooms with doors or vertical entries separating each room before you begin okay I guess we'll try that again it's just it's 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 a weird system I feel um I guess I'm gonna mine out this whole area and make a bunch of little tombs or something like that I guess very weird <laughs> um yeah we're just gonna try that I guess uh gonna make a bunch of little like two space wide rooms with a door and a tomb in each area I suppose it just it, it feels weird though don't it like nobody else sees that I I, I just think it's weird but you know it's whatever We'll, we'll try it this way. Oh, God. The asymmetry is killing me. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. I, I checked the coffin settings. It's nothing to do in the coffins. It's nothing. It tells me I need to, they need to be in a tomb zone. But it doesn't, it doesn't appear to be doing anything. How are the dwarves doing, by the way? I haven't been paying a, an awful lot of attention to them. <laughs> do we have any miners? What is this one miner doing? Let me see here. Okay, Arab. Arab Ghost Rag. That's a pretty sick name. Sleeping right now. I'm hoping they get to work mining in a second. Get rid of that. Get that tomb all dug out. They need a doorway, not a literal door. Maybe your coffin nooks need to be back one more space from the hall. I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, it, it's saying, it said in that thing, like a tomb. It, it said, make sure a door is in place before you build one. Um, which, okay, that's kind of weird. What, Arab, why are you collecting plants, huh? Let me see. Labor will do available tasks anywhere. We'll only do assigned tasks. Okay, so maybe this guy here will now turn around and... Uh, maybe you're going to gather one plant and then turn around and go mine. I'm hoping. And give him a second. Got a lot of dwarves outside gathering plants nowadays. A lot of them gathering the pecans from under the tree over here. Got some new elephants here. A whole bunch of elephants now. That's really exciting. Um, Arab, I see you're doing this job, but I would like you to do other things right now. Um, don't don't gather plants. How to turn that off? Usually, there's like a little X that you can go to. Um, hmm weird i'm not too sure what's <laughs> I, I i feel like uh, li little confusing bits are starting to pile up you know i've been playing for a little bit um i'm not too sure how to turn his labor off for gathering plants i have him set to just uh mine now maybe he's off to do that right now he's off to dig now okay so that's good there you go arab off with you off with you down to the mines wonderful oh let me see here <laughs> not in love with this if it's functioning as intended yes I I, I mean I, I'm not sure it's hard to say at this point I'm not too sure what's going on with the tombs we shall see we shall see it used to be like you know you would just put a coffin down and then like turn it on to be buried you know like uh, to be used as for burial you know which seems to work out pretty well. Now they've got like a tomb system down, which like it used to be you could make a tomb before you would assign a tomb and then designate it to be used by someone. 
Um, and I'm not sure if that's the way it still is or what's going on with it exactly. Let me see here. I'm going to go into my settings and I'm going to, you know, just because I got a lot of people saying the whole UI thing there. That's the UI is now fixed, I guess. Everything's a whole bunch smaller, but maybe it'll fix something. I can see now that we've used a couple of coffins. Why? Da, da, I mean, I guess each coffin just needs its own zone on it because that seems to be functioning. Okay. That's really weird. Um, yeah, I don't really know why that would be, but I guess that must just be how it works, huh? I guess. Like, I made a, a little tomb zone on each of the coffins in here, and they seem to be having people interred in them just fine now. Very weird. Okay. I've discovered an expansive cavern deep underground. Okay. Uh, where? Can I see? <laughs> where did I see that? I, was that the diplomacy thing that's been popping up? I, I don't know, man. Very weird. Anyways, um, yeah, it, it'll get there, I'm sure. If, if the game, um, it, it just came out. It came out on Steam today, alright? I'm still willing to give it a, uh, the benefit of a doubt, you know? I, I think the tomb is functioning now. Maybe tombs are just like bedrooms. Okay, we got a, another dwarf here. Um, let me see here. One of these uh, these thieves just wandered in once again. Atir, the maze dwarf. Let's see. Where are you? Atir? Is that this, this fellow right here? Looks to be. Okay. Still not centered. I thought that... Uh, oh, no. <laughs> there we go. There we have it. Well, Dwarf Fortress. <laughs> That's the Dwarf Fortress I remember. <laughs> oh my goodness. Here, one second, one second. Let me uh, get, this, get some things all settled up here for a second. Yes, the game just crashed. It, it just crashed, that was it. I'm not too sure what happened, but you know, that's okay. That's okay. Atir stole the game. Yes, at least it just saved. Yes, it's been saving all along, but um, I don't know. I, I'm thinking of uh, <laughs> it's the tombs. I've been entombed. <laughs> That's okay. That's fine. Um, maybe I'm thinking that we should start a new fortress, though. You know? Might be kind of fun. Don't you think? Maybe see what else there is out there. I'm not too sure. What do you think? You do you think we should start a new place entirely, or should we um, try to salvage that place, huh? I'm unsure. How are you feeling? I should probably take a little break first, go to the bathroom and stuff, huh? Before we get started in earnest. Might be a good idea, don't you think? Probably. I'm trying to get my, uh, my camera here all set up one second. I'm still a little um, unused to how OBS works, believe it or not. I'm not a big time streamer, not one of those those fancy Twitch streamers, you know. But yes, it was pretty fun. I had a good time so far. I'm not done yet, but yeah, I'm going to take a little break here because the game did just crash. And I think we should start a new one after. Um, let me see here. Tombs, tombs are kind of dumb. Drink and new, fresh start. Why new? WTF. Were you attached to the place? Like, I wasn't in love with it, really. Like, why the hell not? You know, like, you've got a million fortresses we can go explore. I figure it's not going to hurt, right? Uninstall. <laughs> this was a test. Right, that's that's all it was. It was just like a test, you know? We're just kind of, like, exploring. Um, we'll see. Just, um, you guys can start... Just screaming about what you want in chat there. And then when I get back from making quick peeps, we can decide what we're doing from there. How about? Does that sound good? Rock and stone. Yes. New, new, new. So you got to do a lot of door building, I guess. Uh, ice biome? That might be fun. Steam version. Is it better for beginners? It's definitely 100% better for beginners. 100%. Like, there's, there's no doubt about it. Like, um, 
there's so much more that's understandable about it. Um, yeah, like that tomb thing that I got hung up on, that was the only kind of confusing thing, but like, maybe it's just something I've got to get used to. I, it looks to be that tombs in Dwarf Fortress now, they function kind of like bedrooms. Like, um, it used to be before you like you put down coffins all over the place and you just have to go over each of them and like set them on pretty much. But now I think you've got to put a zone in each one. If I'm understanding it correctly, I'm still unsure of like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it'll be fine. You know, we just got to wrap our minds around it and then it'll, it'll be fine in a little bit. Right. Um, resurrector biome. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we'll start a new one and just like go hardcore with it. You know, like pick a really dangerous and terrible place or something like that. It might be kind of cool. Really kind of like push it a little bit. Might be cool. Um, yeah. I'll be right back. Two shakes. And, and then we'll get dangerous. And we'll start pushing this game a little bit harder. We're, we're going to have to sort out that tomb system, though, if we're going to a very hard place, though, huh? Uh, just a moment, my bearded bastards. Let me uh, get my, my ghastly visage out of your faces real quick. One second. An OBS. Technology's not my friend, you know. I do what I can, but my God. Here, one second, one second. Oh, is this, will that do it? I might do it. Nope, did not. Did not do it. Fine, it's whatever. Here, two shakes. I'll be right back, my bearded bastards, okay? Here, in the meantime, actually, listen to this song by Topher Anselmo. This is the one I played at the beginning of the stream, and you are going to love it, and if you don't, you're wrong. Here, one second. It's called The Fortress King. I'm going to turn up my music a little bit more so you can hear it. Be right back, my bearded bastards. pretty good right <laughs> Topher Anselmo you can find him on Twitter here one second let me get this thing kicked back up sorry 
pounding a granola bar. Okay, getting back into it now, my dwarves, huh? How you feeling? <laughs> Give me your kidney now. Sure, I just yanked it off and put it in the mail. Yanked it out. The dwarves demand a link. How can I do that? Here, one second. Let me try to figure out how to do that. It is worthwhile. One second, one second. Second. One second. One second. Almost there. Okay, this should do it right here. There you go. That link should take you to the Bandcamp page of the Fortress King by Topher and Samo. You should think about picking it up, too. Pick up your own copy and listen to it any old time you want. Topher is the one who made my original, like, theme that I had used. I've been using it since the very beginning, pretty much, for just Dwarf Fortress stuff. But yeah, it's some pretty good stuff. Um, let me see here. So, we can continue the active game or create a new world. And... Continue active game, start new game in existing world. Really? Hmm. Weird. So we can just do that? Cre cre uh, keep playing in the same world, like alongside the fortress? That's weird. Hmm. I just want to see what would, what would happen exactly. Still trying to pound this granola bar. One second. Not sure what's going on exactly. Is this just a, a copy of that same world, maybe? It, it seemed like we started at year 100, right at the beginning again. Hmm. Very weird. Yeah, I'm, I'm not 100%. Unsure, unsure. Uh, I'm gonna head back out, I guess, back to the title menu and start. Uh, you know what? Let's let's create a new world and see what we can do with this exactly. Um. Okay, I, I want to see what what happens. Like, let's just have a look here, real quick. Uh, start a new world, right? Um, we're gonna have everything pretty much the same. I just I'm curious how much we can um, tilt things now. We have a lot more options now, so. Oh, oh, music is super loud. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry about that. I forgot to turn it down. How's that? It should be a little bit better, right? Just let me know if it's not good. Um, anyways, uh, I was thinking of creating a new world, right? And just pushing things a little bit more. I I'm curious what we can do. We have a lot more options now. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but um, let let's just see what happens I suppose huh um detailed mode okay yeah we got all these options now um this they look to be pretty much the same things that we had before um in terms of like uh you know editing the world and whatnot hmm yeah it really doesn't seem that much different than before so yeah, sc screw it, I guess. Um, let me see here. An existing world. Yeah, it must just keep a copy of 
that world that we just made and we can continue playing in it, but it's just like it's a like an alternate universe or something like that, you know? I'm not too sure. Weird. Um We'll continue the active world. Okay, what the hell is this? Auto saves. Oh, it's got three auto saves here. Okay. It's only saved three times while we were playing. Tusk Terror at the Beak of Sneak. I'm gonna do the the most recent one and um I'm thinking of just like retiring the fortress and then we'll um start a fortress in the same world like maybe in an evil area or something could be cool you know okay here's our fort we didn't lose that much progress i, I meant to mute myself when i'm freaking chowing down on this granola bar sorry Yeah, I think I'm going to retire this fortress for the time being. So it's going it's going to remain out in the world and um it'll just be out there, but we're not going to be playing in it anymore, okay? Yes, retire. Uh your fortress has settled into the rhythm of day-to-day -day living beyond your meticulous concern. Okay. Save to this timeline, save to new timeline, save to new folder, same timeline. Hmm. Interesting. I'm going to save to this timeline, I suppose. I suppose that just kind of uh, saves all the progress in, like, you know, one straight file, I guess. Still trying to eat, sorry. Okay, now I guess we're going to um, continue active game, maybe, in Athira Etha. Oh, maybe not. Very confused. How, how is this working exactly? Start new game in existing world? I did that before. It says 1-4 on the side now. Okay. Okay. Um, so, this is what we did before, but there was no fort in the world. This must be after that fort was retired now. Strange. Um, okay. I mean, I, it seems to be working. Yeah, no adventure mode quite yet. It's getting there, though. It's getting there. The stream is not over already. No. No, we're still going. Um, fortress mode? You know what? I'm going to head to Legends real quick. I know this. Let me check this... Um, one second. Settings. I'm going to do this thing again because this just looks a lot better. I know it screws things up and is a little janky, but I'd rather have the stuff be bigger on the screen, you know? Anyways, um, start a new game in existing world. Athera Etha. One for it. I want to see if one of our characters from that last game is still, like, alive, bouncing around in the world, you know? You just got the game there, dingbat. Nice. Good luck. Good luck. Beware the tombs. Legends. Okay. We're in legend mode right now. Uh, we're looking at historical figures. And uh, I was looking for the joyless toad. I don't see them anywhere. That's a shame. I, I, I don't know if they like hold that nickname during uh, legends mode or, or what's going on exactly. But, hmm. Oh, well. Oh, whale. That's fine. We're going to head into fortress mode now, I guess. It's weird that it's starting right at the beginning of Limestone 101. Um, hmm. Yeah, it's going to take a little bit to get used to all this. That's for damn sure. But we'll we'll all get there in time. It's really not not bad at all. So, um, I said we're going to start a hardcore place. I don't really know what you think that is. But we have a bunch of options. Like over here is a, a haunted area, which looks really cool. Like this whole dark sick looking area on the map is a haunted area and um we have some dark goblin fortresses and pits dark kobold pits hmm in this area right now very interesting zooming out a little bit 
Let me see, is it right click? Yeah, right click. Okay. And then like down here is another evil area too. This one here is, uh, it's about the same. A couple goblin pits in the area. Not too bad. We have a haunted rocky wasteland down here. That's pretty cool. Mm, looking down towards the south, looking far to the south, might be cool to find a, an evil area like down in the tundra, don't you think? I don't really know how to find that by sight right now, though, you know? Let me see here. It all looks kind of the same, just like white areas. Um, can, can I... It's not going to let me place something out in the Arctic Ocean, right? Okay, cannot embark entirely on water or mountains. Okay, I mean, that's fair. That's fair. No, I, I can't start there. That's fine, though. Let's see, what else do we have to work with? These coasts are pretty cool. Like, we could start out here in the middle of this actual tundra. Would be kind of neat. Would be kind of neat. I'm having a gander around. Got, a, got a, all kinds of options, really. Uh, haunted biomes aren't purple anymore. No, no, they're not. Nope. No need to hit except for every individual tomb. Back on the tombs. <laughs> uh. No, they're all like, uh, evil biomes are now brown, kind of sickly looking, which, yeah, I, mean, I guess makes a bit more sense, right? What is up here? What am I looking at? What is this? Just a, a marsh? Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. I guess I'm going to start us off in an evil biome. How about that? Um, like over here, we have an evil... Uh, well, yeah, a couple evil places. Right here is a goblin town. Goblin town. Named Didacad. Plot Vice, a goblin town. Um, we can start off right next to that. Might be cool. Or over here, there is a, uh, a dwarven tower. A necromancer tower. Ooh, ooh kind of gross. <laughs> Icky. Like, I, I got a bad taste in my mouth with, uh, any sort of necromancer type stuff in Dwarf Fortress now. Just kind of over it for the time being. We've got this uh, red sand desert. That's pretty neat. We've got a white sand desert too. Might be kind of cool. We have this one tiny, tiny island up here uh, where there there appears to be a volcano. That is neat. It's freezing, but I don't imagine we'll have any neighbors or visitors or enemies or anything like that. So, Oh, here we go. This sickly looking glacier. Uh, it's a glacier biome. It's freezing. Um, what, what's worse? Uh, terrifying or haunted? Neither sound great. The untoward frost. Okay, that might be kind of cool. Just like out here on the glacier. Trying to figure out what the hell we're doing. Okay. But we yeah, we got our options here. Um, terrifying or haunted? What's the order of the day, dwarves? <laughs> Which one would you like? One second. Eating granola bar. Terrifying is worse. Okay. Terrifying it is. I selected an area with salt water. Blah, blah, blah. That's fine. We're going to do better this time. I, I, I kind of know how things are working. So, um, yeah, we're just going to jump into it. So it'll be fine. Let's see. Enemies, normal. Economy, normal. Hmm. Prepare for journey carefully. I'm, I don't know what civilization we started as. Um, I'm, I'm curious if the animals change at all. Like, do dwarves just have access to elephants normally now? I don't know why we had access to elephants in that last game. That seems very weird. Like, we don't have them now, which leads me to believe this is a different civilization that just can't access elephants for some reason. Hmm. Very cool. Very cool. Enemies hard. You want to send enemies hard? Might, might as well. What the hell? It's just like a test thing, right? <laughs> really? Okay. So, <laughs> that's like Dwarf Fortress right there. You, you head out of that menu right there. It sends you straight back to the main menu. 
for whatever reason. That's fine. We'll just load back in. Two shakes. Two shakes. Trying to eat my lunch. <laughs> there we go. Don't need a stinking tutorial. No, we're good. Just need a tutorial for the <laughs> the damn tombs, apparently. But anyways, that's enough of that. Up here, right, we're just gonna start again. Okay, confirm. Enemies, hard, economy, normal. That's fine. Prepare for the journey carefully. I don't know if this is the same civilization. This might be a different one, actually. Let's check the animals. Um, looks to be the same. Standard dwarf fortress animal layout. That's fair. Um, as for our, our dwarves, we're gonna have uh, a mason. Miner. Actually, probably a couple masons and miners might be good. Dig out some area real quick, you know. Miner, mason. We're not gonna have much access to trees, but not gonna hurt to have a carpenter or a woodcutter, because, like, we can get down underground pretty quick. Um, let's see, you are going to be, we'll, we'll have it, we'll have a planter and actually do some planting this time, how about, instead of just not doing any planting at all? <laughs> How's that sound? You, let's see here, what else could we use here? Um, I'm not too sure, like you'd think, you know what, I think this is gonna be easy. It's all gonna be easy. <laughs> um, let's see, let's see. boo -doo -doo. Do dee 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 dee. I don't know. Well, a brewer. You have a, a, a brewer and a, uh, right, labor over here. A cook. Want to be a cook? There you go. One more. Herbalist. What the hell? I'm just an herbalist and miller. I don't care. That's fine. We're, we're probably going to get murdered straight out the gate this time. <laughs> but, um, we'll see. We'll see. High hopes, dwarves. High hopes. Keep them high, huh? Some more seeds. I need some more seeds. That's gonna save us, obviously. Battle axes. Maybe I'll bring. Oh, they're kind of cheap. That's a change. Twenty points for battle axes. That's really cool, actually. Um, it used to be like battle axes and stuff were really, really expensive if you wanted to bring them with you. So I'm glad that they've lowered the price to something more reasonable. Like they're expensive, but it's not gonna break the bank. Um, excellent. Cool. So, like, I could bring a bunch of battle axes, and, like, in case of an emergency, I could arm all of our dwarves, and we could possibly fight back a little bit, which would be great. Would be great. Um, we should also, yes, bring some new items, like uh, some some wood might be good. We're not going to have much wood here, I don't think. Wood and, like, stone, too, might be good straight out the gate, you know? Let's see here. Um, where is stone? You would think this would be uh, alphabetical. Stone. Here we go. Uh, some nice... What's some nice cheap stone? Granite. There we go. Granite. Um, where is the granite? Here we go. We'll just bring a whole bunch of granite. Probably should bring some wood too, huh? We'll bring 100 granite. Can I just hold this down? No. I have to just click like a madman. 100 granite. And how about some wood? Let's see here. Where is it? Wood. Maybe it's under like lumber or something. I'm not sure. Wood. Here we go. Um, yeah. Date palm wood. It's it's crazy how there's all kinds of different colors of wood now. Even like, you know, before it was just brown with like above ground trees and, you know, there's a couple white ones too. But um, for the most of it, most part, it was just brown. But yeah, there's all kinds of different colors now. That's pretty exciting. I like that. Um... That being said, what color should we bring? Um, we got granite. How about some? How about some black cap? Might be kind of cool. Sure. We'll bring a whole bunch of black cap logs because it's because it's edgy looking. Not sure what we'll do with that. Make a bunch of beds, I guess, huh? There we go. Um, fortress name. We're gonna be called Robust Spear. No, we're gonna be called uh, something that reflects our state. The we're gonna be called Dead. Um, body. 
<laughs> That's it. We'll be the fortress's dead body. Okay. The group name. The the body. The dead body. That's our group name, and our symbol is a dwarf. Um, the dwarf is dead. The dwarf is screaming. Uh, that's gonna about do it, I think. Um, yeah, looks looks like we're all we're all set to go, my dwarves. So, we're going to head off into this terrifying glacier with nothing but our wits, some stone, wood, and dreams in our hearts, and beards. Let's go. Embark. I am ready. I think this is going to go really well. Okay, I've read this before. Um, That's fine. We'll just skip that. Ah, it's looking pretty cool, huh? I like the way that looks. Let's zoom out a little bit. Okay. Here we go. Let's zoom out even farther. Get a good, uh, come to grips with what we're working with. This is as far as I can zoom out, huh? Okay, that's fine. Moving up. Okay, here's the highest point over here. Just kind of a big ridge. There's like a sloping area that kind of comes down. That's, that's not bad, that's not bad. Nice. We're going to do better this time, my dwarves. We're going to do much better than that old fort. We're going to forget about that one. This one here is going to be the best fort in the world. You'll see. Dead body. There's no way we could fail. Let's see what's on the map right now. Others. There's nothing on the map right now. Nothing Nothing that can kill us. No ice wolves or yetis or anything like that. Um, I think it's. I think we're going to be good. Let me, let me see here. Um, so, I'm going to start to mining. We will... What is this right here? Is this... Oh, it's an ice wall. That's pretty cool. So this is just pure ice that we're on right now. Okay. Uh, cards on the table. I don't really have that much experience with ice fortresses and whatnot. But again, confidence. Yeah, I got a lot of confidence. I think this is going to work. Um, what we're going to do is I think it'd be really kind of cool if we um, kind of carved out the back of this little mound over here, right? And like, uh, kind of did this sort of a dealie. Yeah, there we go. This music's great, by the way. I don't know if you hear this. I love it. Perfect. Needs more undead. We're probably going to have undead. We'll see. You know, sometimes the evil biomes aren't really all that bad. And I'm hoping that's not the case here, because that would be sort of lame. But, um, I guess you never know. There we go. Wonderful, just like that. Okay, okay. Kind of unpause. Let's see. Uh, let's see how things go. Our dwarves are now on their way over here to start to dig in. I I shouldn't be doing this. Shouldn't be my first thing I do. This is dumb, by the way. Um, I should be delving secure lodgings, not making a fancy little pointless channel back here. It's it's a dumb idea. It's a dumb way to get started. Uh oh oh okay. Okay, we got some interesting things on the map right now, including a, a yeti corpse, an undead beastie over here. That's not good <laughs> at all. I have to imagine this yeti corpse can easily smash through all of my dwarves, no problem at all. It's 348 years old, healthy, no official position within the fortress, um, has some snow, f snow specks on its feet, <laughs> cannot breathe, its vision is lost. A terrifying thing, really. Um... No personality, no needs, no thoughts. See, this is what I like from my enemies. No way to be uh, attached to this creature at all, right? Um, th this is a worrisome beast. We're, we're going to have to be careful. I, I don't know how burrows work yet <laughs> in, in this version. So, yeah, we'll just have to keep eyes on it. It's up here in the, the top right now, which is, I, I believe, a considerable distance away from my dwarves. I believe. I hope. Where are we? Okay, no, we're, we're over here. Gotta keep eyes on it. It's up at the top left right now. And it doesn't seem to really be coming. It's coming directly towards us. <laughs> it's going away. Um, 
That's gonna be fine. Look at this. So we got our castle all carved out over here. It's a wonderful little situation. I did see we have some uh, albatross people on the map too. I thought that was pretty cool. Albatross folk. Excellent. Excellent, right? Let me see here. Going up. Yeah, we've got that whole thing nearly carved out. I just thought it'd be cool if we have like this whole place carved out. It could be like the um, entrance to our our mighty fortress, you know? Oh, what is that? Oh, is there a cave here? <gasps> Ooh, is that what that is? Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, you see this this strange construction right here. I I have um, just to pause the game, but we have a cave right here. Like if we move up, boop 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 boop, right here. Here's the top of it, and if we go down, boop 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 boop, right here we have this little tunnel that leads into the mouth of the cave, and there are ramps that lead down. And it looks like it might be pretty safe in there, actually. Um, except for, you know, they've got that Yeti corpse roaming around. If we go down a little bit... Oh, yeah, you can see it's like it's like a carved-out little home, actually. You know, we don't have to worry about anything if we go live in there. That seems like it'd be the smartest thing to do, frankly. Hmm. Probably where the Yeti lives? No, 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 no. This is a dwarven home for sure. It was given to us by the gods. There's no possible way this could go wrong. <laughs> uh, I mean... Besides the whole Yeti thing. Go away. Go. Off with you. We don't want you. Go away. Go. Please go. Don't come this way. This is our home. Um, I... Um, we gotta do something and, like... You see, the only bad thing about this cave over here is, like, it's directly next to the, the edge of the map. So, like, if a Yeti corpse sauntered in from the north, it could be, like, oh, dwarves, like, immediately. And just come charging in and rip us to shreds. Whereas this place over here is, like, right... In the middle, so you know it's gonna take a couple seconds for the Eddie to walk over to us before we get ripped to shreds. Um, I, I think it'll. This place might be for the best down here. Actually, we'll, we'll ignore that cave for now. And um, I mean, look how much we dug out already. It's it's gonna be fine. Anywho, um, yes, let's let's dig right in. Dig right on in. Do do de 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 de. Just like uh, uh, this right here. Okay. Mm, 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 mm. Can you make? I I guess I forget if you can make furniture out of ice. I don't remember. Or if there's some sort of a constraints in place. I don't I don't remember at all. Where's that yeti? I gotta keep some close eyes on this beast over here. Which I I am doing right now. Game is unpaused. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. There we go. It seems to be kind of doing its own thing over there, over to the west of us, but it's not really moving away. It's 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 pretty close. Um, it's fine. It's fine. There it goes. There you go. Off with you. Off with you. There could be other stuff on the map too. I should probably keep that in mind. There are just albatross people on the map right now. Um, let's have a gander at one of them. We've been ignoring them for fear of this um this other character. But uh, we've got a 29-year-old albatross man over here. Values friendship. He's a musical fellow. Ungrateful. <laughs> um, no items. Completely nude. Uh, annoyed being caught in a snowstorm. I don't know why you live out here. It's kind of like a fact of life out here, I would think, right? Well, continue on. Um, how are we looking, dwarves? Did I start carving? I thought I did, right? Here, one second. Here we go, yeah. Okay, we're carving in over here. Things are looking pretty good. Pretty good. Where's that damn Yeti? I have to keep on my toes with that thing, because it could just, like, zoom in and murder us all in one moment. Like, I don't love having to watch this thing, but it's something we got to do. God damn it, these controls. I'm still trying to get used to it all. Zoom out. That's what I was trying to go for. Okay. You can you can zoom out in normal door fortress if you use the mouse wheel. It's the only thing the mouse wheel is used for in old door fortress. And so I, I'm inclined to use it to zoom out, but it does not zoom out in this one. Uh, yeah, new fortress. The last one kind of crashed and, you know, it was, it was okay. We were just learning. So we figured we'd start a new one here, go for a real challenge, and just see how it goes. And I mean, it's going pretty darn well so far. Pretty darn well for the 
four or five moments we've been here, I'd say. <laughs> Couldn't go wrong. Couldn't possibly go wrong. I don't know if we can make stuff out of ice, like um, like tables and chairs and stuff. I'm inclined to think no, but I don't know. You might just be able to make workshops out of them, but not furniture is what I'm thinking. But I don't know. Let's see. I'll make a couple of them. A couple of stone worker workshops out of ice, I guess. Or granite or whatever I'm doing. There you go. A couple of workshops. There you go. Now, let's see here. Add new task. I'm going to say make a table. A table out of... Can I make it out of ice? That is the question. I don't think so. H-I. No. It's not on the list. Let me just double check here. Ice? Nope. Okay. So you can make workshops and stuff out of ice but not furniture but that that's relatively okay just because we do have a bunch of granite already um so that's not going to be too bad that being said i'm going to remove both these workshops and we're just going to make workshops a little bit closer to where all the granite is right now and we'll, we'll make the furniture out here instead how about yeah we'll just make them on a black cap for now Simple little workshops are just temporary things, so it's not going to be a biggie. There you go. Two little workshops. There you go. Get to it, dwarves. It's kind of a peaceful place out here, I think. You know, it's it's nice, really, when you get down to it. It's just a peaceful place. <laughs> I'm very afraid of this Yeti. Uh, it's terrifying. It seems to be moving out. Maybe no. It's it's up in the northwest now. It's fine. It's not gonna touch us. We're good. No worries. What we gotta do? I think the best thing we could do right now is like just get ourselves situated inside ASAP, right? And um, then just put like a couple of cage traps in the door to the fortress, and we should be good as long as we don't go outside ever in our lives. You know, that's probably the smart thing to do. Uh, new task. So I'm gonna make tables. We'll make some rock tables, and um, I'm going to set that to repeat right now. And, oops, no, don't do that, don't do that. We're going to make that out of uh, granite. I guess that's all we can do, huh? And at the other one, we're going to make some thrones. Oops, what the hell did I even click to get that? Throne, okay, yes. Um, set that to repeat and make it out of granite once again. So get to it, dwarves. There you go. We're gonna start making those. Should take two shakes. We got a bunch of granite, so it's not gonna be a problem. Oh, I must have hit a button to turn the slopes into triangles. There we go. There's a little toggle over on the right to do that. Interesting. Okay. Cool. Cool. The undead will stop goblin invasion. <laughs> I like this theory. Yes, the undead will protect us. We'll use those stupid corpses to our advantage. It couldn't possibly go wrong. Good thinking. A good dwarf. Following this yeti corpse again. Um, notice, too, that the yeti corpse appears to have, like, these blackened eyes with two little white dots in the middle. I don't think that's part of the sprite. I don't think yetis normally look like that. I think it's because it's on and undead I think like if we look at this right here this panel the little yeti icon up there doesn't look like that so do all undead get that look to them like that little fady black aura around their eyes that's really creepy if that's the case I really like that it's also tinted purple notice um, where, where are you headed my friend go get the hell away from our dwarves we're doing pretty good without your help right now don't need it Oh my god, I'm, I'm try, still trying to get the whole zoom out thing situated over here. Okay, zoom out, zoom in. Use the mouse wheel to go up and down levels. Okay, let's see here. I'm not sure how much furniture we have yet, but it can't be all too much. That being said, I'm going to place down what we have. Keep building after placement. Use closest material. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five, five. Okay, got five tables already made. Um, we'll try to get one more made. And we'll also get some, some chairs thrown down. 
Same settings. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. There we go. There we go. Not too bad. Um, let me see here. Table. Yeah, we're still making another another table over there. I think we're done with chairs. I'll, I'll get some doors made though. Okay. Oops, I did that again. I don't know how the hell I keep doing that. Add new task. Door. There we go. Make a couple of doors, dwarves, eh? Uh, so yes, they're getting those doors made. I must have hit something again to uh, get those triangle. I must keep hitting some button. I'm not too sure what. Um, where is that bastard? Over there somewhere, right? Not too close to us. Okay, there it is. Yep, up in the top left. Far enough away where I, I'm feeling less and less concerned. Maybe some elaborate water pump trap to freeze invaders in the ice and put them on display. See, that'd be great. I've thought of that before, but Dwarf Fortress is kind of weird with what is considered to be, like, outside versus inside sometimes. And, like, I thought it'd be cool to, like, have a tunnel that was filled with knee-deep water and to have, like, a bridge that's acting like a ceiling, kind of, like, flip up and, you know, freeze anybody who's in that, that chamber. But it doesn't really work that way. Um, th there's not a great way to do it. I'm sure you could do it some way, but I'm not too sure how it's beyond me. Uh, table. Am I still making tables? Oh, crap. I think I am, right? No, no more tables. No more tables. Stop. Stop this. This madness. There we go. Uh, doors. Got a couple of doors. We can throw up some doors. Mm, boop. Boop. Just like that. Do we have more made? Boop. Okay, no. That's it. Cool. Okay, so we're making the two doors. We got our table. We got some ice here. I thought we had another chair, but maybe not. I'll make one more chair. Just so we can make things nice and even. You know how it is. Throne. Rock throne. Okay, we should also make some beds, too. We need a carpenter workshop for that, though. Um, carpenter. There we go. We'll get that slapped up. Two shakes. Make some beds. This fortress is already looking better than the last one, right? I'd say so. Uh, bed, 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 four, five, six, seven, eight beds. Sounds good. Get those done. And in the meantime, I'm going to destroy these workshops. I think. There we go. And, uh, yeah. Making, making those beds. Um, let's see. We have to carve some more stuff out inside here before we go much farther we need um we got our seven dwarves i guess if we weren't being stingy we can make bedrooms for all of our dwarves um i am feeling stingy though is the thing they don't have to be good bedrooms they can be crappy bedrooms one two three four this will be one two three yeah that's gonna be i like some really uh baseline bedrooms if i do it this way but um that's eh, probably fine Anybody else hearing this music? This music's creepy as hell. I'm a big fan. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So we're gonna have fifteen bedrooms when this is all said and done. Just all put through here. Actually, I guess we if that's the case, we should probably make fifteen beds. Duh. But um we haven't not yet that's fine though um something else i suppose we should do make workshops a mechanics workshop using the closest material that we have i'm gonna put it right there um i don't know who's going to do this task exactly but i, I guess it's any dwarf does this nowadays very exciting i like that i do like that that you don't have to fiddle with labors so much these days um it's pretty cool I'm going to make some rock mechanisms, okay? Uh, I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six of these. I don't think these can be made out of ice. No. No, that, that's a shame, but that, that's okay. We're going to make a bunch of rock mechanisms, okay? We're making beds, too, and then after those mechanisms are done, I'm going to make some cages and make some cage traps to just cram in that hallway. So if anything comes to try to harass our dwarves, we can just get them caged up. No problems whatsoever. I haven't looked at the Yeti in a while. 
actually. That's terrifying. Uh, do have some giant puffins on the map right now. They shouldn't be bothering us all so much, but um, we shall see. We shall see. <laughs> I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. Okay, here we go. Yeah, that, that Yeti somehow ended up to the north of us. It circled around quite a distance without us noticing, that, which is terrifying. It could have probably gotten over to our dwarves while we weren't paying attention, and I wouldn't have noticed. <laughs> um, vi vigilance, dwarves. Vigilance. Um, if you can make ice blocks and what you can craft out of them. You, so you, you think I can make stuff out of ice blocks? I don't, I don't, no, I don't, I don't think that would work. Um, I, I should say, you can make ice blocks, I'm pretty sure, but I don't think you can make anything out of them. I am unsure, though, so I will check. Let me see here. Um, just a moment, just a moment. I'm going to get a, a little area carved out inside for some, like, storage and workshops and stuff. And that, that would probably be the smart thing to do. I am going to carve out another tunnel right over here. And this is going to be like the exploratory tunnel, I believe. Um, let me see here. What's the best way to go about doing this exactly? If Okay, actually, I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to get rid of this. Uh, we're going to have one tunnel leading down like this. Right here. And that's going to be the exploratory tunnel that leads down. But in this area right here, we're going to have this big area carved out that is going to, um, this is like workshops and storage, that sort of crap, you know. We'll just kind of have it be open to, how about, sound good? Good. Excellent. Um, let me see here. Now then, I've got the game paused. No, no, don't do that, don't do that. <sighs> kind of make some cages, <clears throat> some more beds. That sort of stuff. We don't have any way to defend ourselves right now, except for the axes. I guess we do have six axes. Gotta, gotta remember that. Um, <laughs> let me see here. One second. Add new task. Cage. Cage. Gotta do this six times. Cage. Four. Five. Uh, what did I do? I don't even know what I did right there. One second. Stop. One more. Just one, two, three, four, five. C A G cage. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six cages. That's gonna be made after the beds. Six black cap cages. Where's that damn yeti? Oh, okay. Get out of here. That little bastard's getting a little too close for comfort, but mm, not not too close quite yet. What are these animals I'm seeing on the ground here? It's a two-legged rhino lizard. Oh, that's fascinating. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Anything else? Yes, we got some giant puffins on the map. Just kind of swarming past in a big old flock. Kind of cool looking, huh? I think so. Let me see here. How do I, uh, I'm gonna watch this one here. Stop. It's weird that it centers over on the left there. Even when I had the interface, like, normalized or whatever the hell, it was still centering more towards the left. I don't really know why that is, though. You'd think it'd be, like, smack dab center in the middle of the map. I don't know. A snowstorm has come. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. It says here we have located... Lucedmi Tikwa Kigad, a single merc, the tress of flax, a cave. This is that cave that's on the map that we haven't checked out yet for fear of that yeti uh, nibbling the dwarves. <laughs> I don't really want that to happen, obviously. Wouldn't be conducive to our health at all. Let's see here. Zooming back in. It's kind of, uh, I'm feeling a little paranoid out here in this haunted tundra, believe it or not. A little, little paranoid. A little paranoid. <laughs> uh, really, it's just a paid tile set, huh? No, it's not. Um, it's, it's, there's a lot more added to the game. They clean up a whole bunch. But, um, yeah. It's fine. I feel like it's worth it, you know? Like, you gotta think about it. The game has been out for free on the site for what? You know, nearly 20 years for anyone to download. You know, unlike any other game that's made that is produced with the, the, the idea of you know getting money off of it 
So, like, I, I hear some people complaining about the $30 price tag, and it's like, just, just settle down. You know, like, <laughs> what other game could you download for 20 years for free before it came out? You know, they finally ask money for it. You know, just, just settle down. Settle down, okay? Let me see here. I'm um, gonna... Uh, I guess we're gonna smooth up some bedrooms over here. I, I hit D to designate. That's, that's a, a habit that's gonna die hard, I think. Let me see. We're gonna try to make the best little crappy bedrooms that we can possibly make over here. But they're still gonna be little and crappy. No matter how you slice it. Unfortunately. Um... Also gonna make a zone. I guess get out of here, huh? Gonna make a zone over here for the meeting hall. Where is it? Oh, that's right. A dining hall? Area? See, okay. This is what I don't get. I made a dining hall before and it worked absolutely fine. This one has the multi option too, which I don't understand. What is multi? Paint or multi? I have no idea. I don't get what that means. It's fine. I guess it'll become clear before long. <laughs> I'm hoping eventually I, I understand what that means. But I guess I'm just going to make a, a dining room area over here like I did before. And it, that seemed to work. Um, yeah, dining dining hall. Right? Let me see here. Do, do I get to make some sort of settings? No, this was just like I, I made an area. And that's it. It's an unnamed dining hall. We're going to call it... Yeti house. Oh, well, the game's not paused, huh? That's that's horrible. I, I always forget that that's not the case. This Yeti house. There we go. Uh, Multi-level. Oh, that's an idea. Do you think it means multi-level? I had heard something about there being multi-level zones and stuff, but I, I don't know if that's the case here. Interesting. Very interesting. Hmm. Where is this Yeti right now? Damn it. Oh, it's up in the top, the top still. Okay. We're good. No worries quite yet. I mean, no no more worry than we've been through already, I suppose. Okay, so we made some some cages. No, we, do we make cages yet? No, we're still working on that. Let me see here. Uh, I'm going to try to get some cage traps put up. Cages and restraints? No, traps. Right here. Okay. Cage trap. Using closest material. Yeah, that sounds like it'll fit the bill pretty well. Just throw them right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just cramped right in this entrance. Just like that. That should get the job done. Still nicening up these rooms, I guess. They, they still look kind of crappy to me, but... <laughs> I mean... What do I know? I'm not a dwarf. Let me see. Um, how many beds did I make before? I think I made eight, right? Let me see here. I, I don't... Okay. This one, one little gripe I have so far is I don't like how these tiles cover up the entire area when you're um, designating something to be smooth. Like, I'm trying to see how many bedrooms I have, and it's a little bit difficult, but I can still see through somewhat, you know? Maybe just, like, more opacity to them, you know? Like, less opacity, I guess. Whatever, you know? Adjust the opacity. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I got 15 bedrooms right here, and I think I made 8 beds before. So we're going to make a couple more. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13... 14, 15. Here we go. And get get to work on that promptly, dwarfs, will you? Let me keep an eye on our Yeti friend. Here they are. Yes, just uh just following the Yeti. Let's zoom out a little bit here. They seem to be sticking over to the west of us for the most part. Not getting too too close, not really pushing that luck. Um, let me see here just looking through a uh, chat real quick do, 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 
do 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 do. You can set shift plus mouse wheel for zoom in and out. Ooh, that's an idea. This Yeti's getting a little too close. You don't come over this way, my friend. Uh, let me take a look at that real quick, because that's uh, kind of intriguing. Settings, key bindings. Zoom in. Hmm, zoom out. Mouse four, mouse five. Is that is that something? One second. No. Hmm. I'm not sure. It doesn't seem to be working. Weird. I don't know. I don't know. No, don't not escape. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure. Unsure. Unsure. I'm just gonna keep watching this Yeti. Control and wheel. By default, uh, I'm doing it. It's not working. Hmm. Yeah, I can't get it to work. Yeah, he's getting a little close for comfort. A little too close for comfort. Way too close for comfort. Way too close for comfort, okay. Here we go. <laughs> it's like the music knows. The music starts kicking up when this uh, this Yeti gets too close to us. Um, uh, let's see. Burrow. Burrow, burrow. Let's see. We're going to figure out how a burrow works. Establish burrows to organize work and living spaces in larger fortresses. Um, is that what it's for? Our work and living areas where citizens can be assigned workers will try to limit their tasks to the confines of a burrow, but they will sometimes form paths which pass through other areas. Burrows can be suspended and unsuspended freely. When a burrow is suspended, assigned citizens will ignore it. It can be useful to assign all of your civilians to a safe emergency burrow, which you activate in case of intruders. Okay. That makes sense. I was going to say, like, most of the time when I'm using a burrow, it's to get my dwarves to be somewhere I don't want them to die in, you know? Um, let me see here. I, I think I have it selected already, right? Okay. Okay. <laughs> do, do, do. Let's set the burrow kind of like this right here. Okay. And well, I guess it's fine. I don't care about the symbol in the background and stuff. Click in the play area to paint the burrow, except that is the burrow right there. Inside top fort is what we'll call it. Um, nobody assigned. Hmm. This is interesting. They've done some things with the burrow here. Toggle whether workshops can source materials from outside the burrow. So like. I can make it, by default, I guess, if the, the burrow is on, a dwarf that's working in a workshop inside the burrow can be like, oh, I'm going to go grab this thing that's outside the burrow. That's much different than usual. It's going to take me uh, a little bit. Oh, I got the sex bots showed up. I, I was wondering when they when they would pop up. Get out of here, you. Don't need just unnecessary. Let me see here. One second. There we go. Get out of here, you rat bastards. Anyways, so this is our burrow right here. Um, it didn't really go into detail how to turn the thing on or off, did it? That's a, a little bothersome. Um, click somebody to assign them. I guess I would just go and do all of them. That That's going to be a little bothersome most of the time. I would think. Maybe there's still like an alert thing up somewhere, like in the military screen or something. I'm not sure. Well, I just assigned them all, so I, I'm hoping that people run to the burrow, which they kind of are, but like these animals are left outside, which isn't good. Hmm. Let me look at the military screen real quick. Open the squad sidebar. You must appoint a mil militia commander to create a squad. Okay. Hmm. Let's see here. Must appoint a militia commander. Like, 
what is the alert thing? Is there alerts? Is that a tab somewhere? Justice system. Um, like, a, like a military screen? I'm looking for like a military screen. You know, not just the squad sidebar. Let me see. It's not like an icon with a sword or like a shield or something. Hmm. Sock piles, zones, burrows, hauling routes, high and low traffic, items for dumping. Hmm. Let's see here. That seems a little strange. Question mark. That's a good idea. Let's have a look. Uh, military. Military, military, military. Noble squads. Okay, this is what the thing... Yeah, this is what it just told me. Okay. Hmm. Alerts? Oh, okay, this isn't... Okay, never mind. Never mind, never mind. Okay, get out of here. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Military, duh, right here. Before you can create a military, you must appoint a militia commander from the nobles and administrators menu. Okay, so maybe I just have to have one of these things now before I can do anything with a militia screen. Okay, that's fine. Mm, 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 mm. Assign a barracks, equipment menu, yada yada, schedule menu, powerful tool. Okay. That's fine. Okay, Militia Commander. I'm going to uh, assign a new one, I guess. And I'm just going to have it be Ushbir, our expedition leader. There we go. Now then, squads. Um, I, I don't really want to create a squad. Is there not a military screen anymore? I don't know. It probably would be worth my while to go through the, uh, the tutorial at some point. Maybe not on stream, you know? Um, hmm... Just kind of kind of tedious sometimes you know but like I, I guess it would help if uh like to just guide me around to see what's possible and what's been removed and and whatnot yeah this biome's spooky as hell ain't it the the uh, ambience is great i'm a big fan it looks like all of our people are heading over to the um the burrow now which is good this yeti might not be coming up after all which would be even better let's um okay Let's see here. I'm going to head back over here. Maybe we can just uh, take care of these animals real quick before anything uh, happens. Maybe we can just go and build a workshop, a butcher. Yeah. Right here. We'll do one right over here, too. Just like that. And maybe make a, make a tanner as well. How about? Sound good? I hope so. Workshops, farming, and tanning. Here we go. We'll just make those real quick. Uh, I'm, I'm sure somebody's available to do those tasks. And, um, well, we've got our meeting hall up here. I don't think they should be loitering down by the wagon anymore. They shouldn't be. But maybe I'll just turn this burrow off or something. Like that. We'll see. I'm hoping somebody comes and builds these things real quick. Um, where are you headed, my friend? Where's that damn Yeti? I'm not seeing it. That thing's crafty. It may be undead, but it's a it's a wily one for sure. There it is, down to the south. No, it's, it's not a problem. That's fine. A snowstorm has come. Okay. Making some beds. Making some butcher workshops. A tanner. Gotta get those animals taken care of one way or the other. We're not gonna be able to feed these animals, I'm just realizing, because there's no grass up here, so they're gonna die anyways. They're already getting hungry. So, we, you know, we kinda gotta do what we gotta do, unfortunately. Um, let me see here. Uh, Connor Gordon, thank you for your support. Uh, thank you, and thank you for watching, too. It means a lot. Thank you, thank you, my friend. Um, sorry we have to butcher these animals, but you kinda gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. I guess I gotta mess with this uh, the setting over here, this um, scaling business. 
just so I can actually butcher these animals <laughs> through this menu. Let me see here. Mm, boop, boop. Yep, we're going to butcher both of those animals. That shouldn't be a problem. I'm going to change this thing once again. There we go. Okay, okay. Here we go. We're going to butcher those animals, get them all tanned up, get their, their skins tanned up. <laughs> they, they, there you go. Um, they're going to get revived? You know, I don't know. I'm not sure if this is a resurrector biome. That doesn't always happen in evil biomes. Um... I'd be willing to bet that that could happen. Although, you know, if we butcher them, it shouldn't be much of a problem because they're kind of like rendered into their component pieces in the process. So, yeah, it shouldn't, shouldn't be much of a problem. Shouldn't be much of a problem. Get to it, dwarves. Butcher them up. Render those animals into their component pieces. <laughs> Make them tasty. Make them tasty, dwarves. There we go. Got, a, got these traps going up over here. I think the traps are all set way okay okay this is you see a skull and crossbones and it's pretty alarming you know but you know, it's fine it's fine no worries we're good we're good okay we've got these cage traps are done now there's a, a couple of black cap cage traps in here some mechanisms we're all good right there now then let's see we got to build some furniture some uh a beds and we're just gonna slam these things in here one two three four five six seven eight everyone's gonna have their nice little uh ice bedroom <laughs> which is horrible terrible um but again better than nothing i suppose we don't have access to any stone or wood or anything yet hey that's not good so it looks like maybe a water buffalo skin came back to life yeah, you could see it down here in the butcher workshop. This is a reanimator re biome. Um, hmm. Uh, it's just a skin, right? And like you know, you're gonna you're gonna think that it's like a a, a mass of flesh on the ground or something like that, or like a floppy strip of skin. But, like, this is the entire skinned animal. The the whole skin of the creature. Like, I don't know how dwarves go about skinning a creature exactly, but it's like they zip open the back of it and just dump out the innards, and then they just have the full animal skin. So I just pictured this like a big floppy uh, water buffalo walking around now. Um, Probably won't be an issue. Again, we don't... We don't have a military. <laughs> so I'm going to create a squad. Okay, with metal armor. The Tenacious Nets is their name. No special orders. Routine off duty. Uh, let me see here. This is this is all new to me, so I don't really know what's going on here. View the positions in this squad. Okay, so you can just assign positions through this this little squad right here. Um. Okay. That's, that's kind of handy. You just, like, click them real quick. Now all the dwarves are in the squad. Now, we, I remember, we have a bunch of axes in the fortress. But they're not, like, they're not in the fortress. They're, like, out here at the wagon. So I'm hoping they grab some some axes and then maybe take on this beastie. I don't know. Right now they're panicking. All the dwarves are just like, oh, my God, it's a skin. And they're just, like, running into their bedrooms and stuff. Um, Go get some axes real quick. Go ahead. This dwarf over here, this brave Dodok, the woodworker, looks to be engaging with the creature right now as we as we speak let's see how this goes oh easy easy peasy yeah just bam done that's it water buffalo cow mangled skin we got some uh some leg skin here chopped off one of its legs i guess uh its brain is on the ground um what what happened exactly both these workshops are now both destroyed and we've got like lungs and horns and uh nervous tissue laying all over the ground um uh, did the buffalo do that? Did the buffalo destroy those... The buffalo skin, sorry. Destroy those workshops, do you think? Hmm. Fascinating. I didn't think they were uh, building destroyers, but here they are. Yeah, so... <laughs> this water buffalo skin came back to life and started rampaging around, wrapping its, um... You know, skin. <laughs> around pieces of the workshop and just tearing it down. A real anarchist there. Let's see. 
Gonna zoom out a little bit here. Got that. Where the hell's that Yeti? Man, I don't know where the hell that thing is. I think it keeps scurrying away from me. Hopefully it's far enough away. Let's check the map. Uh, just, okay, it looks like the Yeti has moved away. Which is good and bad. Um, there are worse things that could pop up in an evil reanimator biome, I'll tell you that much. But we'll just give ourselves a second here to maybe try to get things back in order. Um, somebody just grabbed a hide that they found somewhere. Maybe the other animal that we butchered in is now tanning it. I'm hoping they can get the thing tanned in time. Uh, oh, okay. That, that thing came back to life just right there. It was a, um, other skin, I believe, of the yak bull, but it was killed, no problem. So the skin of undead creatures is surprisingly not too, too difficult. It's just a skin. Oh, got some more combat here. What is this? Who's fighting? What is this? Help. How to see? How to see this? Here we go. Oh. Um, <laughs> same thing with the yak bull hair. Uh, the miner struck the yak bull hair in the head with his copper pick, and the severed part sails off in an arc. So, um, like the yak hair has a head. All right, think about that for a second. You think yak hair, it's a clump of hair, like a big dust bunny or a tumbleweed or something like that, right? But, um, you know, you're able to chop its head off. So, like, how it works in Dwarf Fortress is the, the hair is in the shape of the animal, just kind of, like, lurking about. It's it's a terrifying thing to try to picture, you know? <laughs> ah, Yeti Corpse is back. That rat bastard over here in the west. Okay, you mind your own business. We're almost done outside. You don't have to you don't have to go mucking things up, you bastard, huh? Anywho, yes, those animals were put down. Um, their skins, I don't think we even managed to stray yak bull skin. Can we tan a hide? Yeah, you know, let's let's tan as many hides as we can real quick. How's that sound? Tan a hide? There you go. Um, I'm not sure if we can actually salvage these hides. That would be nice though. Go ahead, salvage a hide. There they go. They, I think they grabbed, like, leg skin or, or something, like, pieces of the skin that were severed off and are trying to make do with the little fragments that they were able to recapture there. Um, as for the rest of this crap, I, I don't know. I'm not sure what they're doing with it exactly. Unsure. Unsure. Um, dwarf Carpenter's The Thing at Krug Smash. Dwarf Carpenter's The Thing. Uh, you, oh, oh, it's like The Thing. Like, the, the carpenter is the, the one who's the thing. I think that's actually pretty right. I yeah, You know, the thing in Dwarf Fortress actually is a pretty uh, amazing idea. I like that an awful lot. Justin Scarwin, thank you very much. Beware the raven heads. <laughs> the menacing raven heads. It used to be a thing in Dwarf Fortress a while ago when I first started making videos where, like, undead pieces couldn't be killed by any means. Like, they, they could be killed, but, like, you couldn't beat them to death. Like, they were so frail... That they were like beyond frail. You couldn't actually injure them. It was a weird system. I don't really know what happened. It hasn't been like that in years though. So no worries. It looks like, you know, things like skin flopping about is actually pretty easy to dispose of these days, thankfully. Anywho. Okay, back in our house here. We got to get some, some stuff sorted out. We still have, you know, this table. We gotta, our meeting hall is done. Stone workers workshop. I'm going to get rid of that. Okay. Getting rid of these, uh. These little, little shops out here. Okay, those animals have been disposed of. We can get rid of these other workshops that are outside still. Not a problem. And I guess we should probably get rid of this wagon too. Start carting all of our crap inside, you know. I don't really want to be outside at all. It's dangerous. It's just much more controlled if we're not outside in the least. Why do people go outside though? Like, what is this person doing with no job right now? Like, there's no zone set up out here, and we do have a zone that's inside. Hmm. Vexing. Let me see here. Just, just making sure. Like, there's, there's no zone out here. They've got nothing. In here, there's a dining hall. So they should all be congregating in of doors. I'm thinking. By my reckoning, that should be the case. But here we are. Not happening. Uh, I'm going to make a stockpile. Just inside, okay? Just, uh, we'll do it like this. Like a big, boring stockpile, pretty much. It's just going to, we're going to cram everything in there. Uh, everything. Everything? Everything. Everything? Question mark? Um, 
Yeah, everything. We'll just get as much crap as we can crammed into this this workshop right here, um, including stone. Just as, as much as we can. Maybe not ice. Maybe we can just leave ice out of this, actually. Now that I'm thinking of it. No ice. Where is stone? Other stone? I have to imagine ice is on here. H-I... No? Let me see here. Ice? It's not even... It doesn't even pop up here, I guess. Does it pop up anywhere? Can I just, like, select all and look through all of the, the categories? I'm not sure. Hmm... Maybe ice can't get put in a stockpile? Seems weird. Seems weird. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not too sure. Maybe they just won't put ice in here. That would work out. That would work out. Okay, hurry up, dwarves. Get some stuff thrown away, huh? Interrupted by water buffalo cow hair. Deal with it, huh? You bunch of cowards. It's just a clump of hair. There you go. They killed it. No problem. Bunch of brave dwarves. Smart dwarves. Fast dwarves? Question mark? Hurry up. Hurry up, please. <laughs> Let's have a look at this uh, this Yeti corpse over here. Just over in the west. It's not really bothering with us all too much. Um, wagon is a default meeting zone, and you need to destroy slash salvage it. Yeah, I got rid of it. It's not there anymore. It's gone. You can still create a one-tile dump zone. Oh, you can? Oh, thankfully. Excellent. I was worried about that whole thing there. Um, let me see. If you saw an undead clump of hair in the shape of a, a buffalo, I mean, I'd be scared. Yeah, I, I, I would be too. I would be too. But, like, you know, after the first couple times you deal with it, it's like, okay, you know it's deal. Just kind of breathe on it and it's fine. Oh, I thought the, I had the game unpaused. My bad. There we go. Um... Yeah, I mean, it's just hair. That's all it is. It's fine. You can become immortal, but in fortress mode, it's normally not a good thing. You either have a guest bring a book with the secrets of life and death, or you put vampire blood in your water supply. What are you talking about? Yeah, you can do that. I mean, you could. I have to imagine it works the same in uh, this, this version, I would think. Unsure. I don't see why I wouldn't, though. Keep going, dwarves. Keep on going. That's right. I, I mean, uh, is that why you suggested the dump zone before? Like, I could just get all this stuff dumped into one little tile somewhere, huh? That's a good idea. Let me see here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a zone just in this corner down here, I guess. It's going to be a, where's it, a dump zone? Garbage dump? Okay. Let's do that. Right here. One tile zone. Just like that, okay? Uh, except, that's all it's going to be. Bottom right hand corner. And I'm going to designate items for dumping and melting. Okay? Uh, designate an item for dumping. And I'm just going to... Just like that. Designate all these items to be dumped right here. And if the dwarves behave themselves, they should just take it all and cram it down into the tile in the bottom right. That's how it usually works anyways. There they go. I kind of thought, hey, your fortress is out of food? Question mark? Oh, that's not good. Hmm. Vexing. Um, we oh. oh, it only said that because I just forbid all of their food and stuff. No, we, we still have plenty of food. I just, you know, I gotta get it crammed all down to the bottom right hand corner. Hey. Okay, that scared me. <laughs> Alright, stop giving me scary notifications. Before it would just be like R. That's all, all it would say over there. And, um, I don't know. I, all, now they're giving me like swords and like skulls and stuff. <laughs> it's scary. It's fine though. It's fine. Let me see here. Um, Yeti Cops. 416 years old. Okay, so this is clearly a different one. This one's been around for 100 years longer than that other one. It's even more wily, probably. Terrifying. Let's zoom out a little bit here. Is this very close to where we are? I can't tell. No, it's far. I'm having a hard time, like, telling at a glance how far away stuff is from my stuff, you know? 
Build doors in front of your beds, then try multi-option on bedroom zone. Just one click on bed makes bedroom some tombs. Same tombs. I, I... I'll, I'll have to give that a try. Let me see here. I'm gonna resume construction of all these beds. Aw, oh, come on, build those beds, huh? Furniture, beds, boop. No, didn't work, okay, I'm not too sure. Oh, I must have forbid it. I got a little, I, I, I thought the game crashed for a second, which was a little terrifying. Maybe I should save it. Save and continue playing. What would you like to name this manual save? It will never be overwritten, but you can delete it while loading. Um, Yeti. We'll just call it Yeti, how about? What do you think of this version? I think it's great. I think it's great, yeah. <laughs> Somebody said, not the tombs again. Yeah, we had an issue before. I, I still am unclear as to how some of the zone stuff works, but I haven't gone through the tutorial, so it's my own fault, really, you know? Um, I was trying to make a tomb, and it maybe I'm just like trying to think of it like how it used to work. It just didn't seem like a, a straightforward system. Most everything in here so far has been very straightforward. Um, very self-explanatory, and I've appreciated it immensely, but just this, um, the tomb thing seems a little, a little baffling. I've got a feeling it's going to be the same way with, uh, bedrooms, but I don't, I don't know, you know? I'm not too sure yet. Let me see here. I, I'm going to try to do that same thing with the bedrooms here. One second, let me see here. Um... One second, one second. Multi automatically assigns rooms based on the contiguous spaces, so it's useful for entire bedroom wings and multi tomb wings. Multi automatically assigns rooms based on contiguous spaces, so it's useful for entire bedroom wings and multi room tombs. I that's what I had done before though, and it wasn't working. People were just like cramming multiple uh, bodies into a single tomb. Uh, one second. Somebody said, build the doors in front of your beds. It seems weird that I would even need doors in front of my beds to make bedrooms, frankly. But, I will try that. It's, um, I'm gonna need a lot of doors, is the only thing. I need, like, 15 more doors, and, uh, I guess I don't know how much wood I have right at this current juncture. One, one second, one second. I'm gonna unforbid. Ooh, Stop. Boy, that's kind of bothersome, that whole thing that pops up right there. But, you know, it's whatever. Um, yeah, I need some more doors. I'm going to make some more doors real quick. I wish I could make doors out of, like, ice or something. I don't think I can. But, um, we'll see here one second. I'm going to build a new workshop inside. Um, oh, let's see, I'm going to go... To the stockpile thingy over here, maybe. Uh, I'm, just, I'm trying to remember how to modify an area like this. Repaint this stockpile. Um, is it repaint? Can I like get rid of an area like that? How do I erase an area of it? You know, I don't want to remove it. I don't want to get rid of it. I don't really want to like start from square one. Let's see here. I'm sure there's a way to do it, right? No? Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. Okay. So I just put a new stockpile down here in the bottom left. But now can I get rid of this stockpile? Okay. That, that seems weird, but like I guess that'd be a way you can erase sections of a, an existing stockpile. Um, okay. I, th that's fine, I guess. It, it works, gets the job done, right? Let me see. Repaint, repaint, then hit the eraser icon in the bottom middle. Okay, well, I mean, I'll try that next time, I suppose. This seemed to work well enough, I, I guess. Let me see. I'm going to build a new workshop. Um, I need doors. We have all this ice. Again, I don't think... I can make doors out of ice. I couldn't make tables out of ice, so I'd be a fool to think I can make doors out of ice, but you never know. I'm going to give it a try anyways. Maybe. Maybe. 
Where is that damn Yeti? Gotta keep an eagle's eye on that thing. Plus, like, I also keep in mind that there could be, like, giant albatross zombies uh, flying around, too. That'd be... Something like that would be a lot worse than uh, one mangy old Yeti wandering around, huh? Giant puffin zombies, I should say. Flying around, murdering our dwarves. This, uh, this guy's coming pretty close to our fortress, I believe. Yeah, way too close. Once again. Go ahead, dwarves. Keep piling and stuff inside. There you go. There you go. Just watching this guy. Please go up. Go up. Up. Get away from us. Go away. I don't want you. Get out of here, you. I don't need you anymore. There you go. Snow maps to be super comfy. This one here, like, it is, I will admit, kind of comfy, but it's also, like, low key stressful. Like, the ambience is so good. That, like, haunting sort of, like, hum that, like, wells up there. It just, I don't know, something about it. It's really spooky. Yeti, in all caps. Yeah, I saw it. It didn't come up. It went up north, I think. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's, it's skittering away, thankfully. Back, oh, back away. It just disappeared, which means, like, um, how Dwarf Fortress works is only a certain number of creatures can be on the map at a, a given time. Like, if you're out in the wild, it'll have, like, sometimes a Yeti corpse. This is the one creature. And then the second creature is these giant albatrosses, like a flock of giant albatrosses and a Yeti. It could be two Yeti corpses or two flocks of giant albatross, or a flock of giant albatross, and a, a flock of giant puffins, or two yeti corpses. But, you know, as soon as one leaves, another one pops in. That yeti left and another one popped in. I think those albatrosses are heading off the map as well. I think. There's only two left. We'll see. They're up here in the north. I'm not sure where they're headed exactly, but, um... There they go. Heading off to the north. They just moved off the map. So in a moment, another creature is going to pop up. And it could be another Yeti. It could be some more harmless voids or something. Let me see where this Yeti is. This Yeti is far down to the south. This uh, third Yeti here. So that's that's good. Let's see if something else pops up, though. Something else should pop up in a moment, I would think. I'm going to zoom back in here. Um, having a look at this stockpile once more. Uh, we're going to claim all of these items once more. I mean, it's a strange system, like all this um, claiming and whatnot, but it works, I guess. It's a good way to sort out your items or get them all like compressed down into one tile. Kind of cheesy, you know. Um, do I still need Dwarf Therapist to play properly? I've never needed Dwarf Therapist. I've never used it. Um, I, I mean, I, you'd have to ask somebody that uses it, like... This added a bunch of stuff to the game that probably Dwarf Therapist uses, but um, it's not stuff that I, I'm accustomed to at all. Alright, a second animal popped up. It's a flock of albatross again. So we have this Yeti corpse and an albatross. A Yeti corpse which is headed northward up towards our dwarves. Wonderful. Stressful. Taking us a long time to get all these items packed away. I don't know why the dwarves are still going down over here. They shouldn't. You know? They they definitely shouldn't. Um, one second. I'm going to get more of these items crammed down into this corner here. And also claim these ones. There we go. See, that, that wagon is gone. There is no more wagon here, and there's no zone. There's no meeting hall zone either. So, as far as I can tell, they shouldn't be coming out here. They've, they've got no good reason to come out to this area anymore. But they keep doing it. There can only be two types of animals at once in a map. No, that's that's actually not true. Like, if you uncover the caverns down below, then it, like, makes slots down on that level as well. Like, there could be two different animals on a given level as well so like if you go down and cover a bunch of a caves for every level there could be like you know its own separate animal slots if that makes any sense but that's generally how it works yeah 
Um, and that's not including, like, other things, too, like where beasts or forgotten beasts or anything like that, you know. Could have all kinds of bad stuff, really. But, generally speaking, just wilderness creatures, that's how it works. Okay. This yeti is staying off to the west a little bit. It looks like the dwarves aren't so interested in going outside anymore, which is nice. I don't mind that at all. Uh, got all this granite here piled up. I would imagine they'd start bringing that inside. Oh yeah, there they go. They must be doing that. There you go. Wonderful dwarves. We have a bunch of granite. So, maybe I will make a workshop. Or, you know, I already did that. A workshop over here. Stoneworkers workshop, which is suspended. Uh, I'm gonna make a bunch of doors out of that. Fifteen stone doors out of granite. You know, you gotta have some sort of comfortability in your homes, right? So... I will do that. Door. Rock door. Um, I'm just going to set it to repeat. All we have is granite, so that's all they're going to use. I'm just going to start making a whole hassle of stone doors. Granite doors. Um, if you change zooming to shift slash control plus wheel and then press done, you will zoom assigned to mouse four slash five. What? I didn't pick up any of that. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm hor horrendously dumb sometimes. <laughs> But that's too many commands for my smooth, egg-like brain to take in. Uh, let me see here. I, I just clicked like eight things I didn't mean to click on. Um, creatures, others, Yeti corpse. It's still just the one. Oh, that Yeti's very close. Uh, ooh, yeah, go away. I'm going to go to the inside top fort and assign some people to the inside top fort, I guess. Go there now. Okay, they look to be going. Go, go, off with you. There you go. Okay. Yeti's a little bit too close. I don't like this fella. Get out of here. There you go. There you go. Okay. It looks to be heading off and away. That's good. Um... I'm, I'm trying to suss out how I feel about this burrow system exactly. I don't know if there's an easier way to do it. There probably is. Um, you, know, you know, I would love there for there to be a way to put all of my civilians in a burrow at once, which I imagine there is some way to do it. Uh, again, I am a little unsure. Like, I don't see a military screen like there was before. I see the squad screen, and you can do a bunch of stuff there. Like, here we have the one squad, the Tenacious Nets. Um, view the positions in this squad. Okay. Here we are. Select a squad or squad member to give orders, change equipment, and assign schedules. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little, little uncertain. But I, I don't doubt that there's something I just have missed, you know? I didn't do the tutorial again, so it's my own fault for missing stuff. Um, will I will this use Steam version for future forts? It says Teacher Mook. Thank you very much, by the way. Um, I mean, it's hard to say what I'll do in the future, exactly. I really like the way the Steam graphics look, though. Like, so far today, while looking at them. It seems to be pretty uh, cohesive, pleasing to the eye. I'm certainly going to give it a try. Whether or not I'll stick to it, I don't know. I like changing stuff up, so... It's hard to say what I'll go with, like, 100%. I, I couldn't... I mean, obviously, I couldn't say... From this point forward, I only use the Steam graphics. You know, like, I, I might want to go back to ASCII stuff, and, and that's just how it will work. I'm sure some people will throw a fit either way, but, eh, it's whatever. I gotta do what I want to do, damn it. That's just kind of how I built my channel. Ah, <laughs> uh, but yes, um, let's see, maybe some doors out front here wouldn't be a bad idea. I was just gonna kind of leave it open, but since we're making a bunch of doors, then, eh, might as, might as well, right? At least that way we can kind of block sight of a horrific yeti if it wandered past our fortress gate, you know? Might be a good idea. And we'll start getting some doors put on the, the bedrooms as well. Um, and, you know what, let's get rid of these ramps, because they're kind of bothersome looking. I don't love it. There we go. Get rid of them. And, you know, I guess we could probably start making a, a wall around our fortress. A, an icy wall, right? That'd be a good idea. Further block out sight, line, line of sight for like a horrific yeti type creature. A lot of these two-legged rhino lizards around. They're pretty cute. Just like a two-legged lizard, you know? Just kind of scuttling around in the snow. 
I didn't know them to be particularly arctic creatures, but maybe they are. Maybe they just are. Um, you are the creator, and the creator chooses his or her tool set. You should listen to people, but never get leashed by them. Oh, I know. I know. Um, that is the truth. And, you know, as far as listening to people, like, no disrespect to anybody out there, but I don't like doing that either. I'm sorry. I know I should probably listen to people and give people respect and whatnot, but that's, again, not how this channel is built. And if I start listening to people, then this channel can go in a direction that I do not want it to go in. And many other people don't want it to go in either, you know? So, I, I'm just, I gotta do what I want <laughs> when you get down to it. That's just how, how it is, um, pretty much. And, like, you know, you guys are always feel free to hold me accountable if I start making, like, a, a Splatoon content <laughs> just out of the blue. Then you can, you know, you know, voice your opinion and stuff, but it's fine. <laughs> it's just what I'm going to do, I guess. I'm a force of nature. Let me see here. Um, I'm thinking of rounding up this wall a little bit. I think it would be cute. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a pointless thing. I'm just going to make this the fortress be nice and smooth and nice and round. Uh, yeah. You know. Not like there's any point to it, but I kind of like it. I think it'd be be cute. Let me see here. Okay. Mm, mm, mm. Do, do, do. Dee, 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 dee. There we go. Yeah. Ah, it's looking real good. I like it. Do 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 do. There we go. Yeah, we're gonna get smoothed out real quick. Get us some more ice. Maybe we can just you know we're gonna carve out these walls, and then um you know turn a lot of the ice that we get out of this into blocks, and maybe make a nice big actual fortified wall around our little encampment here. Really, all things considered, I'd say we're doing rather well so far. Though, that being said, we don't have access to any food or water. Um, besides the uh, meager bit. You know, we're not doing good. Actually, I take that back. This is bad. <laughs> we got to focus on bigger things than uh, making fancy ice walls. This is a, this is a terrible idea. We're going to be dead soon. Uh, where's that Yeti? 450 years old. Uh, where are you right now, my Yeti friend? You're off and away doing your own own stuff. That's fine. Okay. I, I think the Yeti's gone for now. Gone enough anyways. Uh, are we still the beak of sneak? No. No, we're not. No, that, that was the, uh, the other dwarves. It's in the same world, though. It's just really far away. It's a different civilization and everything. Can I set a hotkey to the Yeti? It might be helpful. Um, I would imagine so. But maybe not. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe if I hit H? Unnamed. Uh, let's see. Recenter on this location. Let me see. No, it doesn't seem to work. I thought maybe I could just like set F2 to follow the Yeti automatically, but no, it didn't seem to work. That's a shame. Oh well. Uh, I wish I could tame the Yeti, no, but um, like you can't tame Yetis normally because they're intelligent, I believe? Maybe not. But um, th this one's undead, so it's completely impossible. It's like a, you know, a brainless undead creature powered only by evil magics and stuff, so can't do it, I'm afraid if we could capture it though, that'd be a heck of a centerpiece for our fortress though, I'd say at some point, at some point um, let's see here, now then, we have our fortress all kind of uh, nice and smooth looking so, we should what we gotta do, again we have to find a way to get food <laughs> we are gonna be dead soon um Okay, so, like, without making our place any more comfy and without getting too, too distracted, I'm going to start making a stairway down, okay? We're going to go here and then go uh, all the way down to, I'm going to go 
20 levels down, say, okay? We got to find dirt, you know? Or at least water could do it. We got to find something down there. And we will find something. It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of looking. We'll get it, though, dwarves. Trust me. Trust me. Got all this granite out here still. Am I still pumping out doors? Okay, I guess I am. I, I imagine we have enough at this point, but I don't I don't know for sure. One second, okay. Build doors door. Bim bum bim bim bum bim bum bim bum bim bum. Couple more. Ding. Ah, that's it. No, we only had six doors. I thought we had a lot more than that. I guess I spend an awful lot of time looking around for this Yeti because I'm actually terrified. <laughs> What time of the year is it right now? It's midwinter. When did we start? I could have sworn we started this fortress here in spring, didn't we? Hmm. Interesting. Well, we've gone through an awful lot of this year, and we've seen hide nor hair of any other fellow dwarves, migrants, or merchants, even. Vexing. Quite vexing. Oh, well. About to happen, I suppose. What is this? Rough Chryso praises. Fascinating. Okay. Um, what I think we're gonna do is build some more stonework workshops out out of doors here. Right, okay? One, two, three, and four. Just right out here, and we're gonna get our dwarves pumping out some ice blocks and make a make a nice ice wall around us, how about? I think that'd be good. You know, keep out some of the danger. I'm a little surprised that we haven't seen any undead flying creatures yet. I shouldn't have said that. Just looking at the animal screen there for a second. We got some animals popping up in a second, and I, I can guarantee it's going to be flying undead creatures. A any second now. Guarantee it. Flying undead creatures. Watch. You just watch. I'm telling you. Here and now. A little terrified. If that happened, that it's it, it'd suck. <laughs> Wouldn't be good at all. I guess this probably goes without saying. Albatross. Just three albatross on the map right now. Not even giant ones, just normal ones. Yeti corpse, okay. Got another one coming in from the north. Like, kind of where we saw that first one there. That's fine. Yeah, use mind your own business out there, you big shaggy bastard, huh? Don't need ya. This place is spooky as hell, ain't it? I think so. Uh, I'm gonna add a new task to make some blocks. Make rock blocks. Right now, on repeat... And I'm going to set... Uh, hey, I can't make it out of ice. What the hell is going on around here, huh? I could have sworn that you could make them out of ice. But I guess you cannot. That's uh, not so nice. I am going to delete these now. And maybe... Oops. Are these all being deleted? I think so. I guess we'll just make a wall out of ice boulders that we feel like carved out of the uh, surrounding ice or something, huh? Um... Thank you for your support, guys. By the way, I just happened to look down and see a couple of supporters here. Tamsin's Hollow. Um, Krog, your channel and community are some of the best I've been a part of. And they're they're this way um, now. Oh, my God. They're this way. They're this way they are because of how you've run them. Thank you. I try my best. I try my best. Um, thank you very much for your kind words and support. It means a lot, Tamsin. Really, and uh, Teacher Mook, thank you again. Love the new intro. You like that? That was fun. With the little channel trailer thing. I kind of uh, assembled that together, just threw it together. It's a, really a, a fun little thing. Came out pretty darn good, I'd say. Uh, I'm going to get started on a wall up here. Okay. Uh, I have it set to use closest to material. I wish there was a way right here to select what material I was going to use, you know? Like, like granite or ice, you know? And then just, like, keep pumping away stuff. Like, this is most likely going to be ice just because there's a bunch of ice in the area. But I just, I, I don't want them taking granite from the wagon and using that, you know? it would just be a long walk with a giant boulder. This is a very pleasing way to go about making walls, though, I'll say that much. Much more pleasing than the frantic clicking that it usually takes. I love it. Um, seeing Mol Moldaf fighting side by side by, by Ted there. Yeah, I love that. Hey, I mean, 
Never know. Never know. I like that. Pretty tarn good. <laughs> Just joined. Gonna watch from the beginning. Hey, good luck. How long have I been going? It's five right now, and I started at around what was it? Look, I think nine thirty or something like that. So, not as long as a normal stream yet, but we're going for a few more hours, my bearded bastards. Let's see here. Okay, so I'm gonna build a wall that comes down just a little bit. Okay. Looking pretty good so far, I think. Do, 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 do. How's that? Nice little gentle slope to it, kind of curving around. Like it's giving a nice icy hug to our fortress. I've got a feeling some of these walls are going to be made out of granite, which is the only thing I'm, I'm kind of griping about right now. Like... Um, let's see. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to tell what they're going to be made out of. It just uses the closest stuff, which I believe is the ice that's all over the place here, you know. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to keep an eye on that, that damn Yeti, though. Again, I, I wish I could set a, a hotkey to, like, keep my eyes pasted on this fella, you know. Again, two. There might be a way to do that, and I just haven't seen it because of the whole tutorial skipping thing. Might be. I don't know. Fred Langan, thank you. For Moldath the Beardless. Yes, Moldath is great. If you'll change zooming hotkey to shift slash wheel, then press done. It'll say mouse four or five on that key. But it'll work with shift wheel as you have assigned. Alright, I'm gonna give it a try. Let's see. The settings. Um key bindings. Zoom in. Shift. Okay, mouse four. Zoom out. Shift. Okay. Oh, it hit done. I didn't do that. Let me try that again. One second. Zoom in. Done. Okay. Return to game. Uh... Hey, there we go. Handy dandy. That's uh, that's incredibly helpful. Thank you very much, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. That that helps an awful lot. Yeah, I saw you posting down there, but uh, you know. Like, I, I love you guys. I really do. I really, really do. But, like, sometimes I run into problems, like, especially during streaming and stuff. And, like, I get so many suggestions thrown out. And, like, half of them are just, like, bonkers or nonsensical. Or just don't end up working or, like, go in circles and stuff. And <laughs> I don't know what to believe half the time, you know? It's, it doesn't help that it's Dwarf Fortress that we're dealing with here. So, and it certainly doesn't help that it's a new version that just came out hours ago, you know? Um, I'm normally pretty skeptical about what people suggest to me in the game. No offense. Again, none at all. Just, you know. <laughs> it does work. Yes, thank you. Um, the heart balloon, heart symbol and the, the text balloon by the Yeti here, I believe that means it's like, it's wounded. See how there's like blood dripping down from the top and the, the heart is very low. I think it's like a health bar, sort of. I've noticed that my dwarves before, ones who are grievously wounded will display that shortly before dying, typically. But, um, but yeah, I, I believe that's what it means. Got this ice block wall. The Yeti is kind of like checking the wall out. What is this thing? Using its damaged undead brain to try to figure out what's going on here. Hey, don't go over there. I gotta, I gotta turn these damn burrows back on, I guess. Um, yeah, everybody get inside. Go, go, go. Ba, ba, be, ba, ba. There you go. Go. Turn around. Turn around. Get. Don't be over here. That's dumb of you. Oh, that's really dumb. I just realized that. <laughs> how how have I just noticed this? I got this this corner here is all um, you know, people can just go through this corner. That's not good. Uh, let's let's remedy that ASAP. A eh? <laughs> dumb. Uh, just like that. There you go. There you go. Get to it. There you go. Thank you. Yeti, get out of here. We don't need you. There you go. He listened, the big coward. You big dumb animal. I like how the dwarves aren't going in the burrow. What did I do? I am assuming I did something wrong with the burrow. Oh, man. That, that whole burrow thing is going to get me screwed up in the future. I've really got to go through the tutorial and... um. Just try to figure out everything I can, you know. 
Now use the multi-room feature on those bedrooms. <sighs> I guess I'm like low key over the whole, um, you know, trying to figure out tombs and multi-bedrooms thing. But okay, sure. I'm going to slap some doors on here real quick. Let's see. Doors. Door. Uh, I need more doors. One, two, three, four, five. I need more doors. Let's see here. Tasks and doors. I'm gonna make some doors. Do, 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 do. Five. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. There we go. Two, three, four, five. Yeah, we're gonna make five doors. We're gonna pump them out real quick. Make them out of granite too. I did notice that we are making uh, these walls over here out of granite, which I don't want it to be used for that at all. So I'm going to just cancel these real quick. Is that gonna work? No. Building. Uh, mm, I, mm, I would think there'd be a way to like quickly cancel constructions that you've made instead of going and like doing them all individually like that you know but what do I know let's see here I'm going to get rid of all these constructions I don't want to use our granite and walls because like you know you can't make ice furniture I can make granite furniture though so I want to try to use as much of this granite as I can in furniture right um, how to deconstruct it was uh, Digging orders designate constructed walls, floors, and other constructed tiles to be removed by miners. Okay. Did that work? It's doing that thing before. Let's see if I unpause it. There you go. Okay, so that's a little bug right there. The little thing doesn't pop up unless the game's unpaused. Okay, okay. That's fair. Um... <sighs> But yes, I'm going to get rid of those, and uh, we'll continue that wall somewhere. Where the hell is that damn Yeti, though? That big freak. Here it is. It's quite a distance away now. This zooming thing is incredibly handy. This really helps figuring out where we are. Thank you again. Very helpful. I'm going to turn our burrow off, I guess, right? Seven assigned in. Do, 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 do. There we go. Go and resume your business for now, dwarves. I guess we'll try to get this wall a little bit more straightened out too, huh? Sounds good. I sure hope so. Um, very quiet out here. Again, we've been here for a while. It longer than I think we should have been. Maybe a year, right? Midwinter right now. I, I'm not sure. It still doesn't feel like we've been here for that long, but I could have sworn we started out here at the beginning of spring, right? Have we really been here that long? And there's been no migrants, no traders or anything. It's just completely dead, which I love. That's great. It's really cool. You know, we're super isolated out here, really far away from our civilization. Uh, let's see here. Select material after placement. I'm going to try that. Ice. Okay. So, I mean, it's, it's not that bad. Ice... I just want to make sure we're making all this stuff out of ice. Okay. Okay. There we go. Ice. We've got 39 ice left. Ice. Ice. Oops. Mm -hmm. And then, like, we're going to make a nice big gatehouse out front so nobody can come sneaking up on us. And I'm looking at you, Yeti. We're not French, which is... Uh, I like how you can see the snow on top of the walls. That's really cool. Just like, it's not a thick layer of snow either. It's like these um, little scattered pieces of it. That's really neat. I'm a big fan. Really, really cool. Let me see here. Put another piece right here. Another little piece of ice. And then, I guess, um... <sighs> I, I, um, I still have my hopes kind of up that the dwarves will construct things a little bit more mm, intelligently, in a way. It's going to be a pain to make multi-Z-level structures, as always, I feel. But I don't know. Get the yetis right over here. Kind of moving in towards the fortress a little bit. Don't get too close there, you cheeky bastard. Get the hell out of here, yeah. 
Moving in a little bit. No, no, no. Don't be nosy, no. Don't be nosy. We don't want you. I feel a lot better when, once this wall's all done. <laughs> I'll say that much. There you go. Move on out. There you go. There you go. If anything, like, I'm thinking that when I go to draw, say, a Yeti, for if I did an edited series, I want a horrible tundra like this one here. Like, the fact that the undead have this, like, purple tint to their skin, right? And also these ghoulish black eyes. Like, maybe I can add that into a drawing. Like, I'm not going to draw this creature exactly, you know? But maybe something that, maybe for the first fortress that I embark in after the steam release comes, maybe I can get some inspiration from the icons and stuff. Just, you know, just for the hell of it. Um, it's not going to, like, ruin the creativity or, like, you know, even if it did, say it ruined the creativity entirely. It's not like I'm going to draw this icon. This icon's not going to be my picture, you know? Imagine if I, like, fleshed out a little bit. And what if I did draw this icon exactly as close to my ability, but, like, you know, in a new position, like, you know, swinging its arms up with its mouth open, like, you know, blackened blood hanging from its gums and one of its eyes falling out or something, you know? <laughs> Oh my god, I did not place my doors. No, I see you. I see you. I'm <laughs> I still have a couple more to put in place, okay? I, I may be procrastinating. Leave me alone. Let me see. I'll, I'll put the damn doors in place, okay? Um, one, two, use the closest material, three, four, five. Okay, here we go. The doors are in place. Hey, I gotta put the one more, right? I gotta make one more right at the uh, the entrance out here. And, oh shit, I need, I need one more. One more door. Sorry. One second. Make rock door. Now, please. Thank you. Are we out of ice? Did we run out of ice? I think we may have run out of ice, actually. Uh, I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. That's that's fine by me. Shift and zoom. Okay. There we go. There we go. Okay. That Yeti is shoving off out of here, which is just great. I love it. Cool. Cool 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 um ice yes we can we can get some more ice pretty easily just uh making some channels you know i was saying before oh we really need some food not getting food uh if we look down underground here we've done some digging already here okay we've got the stairway that leads oh sorry sorry down 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 down, down to why, why do they stop that's weird is this an aquifer? Hmm. No, I don't know why we stopped. Oh, there is water down there, though. Okay. Okay. Um, that's probably fine. We're, we'll just... I'm going to start digging out a little bit over here, okay? Just a little bit. Uh, a little bit more. I wonder if... I wonder if that thing is in place, that bug there, where if you make a farm plot, you can, like, look down through the earth. Um, hmm. Let's see here. Melascara, how's it going, buddy? Doing good? Sure hope so. Um, let's let's try it. Let's try it. I, I want to see if this, this little cheesy thing is still in place. Probably not. I'd imagine they would have squished this weird little uh, trick here. But you never can tell, eh? Workshops? Farming? Farm plot. Okay. Uh, hmm. Use closest material. Select material after after placement interesting uh, keep building after okay huh blocked at this location no f mud or soil to farm mud is left by water okay so I do see that the uh, little thing that little tooltip there over on the left it does change slightly over certain areas but I have to imagine it just um Okay, I don't see any change down here. Oh, did that? Did it just? It just changed, right? What is that though? What am I seeing? <gasps> oh my god, <laughs> this box does still work. I thought they would have squished this one out. Go figure. Okay, so we're here like negative. <laughs> we're we're two, 72 spaces down under the earth and I'm trying to build a farm and the game's like yeah you can build it here because there is ground that you can build on this far deep down underground um, just you know we haven't like built down here yet oh that's cheesy that still works though that's kind of funny um, hmm okay 
Noted, noted. It's a little bit harder to do, but it does still work. <laughs> Good to know. Like, we did see there was, like, a damp water or damp soil down here. So, I guess if we just, like, start waving the little mouse around over here. Um, hmm. Interesting. We can discover caves before we dig into them this way, which is a definite cheesage. But, uh, you know, it's whatever. <laughs> Funny. Oh, yes. Uh, let me see here. Zoe, Zoe Gwynn, thank you. Any thoughts on making a new your first first fortress video for the new Steam version? Once you got it figured out, seems like a great opportunity to help people and grow the channel. Um, I I guess I guess I thought of it. Um, I'm kind of like low key lazy when it comes to that sort of stuff, though. Like it's just boring, you know. I'd rather be making something where it's like a story or something like that. It, like call me a baby. Like I guess I probably will. It would help the community that I love, and. I don't know, maybe it's just like a one little episode thing, just real quick, little crash course like I did before. I just got to stop being a baby, buck up and do it, right? Yeah, I guess. Maybe I'll make it be my first video. Like, I, I've got two weeks, I guess, before, like, after today, you know, I've got this Thursday, starting this Thursday. Um, two weeks from this coming Thursday is when I'll put out a video. Um, and that's how I'm going to go from now on. Just uh, every two weeks putting out a video, you know? Should work out pretty well. Uh, but yeah, let's let's see here. What was I just doing? I I'm looking down underground for food, but I would also like dearly to build this wall. So I'm gonna scrounge up as much more ice as I can possibly get and see how far we can get on this project. A, eh? how's that sound? Walls. Select material after placement. We'll just bring it down like this and um, do a do a bunch of ice. Can I? Could I just like, uh, I wish I could like fill out the entire thing with ice, like as soon as I, um, like maybe holding shift should do it or something, you know, um, like hold shift and hit and then it's just like, cause like right now I need 10 units of ice to build that big of a wall and you have to like, so you have to click ice, you know, like right now four times, one, two, three, four to get the ice in there. But, um, you think there'd be like a, a way to like click it and just like put all of the ice in there because obviously I want to just use the one material if I want the same color. I'm figuring that's what a lot of people would want, but I don't know. Not a complaint. I just, I, I don't know. Just a critique, I suppose. <laughs> in a way. I always feel awkward complaining about anything in this game for is how much I do it. Like, I don't know. I always feel bad. I love Dwarf Fortress, you know? I just want the best for it. Okay, here we go. Ice ice a little bit more i still got six units left after this here we go uh one two three four there we go wonderful not quite enough but we're getting there we are getting there last i knew that yeti wasn't on the map anymore so that's good we we're making one more door okay i guess we could try that multi dam bedroom thing now huh let's do it Whoever was telling me to do that, <laughs> that whole crap there. Um, let me see. Let me see. Who said that? Hiya, Fault 401. How's it going? Doing good? I hope I hope it's good. Tutorial in the form of a story. Um, that is one of the ideas I had. Maybe like a tutorial fortress. You know, just go like episode by episode. In this episode, we're working on this and this. In this episode, we're working on this and this. I, I kind of thought about it. I don't know. I don't know, man. I'm such a baby. Like, I just want to, <laughs> I just want to have fun. You know, I like, I like being able to teach people too, but it's so boring. <laughs> such a baby. Um, yeah, I, I probably will. I probably will. Uh, it's good to help people into the game. And like, you know, even with how, um, how much more accessible the game is, because it really is loads more accessible. Um, I can imagine people still having trouble. One of the ideas I kind of did think of to do was make a... Like, how to see the stories in Dwarf Fortress sort of a tutorial, you know? Like, some people can't do that so easily. And I can't blame you. I have a hard time doing it myself when I'm just playing by myself, even. You know, like, right now, I, I'm not really seeing the stories so well. But if I had sat down and, like, was playing the game by myself um, and wanted to try to see a story, say... There are certain things I could do to uh, help that a little bit more, you know? Like, I wouldn't be talking to you guys. It would just be me 
and the game and it would just take some observation and you know looking at things it takes some time you know it takes patience you can't just like go in and start yanking stories out of the thing i mean you could you definitely could but um you know you gotta you gotta kind of get yourself attached to it all you know if that makes any sense like um i'm trying to think like you ever do a like say a, a nuzlocke run on pokemon say maybe a lot of you aren't familiar with that i like the things because um, it kind of forces you to, like maybe a lot of people just like the challenge. I like it because it you kind of get a story out of things a little bit more, if that makes any sense. And um, I really like that. Like normally, like you catch a Pokemon and it's like, oh, this one's cute, this one's cool. And then you just train them, they get stronger, and they, you go through it. But like when you're playing a Nuzlocke run, if nobody knows what that is, you play Pokemon. Normally you catch little monsters and, you know, you heal them up and stuff. But a Nuzlocke run, they die when, when they get killed. When they faint, you have to release them. It's like an honor system sort of a thing. And it's just a way to play the game to um, increase the challenge by a whole lot for most people. But I like it because you get a story out of it, too. And I thought, like, that's kind of like a good way to get a story out of, like, Pokemon, say. It, like, forces you to look at things a little bit harder, I guess. You need to consider things more, you know? Like, it, I don't think it's very comfortable to try to get attached to your dwarves there's not a real easy way to do it but like one of the ways i like to do it is um you know by drawing the dwarves for the videos i find i get quite attached to them you know even drawing a character one time and like i'm not a great artist um i already thank the people who are going to disagree thank you very much but like my art's not going to get on like magic cards it's not going to be seen in dungeon dragons books i draw quaint little doodles that's my whole shtick you know um and, like, you could do that, too. You you all could do that. Like, just sit and, like, look at a character and just consider what they look like. Even if you make, like, a little stick figure, it helps you, you know, you got this little doodle of a character and, <laughs> like, it, you created it, you know? You had to think about the character. You had to, like, sit and think about it and stuff. So, I feel like creating media and stuff based on a character in a Dwarven Fortress really helps me, personally. And I feel like it would help a lot of other people, too. Uh, anyways, um rambling here my brain's all over the place I, I was gonna do this whole multi-level thing i'm sure somebody told me how to do it and <laughs> um let me see let me see here do 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 that multi-level thing there that someone was talking about um <laughs> i have a decent mic every time i i hit it with a breath my subwoofer woofer shakes my walls lol sorry i have to breathe though i'm a human <laughs> okay um i'm gonna try that multi-room thing one more time i'm not gonna spend too much time on it but like these rooms over here aren't even bedrooms yet let's see how this this can work uh, establish zones to establish place zones to establish meeting areas pastures and more okay um bedroom your citizens will sleep in bedrooms. It should include a bed. Try to enclose it with walls and or doors. Do not overlap with other rooms. Okay. Okay. Um, we'll give that a go. Multi is an option. Select a rectangle which contains beds in order to form bedrooms. Rooms with multiple beds will be made into dormitories. Okay. Okay. Um, here, one second. Let me, let me try that again. Bedroom. Multi. I'm going to put it, like, over this right here. I don't know if this did anything. 15 bedrooms created, it says up there. Okay. Okay. So, if I did that in a tomb... It would make, like, I, I could just have, like, the same exact thing. It just switch the beds out for coffins. It would have made a big tomb area just like that. Okay. All right. I get that. That that was, that made sense. It just is weird, and it's different, I feel. Um, but, yes, like, w once you learn how it works, it's one of those things that um, it works well. It's just not, I, I would say that's pretty unintuitive. But it does get the job done interesting um so yeah we have a bunch of bedrooms now i think i think 
We'll have to see if they start claiming them. Usually in Dwarf Fortress, you can assign a bed room. Um, let me see here. So, like, this room up here... I can say this is Ushrir, the expedition leader's room. And, like, this one... Maybe... This one right here, I can say, is Solon's. Okay. And this one right here, I can say, is Medtob's. Over here, we'll give this one to Aban. Okay. Okay, this is working out pretty well. I don't know if this would work the same way with, um, like in a tomb, you know? But I'd have to imagine it would. One, two, three, four, five, six. Did I just put two people on? No, I, I didn't. Here we go. Missed those. Here we go. Okay. Okay. I think we all have bedrooms now. Not too bad. That seemed to work out pretty well. Now you got the hang of it. Yes, yes. <laughs> it seems I did. Wonderful. Okay. Cool. That seems to have worked out pretty well. Um, I, you know, I was going to say it's a shame you got to put doors on your bedrooms. But I'm just so used to it in Dwarf Fortress being that you can like... It doesn't have to be a room. It could just be like you can literally put a bed on the floor somewhere and that could be a bedroom just a, a a single bed sitting in the middle of a warehouse could be a bedroom but it looks like they they made it so that can't be the case anymore it has to have a door at least which okay that's fine that makes sense to me it's a it's a, a good little change um it's it's a little different maybe a lateral move at, at points but you know it's not terrible um but yeah whoop whoop <laughs> yes exactly uh, let's see here. Now, what I want to do, I'm going to smooth, I've already smoothed these walls, but I'm going to add a bunch of engravings to this whole area, because I want these dwarves to have some snazzy little bedrooms in this horrible winter hellscape. Get to it, my dwarves. Um, did that work? Oh, there it goes. Yeah, they're going to start carving those out. Um, Yeti? No Yeti on the map? Oh, there's still one. Here we go. 339 years old. Just kind of milling about. Yeah, big loser down here in the bottom right. It's kind of far away from us. I'm not too worried about it. Not right at the current time, anyways. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. It can still be without doors, but you'll have to assign zones manually to each one. Oh, okay. 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 I can get behind it, I guess. I see. It just takes a little bit of learning, right? It's just like, you know, relearning Dwarf Fortress. Some of the stuff doesn't exactly make sense, but in my view, even the old Dwarf Fortress did make sense in a way after you're done learning it. I guess I'm, I'm just really good at good, getting used to new things, I suppose. <laughs> That's just uh, how I tend to roll. I... Uh, let me see here. A snowstorm has come. I kind of wish, like, snow would accumulate around your dwarves, you know? Get deeper and stuff. That'd be kind of cool, but uh, alas, it's fine. It's just one of those, you know, those idle dwarf fortress wants that won't be a thing. Okay, so we got this chamber down below ground here. I would really like to be able to find the caves so that we can um, not die soon. Would be cool. Uh, that being said, hmm, there's no aquifer in this area, I don't believe, which would have kind of helped us, I think. And there's no dirt. I, was, I don't know if it was like dirt at some place, then we could just start growing stuff in the dirt, but we can't do that. There's just ice, and then there's stone. There's no middleman. Um. So, there is water down here, though. That is interesting. I'm not too sure why there would be water, like if I just dig down from here. And, uh, hmm. Might be worth it to dig a channel, maybe like a little exploratory sort of a dealy. Don't you think? Uh, yeah. Ah, what the hell? I'm going to dig a little stairway right here. Okay? That leads up. I just want to see what's down there. If there is water down there, then we could start, like, you know, getting the water out of there. Um, in buckets and, like, use it to, like, moisten up a far farm plot. You know, with some mud and stuff. That would be interesting. That would be interesting. Let me see here. 
my phone and the chat is about to die. I don't want that. A setting max interface width to 4096 is the one you need, by the way. Is that going to crash my game or something? I'm going to save the game before I do that. Uh, yeah, we'll call this Yeti 2. Uh, 2. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I'll give that a try. See how that goes. Um, that's a problem with complex stuff in general. The more energy you need to learn it, the more energy it costs to adapt to change and relearn it. Yeah, I suppose that's the truth. That is the truth. Rock and stone. Oh, wait. Wrong dwarf game. <laughs> wait, we're going to die? No, no, we're not. I'm just changing. There's like an interface thing that's been um, giving me problems the whole damn time here. But we'll see. What the hell is the number you said? Uh, max interface width to 4096. Let's see. Maximum interface width. 4096. We'll see. Did that did that do it? Oh that seems to have done it. Well, hey, thank you very much, my friend. That seems to have worked. Man, see this is what happens. I start listening to you guys and it works. You know? And then at some point I'll be like, hey, let's make a fortress based around bringing uh, dwarves back to life as vampires. And all the methods that are suggested to me just don't work. But I'm already three episodes in and I'm starting to panic. <laughs> Which is something that happened. I'm glad I got that whole damn thing to work eventually. But um, it was kind of dicey there for a while. <laughs> um, thanks. Thank you for the suggestions. I love it when you guys are right about stuff. That's great. I, I need to listen to you guys more. <laughs> Hell yes. Thank you. Um, yeah, you guys are great. Anywho, yeah, so that's really, really darn cool that I can see our, our food and stuff now. Out of drinks, which is terrifying. Um, do, 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 where's that goddamn Yeti? Where the hell are you? I'm a little spooked. There you go. It's still down here. Just kind of loitering around down to the south. That's fine. Stay stay down there. I don't want you. Uh, okay. Here we go. Looking down the stairs over yonder ways. I, I, we really got to find some caves. We got to get some water. Oh, that's right. That's what we were doing. Oh, right. I forgot. Um, okay. What is everyone doing? Um, don't detail the wall so much. I'm going to set this as a high priority task because we need to find some water before we die. That is our job. We're going to be dead soon. Show advanced options. High priority. Yes. Let's get to it. Stairs. Boop. -a. Boop. -a. Please get to it right now. Please. Yes. Start to digging. My dwarves. There we go. There we go. I'm hoping we do get a little bit of water down here. Let's have a gander. See what happens. Okay. Okay. Ah. Uh, okay. I don't know if this is an aquifer or not. I don't recall there being an aquifer in the area, but maybe there is. There could well be. Maybe I just wasn't paying attention. That does happen to be something I am quite adept at, not paying attention. Um, let's continue digging and just hope these walls don't implode or kill us. Eh? How's that sound? Yeah, get, get to digging. I'm going to carve out this area and make it a little bit wider. And we'll see if that water starts a flowing in. Never can tell. Never can tell. <laughs> ah, snowy. I wish the weather had more of an effect on the dwarves sometimes. Like, um... I know they can freeze or get too hot or something and like I've had dwarves melt but it's always been in like modified worlds where like you know it's a little bit different um not like in the base game like I think it'd be really cool if I didn't get inside fast enough like a dwarf could just uh you know freeze to death I, I just think that'd be a really neat challenge personally but um I, I can understand why it maybe not be 
suitable for the Steam release. Not right out the gate, anyways. I'm still very greatly intrigued by that grayed out problems tab when we were first embarking. What does that mean, do you think? It's got to be something cool. I'm really hoping there's some sort of like a starting scenario thing. Like, uh, RimWorld has that, right? Like, I, again, I don't really know much about RimWorld. Um, but I think that's a, a thing, right? Like, you can start out RimWorld and, like, go in with some sort of a horrible thing going on or some crap, right? What do I think about the new labor menu? I think it's all pretty great so far. And I am... I am greatly pleased that I was able to figure out the multi-room thing there. It's all looking pretty good. I've got to be perfectly honest. It's all looking really, really good. Big fan. Okay, so what my plan is down here is, like, since the aquifer is right below this level, I'm going to kind of open it up. I'm going to dig a stairway here. Okay, that leads up to this level. This here is going to be our fortress level proper, okay? Um, and I think how we're going to manage this is we're going to go underground to this aquifer. You see all this, these walls here? They have these little um, little water drops on them. We're going to open this up a tad. We don't really have to open up that much, but a, a tad's not going to hurt. It's going to let a lot more water come in, and the water shouldn't come up any farther than this level right here, so it should be fine. Um, so we're just going to make a couple of these little watery arms heading out like this. There's going to be canceled jobs just because the, um, the waters, the walls are going to be damp, but that's fine. I'm not too concerned about it. Um, and then right here, this is where the shovel is. I'm making a channel that's going to like, it's going to peek down into that water there. And so like, it, it's going to be like a way to make a quick little well, just like that, just thanks to this aquifer, which is pretty handy. Usually aquifers don't pop up this low down, so I, I, just, I don't know if we're like up on top of a really tall glacier or what. Um, a, little, a little unsure, but it seems to be working out in our favor quite well, actually. I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth, I don't think. How is the game, by the way? It's excellent. It's great. I'm really pleased with it. Um, and this is coming from a pessimist who was like, uh, uh, like, uh, what's it gonna be like? Uh, I don't know. Like, uh, you know, my little complaints and gripes all the way. You know, like, it's gonna change. Call it just maybe just that anxious, anxiety is sort of a bullcrap. You know, um, what was I gonna say? Yeah, it, it turns out to be completely unfounded. It's excellent. It's really working really rather well. I'm a big fan. Elk birds. Oh. Okay, we got some elk birds coming up out of that cave. You know, that's something I didn't even think about again. That whole cave that's up over here. We have elk birds coming out of the cave and just wandering around the tundra. An elk bird is a, um, a large creature found grazing on mushrooms deep underground. It walks on two legs and it has the head of a bird with the antlers of a great elk. Very interesting creature. I, you know, I'm going to say they're related to jabberers and beak dogs, that sort of stuff. I don't know. This particular one is fat. Her feathers are brown. Her skin is cinnamon. Her eyes are black. She has a great ability to focus and a great good creativity, but she has a shortage of patience, a large deficit of willpower, and an atrocious spatial sense. She is dour as a rule and can sometimes act without deliberation. She tends to share her own experiences and thoughts with others and has a sense of duty. She can handle stress, tends to be passive in discussions. She sometimes acts with little determination and confidence and occasionally overindulges. She tends to hang on to grievances and is somewhat quarrelsome as well. A complex individual. This uh, <laughs> large ostrich chicken antlered beast that crawled out of a tunnel that leads down underground to this <laughs> underneath this evil tundra here is a very complex creature. You know, now it's like seeing, it's probably going to write a book later on. Um, it's a whole thing. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I just get a kick out of the um, overly detailed animal minds, I guess. <laughs> like, I, I have a feeling it's not supposed to be that way, but I don't know. Maybe it's like it, it, it's fine. I like the idea of, you know, animals having a little bit more going on. But, you know, um, passive in discussions like this just doesn't line up with an animal, right? I, I don't know. 
That's fine. I'm not judging. You know, if that's the way the game's going to be made, it's, it's okay. It's fine. I'm sure I could do something with that. Make some sort of a story out of that. You know, it's just... Um, I gotta take a little bit to get used to. It's Dwarf Fortress. You know? <laughs> it's Dwarf Fortress. Perfectly in line with uh, how Dwarf Fortress usually is. <laughs> you get giants and, like, troglodytes who are sentient creatures which just walk around naked and don't do anything all day long. Then you have an elk bird over here ready to write a novel, a biography on their life. <laughs> I get a kick out of it. Oh, right, this yeti corpse that I thought about then ignored promptly. Um, gonna keep an eye on you, buckaroo. You stay the hell up there. You know, mind your own damn business. We're busy over here. A bunch of busy damn dwarves. I'll tell you how much... Okay, back down underground. Do do do. How's this well looking? Um, I was gonna dig out these arms and like, eh, they're not gonna be that long. I'm just going overboard because I'm fun like that sometimes. Uh, what I'm going to do though is make some. Uh, I was gonna say make a stockpile down here to get stone, but we have one upstairs already. Uh, it'd be best if we got this stone shoveled upstairs, right? That's what I'm thinking. I should set up my hotkeys. I take so long to set up my hotkeys sometimes, for no reason. Just idiocy, I suppose. Um, H. Uh, this one here. This is going to be our... Uh, let's see. Ice cap fort. Okay. And then Yeti. This one here is going to be... Um, stone fort. There we go. And uh, ice cap fort is going to center right here. And the second one is going to be down, 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 underground. Right over yonder way. Stone fort, center right here. Thank you. Ah, one, two, one, two, wonderful. Much quicker. I love it. Good job. Um, Animal of Minds is a bug. Uh, Toadie said the game runs those all the time, but not supposed to show them to players. <laughs> yeah, I, I could see that being a bug. Um... I guess I'm not so accustomed to seeing that. <laughs> it, it, yeah, I guess it's just always in the game, huh? That's. Um, I feel like I've seen that before. Like maybe like messing around with DF hack or something. I was able to see like into an animal's brain or something, and I was under the impression a lot of it made sense back in the day, at least to some degree. But now I'm, I feel like maybe I'm seeing a lot more of it, and that's why it doesn't make total sense or something. I don't know. I'm building these walls around, but I've also got ramps up against the walls that can just allow creatures to walk straight into my fortress. What am I doing, this noob over here? <laughs> just the, the new graphics, it's, I'm not getting my red flags set off when I see certain things, I guess. Um, yeah, I should get rid of all these ramps so that things cannot walk into my fortress anymore. That would be excellent to do. It would make there be a point to having a wall. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, cut all these down. No more ramps. We don't want anybody just uh, gallivanting over the walls into our beautiful icy home here. Certainly not. Get the hell out. That's our home. There we go. Okay, up here too. Get rid of all these. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Okay. Yeah, they're taking care of those. Should be two shakes, I'm thinking. These dwarves are doing a darn good job. Look how much better this fortress is doing than that last one. It's kind of shocking in a way, don't you think? <laughs> um, let me see here. Problems is just for Embark profiles. If you loaded, if your loaded pro uh, profile wasn't able to find all settled materials, say rare meat, it'll inform you about missing stuff. Door persona. What? Okay. Interesting. Gotcha, for the most part. Not Still not 100% what you're talking about, but I'll, I'll assume it's just for some other lame thing. Uh, okay, yeah, getting stones put away. Our well is coming along somewhat. I'm going to get rid of this little spot right here, I think. Um, let's see. I'm going to... Well, I got the stairway here. I, uh, one second. I'm just like... <laughs> getting this this finicky little little brain to, to work the way I want it. I gotta get rid of the stairway right here. There we go. We have a stairway that leads up 
right over here okay and we're, we're not gonna need that one either but we need a way to get out of this hole so I'm just gonna leave it in place for now and well oh you know what we could do actually I'm gonna dig a channel right here that'd be much more better much more better there we go a nice little channel and so that way the water can flow down and fill up this hole oh it didn't didn't even make a channel I guess um, make a channel though don't be scared there you go I'm gonna dig a little channel there so that um, when we're using that as a um, a well essentially it could be a little bit deeper in that one spot right there because we're gonna access that water from the space that's directly above right up uh, here right this little hole leads down to a level below where that water is now it's like a it's got two two levels there with some water down below and a stone apparently that's gonna bother me it's fine just try to ignore it don't look at it it's okay <laughs> can we get rid of these stones though would be excellent before there's too much water in here I don't want any more boulders going down that hole not that it's going to affect us but <laughs> you know I get a little um, you know you get bothered by some stuff sometimes in this game you know how it is if you know Dwarf Fortress you know exactly what I'm talking about Let's get rid of all these stones. We don't need them down here. We want it to be nice and clean and pristine, right? Exactly. Um, let's see. Can I get rid of these? There they are. There we go. Book boat. There we go. Get the hell out of here. Get rid of these stones, dwarves, please. Get to it. Thank you very much. Oh, boy. A side note. It's just something that shot into my mind real quick. Anybody ever remember in Oblivion? when you're walking through a town and like there'll be um like one of the like homeless people on the side of the road and they'll be like please sir spare a coin for an old man and then like the little menu thing pops up and it's like give coin or walk away or something like that and you give them a coin and they're like thank you kind sir and like they always use that same voice clip i just think that's the funniest thing ever nobody knows probably knows what i'm talking about there I, i'm sure there's got to be one person out there right now who knows what i'm talking about <laughs> Anyways, me and my brother say that to each other all the time, you know, like, thank you, kind sir. <laughs> Get such a kick out of it. It's so stupid, but I don't know. Anyways, uh, <laughs> I think we got some more ice out of that whole thing, so might as well continue our wall a little bit. I'm not going to put the wall of our our, sur our surrounding, with the wall of our surrounding, the, the entrance to our surrounding wall right in front of our entrance there, because that, that would be a little screwed up. Um, you don't want people running directly into your main gate from the outside wall, you know. Uh, but so you know, put it a little over here, a little bit, a little, little askew. There we go, thirteen ice. That'll do it right there. Uh, let me see. Thank you, kind sir. <laughs> but like, they would always be different. They'd be like, "Please, sir, I need a coin. I need to feed my family." give him a coin thank you kind sir <laughs> like they only had the one voice clip for all of these homeless people i just thought it was so funny it, it's so oblivion <laughs> uh let's see here um okay continuing our wall a little bit no not furniture one second constructions wall ice there we go a nice Ice wall. Oh, stop it. Almost there. One, two, three, four spaces wide. Three spaces wide? Four is probably good. There we go. There we go. Okay, so we're going to get to that shortly. That should work out. Yeah, then we'll be completely surrounded with this wall, which uh, isn't, you know, it's not the best wall in the world. Like, it's got it's got some problems. Hey, where'd that Yeti come from? That Yeti was just, like, right over there, huh? Terrifying. I don't love that. A giant osprey. We've got a giant osprey and a normal osprey in the map right now. Some of those animals that pop up, like the normal animals, can still be pretty darn dangerous. Uh, like, I could picture a giant osprey trying to swoop up a dwarf real quick i don't think that will happen but you know i could picture it at least now i know if some of those animals get like too close to your dwarves they will just be like hey look food um but generally not the case with the flyers they tend to mind their own business like barn owls any sort of large owls can be troublesome I imagine a dwarf looks like a 
small rodent or something scurrying around in the icy waste here, you know? But, just have to keep our eyes open there, dwarves. Get rid of these ramps, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Get rid of those ramps, my dwarves. There you go. Wonderful work. Wonderful work. Uh, let me see. Has anyone found out how to figure out uh, how to make instrument parts for your world? The old way of looking at Craft Dwarf Workshop description seems to not work anymore. Hmm. Thank you, kind sir. <laughs> I should start saying that whenever uh, somebody donates, huh? <laughs> Thank you very much, Argus. <laughs> I get a kick out of it. Um, <laughs> but yes. No, I haven't tried to make instruments. I generally don't bother trying to make instruments for my fortresses. They're, they're kind of a pain sometimes, but, you know. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it was uh, kind of redone or something like that for the, the Steam release. Maybe... Uh, I, I think the instruments were kind of a little uh, janky a little bit. Like from in normal Dwarf Fortress, I never was able to get them to work anyways. Like the, the large standing instruments anyways. They seem to have a lot of problems associated with them. Um, Alright, we're almost done with this wall. I'm, I'm very paranoid about this whole wall thing. But it seems to be going all right. Let me look down underground. I want to see how this whole well is working down here. Uh, boop, boop. Okay. Water. The water is at one of seven depth right here underneath this hole, which isn't bad, but it could certainly stand to be a little deeper. Two zeal levels down. It's seven of seven. Uh, if we put a, a well here, like a well proper, we'd be able to just draw water up no problem whatsoever and then start getting a farm ready. Uh... That being said, let's try to build a well. How about? Hmm. Furniture, doors, hey. constructions, machines, slash fluids. Screw pump, water wheel, windmill, windmill, gear assembly, millstone, rollers, vertical axle, horizontal axle. Hey, um, I don't know if any Bay 12 or Kit Fox people are out there listening right now, but like, I think a stellar idea for Dwarf Fortress would be a vertical pipe or horizontal pipe that you can attach to a screw pump and just pump water out of the screw pump through a pipe in any old which way you want and just have water come out someplace as long as you attach the pipe to it that would kind of like negate the need for a, a, a pump stack or something like that which you know pump stacks are fine and all it's a perfectly dwarf fortressy thing but they're very complex you know and I just feel like it should be easier to get magma or water to move around where you want it sometimes you know I just think that'd be really cool idea um thank you kind sir <laughs> oh my god you guys are too much yeah i think that i think that'd be a really cool idea just that, that was an idea i had like a, a couple streams ago normally i'm not so proud of my little dwarf fortress ideas but something like that seems seems relatively simple um by my my idiot brain standards <laughs> so I, I i don't know what i'm what i'm even talking about anyways oh well uh let's see need blocks need mechanisms need access to no access to blocks or mechanisms I, okay blocks and mechanisms I, that's not so, that sounds so bad let's see here so add a new task i'm going to um why can i not let me try again add new task okay that worked blocks make some rock blocks please yes thank you very much uh out of granite I suppose. I, I guess they're they're off and they're, they're doing that right now. Uh, yeah, good. Wonderful. Thank you. Kind sir. <laughs> I, I'm loving this tundra ambience here. Like that weird, like, howling, hooting, growling sound there that hops up every once in a while. I, I'm, I'm loving it. I couldn't even explain the thing. Just that, ooh. It, something about it. It really adds so much. I mean, maybe it's supposed to sound like wind or something. I'm not too sure. Uh, mechanic workshop. I'm going to slap one of those bad puppies right out here real quick. Actually, you know what? That's, that seems kind of uh, stupid of me. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to throw it down here. Workshop. Uh, mechanic. There we go. We'll just make it out of chert because it's, it's right here. Two shakes. Two shakes. Checking our surroundings real quick. Any other beasties about? Still got that Yeti corpse around. 
Where are you, my friend? Where are you? Down here. It's, it's a quite quite a distance away. No worries. No worries. We're completely safe, my dwarves. Do not tarry. Do not fret. We are safe here. In... Uh, what was this place called? <laughs> I forgot the name of our fortress. That's kind of embarrassing. Um, hmm. I'm not too sure. Uh, that's right. Uh, <laughs> no core Torad, dead body, <laughs> the outpost. <laughs> I get a kick out of it. Here, I'm gonna make a little channel like this, just around. Mm -hmm. I um, <laughs> I love this game, guys. I love Dwarf Fortress. Like this joy that I'm having right now is actually it's not like increased because of the steam version like it's just this is how i feel when i'm playing the game normally i just get a kick out of it just something about the absurdity and the possible epic adventures that can be had at the same time and the fact that i'm controlling it all really just uh i don't know it just it just does something for me i get a kick out of it you know as i've said many thousands of times already i'm gonna start channeling around the outside of the wall to maybe hopefully get some more ice that we can use on our wall um, it's also going to make this outside portion over here be two Z levels tall, which would be a little handy. Uh, got some thirsty dwarves here. Thir thirsty dwarves, and that's not great because that will lead to their death shortly. Um, uh, we got this well. We got to sort out this whole well thing ASAP. Uh, make rock mechanisms. Do that now. We're just going to make the one mechanism. That should be enough, I'm thinking. It should be. But we shall see. Uh, Brayton Cameron, thank you. Longtime fan. My favorite episode is still the Tale of a Peeve. Can't wait to see you make new legends. That was so fun. <laughs> it Peeve the Man Eater. Yes, that was a an excellent little tale, I feel. Is somebody doing this? I'm a little worried that they're going to stop doing tasks because they are soon to die. Uh, make rock mechanisms. Okay, no, this guy is doing it. Uh, so, some somebody's doing it. You, Adam the farmer. Adam, hurry up, please. I don't wish for the dwarves to die. And that time is close at hand. <laughs> Heading down right now to make some mechanisms. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go, let's go. Um. Boo boo. How do you think the UI holds up compared to RimWorld? I don't know anything about RimWorld personally. I wish I could tell tell you something more than that, but. I tried playing RimWorld a couple times, but I just couldn't, like, wrap my mind around it. When I was playing, when I was trying to play it, though, it was, like, back when I was working like an idiot. And, um, you know, I didn't really have the time to put towards it. So, I, I don't know. Me, personally, I, I think it's pretty good. Um, from what I recall of RimWorld, like, um, I, I don't know. It seems to be about on the same level, I'd say. I, of course, I, I don't know. I have no idea what I'm talking about. We're just an uninformed dope. Let me see. Uh, gonna make a well right here. Sandstone blocks, pine bucket, pigtail rope, granite mechanisms. Get to it ASAP, please, dwarves. Let me see here. Who's doing that? Construct building. Solon the miner is off to build this, uh, this well now. After we have access to water, we at least won't be dehydrated. We still don't have any food, which is uh, greatly terrifying. But, um... That could be quickly remedied. I, I don't know if they've done anything with buckets. It used to be in order to dump water out of buckets, you'd have to make a pit or a pond zone, which had to be one Z level up. And, you know, people would dump water off the ledge onto the floor below. Um, my hope is that they've changed that, though, and that I can just make a pond zone on the ground and they'll just come over and dump a bucket out. I don't know. We shall see soon enough. Maybe I'll, I'll carve out a little chamber down here man it'll be like a little farm test zone how about um we'll just kind of like we'll do it like this how about that'll be fine somebody will get that dig dug out while we're uh getting the well made gotta keep an eye on this yeti this yeti is far over to the east right now it's you know you can't deny it's pretty peaceful out here I, I shouldn't say that because it's, <laughs> it's not going to stay peaceful, I'm sure. But it's really, it's not so bad. It's not. I kind of like it. It's growing on me. The whole haunted isolation of this horrible wasteland. Not so bad. 
not top tier, but not bottom tier. It's not bad. It's, I mean, as long as those Yetis don't come over, we're good. You know? I gotta remember, too, that this is a reanimator biome. We haven't had to deal with that whole aspect a little bit, but that could certainly jump up and bite us in the ass at any goddamn time. <laughs> you know? Ooh. Just be careful, dwarves. Just be careful. Ever vigilant, please. Um, let's see here. Now we got a little bit extra ice to work with. Maybe we should do something, like, just along the sides over here. Like, I, I feel like we need, um... Need something. It needs something, right? We got 39 ice. Yeah, we're just gonna cram that up over here. Do do do. Okay, and then maybe um, we'll put a little bit over here too. Do do do. A little bit right here. Do do do. And oh, stop. Stop it. Walls right here. Here we go. Boop boop. Excellent, excellent, wonderful. Can we? I wonder if you can smooth up this. Oh, you can. Yes, wonderful. We'll do that promptly. Let's go, dwarves. Let's smooth up this floor. That's gonna look lovely. Oh, yeah. That's gonna be good. Do do da de de. Just like that. So they're gonna smooth up that ground, and it should look pretty darn snazzy when it's all said and done, I think. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. Here we go. Shouldn't take more than two shakes, I'm thinking. Not too bad at all. So far, hard is easy. That's right. I turned hard mode on. We haven't really had many problems with it, though. Interesting. I'm curious if that will take effect more down, like, in the caves or something like that, you know? Hmm. Looking forward to the ASCII-inspired graphics of Premium. Yeah, that could be pretty cool. Um, I'm having a, a tough time wrapping my mind around how that would look, but yeah, that'd be pretty cool. I'd be intrigued to see what it looks like, at the very least. It should be pretty cool. It should be pretty cool. I, I guess I'm just taking it one step at a time mentally. I'm still trying to absorb all of this new stuff that's being thrown at me, you know? And it's good. It's really good. Hell yes. I'm a big fan of Steam DF so far. Look at this. Doesn't this look cool? This road that we're smoothing out this nice uh, ice road right here. And just how it connects up to this uh, snow-covered ice up to the north. It just kind of, I don't know, it's really appealing, I'd say, with all this snow all around. and Yeah, it's, uh, it's neat. I'm a fan. I like it. It's working out pretty good. I should probably hydrate. I've, I've drank like half a cup of water since I started this morning. <sighs> there we go. Oh, that's much better. <laughs> we have all of our dwarves are out here right now. Shoulder to shoulder working on this project. I, I have to imagine we have our well done now. Quick Yeti check. Yeti is nearby but non-threatening currently. Okay, just stay over there, you bastard. Uh, now then, yes, our our well. Let's have a look. The well is completed. That's a pleasing little symbol, isn't it? This well. I like that. Now, let's see here if this whole thing does work. I'm going to put one little zone over here. Pit pond. Uh, right here. Okay, I, I don't think it's going to work. I, I just said accept. Designate is zoned as the top of a pond. The citizens will bring buckets of water if the pond below isn't filled. Okay, I have to assume this isn't going to work. But you never know. Uh, just for the hell of it, I'm going to say uh, dump water here and see if anybody does it. Maybe somebody will. Everyone's busy smoothing floors at the moment. Just right over here. I wonder if it if it begins snowing, will it cover up this road that we're smoothing out right now? It might. I guess I don't doubt it. That would kind of stink. But, oh well. That's, that's fine. That's what happens. Where's that Yeti? A little spooked. Yeti check. Over here. It's, uh, it's far away. Down to the south. No worries. It's a Yeti free zone. 
we're doing good dwarves okay yep yeah. carving away some ramps up there grabbing some ice for those uh little uh, not really towers those mounds we're making at the ends of the wall there just trying to nice it up a little bit you know we gotta have we gotta be living in a place that we're proud of it can't just be some random old ice block fortress out here in the ways it's gotta be uh it's gotta have a little decorum right absolutely absolutely uh let's see here i'm a little bit curious about that cave i mean i'm, I'm sure you are too right gotta be a little bit curious about it we have a big cave sitting feet away from us and it has been there since the very beginning <laughs> hmm do we want to check that out I don't know. I shouldn't even ask you because I'm probably not going to listen, frankly. I love you guys, but I'm just a stubborn pain in the ass sometimes. Um, the Yeti's gone for now. Thank the Dwarven Gods above. Yeah, it's a pleasing little fortress, I'd say. Looking good. Um, heading up a little bit right here. Um, up, up. There we go. Okay, the top of the walls. It's not really uh, anything up here right now. It's just a, the top of the wall. Just a couple of these like horrible little little lumps at the end of the wall. But maybe we can you know raise them up slightly. Might be cool. Yeah. Why the hell not? Let's see here. Stairs. Boop. Uh, I'll just use closest material. Boop. Did it go? Go. Right here. Right here. Oh, no. That's right. Um, I forget how stairs worked in this, this version now. That's going to take me a little bit to get fully used to, I think. But, you know, I don't, I don't got to do a stair at all. We can just do um, ramps. Duh. Constructions. Ramp. Right here. There we go. I'll put another one right over here, too. I'm not going to build up the entire wall. We're just going to build up those little uh, those things at the end there. Maybe build a bridge there, too, that can act as a gate. Might be kind of cute, huh? I think so. Machines and fluids. Uh, bridge? No? Hmm. I thought bridge would be on there, but maybe not. Doors, hatches, constructions. Bridge. Here we go. This is our first time having a look at bridges in the Steam release here. Select the draw direction below. Then select the corners of the bridge. Okay. This is a bizarre looking setup. Hidden. Wait, what is this? Um, boy, that's a... <laughs> not so intuitive, these little icons. That's okay, though. Um, it's whatever. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> I guess I'm, I'm going to go and make the thing like this. I think this is what the doctor ordered, I believe. I guess we'll see. I, I assume now this is a 3x3 three three bridge that raises up to the north based on the, the arrow that was pointing upwards. I, I guess that probably makes sense, right? I think so. Um, that should be fine. Okay, let's see. Our, right, our drink stockpiles are zero. We have a surprising amount of food right now for uh, not producing a single bit of food the entire time we've been playing. I don't really know how we ended up with a decent amount of food. It doesn't look like this zone thing over here is working at all, which is a damn shame. I was really hoping they would have uh, done something a little bit different with that. It makes sense to me that a dwarf can come over the bucket and just dump water on the ground if you wanted, you know. It would be really handy if you wanted to make a farm inside, but I guess it's just it's not possible. That's okay, though. Uh, what we are going to do is make a little room kind of like a... We're going to make stairs. Right here, perhaps, somewhere. We'll make them right here. And can I... Is that going to work? Hidden? Cannot build... That's weird. I'm trying to build stairs, but like I can't just build an upstair right here. Okay. Um. That being said, I can't... Hmm. If I build a stair here and go up into the ceiling... That, I guess, works, but there's no stair beneath because it's just empty tunnel. I can't reach up into the ceiling like that, you know? Um, weird, 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 weird. Uh, hmm. 
must span multiple elevations. Uh, yeah, like, what if I wanted to build a stairway here that leads up into the ceiling? I, I can't do it. I can't span multiple elevations because there's a ceiling here. I can't reach the ceiling to dig another elevation because there's no stair beneath. That's a weird system. Uh, hmm. I guess it's one of those things you discover over time. Anybody have a solution for that one? That seems like a weird little thing. Maybe I'm not thinking of things correctly. Maybe I could be doing something differently. I'm unsure. Hmm. I think you need to go laterally as well. Open the build menu and go to the construction tab. You'll see stairs listed. I think that's what I'm... Isn't that what I'm doing? Yeah, build. Constructions. Stairs. And that's what I'm trying to do. Right? If I click, it says must span multiple elevations. I, I can't. Construct an upstair. There's no, there's no upstairs right now. Like in, in the game. Unless there's like a different... Construction. Is there... There's, there's no upstairs. It's just stairs now. Um, hmm. Build a channel of some sort. I, I mean, I, yeah, I could, I guess, dig down into the ground. Designate downstairs first on the floor above. I did. Right here. Except I can't reach it because <laughs> I can't do it. Like, try a temporary ramp first. Usually... Is that like up dog? What's up dog? Use the dig menu stairs. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I did. Dig a stairwell on this level. Going up or down. Your selection must be at multiple elevations. Click on a tile, change elevations, then click again. Yeah, if I do that, it's right here. And then I'll go up one space and click again. And yes, it makes it designates one above, but not on this current level, just because there's there's nothing here to dig, you know? Super weird. Cancel the stairs you have ordered now. <laughs> See, this this is what happens when I when I ask you stuff about when you ask you guys about Dwarf Fortress. It's just like um, everyone's just throwing wild suggestions out, and it gets all tangled up. I appreciate the effort, but it just often doesn't really work out so well. Uh, dig and construction are different. I know they're different, but like, hmm. That's, that's a weird little problem. I dig into the wall. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. There's a bunch of ways I can get up there, but, like, I don't really want a big unwieldy tunnel, like, circling around and then going up above. The whole point of me doing it here so it, like, you know, it kind of decreases my footprint in this area, you know? Um, hmm. Do it on the side wall. Yeah, I know. I know there's a bunch of ways I could do it around. It's just, like, when I used to play Dwarf Fortress, or in the previous version, it, that wasn't something that you'd have to do, you know? Like... Well, that's fine. John King, thank you very much. So glad you're doing this. Didn't realize this came out. Uh, thought so far. I really like it. It's good. It's great. Get good. I'm trying. I'm trying to get good. I'll tell you what. Um, I, I'm just going like, to... I'll say screw it. Yeah, just build a stairway in the wall here. You're right. That's fine. They've got it now so you can like cover up your dug tunnels, which um, it's really helpful, actually. You can go now and... Like, if I, if I just do it like this, it's gonna, it'll get the job done, you know? How do I get rid of this? Okay. Like, this is gonna work. I just didn't want to build a stairway out in the side like this right here, you know? Normally, if you did that in Dwarf Fortress, it would make, like, you, the walls would be explo exposed out here, and there would be no way to hide them again. But now, worst comes to worst, I could just build walls here, and it won't be a problem anymore in the future. You know, it just will get covered up. So... I guess it's really not that bad. It's fine. It's fine. I'm just throwing fits. Throwing, have a, just having a little dwarven baby fit over here. <laughs> it's not the way I'm used to. I'm sorry. I do that a lot. It's because I love Dwarf Fortress. I'm incredibly passionate about it. Okay. Let's see. Make a rock door. We're going to make a door out of claystone. we got one unit of claystone left. Might as well, right? Get to it. Yeah, make that door, please. Thank you very much. Let's have a Yeti check real quick. Nothing. No, just three albatry flying around in the sky. Wonderful. I'll take it. That's not so bad. They can't kill us so easy. 
Uh, but yes, so over here we have these rocks. We got this little underground area over here. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, can I, uh, I, I guess what I'll do is I'm going to order all these rocks to be dumped. I just want them cleared out of this area so we don't have to deal with them so much. Don't have to look at them and we can use them later on too. Um, as I've said a couple of times, it seems like rock is a little bit more sparse in this new steam version here, a little bit harder to come by sometimes. So I, I want to keep as much of this rock as I possibly can grab my, get my grubby dwarven mitts on, you know? Uh, that being said, so we got these two parallel chambers, one above, one below, right? In this one above, I can go and make a, a channel, just like this, right? And that's going to carve out an area that I can look down into the channel below, or into the chamber below. Um, it'll, it'll work out. It'll work out pretty well. You'll see what I'm saying in a second. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a laborious process, but it won't be that bad. Again, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, doors. Did we make that door yet? We did. Okay, I'm gonna slap a door up right here on this chamber. We don't want to be going in here. This is going to be a farm chamber, and um, like again, if you don't know what I'm doing, I'm going into this chamber above, right here, and uh, carving out the floor, and I'm going to make some zones, right here, right pit pond, do do, just like that, except, and make it a pond. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing. Pit pond, right here. Except, make it a pond. And we're going to do the same thing one more time, right over yonder way. Except, and make it a pond. So now we have three pond zones right here. And what that's going to do is cause dwarves to grab a little bucket down here below. We've got this bucket next to the well here. I'm sure somebody's going to grab this one right here. Just give them two shakes. Got the game paused. There we go. It's unpaused now. Uh, somebody's going up grabbing a boulder, I think, heading back upstairs to dump that away. Somebody grabbed a bucket and, okay, two shakes, just like that, really quick. They came over and they dumped the water down. That's where this water came from, right? Um, now that that ground is wet, though, we don't need that zone anymore, so I'm going to get rid of it. Boop, just like that. And we just got to wait for the other two. Okay, just like that. <laughs> two more. Get rid of that one. And we got this one more right over here. Just gotta wait for it to get some water down there. Come on, dwarves, let's go. Let's go. Any second now. Oop, oop. Poosh, there we go. Wonderful. We, we just gotta do that a couple times. It won't be too bad. It's gonna be a 2Z level tall chamber once we're all said and done with it. But uh, it'll work. It'll work. Not too bad. It's a, it's a decent process, I suppose. It's for as far as processes go. Uh, gonna just channel out again, and we're just gonna keep like bringing this channel over towards the west. We could also realistically not get rid of those, those zones and just have our dwarves just uh, <laughs> absolutely fill this chamber full of water, and it, it would work. They just have to keep dumping it in. Actually, that that might be a smarter thing to do, frankly. Just have them go up and down all day long and keep loading this chamber with water. It'd be a little less uh, micromanagey. It might take longer, though, is the thing. And I don't know how much time we have, frankly. I don't really want to die, is the thing. Also, I don't know how it would work. Um, let me see here. I'm going to make a new a new area. A pit slash pond, right? I'm going to make it 2Z levels wide, just like this one right here. Except, and I'm going to say it's a pond, okay? And normally, if you make... A zone that's 2z levels wide like that if you make a giant pond zone it used to be that dwarves it would only be one dwarf ever assigned to the job of filling the pond but i'm curious if more than one will do it now it doesn't look like it we have two dwarves only right now doing the fill pond task of course we might only have two buckets too so that might be a reason um it might be a reason I'll tell you what, I don't feel like watching this very much. So I'm going to take this door right here and lock it. Junk. Oh, that's, that's cute. It's got like a little little crossbar on there. That's really cool. Deadbolt lock. That's really neat. I like that. It's a nice visual way to tell that the door is locked without having to like go into the, the menu and stuff. I just got that door locked. Dwarves are going to run up there, throw water down. They're going to keep doing that. And as soon as this room gets completely layered up with water, I'm going to tell them to stop because... Um, you know, I don't want this room to be filled with water. I just want the, the floor to be a little wet. Actually, this this is going much faster than the other way I was doing it. So this works. 
<laughs> Let me see. <laughs> There's a, that's a nice fortress you got there. It'd be a shame if something were to happen to it. Nothing's going to happen to it. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It's a good fort. It's a damn fine fort. Nothing's going to happen. It's good. We're good. Oh, I like this bouncy music that just popped up here. That's really cool. Doing a little bit of channeling here. We're going to get rid of the rest of the ceiling because why the hell not, I suppose, right? Boop, boop. There we go. I wonder what a cave-in looks like in this version. I would like to look at that, but I would also like to protect my dwarves. <laughs> for now, anyways. For now. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Well, we got this little nook up here now. We're not going to be able to seal that in totally, which is bothersome to me. That's going to keep me up tonight. Uh, I, I, I guess it's fine, though. We're going to build a wall right there. And, uh, yeah, this room right here should be good to go, I think, for the purposes of farming. Let's see, looking at this room, it, you can see it's got water, one of seven depth right now, and a small pile of mud. That mud is what we want. So this floor is completely covered with mud right now, and it should be suitable for farming, unless something has changed in the game, I don't know. Uh, let's give it a go. Workshops, farming, farm plot. Okay. Use closest material? I don't know that there's a material you need to build a farm plot. Didn't used to be that way anyways. Let's see. Um, okay. A couple of these areas must be still... Yeah, they're too deep. It's two of seven. So we just gotta let, um, let that water out a little bit, I guess. Uh, it'll take a second. It'll take a second. Maybe we'll, um, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna smooth up these walls right here. And so a dwarf's gonna come over and smooth up the walls, open up this door right here, and maybe some of that water will jump out. Just letting some of it out real quick. It doesn't appear to be the case, but eh, it's fine. It's whatever. It's all good. The music is amazing. It is. It's really good, you know? Yes, it's farming. That's what we're doing. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. That's what we're doing. Let's have a Yeti check real quick. We have a Yeti corpse on the map over here. I'm getting surprisingly lax about this whole Yeti situation. It's not good. It does not bode well for our dwarves whatsoever. But, well, we're looking pretty good, I'd say. Not doing too bad. We don't gotta even keep eyes on that damn Yeti anymore. It's just a, a big old fluffy beast. Who cares about a Yeti? It's fine. It can't hurt us. We're strong, morally, and ethically. <laughs> that uh, lascivious creature can't get to us. It makes this moat a little bit wider, just in case it does try to get to us. I want some more ice, too. I like the ice. We can use it for things, like building bigger walls, which is always fun. There we go. I suppose we can get to work on those little tower things a little bit more, too, right? Yeah, we're going to make that a little bit bigger. Uh, now that we have a suitable farm, that's kind of exciting. Um, Let's see here. For a wall, we're going to work on these walls just a little bit over here. Use closest material. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, reverse. Don't do that. Construction? How do? No. Don't build these. I don't want them. Get rid of them. Okay, that works. Uh, constructions. Wall. Select material after placement. I like this here. And we're going to use the ice. One, two, three. And right here. Oh, no, don't do it that way. You silly bastard. This guy over here. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying my best. Stop making fun of me. One, two, three. There we go. Okay, they're going to get those those uh, those walls put up post-haste. Two shakes. Let me see here. Uh, do dwarves go insane in this version? I'm sure. I'm, I'm absolutely sure. It wouldn't be the same... The dwarf fortress if they didn't lose their minds occasionally I would think but um I don't know I, I haven't seen it yet so who am I to say maybe they don't maybe they took it out could be the case I'm gonna smooth up the walls of our entire fortress how does that sound you know we, we smooth up that road might as well do the entire damn fort now let's get this place looking sparkly shiny Something to be in awe of, eh? There we go. 
all of the walls. The entire damn thing. It'll take a little bit, but that's not bad. I gotta set somebody to the duty of actually farming, now that we have a farm plot. Like, we can't just spend all of our time prettying up this hellhole. We gotta actually, um, you know, provide food for us so we don't die and stuff. You know how it goes. <laughs> that whole thing there. The whole dying thing. The original mood system was rough. Well, I guess it depends on what original system you're you're speaking about exactly. It's changed a bunch over the years. Like when I first started making videos back in like say Monster Killer Steel Clutches, there was no stress system in the game. It was taken out because so because it needed a rework. So for a few years it wasn't in there at all, and so you would just wouldn't have stressed dwarves. Like your dwarves could be running around vomiting on each other and it just wouldn't be a problem. Um, but then after that, after it came back, it came back with a, a damn vengeance, I'll tell you that much. Um, I was playing Monster Killer at that time, and I updated to a new version. Because when it came back, that's when they added raids and stuff to the game, and I really wanted to experience that. And so I updated it, and my fortress was not optimized for stress. And this stress system was admittedly pretty uh, overbalanced. And so, like, all of my dwarves in the fortress went insane, like, immediately. Because there was just bodies and stuff all over the place. It didn't work out so well. Um, but then, you know, I, I went through, like, Honey Stoker. So, like, probably through 2017 up to 2019, uh, maybe up to nearly 2020, the stress system was kind of in a, a state of flux. It was just kind of kind of ugly. Um but then after the villains release came out, that was early 2020, I believe. It, it was uh, it was good. It was good. Certainly manageable. Not bad at all. And right now, as as it stands, it's really good. I like it. I like how it is right now. Got a good feel to it. I don't particularly enjoy tantruming dwarves so much. Um, did I actually designate a farm? No, I, I didn't. That's right. Good call. Thank you. I did not designate it. I was waiting for the water to kind of run out there. Let's see here. Workshops. Farming. Farm plot. I don't think I'll need a material to actually build this, but I don't know. Let's see. Okay, so I can build it right here. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. It looks like it's uh, it's good to go. Somebody should come and build this whole thing. We do have a planter, I believe. So, yeah, we should be good. We should be. We'll just give it a second here. Um, we'll need a place to put some some seeds over here. You know, we need a seed storage area. might be nice, you know? Let's see. Uh, let's seed. <laughs> Sorry. Um, over here, we're going to make a little area just like this. And um, we're just going to cram a bunch of seeds in there. How about? Sound good? It better. It better. It's a damn good idea. You'd be a fool to think otherwise. Owen Lynch, thank you. Ten bucks. Congrats on being the number one stream on YouTube for DF and being higher than anyone on Twitch currently. Hugo Krug. <laughs> Thanks. I, I wasn't. I wasn't sure. Um, I. Truth be told, um, it's a little overwhelming to see how many people are watching right now. Um, that's insane to me. I've never had that many people in a live stream ever, not even close. I think on my like Tombspire streams and whatnot, I had maybe um, like 500 people watching on a couple. Like this is insane. Thank you all for being here, by the way. It's uh, really cool to like, I don't know. I, I like to think some of you are new people. I'm just like introducing Dwarf Fortress to you for the first time. You know, you're hearing what the hell it's all about and you get to see what these crazy dwarves are up to and <laughs> see them get pulled apart by an undead Yeti corpse out in this frozen hellhole tundra. Um, that's the fun of Dwarf Fortress, baby. Uh, yeah, but it's going pretty, pretty well so far. Our fortress is really isn't, it's not a good fortress. That being said, it's, um, it's better than that last one by a stretch. I'm actually kind of liking this fortress, to be perfectly honest. It's just a, a chill place, pun quite intended. Uh, it's a, you know, frozen wasteland out in this haunted area. It's a reanimator biome. So it's a, is it haunted or is it sinister? I think it is sinister, right? Um, <laughs> which is, it, it's, it's not good. That, that can carry a number of problems. If, okay, say you are new to Dwarf Fortress. If you settle in a sinister biome, there could be a number of problems. Like, say, 
uh, you know, a, this is a reanimator biome, for example. And what that means is that corpses that are left unattended will come back to life unless they are mangled badly. Um, and so, like, you could have hands skittering around as zombies or, like, heads rolling around on the floor or, say, <laughs> entire water buffalo skins walking around. <laughs> it's uh, pretty ghoulish. Um, on top of that, undead creatures can just roam the wilds, too. And, like, we've got problems here with these yeti corpses that keep showing up and uh, wandering about. Like this one over here. Um, they haven't given us any trouble yet, somehow. We're being pretty careful, though. Like, as you can see, we have this mound of ice that we're currently housed in. And we have a wall around it. And, I mean, unless something kind of, like, wandered right down here to the south. Like, it's not going to be able to get in, really. Like, we're pretty safe in here. I feel like the undead aren't gonna like make it make a beeline straight for your dwarves unless it senses them then it's game over man but um <laughs> yeah it's uh we should be pretty safe like this I'm thinking but like as for other evil areas there could be a number of problems like sometimes there could be foul weather in evil biomes like uh like rain say which can run the gamut <laughs> in terms of the severity of problems that could incur for your dwarves like uh, like i've been in evil places that can rain like sludge or slime which really freaks your dwarves out you know they don't really want to have like vomit and stuff rained down on them when they're outside understandable i think but you know it could be blood that rains from the sky like dwarf blood specifically rains down from the sky which again is also going to freak you out plus like, um, that gunk I was just talking about that could rain down from the sky, that can carry a number of issues, too. Like, procedurally generated issues. I've been in fortresses where it'll start raining sludge from the sky, and your dwarves will walk through it, and, like, they'll be covered with blisters. Like, all over their body, head to toe, blisters that swell with blood, so your dwarves just aren't doing very good. That can lead to infection if they're not cleaned out, or you don't have the tissue excised, or whatnot. It's pretty bad. Um, dwarves can go blind from that sort of stuff. That's something that could happen, which isn't very good, obviously. Um, I've also had dwarves where I still don't know what the hell happened in this one time. I was like, you know what? Let's have a fun little four out in this evil wasteland. And it started raining and like the dwarves were walking around absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. hundred percent fine. And then the game like lagged for a second and it was like, your fortress has crumbled. And I was like, I don't even know what the hell happened, you know, so I went back and I tried it again and the same exact thing happened Seconds after raining my entire fortress crumbled and um Man, that was just it was wild. I never even saw what happened. So like I was exploring it I went back in like adventure mode just to see what happened like adventure mode isn't in steam dwarf fortress yet In adventure mode That's where you uh, control a single individual or a party of individuals and walk around the world of dwarf fortress and I walked to the area where that fortress was because I wanted to see what happened in real time to my adventurers, you know? And so it started raining and we were fine. And I was like, okay, that's weird. Walking around, walking around. Oh, that's right. This this <laughs> adventurer too. I remember I started out with a whole bunch of rabbits. So I had like a thousand rabbits following me too because I thought it was funny. Um, And it was I was fine for a good bit walking around and then... Uh, I noticed like five of the rabbits died all of a sudden. I'm like, oh, okay, something's happening. And then like 10 rabbits and 15 then 30 rabbits. They all just like started dying in droves behind me. And then I started bleeding, like bleeding from every part of my body as I was walking, leaving a trail of blood behind me. And um, I couldn't get out of the rain fast enough. I ended up just like, I guess melting. Like it must just have melted all of my tissue and all of my blood came out through my body. <laughs> but it's just like little treasures like that it was what makes Dwarf Fortress special <laughs> there wasn't a way to even survive in this area I thought like hey wouldn't it be a cool challenge to try to live in this area you know gotta get the dwarves inside or else they're gonna be dead but it didn't matter like <laughs> I couldn't get them inside fast enough the second it started raining oh that's that's what happened the second it started raining we all died outside um but then when I went and reclaimed that fortress that slime was already on the ground, and so it just caused them to die immediately. Like, uh, I just couldn't do it. I don't know. I just thought it was so cool. Like, <laughs> the way they just kind of melted like that. The Dwarf Fortress is friggin' savage, man. I love it. Um, 
Anywho, what the hell was I doing? Right, uh, we're engraving these walls. We still have no drink to speak of at all, which is horrible of us. Uh, we have to get a dedicated farmer because we got everyone upstairs right now just smoothing walls. Um, I, I haven't really messed around so much with our labors, which is a damn shame. But like, uh, Mestos over here. Mestos the farmer. Uh, you're going to be our fella, I think. Um, I'm not going to be a fisher dwarf. I'm going to have you be a planter, though. You could be a planter, and I'm going to have you only do assigned tasks. So you're just going to be a dedicated planter right now. How's that sound? Sound good? I hope so. Um, okay. So we'll see. I would like to think this dwarf now is going to go downstairs and begin farming, but I, I don't know. Smoothing walls right now. Maybe after he gets done with this wall segment, he'll rush downstairs and begin work on that farm. We gotta start growing some plants down there so we can, um, there we go. Yep, he's heading straight down. Wonderful. Good job there, Mestos. After this is done, you can assign which plants are grown there for each season. Let's see here. For spring, I'm gonna have just plump helmets, nothing too fancy. Summer, which is right now, we'll do sweet pods. Autumn, bring it back to plump helmets. And in winter, plump helmets all the way through. Actually, autumn, let's do... I'll do cave wheat, how about... I just want a bunch of brewable stuff right now. Like, um, cave, cave wheat can be brewed or it can be ground up into flour or something like that. Um, yeah, uh, we'll get to that, though. It looks like, yeah, okay, we're, we're doing all that now. Um, I gotta set up some stockpiles, though for seeds we want to get those all crammed down underground real quick so hmm i'm gonna add a stockpile and i'm going to put it right here okay uh accept and this one's going to accept nothing right now except for food i'm going to turn food on actually not all food no uh seeds we're going to turn seeds on but only certain seeds i'm going to put two stockpiles down here and one of them is just, just going to have the plants that, um, oh, I like how this is alphabetical. That is great. Okay. Just the plants that um, we're going to be growing down there right now. So like uh, sweet pods, sweet pods. There we go. Uh, L-M-N-O-P, lump helmet spawn, and cave wheat. I'm going to have that all crammed into one of these piles. Okay. Just like that. And then this other stockpile, I'm going to have another stockpile right over here. I'm going to have all just the other seeds in here. Um, underground seeds, specifically. We don't need the, like, above ground seeds. <laughs> we can't, I, we're never going to be able to grow above ground plants here anyways if we do end up with the seeds. So it's, it's not going to be a problem. Not a problem at all. Food. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Seeds. Okay, okay. Um, there's a couple of them we need to throw in here. Like, uh, was it rock nuts is grown below ground? Pigtails, that was that one I skipped over before, remember? Pigtails, rock nuts, pigtails, dimple cups. Dimple cups are used for dye. I think that might be their own only purpose, I'm not sure. But that's an, a below ground crop. Dimple cups, rock nuts, quarry bushes. What do quarry bushes give? Is that rock nuts? That might be rock nuts. Um, Eh, that's probably fine. Yeah, that'll be enough for now. We'll just uh, we'll get all that stuff crammed down here below ground, and it should be good to go. And, oh, that's right. Above, up in the fortress here, we have this big general stockpile made. We should probably set that one to... It, it's set right now to all, so it's accepting literally everything. But I'm going to turn off those seeds. Um, that being said, I'm going to turn off all seeds doesn't need any seeds because like again we don't have above ground crops i think the only seeds we have in the fortress right now are below ground crop seeds and those are all set to be placed below ground would you look at that so we smooth up the ground up here and notice that it's slowly become overcome with snow as it's been snowing that's fascinating down here i had made this like a little round bulb at the end of the road and you can see the snow kind of encroaching over on the left side there that's really cool. Over time, it's going to all be covered with snow again. Can we can we re-smooth it, do you think? Would that get rid of the snow? No, it doesn't. That's fair. Uh, I'm sure there's a way to do it. But um, still, 
really cool really cool uh your you know, your fortress is about to starve uh panic planting everything i can yeah <laughs> it's the best you could do if you if you're in an area with plants though you can gather plants if you hit g you can set a big area a big swath of land to be um harvested which is pretty handy unless you're like out in a desert or something then you're screwed i'm sorry but um good luck to you my friend uh garnet rain thank you very much my spouse and i always enjoy your content for seal clutches to tomb spire <laughs> best wishes take care of yourself and keep on striking the earth that's all i can do thank you very much for watching and for your support it means a lot um it, i mean it's, it's like it sounds so corny of me to say but i really like it when i can give people something to do together like watching my content i don't know it's just like uh, again corny it warms my heart okay <laughs> It really does, though. I just think it's cool. I don't know. Just picturing people, like, at home, watching my videos that I make over here in my dark, hunched over my keyboard. I don't know. It's just really cool. I like it. I get a kick out of it. Thanks again. Thanks again, everyone, for watching and stuff. For just hanging out today. It means a lot. Our meeting hall sucks, doesn't it? This is a bad meeting hall. We gotta do something about this. It's terrible. Uh, that being said, oh, what am I doing here? Okay, um, I am going to make a, we need a damn throne in there. We don't have enough thrones, okay? Make a rock throne. Do that now. Um, no, no, hold up, hold up. I'm gonna make a throne. One second. Pause the damn game. Okay, make a rock throne, okay? And we're going to make it out of a granite. Okay, thank you very much. Do that, please. We should probably make some statues too, don't you think? Make a nice little place up here for our dwarves. That'd be nice. Um, like our area up here, it's not a great fortress right now, but it's not bad either. It's really not that bad. <gasps> some migrants have arrived. Oh my goodness, look at this. This is a new phase right here. It is unbelievable to me that I can look at a dwarf and be like, you're a new dwarf, aren't you? This is Lore Lerumral. A dwarven child. Well, welcome, welcome to a uh, dead body. Um, three years old. <laughs> I already feel bad because like this, this dwarf is um uh, here <laughs> in dead body. She was grouchy, caught in a, a snowstorm. She doesn't want to be here. I don't think. Let's have a look at her relations. Um, we have Libash. Avaz Asab, the dwarven child, who looks to have a full-on gray beard, which is bizarre. Uh, that's her older half-brother. And we have Iteb, the weaponsmith, a legendary weaponsmith, who is her mother. They're, they're all here. Um, anybody else? Is it just these three dwarves right now? Let's have a look at your brother, this strange old man who's also a child. <laughs> um... How old are you? Ten years old. Okay. Um, description. His straight hair is extremely long. He is short and very skinny. His nose bridge is slightly convex. His nose is slightly hooked. His slightly sunken cobalt eyes are somewhat narrow. His hair is charcoal. His skin is ecru. Hmm. Very interesting. There's no information about his beard or mustache or hair or anything. Except, well, I mean, there's a color there, but it doesn't say, like, if it's braided or combed or whatnot. I just, I find that kind of interesting. So, it's a mother who's a weapon, weaponary legend smith, is what I was going to say. That's ridiculous. <laughs> um, it's a single mother and her two children who came to live in this fortress. That's fascinating. I like that. Uh, I'm noticing this dwarf over here, this child that we were just musing over, has this thought bubble above his head with a rainbow in it. That's, that's kind of cute. What does that mean, do you think? Uh, thoughts. Was dejected when caught in a snowstorm. It's got to mean something good, right? Hmm. Why should I help, is what he's saying. Oh, he's playing make-believe down here in the seed stockpile. Okay, that's probably what that means then, huh? Just uh, in his own little world of wonder. Wonderful. Okay. Okay, cool. Very interesting. Weaponary legend smith. <laughs> if I had said that, like, would anybody have picked up on it? Jason Downey, thank you. Thank you very much, my friend. Um, as well as you, Monster Metroid. Any chance of some tutorial videos? Oh, boy. Um, 
thank you guys. And yeah, I was talking about the tutorial thing earlier. I really don't like making tutorials, but I know it'll help people, I guess. That being said, there's got to be a lot of people out there making tutorials right now, huh? There's got to be. And truth be told, there's probably people out there who are more competent at it than I am. Like, by quite a margin, I would imagine. I don't... I mean... I'm glad people found my other one helpful. Um, but, you know, it's also kind of cumbersome in a way. Oh, what is your, what's your problem? What's this person's problem? I teb the weaponsmith. This is that mother. She doesn't... She seems to think she's made a mistake coming here, I think. Uh, bad with words, poor social awareness, good intuition. Uh, she's got two lovers, two children. Okay, a legendary weaponsmith. Unmet need. Prey to... Um, well, it's kind of crushed in there and doesn't really look so good in this menu right here. But that's that's fine. Unmet need. Prey, Osman... I don't know what that says. But she, she has a god that she wants to worship, I, I guess. Um, we should make a temple. I think. How does that sound? I'm going to make a little temple right over here. A cute little place. A quaint little place. A little temple for our dwarves. A shrine, if you will. I'm going to put it down here. Uh, hell, we'll make it a little bit wider. We'll just build a more of a wall outside, huh? How does that sound? <sighs> Select material after placement. We'll just kind of go like this right here. And we'll use some blocks. We'll just use ice. Wonderful. Yes. There we go. Some ice. Do, do. And we'll, we'll get this place up and running. Two shakes. Two shakes. Um, let me see here. Do, do, do. I love how you can tell which way the bridge opens by looking at the graphic. I know. Isn't that cool? The little gears on the side, you can see that. For a second I was looking at it, I was like, can you? But no, you, you definitely can. Yeah, that's really cool. Pretty excellent. Uh, population is 10 right now. Okay, I just, um, I realized I didn't actually look at our population. I was wondering if more migrants popped up on the map. Yeah, stuff like that, you know, like you couldn't really tell which way a bridge was going with the old ASCII graphics, even with like a tile set and stuff. And, I mean, th this is undeniably more helpful, seeing, like, those little gears right over there. Um, it's really good. I like that. I like it. Big time. I'm not, like, a, a dwarf fortress purist by any means. Like, I always played with vanilla mode. Vanilla mode. I always played dwarf, dwarf fortress of vanilla, just because I don't like any of the mods or anything like that. Um, but, you know, this... This is great. There's all these changes and stuff. I always felt like most of the mods and tile sets and stuff were kind of janky. Didn't really look very clean in some instances. But this is really good. The whole thing is just so, I don't know, it's so fleshed out. And it just all works together. I really like it. I'm excited about it. Very hype. Um, you know, I said before I'm not too sure what I'm going to end up doing in terms of steam release and just in case anybody out there is still wondering i am going to pl make videos using the steam release for a while you know um i might change it up in the future and make episodes with some other tile set but for now at least we're going to be sticking with this you know um it's just cool like why the hell not why, why would i do something else just because i'm used to it like again i'm sure a lot of people are, or some people or a certain portion of the audience are going to gripe and groan about it and I couldn't blame you you know you're used to seeing something a certain way and it changes it's different you know nobody likes change but it's something you get used to it, it's just that's just how it is with everything a giant ulm we have a giant ulm wandering out in the snow over here damn thing's gonna starve to death or uh, freeze to death soon I would think this amphibian it's gonna be a big frozen amphibian out here it's not gonna be good for your gills I wouldn't think my friend Careful. Foolish bastard. Didn't we have... We had some albatross people out here, didn't we? For a moment, we do have albatross right here now, but um, I thought we had some full-on albatross people before. Unless I'm a miss. I'm not too sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, how was I assigning those beds before? We have a bed. Um... 
Oh, maybe it's from the zones. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay. I'm getting used to it. I'm getting used to it. Over here. It looks like nobody has this room right now. And so I'm going to assign it to... There's these three new migrants. This weaponsmith's going to get one. There you go. And um, two more beds over here. This one's going to go to a dwarven child. This weird little old man who claims to be a child. And then this one is going to go to Lore over here, Dwarven Child. So you all have your bedrooms now. Fancy little things, too. It's great. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, Look at our whole fortress is all smoothed up now. Looking good. Let me see here. Don't forget that shrine you were working on. Thank you for keeping me on task. It means a lot. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm just all over the place sometimes. Um, yes, we have our shrine, and we should smooth it up. Let's get it nice and smooth. It's got to be an appropriate place to do some worship, and you know, you know what I mean. Uh, over here, we have to make a, a statue. I think that would be a great idea. We haven't made statues yet. I'm going to make uh, a, a couple statues. I'm just going to set it to repeat. How about? And we're going to... No, no, stop it. Damn it. Stop. I'm going to pause the game. I'm going to keep forgetting about that right there. Make a statue, please. Rock statue on repeat right now. And we're going to make them out of... Granite. How about? We'll just make a bunch of granite statues. Seems appropriate. Yeah, get to it. I'm going to make a bunch of statues. And I'm just going to start cluttering them around all over the place like out here in our meeting hall might be nice you know i think so um down here in our farm plot it doesn't look like anybody's doing any farming yet which is particularly vexing i don't know why um hmm Why aren't we farming? Who's doing that? That was Mestos over here, who was said to be a farmer. Um, Mestos, why ain't you farming? Not too sure why that would be. I would assume you'd grab some seeds from a nearby stockpile and go and plant them. But I'm not too sure. And what happened to the first colony today? Uh, well, it crashed, and I figured we should just start anew. Maybe make things a bit harder. Though this has been being pretty calm so far, frankly. It, we're in a, a sinister tundra, or glacier. And um, the only things we've been really encountering of any issue are these yeti corpses, which keep popping up. But they haven't really given, given us much issue at all. They just kind of, like, pop up, and I don't know where the hell damn thing went. There we go. Yeah, they're, they're not an issue. They just kind of pop up and wander around, and that's really it. They don't really get close enough to our fortress to be of any big issue. So, eh, it's fine. Yeah, um, back to our farm situation. I don't really know why nobody's planting. Not farming because I restricted them to only work on assigned work, but they're not assigned to any workshop slash plot. See, that would... I think it's only restricted to their labors, though, is the thing. You know, I, I don't think I can assign them to... Like, I assigned him to be a farmer. And when I did that, he went and immediately built the farm plot. But that was it, you know? I would think... Like, okay, so it, we need sweet pod seeds right now. Let's see if... Yeah, we got sweet pod seeds right here. A whole bag of them. Hmm. Uh, there is one sweet pod seed in this stockpile. Okay, let me see here. Sets from which workshops and stockpiles this stockpile gives and takes items. Uh, it can give to this field? No, okay, it doesn't work. I'm not sure. I actually don't know why that doesn't appear to be working. Hmm. A little troublesome. Um, planting, there was a tab that said fertilize with zero four seeds. Yeah, that's usually there. Like you can get fertilizer and fertilize your your fields. I don't do it, but um, I don't think that what that's what would be causing it. Not set to fertilize. Fertilize every season. Hmm. Maybe if I just chose a different plant. Unsure. Unsure. Doo -doo, doo -doo. 
This, look at this pain in the ass weaponsmith over here, attending a meeting, probably gonna yell at our expedition leader. Listen, lady, we're fine here. Like, if you don't wanna be here in dead body, then you can just leave. I don't know why you came here if you're gonna be complaining about it already. I can guarantee that's what she's doing, though. Look at her. I, Teb, or should I say, Karen. <laughs> Nylesbrigoff. Karen Nylesbrigoff. Over here, uh, smoothing a floor, attending a meeting, screaming at our expedition leader. What's wrong with you? Why are you here? Why did you come here? Just don't be here. Go off with you. You don't have to be here. Complainer. Um, game crashed earlier. Yeah. Yeah, let's let's take a look at that. The whole... Um, here, one second. One more quick gander down below. See how... Okay. Is... Are you... Plant seeds. Okay, so he's planting seeds now. Interesting. I don't really know why. Didn't really want to plant those sweet pod seeds for some reason, but plump helmets are fine, I guess. Hmm. Oh, you know what? I think there were sweet pod seeds actually planted here before. See this down here? Sweet pod seeds. That was already in here. Okay, so there was some planted, but, um... Hmm. Weird. Maybe we only had the one for some reason? I don't really know why that would be. Very strange. Uh, just just keep at it. It's fine. Maybe we only had one sweet pod seed, and I'm, I'm not sure. I don't really have a good explanation for that one. Weird. But, yeah, it looks like we're on track now. It's yes, whatever. Cool. Cool. Seasonal. Yeah, I guess it's... I don't know. I'm not too sure. It's summer. Like, you, they can be grown in summer. Like, that's what we have selected for summer, so... I don't know. I, I guess we only had the one seed available that was planted already. That's why he wasn't doing any more from the looks of it. Uh, that's not true, though. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know what was going on. Anyways, um, I'm going to set a new zone up right over yonder way. Uh, now, let's have a look. Because I want to make a temple, okay? Meeting area. Okay. Oh. You know, I'll bet that's why the dwarves... This is a dining area up here right but um it's not set as a meeting area okay okay this important zone is where your citizens will gather to socialize crucially the meeting area is where locations such as taverns temples hospitals and the like are established okay so i'm gonna set this area that's why nobody's hanging out in our damn meeting hall this whole time i did it didn't even occur to me okay there we go i'm going to accept that overlapping meeting hall Okay, um, I, I mean, it's in red, which leads me to believe that's not good, but if it still functions, who cares, I guess, I don't know, I'm not sure, unnamed meeting hall, can I name it, no? Uh, I'm not sure, let's see, if I got rid of that, okay, uh, weird, um, Let's have a brief look here. A dining hall. Your citizens will eat at this zone. When not assigned to a particular citizen, citizens without their own dining hall will eat here. Tables and adjacent chairs should be included. Weird. Okay, so... How it worked before is you'd have a meeting area, dining room, sort of an area. And it could just be one zone, but now is it just two separate areas? That's kind of cool, in a way, I feel. Um, so I could be like... Uh... Okay, 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 let's, let's, let's try this here. I don't know how this will work. I'm gonna get rid of this zone. Get rid of this. Boop, here it goes. Meeting area. I'm gonna set a big meeting area right out here. Okay, just like... Uh, we'll go like this right here. Boop. Okay, this is a meeting area. And... Uh, erase a portion of this zone. I'm going to erase this portion of the zone right in the middle, Okay. And so this is a meeting area right out here. And I'm going to set a dining hall right here on these tables and chairs, I guess. Table rejected, not enclosed. The hell does that mean? Table rejected, not enclosed. Um, I'm unsure as to why that didn't work right there. Um, Maybe, like, you can't do a zone inside another zone or something, maybe? Uh, let's have a look. If I, um, if I make a zone, 
right out here, right? Say this this meeting hall area. Uh, if I delete a portion, like if I went like this, mm, just kind of like, uh, did that did that get rid of it? I don't know what I'm doing right at this point. Let's think for a second. Highlighted this one, overlapping meeting hall. What is it? What is this? What is it yelling at me for? Is it because it's overlapping the rooms over here? I guess. Let's try this again. <laughs> this is super dull. I'm sorry. I'm gonna make this an area just like this right here, except meeting area. Okay. Okay. Meeting area. Repaint this zone. Erase a portion right here. Okay. Except new area. Dining hall. Paint it right over these tables and chairs. Table is not enclosed. Okay, something's going on. I'm not too sure what's going on. I feel like I'm missing something. Jeremy Young. Thank you. My fiance and I watch your videos together. We especially love watching Wild Squash in the fall. Yeah, that's fun, right? Thank you for watching. Nice little cozy series filled with pumpkins and um, Eldritch Terror. <laughs> Some Sometimes, anyways. So I guess maybe I can't put... Uh, to name it, you have to click the feather, not the text. Well, I'd like to believe that, but I haven't had that be the case in the past. You have to define what meeting area on the plus sign. Okay. Repaint this zone. Suspend. Assign a new or existing location to this zone. Uh, I'm going to say that this meeting area out here is a tavern slash inn called the Copper Oat. Uh, I, I guess. All visitors welcome. Inclu and I, you know what? I don't want weirdos here. I just want it to be our, our people, you know? Maybe maybe outsiders. Yeah, what the hell? We'll have outsiders. What the hell? Let's not be cowards. You know, we gotta be welcoming to wayward travelers out here in the sinister tundra. <laughs> How about... Sound good? I think so. Um, as for the copper... Oh, no. No, we don't, we don't want that. Uh, we are the... Um, <laughs> I, I got something let's see please please do work <laughs> oh cag tom the bloated belly <laughs> terrible tavern very bad name all visitors welcome the bloated belly is open for business come on in there you go um Unnamed meeting hall. I mean, it's got, it's got a name. Okay, I guess you do gotta click the feather. I swear I've done it differently in the past, but I guess I'm wrong. The bloated belly. Okay. Uh, dining hall. Maybe maybe I can do that over here now. Boop. Table rejected, not enclosed. Hmm. Yeah, unsure. Unsure what that means. I still don't know. Make sure your dining hall is in paint mode and not multi. Multi uses doors and walls to auto sign zones. Okay, I'll try again. Dining hall is okay. Paint mode. My goodness, I, I this whole paint and multi thing is a little, little strange. I'll go out there and say it. Um, okay, this doesn't see. Oh, I'm erasing right now. Okay, god dang it. I I think. <laughs> okay, there we go. Did, did that work? Okay, there we go. What the hell? Okay, so that, that is done. Uh, that's our dining hall right over there. It's an unnamed dining hall uh, for our dwarves to go and eat some delicious, delicious foods at. Um, <laughs> the tavern's called the Bloated Belly. This, the tables themselves are called the... 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 the Tables to eat at. Okay. Um, so that should make a nice little meeting hall for us dwarves. There they go. See, they're going out to hang out already. Okay, it's a shame we haven't done that yet. Um, but yeah, excellent. Nice work, dwarves. Good work. We overcome that, that terrible, terrible threat. The, our greatest threat so far have just been um, my terrible understanding of this game. <laughs> But it's all working out. It's going to be fine. It's all fine. It's going well, I think. Um, 
The belly button. Oh, the belly button. That would have been a good name too. Yeah, we should do that here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna change the name. Right here. Good good idea there. Um. Uh. Oh, I can't read that. What does that say? Dragon. Dragon something fire. Good job. The tables to eat at. I guess we'll yeah we'll change it from the tables to eat at to. The belly's button. There we go. Excellent. Excellent idea. Uh. But yeah. So we got this one complaining dwarf over here, Iteb, Karen, and I less Rigoff, the weaponsmith, 37 years old, two lovers, two children. I don't know what she's done in her life that brought her to this hellhole, but she doesn't like it here. She hates this place. She's already complaining. She's relieved while crying on somebody in charge, bored having an intellectual discussion with an acquaintance, didn't feel anything after watching a performance. Um... Yeah, she's just kind of a pain in the ass, I think. Uh, it's whatever. You got your own prerogative. You could be whatever kind of dwarf you want. But, you know, if you're too much of a pain in the ass around here, we're going to throw you out when you're ass. We don't really want to deal with that stuff here, do we? No, I don't think so. Um, new zone. I'm going to make another meeting hall. Okay. Uh, let's see. What, what is this? What is it got? Got paint? Choose corners of a rectangle. Okay, that's that's the most straightforward way to do it. I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning. We're getting there. Okay, except... This is an unnamed meeting hall. This is going to be the um, shrine of the silver monkey. <laughs> no. Uh, oh, no. The shrine of the Yi. No. Um, <laughs> the uh, Yeti's shrine. Just, you know, well, we don't like the Yetis that are wandering around, but, you know, it's kind of a... Uh, something to do with our fortress now, so we'll just call it the Yeti Shrine. How about we, I, you know that'd be really cool if we had some statues of Yetis to put in here, which we could definitely make, but uh, we don't we don't have them quite yet. Uh, that's okay. A, a new or existing location. Okay, I'm gonna make a new one, a new temple. Okay, to uh, I was gonna have no specific deity, the oily. The Oily is the god of mountains. What a terrible name. Uh, then we have the the ruthless demon of probably seduction. Is that what that means? Hmm. He has some interesting choices here. That's for damn sure. Who does that pain in the ass worship? You know, I, it's going to be to no specific deity. And if you don't like that, then eh, I, don't know, I don't know what to tell you. I'm sorry. The Shady Claw. All visitors welcome. Um... We are going to rename that to the the Yeti. Yeti's not going to be a word, right? There's no possible way. Uh, yet, no. The Shaggy? Is that something? No, stop it. What, how did I even jump out of that menu so fast? What are these? Oh, they're statues. Oh, that's really cool how statues get placed like this with like a cloth over them. Like they're about to be unveiled. Oh, that's really neat. I like that. <laughs> Super cool. Anyways, um, yes, this zone. Let's let's get back to it. Let's see if we can figure this out. The Shady Claw. No. Um, we're going to call it the... What's that? What was I going to say? Sh shaggy? No. The Hairy... The Hairy... Like, I'm trying to figure out something the that would like suggest Yeti. Monster. <laughs> Lame. Adet Slody, the hairy monster of... Of... Alright, alright, alright. White. Can't, can't give me white. My god. Snow? God, my god. Ice. Ice. There we go. The hairy monster of ice. Perfect. Sure. <laughs> Not perfect. <laughs> Doable. Tired of screwing around with it. So, yes, we have our shrine over here. It's it's suboptimal. Not a very good shrine, but, you know, it's going to get the job done. I'm not complaining about it. Um, in here, we're going to throw a couple of statues. I think would be very nice. Uh, furniture, right? Furniture's statue. Okay. Um, I guess, I mean, it doesn't really matter what kind of statue. I'm just going to throw a couple down in here. A couple right by the entrance. One. Put one over here. And then maybe two in the corners down here. It's going to be a nice little shrine. Not too bad. Uh, what the hell? We'll put a couple in here. No, it'd be too, 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 
too crowded. Don't really want to clutter it up too much, do we? That should be fine. Just the four statues. I'm curious to see what kind of statues they are. Okay, there's one. It's an image of a dwarf, I believe. I, uh, rather, I don't know. I don't know that. Um, I thought the engravings were going to be different too, but they're all images of dwarves, no matter what they are. Maybe that's something they're still working on, you know? It's got to be. we got four images of dwarves, unless these are all pictures of dwarves. Um, statue of a dwarf. Okay, that, that one is. This one over here, statue of the ruthless something or other, statue of a dwarf, and a statue of a dwarf. Okay, we got three of them. These could all just be statues of dwarves, I suppose. This one here is a, uh, a granite statue of the ruthless demon of seducing. The item, what are the chances of that, by the way? The one I specifically brought up in that thing I was just talking about. Anyways, the item is an image of the ruthless demon of seducing. The deity of torture, the deity of torture, depicted as a female dwarf and a dwarf in granite by Medtab Retenketan. The dwarf is praying. The ruthless demon of seducing is contemplating. Terrifying, actually. Um, okay. Well, I had heard beforehand, before the, um, you know, like the Steam release actually came out, that the images on the statues were going to reflect what they were statues of. And I was kind of eager to see that. But these, these four statues here are all statues of dwarves. So, um, I guess that, that makes sense here. We have like a, a statue of a brown recluse over here. Uh, what is this? Oh, the merchants are here. We've not made a trade depot. How stupid of us. That's really dumb. Um, we should have been better prepared. Oh, <laughs> how could I do this twice in one day? You know, like not build a trade depot. I didn't do it earlier either. What a stupid man. It's okay. Uh, I'll make a ice depot over here. Nice, nice ice depot. There you go. Somebody make that, please. Just real quick. It's not like we have anything to trade. Maybe some statues. You want some statues? Got one of a, a spider. A spider statue, if you're interested. <laughs> um, they said it's by creature type. Well, I, I guess that makes sense, but, like, you can make a statue of, like, a circle. So, like, would that actually display a circle, or what? Um, I don't know. I'm not too sure. I'm gonna put... Like, we got several more statues, so I'm just gonna cram a couple more out into our meeting hall here. Okay, I'll put one right here. Use the closest one. That's fine. One right here. One right here. Oh, yeah, you can see that. They got the statue of a spider. It's just <laughs> the tiniest little image of a spider just on a pedestal. That's so weird and perfectly dwarf fortressy. I love that. It, <laughs> it's so dumb. It's great. Oh, I love it. <laughs> it's so... It, it's like... It's perfectly dwarf fortressy in my mind. And I love that an awful lot. Um, Yeah. We're getting all these statues put out here. And it's so funny, because like, one, two, three, four, five, six of them are just dwarves in different states, or like dwarven gods, probably, or historical figures. And then we have one of just a, a brown recluse spider. Like, a life-size <laughs> brown recluse spider on a pedestal. Who made this statue? Got this this block of stone must be like, uh, you know, a, a weighs a ton. Then we have just a realistic depiction of a brown recluse spider standing atop this one-ton block of granite. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah. Just a house spider. Yeah, just a simple tiny spider on a block of granite. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, anyways, oh, we got the diplomacy thing that just popped up again like it did before. Let's see if we can do something with this. Boop. Okay. The expedition leader, Ushrir Debenish, meets with the outpost liaison, Obak Alath Lorbam. I am your li liaison from the mountain homes. Let's discuss your situation. Okay. Obak Alath Lorbam. There is much to share. So we got some news. It's probably nothing much. Um, I don't expect it to be much of anything. And now we can request things for next year. Which, admittedly, yes, we can use a whole bunch. How about animals? Do you have animals? Can you bring more animals? That would be wonderful. Um, I'm hoping they'll kind of like throw us a curveball and have animals that weren't available to us on Embark. Like, uh, like the elephants of that last situation. Um, pets over here. Let's see here. Anything? No, just standard crap. Ah, the hell with you. That's fine. Um, that being said, do you have some pigs? We'd like some pigs. Pigs, as far as I know, unless they changed it, pigs don't have to eat. They don't have to graze like some other animals. So, like, you can just get pigs and, like, lock them up behind solid stone for a decade and they'll be fine. <laughs> Which is weird, yes, but um, it, that'd be pretty beneficial to us here in a tundra like this, you know? No grass to eat anyways, so 
that'd be good. Um, if you bring us a couple pigs and some leather, get us hooked up with that lev, then we'll be some happy dwarves. And maybe we'll produce some stuff for you next year. Um, okay, these are the, the prices that they're going to make us pay, which is like double the price that they would normally ask for. Um, they have at the mountain homes a need for horn bracelets and ammunition. That's expected. If I'm if I'm unable to provide some, the caravan will offer... Or if I'm able to provide some, they'll pay half the price. Interesting. Um, horn bracelets, which we can't make, and ammunition. Okay, that's fair. We'll see what we can do. Um, as far as anim animation, is what I almost said. Ammunition, like we, we can't really do that. Um, we don't have wood. We can't even make crap out of them. Um, horn bracelets. Like I think we did have a couple of horns laying around, but uh, I'm not sure where they got off to exactly. We're we making over here, making a statue. Uh, yeah, don't, don't make a statue. I'm gonna remove this building, make a craft dwarf workshop, and maybe we can get some of this stuff turned into actual, like, tradable items for next year. You know? Might be good. Might be good. Uh, let's see here. Did they fix animals trying to pass through tightly closed doors and destroying FPS? I certainly hope so. I don't know if they did, but I would like to think they did. Yeah. That was kind of a problem. Here, one second. Sorry, my chair's squeaking. I'm adjusting myself, moving slightly. Uh, in this this tenth hour of streaming, yeah, I gotta grab my little battery bank thing off the ground to plug my phone in so it doesn't die. Hey, that music! It's so good. What kicked that off? Why did that music just start playing? Is it because of our tavern? Did somebody start like dancing or something? Can you hear that? That's so good. There we go. Okay. That's a little bit better. They died earlier from lack of grazing, yes. Um, my animals, that is. But, like, that was just because some animals have to graze, and... Well, they... they I butchered those animals. They had to graze, but, you know, I kind of, like, nipped it in the bud and killed them beforehand. <laughs> so we didn't have to worry about it, you know? Look at that. You can see these dwarves in here singing those little speech bubbles there. That's really cool. I love that. Party in the bloated belly. <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, man. You, you put down a, a statue of a mosquito. Uh, a statue of a mosquito there, Scave Rat. That's really cool. <laughs> Hell yes. <laughs> the music's so cool. It just, like, kicks up like that. Look at all these guys. They're just singing and stuff. That's real fun. What a good and terrible fortress. I really like it. Like, it's a terrible place. Like, I wouldn't want to live here. Zero out of ten. Hey, whoa, what happened down here? It looks like somebody killed uh, a yeti. It's mangled, too, so it's not going to come back to life, thankfully. <laughs> it was killed by the merchants, the merchant guards. The singing alerted the wandering yeti corpse. Yeah, yeah, honestly, no. That's really cool. The merchant guard killed this thing, so... Excellent. Excellent work. Yes, we can see the merchants are here now. They brought some stuff to trade. It's really cool how they arrange themselves and they put all their stuff on the table like that. I love that. Um, okay, I, I haven't traded yet in the Steam version. So let's see how this whole thing goes right here. Um, and back to this, this spooky ambience here. <laughs> Hell yes. Keyboard Fox, thank you. It's good to see you. $5. It means a lot, my dude. Seriously. Hype. Big time hype. Let's do this. Hell yes. Um, let's see. Move goods to and from Depot. What can I trade? Body parts? You want some body parts? Uh, hmm. Interesting. Um, I, I was, I, I guess I never considered how they may have changed the merchant trading stuff here, but it looks like there has been some changes. Some interesting changes, too. Um, pine bucket contains one item. What's in the pine bucket? Oh, water. Oh, that's it. Look how intuitive that is. You click it and it just opens up water. Okay. That's it. I didn't even think twice about it. Just click it and it opens up to show you the water and then that's that. That's, that's excellent. Um, do you guys want some 
Water buffalo mangled hair. Some yak bull mangled hair. Could I interest you? <laughs> I don't think you could trade this stuff normally. Not easily, anyways. Um, I... F whatever, I guess. <laughs> if I can trade it, we'll see what they say. Um, it's whatever. Yeah. Enjoy. <laughs> Water buffalo leather quivers. We don't need these, I guess. We don't need them now, anyways. We don't have any ammunition anyways, so it's, it's whatever. Got a bunch of rough gems. I guess we could trade those. Eh. Uh, a couple of statues. We could trade some statues. They're probably not going to fetch that high of a price, I wouldn't think, but... I mean, again, better than nothing. A granite table? Sure, you take a table. Yeah, assuming you guys can carry it. They don't have their wagon this time, just because... We didn't have the damn depot built in time, but... <laughs> you know, it's whatever. Pine wheelbarrow with a granite in it? Uh... Uh, yeah, I guess I can't get rid of those. Pine stepladder, though. I'm gonna get rid of that. Yeah, we don't, we don't need that. Weapons, a bunch of copper battle axes. You know, mm, we'll hang on to those, I suppose. Uh, yeah, we, I guess we really don't got much to much to trade with you guys. <laughs> um, but you know, we got a little bit of something. So I, I think those are all selected to be traded now. Yes, we see bring item to depot across the board now. So everyone is just bringing items to depot. Look at this. Isn't this fascinating? We have Lore, the child, in Libash, the child, bringing items to a depot now. That used to be impossible, like children wouldn't do tasks before. But now children will partake in certain tasks. Maybe just like hauling and stuff? That's really cool to see. Look at that. <laughs> the dwarves come out and they just lay these, these big old clumps of dead animal hair down on the, uh, on the table right here. That's so ridiculous. Um, let me see here. Get, get, rid, get rid of that. Get rid of that. Okay, I want to see what's on the map right now. I don't want to get too distracted just in case there's another... Um, oh, boy. That's terrible. That's much worse. That's so much worse than anything else that we've seen. Um, polar bear people corpses. That's horrifying right there is what that is. Absolutely horrifying. It's a whole group of the things. One, two, three, four, five, six of them. Uh, really, really bad. A 26-year-old polar bear woman corpse leads the pack. She's got snow on her paws. Uh, cannot breathe. She has no vision. Just malice incarnate. This is a huge creature right here. I don't know how big this creature is exactly. I kind of wish... That would be a wish for the uh, Steam release at some point in the future. Is to like give some sort of a, a size comparison in this window right here. Maybe like you, you can see up here the polar... Polar bear woman corpse, like a little image of it. Maybe if it had her next to a little silhouette of a dwarf, just so I can see, like, how, you know, the size comparison and stuff. That'd be cool. Um, yeah, maybe at some point. I I, I don't want to unpause it, because I'm really afraid of these things. These polar bear zombie corpses. This is so bad. If these guys come up to the fortress, which, you know, it kind of stinks that we have the merchants here now, because the merchants, if they see... These polar bear people corpses, they're going to be like Kawabunga and <laughs> just go running out after them. Which would be a bad idea because dwarves aren't that big, you know. I'm sure they killed a yeti. They killed a, a yeti, you know, but uh, it's one yeti versus six polar bear people corpses, which I, I don't know how big a polar bear person is off the top of my head, but I'd have to imagine it can't be that much far off. I like, I think it's really cute, actually, how these polar bear people are coming directly towards our main gate. Like, they know where they're going. And they're just like, like it's migrants arriving. Like, they're just like, oh, yes, we've come here to help. Don't. Off with you. Get out of here. Go. No. Go away. Is that bridge down? The bridge is down. There's no lever that links it up right now. Um. I, I, admittedly, I'm kind of curious to see what happens. <laughs> Look at them, though. They're just, like, coming straight into our front gate. Maybe they followed the merchants. We could say that. Yes, they, they've been following the merchants this entire way. We've been safe this entire time until now. Uh, dwarves, get inside right now. It, it's going to be the merchants' problem, okay? Um, Where is the burrow thing? This is the burrow thing? Yes, nobody assigned. Okay, I'm going to assign everyone. Everyone get to the burrow right now, please. Everyone inside, go. Um... I guess we should probably also redo this burrow somewhat, repaint this burrow, and like we can just kind of slope around here, right? There we go, just like that. Okay, that's not bad. Right here, and then go down. Nope, nope, 
doop doop that's wrong down 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 to here okay and I'm gonna make it nice and safe where everyone can go inside I really don't know what's up with the farm plot like maybe stuff is being grown and you just can't see it in here there's a bunch of cave wheat seeds in place. I've yet to see any sprouts or anything, though. That's kind of bothersome to me. Um, four times larger than a dwarf. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, we got those merchants outside. We have those traps inside. I think we're going to be fine. 100%. Keyboard Fox, what the hell are you doing? Thank you very much, my friend. Hopped in to show some love and support. Never stop creating, bro. I won't. If I can... I'll, I'll create as long as I can. I think it's all I can do. So thank you very much again for your support. It means a lot. Um, okay. Yes, yeah, so these are titanic creatures. They're pretty pretty darn big. Four times the size of a dwarf, as was stated. But, they, you know, they're untrained. They don't have any armor on. Here we have some merchants. Um, we've got a mace dwarf over here. We have a, a swords dwarf. A, uh, I'm hoping there's more. <laughs> Let's see. Are there more? No. We have two warriors. <laughs> Rofod, the mace man, mace dwarf, and Serol, the swords dwarf. Ah, yes. This is how things go downhill quickly. Maybe they'll turn around. <laughs> turn around. Go away. We don't want you. This is going to be fine. Whoa, whoa, they're off. Uh, all right, I'm just going to unpause the game. Let's see what happens here. Why, why the why the children in here? Children, go inside immediately. You're part of this burrow, right? I think I, I, I did assign everyone, right? Yeah, go inside. You got no reason to be out here. These children were, like, itching for battle, though. These kids are going to be dead. I don't like that. Um, damn it. Not much I could do about it, though, really. I mean, crap. All right, I'm just going to unpause it. Let's see what happens. Bloodbath, I'm sure. Help me! Oh, God. Oh, damn it. They killed three of them. I see, I think this is one of the one of the children, if I had to have my guess. Zass, the merchant. Looks like one of the merchants ran out with the warriors, and they're all they're all fighting. Liebash, this little old man guy over here. I'm still going to town. Who was this? Nil. Nil? Nil must have been one of those children. Damn it. Okay. Uh, Libash, what are you doing? You're playing right now? Don't play. You should be fighting for your life or running away. Please be... There's still... I, I just want this kid to be okay. Okay? This one gray-haired little child over here. Okay. Whoa. Whoa. Look at that. Oh, cool. You see the bones go flying out of that polar bear corpse? That was super cool. Um... We are going to have to get the hell out of here, though, child. Like, actually, because, like, pieces of these things can come back to life at any second. Oh, man. Mangled, mutilated. I think all these dead bodies are totally mangled now, so I don't think there's a risk of them coming back. Uh, I hope. This hand is going to come back right here. It's not mangled. This this paw is probably going to come back to life. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's not good. Success. Yes, somewhat. I mean... Not too bad. Ma Matthew Parker, thank you. Can't believe that this finally came out on Steam. And and uh, what was that? Five years of Krug? Wow, congrats on everything. Yeah, I know. It's been a while, huh? Thank you very much. I started making these videos in 2016. That's when I started Steel Clutches. Or Evil Kings before Steel Clutches. Um, that, that's kind of like... Yeah, I made videos before that too, but... Oh, boy. Uh, one second, just having a look up here. Right, we, we lost that one dwarf, the child. Man, that's pretty wild. These two kids, siblings, went running out and fought the polar bears alongside the merchant guards. Hmm. Let's have a look at this combat, actually. I, I'm, a, I'm a little intrigued by this whole thing. Uh, dwarven child, Libash Avaz Asab, was fighting. Let's have a closer look. Up at the top, the dwarven child just leapt into combat, punching the polar bear woman in the corpse. Or right in the, the the leg. Polar bear woman corpse in the right lower leg. Um, I have a part in this. This might require an answer. Just punching, punching, beating the hell out of a polar bear woman corpse. Oh my god. That's so good. <laughs> Look at this little champion over here. Look, he was getting attacked too. Hmm. Uh, 
the polar bear woman corpse bites the dwarven child in the left upper arm, tearing the muscle through the sheep wool dress. Oh man, an artery has been opened by the attack and a sensory nerve has been severed. You're going to carry that wound with you the rest of your life there, I think, child. Uh, at some point during this, his, his sibling there died. Man, this is a wily kid. You see all this here? He got punched in his arm. The whole time, he was fighting like an animal. Oh my gosh. Look at that. That's really cool. I cannot stand by. There is no need to feel vengeful. Very cool. I wonder if he... I doubt he landed a killing blow, but is there a way to, to see, maybe? Hmm military no squad uniform kills oh no okay you can see that through the kills tab up here but no he didn't didn't actually score a killing wound on any anything so this kid's gonna be kind of screwed up i think um you know seeing his sibling die like that i i mean it's bound to happen right let's see here so lore the dwarven child is his younger half sister she was the one who was deceased right up over here no, oh, no, no, maybe not. Wait, who died? I, I, is she fine? Maybe she's okay, actually. Let me, let me have a look here. Dwarven child. Oh, maybe not. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Did, did she die somewhere? I don't know where she died. What was her name? Oh, there she is. Okay, she died up here. She's underneath this polar bear person corpse. Damn. That's pretty dark, huh? Well... It's interesting. It's stuff like that that dwarf, you know, gives Dwarf Fortress such flavor. You know, these two children are out here uh, playing in the trade depot when they were supposed to go inside. But, you know, they saw they didn't want to move here with their mother. Their mother who's griping the whole time. That's Karen there is her. The one I keep calling Karen is their mother. Um, you know, they, they've all been griping about being here in dead body because the place sucks. I can't blame them. But, you know, maybe they saw some excitement. They thought it'd be fun to run out the gates with the merchant guards and fight some polar bears. And it just really wasn't as much of a game as they thought it was. You know, one of them died in the attack. But the other one's still left alive. Now, I would think a bit more wise about his place in the world. Uh, Nico Paceman, thank you very much. When I heard this was coming out on my birthday, hey, happy birthday, and that you were going to play it, I was ecstatic. Couldn't hope for a better gift. Thanks, Rug. I'm hoping you're having a good day. Uh, big time. Play some Dwarf Fortress. Strike the Earth. Oh, man. That's really cool, though, huh? A cool little story. I really like that. Um, Let me have a look here. Let me have a look. So, this burrow... I, I didn't think we were going to come through that at all, actually. I'm, I'm quite pleased that we were able to survive. There we go. Doing pretty good, too. I mean, all things considered, we lost one dwarf in the attack, which, you know, it's never good. But... It could have been a lot worse. I'm honestly really surprised those two guards were able to hold up so well. But, yeah, they kicked ass big time. I was a, a fool to underestimate Dwarven Might. I don't know what I was thinking. Foolish, foolish Dwarf. Uh, yes, the and just like that, the merchants are gone already. Yeah, it's a damn shame. I... I mean, I know they're sentient, but I really wish we could eat these polar bears instead of just letting them go to waste. Like, I know they're thinking people with emotions and clothing and stuff, but, I mean, we're hungry. <laughs> I want to eat something. Uh, I was going to say, can we eat the Yeti? But no, we can't do that. It's interesting you can see the weight, I suppose. I never really considered looking at the weight to judge how uh, heavy something was, right? Like... Over here we have Nil's corpse, which weighs 99, whatever the hell. And then this Yeti, which weighs 129. Clearly a lot bigger than uh, this this dwarf. And we have a polar man. Polar man. Polar bear man? Corpse? <laughs> over here, which weighs 64. Which is a considerable amount less than this dwarf over here. Um, hmm. Leads me to believe that maybe these polar bear people are like emaciated because they're like zombies. Maybe maybe they're more like um like skeletons, you know, than an actual zombie. I don't know. Oh man, this guy's pretty wounded. This merchant over here, seriously injured. Okay. Let's let's have a look here at um health, ability to stand lost. There's no easy way to tell at a glance if a dwarf is laying on the ground now, which 
is odd. Before, you know, they'd be brown. Combat, combat. Who's fighting? Oh, polar bear woman's left hand was fighting. I think it was taken down, though. That's what this, the sword dwarf ran up and killed it real quick. So no worries there. Anyways, I, I believe this dwarf right here, uh, Zass, Rough Clinch, is, you know, he says his ability to stand is lost. I believe he's laying on the ground right now. But I can't tell that at a glance, you know, whereas you could before. Um, they would they would flash like brown to tell you they're laying on the ground or crawling around and stuff. But um, yeah, I guess I guess that just doesn't happen anymore. It's gonna make combat a little bit harder to parse through at a glance. Strangely enough, you'd think it'd be easier to parse through because of the graphics and stuff. But you know, something as easy as having a something as simple as having an ASCII character be highlighted with like a brown box that tells you that whatever it is is laying on the ground you know or if it starts flashing white you know it's unconscious or flashing teal you know it's dizzy I'm curious to see what other effects they have planned like that for in combat you know um interesting you know we'll see we'll see so um I believe this child up here deserves some sort of a nickname right it's got to get something where, where is that kid uh down in his bedroom right now uh 10 years old he says i could do without all those creatures and that tangled greenery what the hell are you talking about kid <laughs> tangled greenery out in this frozen hellscape what tangled greenery have you seen in the past month you little bastard <laughs> uh, probably just coming up with stuff to complain about because of the, the death of his sibling you know I guess it would make someone a little uh, little ornery right poor kid um winter's fist oh we got some nicknames for the kid right uh berserk that's cool bear teat uh creative I like that <laughs> um colorblind okay kid is the kid is psycho yeah i mean he's he's certainly on a different level this dwarf he's gonna grow up to be something i'll tell you that much right now Liebash, the dwarven child we're gonna call him something oh let's see i, I don't know how to nickname a kid oh there we go Liebash. evaz asab okay so now it's just like like this, I guess. We're gonna call him um Bear Fist Brawler. I like it. Okay. Bear Fist Brawler of Us Asab. Oh, it's already got quotes around it. I, I didn't need to add those in. I wasn't thinking. Uh how much is bear fist? There we go. Bear fist of Azasab, dwarven child. There you go. I'm hoping he doesn't lose it though. Just this uh these recent complaints about tangled greenery have me a little concerned. He might be be succumbing to the the snow insanity, the snow madness bound to happen. Happens to quite a few out here on these uh these icy slopes. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> Uh, anywho, constructions, uh, let's get some walls slapped up real quick. Up here, kind of finish these weird little tower things we're working on, huh? Um, ice, there we go. Ice, it's so, so nice. There we go. Yes, thank you. Wonderful. And, uh, yeah. Fortress looking good. Can I get those walls put up real quick? Uh, a little bit taller. Maybe, ooh, maybe we should actually link up that damn bridge to something so it's not just useless, huh? <laughs> Might be an idea. As for workshops, we need something to trade next year. This is of utmost importance, I feel. Combat? Who's fighting? Um, yeah, okay. Th these dwarves over here are just fighting with polar bear remains that keep coming back to life. The, the hands keep hopping up and uh, mulling dwarves and stuff but they're fine they're pretty much harmless not too worried not too worried um that is going to cause me concern though seeing that little combat report icon pop up like that from time to time i don't like it anyways um crafts a crafts dwarf workshop 
select material after placement we're gonna put it right here and make it out of ice why not we've got so much ice around uh, imagine it'd be kind of chilly sitting there at your little station trying to craft something when the entire thing's made of ice you know your hands are getting cold you start to start to shiver a little bit got little ice crystals in your beard not good not conducive to a creative environment but the dwarves seem to manage we're tough dwarves here in uh, dead body <laughs> Okay, let's see. Uh, yeah, this, this farm has me puzzled. I I don't know if they're growing stuff in here. You know what this reminds me of, actually? It reminds me of SimCity 2000. When I was little uh, and playing the game, I didn't really know how it worked, so I put down zones, like um, like industrial zone, commercial zone, residential zone, and I, I just assumed houses didn't pop up there, and it's like, oh, I'm supposed to imagine there's houses here or something. I don't know why I would think that. But, like, for the longest time, that's what I did, stupid kid, you know? <laughs> but now I'm like, oh, maybe there are plants here. Oh, there's probably plants here. I just can't see them. Maybe they're not in the game yet. But I, I just, oh, I got a feeling something's going on. I don't, I don't really know what exactly. They've got all these icons here for pigtails, dimple cups, and whatnot. Even that little farm plot icon up top, it's got mushrooms all over it. I should be seeing some mushrooms. Give me some mushrooms, huh? Can't see them. Where are they? It's not fertilized. You shouldn't have to be able to fertilize. You shouldn't have to fertilize them. I, I don't think. I mean, that's not how Dwarf Fortress typically works. Fertilizer is kind of like a, you know, a little, I don't know, like an additional bonus thing typically. But I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm the idiot here. Like usual. <laughs> Let's have a look. Again, didn't go through the tutorial. So maybe they've just changed something about it. And I, I don't know. Planting. Let's see. Uh, there's some food on the Embark Wagon. And you can trade for food, but you can also grow your own. The wagon comes with some seeds, but as you might expect, these crops must be grown underground. Using mining orders, you'll need to carve out a rectangular area underground for your farm plot. The underground rectangle must be near the surface where there is soil, loam, clay, or sand. One level down should suffice. Before you hit the rock, the highest mountain elevations do not have soil. Make sure to leave the ceiling above intact so that underground soil doesn't receive any sunlight. Uh, with a sub subterranean soil floor ex subterranean soil floor exposed, you can place an underground farm plot. This isn't rich soil, but will suffice for now. Dig deeper to find better soil. Hmm. Rich soil? Is that a thing now? Select farm plot from the build menu. It's in the workshops. Farming, farm plot. Uh, place the farm plot on the subterranean soil. So, I mean, this is a subterranean soil, right? Combat again. Uh, it's fine. You need to select the crops to be grown each season, which I did. Plump helmets are edible, and the default wagon comes with plump helmet spawn. Okay. Uh, it's, all, it's all set. Now your planters access both of them. Farm plot and the spawn. Plant the field. After a period of growth, they'll be harvested. Okay, that's the point where we're at right now, and I'm just waiting for the harvesting. Where's the harvesting? If you'd like to focus a few of your citizens on farming, which gives skill benefits, you can assign them to the planter's work detail from the labor menu. Fertilizer and skilled planters have a direct impact on crop yield. These effects are more pronounced deep underground where you can locate the cavern biome and its rich soil. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. I'm not too sure. From my reckoning, this should be working. Uh, as I said before, it looked like, you know, the dwarf was coming down here and planting stuff in here, so it should be fine. No graphic for small plants. They only have graphics for the full-grown plant. So if they get harvested instantly, you won't see them at Krug Smash. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. I, I guess... Okay. I hope to see them at some point. I would love nothing more to see this whole farm plot over here just like covered with mushrooms. That would be really stellar to see. But um, yes, you're you're probably right on that. I guess I assumed it'd be something like that. Um, as for our plants that we have access to, it's it's crap. We have seven plants right now that we can access. Uh, no drinks, uh, though we do have water. Thankfully, um, the dwarves aren't going to be too happy about that. Uh, we got some meat, got some got some food. We're not gonna be dead, we're not a bunch of dead dwarves yet. But we're gonna be getting there soon if we don't find a better way to source some food and drinks. That being said, maybe we should start working our way towards the caverns a little bit. Like I don't really love the idea, but maybe. Maybe. Um, you know I know what we should do. It's not something I <laughs> not an idea I'm in love with or anything like that, but um maybe 
we could head out into the caves and start training our dwarves a little bit and go out there, maybe get them, because we did bring those axes, right? We've got enough, enough axes for everyone. So, um, yeah, maybe maybe we can do something like that. What did I just tell you to make? Don't don't decorate with horn. No, it's silly. Uh, I want to make something out of horn. What do they want? Did uh, horn, horn something for next year? What the hell was it? Was it horn something specific? Just horn crafts? Was it? I don't know. Um, hmm. I'm not too sure. Uh, I don't want to decorate with horn, though. Decorate with horn. Where is make? You can make horn. That's right. Make horn crafts. Okay. I'm going to do that. I'm just going to make some horn crafts. I think we've got some extra ones around. Won't be a, won't be too difficult. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. Just make a bunch of horn crafts. Start dumping those things out. Sure. Um... Let me see here. Dig bracelets. Was it bracelets? Horn bracelets? And Okay, was it bracelets? I, I kind of thought so. That's weird. It's so specific. What the hell do they want horn bracelets for? That's really weird. That's fine, though. We can make some. A whole bunch. There we go. Easy enough. Easy peasy. Um. Mm -mm. Did they leave all their crap here at the depot? That's, that's not going to be good, huh? That's probably going to give us a bad look down the line. But you know what? Who cares? Look at it. Free, free junk. We got all this free junk over here. I'm pretty pleased with that. Hell yeah. Bismuth bronze greaves. We got a mule bone metin. Some sort of an instrument. Let's have a gander. This is a mule bone metin. The keyboard is made from macadamia wood. The case is made from mule bone. The bells are made from alpaca bone. The metin is a mid sized handheld bone musical instrument above which hangs 37 bone bells. The musician uses a wooden keyboard to select which of these bells are struck. The instrument has a five and a half octave range, going from a low uh, to an extremely high. One more second, one second. Uh, pitch. <laughs> At all pitches, the instrument has a round quavering t timbre. That's right, timbre. Yeah, he almost caught me. Some some music nerds were going to yell at me for saying timbre like some sort of idiot. What are you, a lumberjack? It has two registers. The two register has a uh, the, the low register has a reedy, rugged, muddy timbre. The high register begins at a mid-high pitch and has a rippling timbre. Okay. Well, it's ours now. Yoink. <laughs> Let's see what else they brought. There's got to be something good in there, right? Something edible, perhaps? Something so we don't die soon, maybe? Would be great. Uh, yeah, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of crap in there, actually. You know what we should do is probably... Um, we were doing that little cheesy method before of like dumping all of our objects into the corner. Seems to be working pretty well. We'll just do that real quick. Just get all this stuff kind of just dumped down in the corner real quick. There we go. What is this? Lore Le Leram Rao's Mangled Skeleton. So we're, we're literally putting everything in this pile. Dead bodies. Sure, our friends and family. Just dump them in. That's fine. What is this? Uh, fortress is out of food. All your our front parts working? Okay, yeah. I know. Um, it's just because I forbid all that stuff real quick. Just dumping it away. They're like, oh, no, there's no food. We can't eat this stuff. You told us not to eat it. It's fine. Just two shakes. We're going to get it all crammed down in the corner, and it'll be fine. It'll be fine. You don't have cave wheat seeds, dot, dot, dot. Da. How do you know? Where, where are you seeing that? I probably don't at this point. Um, No seeds. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess it, it does say that right there, huh? Oh, well. Well, um... We'll plant something eventually. Not too worried about it. We'll get there. We'll get there. I mean, at this point, we're doing fine. We got all that crap that just fell off the merchant wagon, so it's fine. We're going to get down underground somewhere. We're going to start to doing some digging and see what's out there. Maybe some monsters. Maybe some uh, food <laughs> is what we should be looking for specifically. Not so much monsters and fun things, right? I think so. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we've got our mechanics workshop. I'm going to get rid of this workshop. I don't need it right now. Uh, craft dwarf workshop. That's up here. Maybe down underground. Instead of a mechanics workshop, I'm going to make a stone worker workshop. Look at that. I called it stone worker without even thinking about it. Again. That's great. And if I make it out of ice, will it, will it melt down here? I don't know. Let's see. We'll see soon enough. No food, no drinks. That's because I just forbid everything up top because we're getting it crammed away in a corner. It's fine. We have food and drinks. It's just because, like, if I go over here and um, unforbid some of the stuff like that, then there we go. Oh, we got food. We got drinks. Uh, no no drinks. We haven't had drinks. We have water, though. 
We have a well. We have a functioning well down below. I know the dwarves aren't happy about that. Hey, pro gamer tip right here. Water is not good enough for your dwarves. Um, if you have access to a river or a brook or a well or underground water, that's not good enough. That is a temporary solution. Because, like, I talk to a lot of people who think water is just fine for dwarves, and it's not. Like, I know I'm using water now, but that's just because I'm inept. Like, you need to be able to plant stuff. And um, if, if you have plants, you brew it into drinks, which makes alcohol, which is what dwarves want. If dwarves don't have alcohol, they work slower and slower, and they get unhappy. You need alcohol, you know? That's just how it works. That's how dwarves work, I suppose. Anywho, Stoneworkers Workshop, right over here. Um, what the hell was I doing with this? I was gonna make something. Uh, I was gonna make some, I guess I'm gonna make some coffins. <laughs> we need some coffins. Rock coffins. I uh, Again, I guess I can't make these out of ice. That would've been kind of cool though. Little ice boxes for our dead, dead dwarves. Um, kind of dark, that's fine. Uh, we'll make a couple of sandstone coffins. I'll set that to repeat. I and mean, we only have four units of sandstone in the fortress, so... At, okay. <laughs> the whole workshop just melted into a pool of water right there. That's kind of cool. Um, we had to expect that, I suppose. Workshop's gonna make another one. Stoneworker workshop right here. And this time we'll make it out of a chert. How about, like, an actual stone instead of <laughs> just ice blocks? <laughs> um... Yeah, you think everything is magma safe now? No, I don't think so. Why would they do that? It seems kind of silly. Um, hmm. Yeah, I, I don't think so. I don't think that really makes any sense. Why would they make everything magma safe? I, I guess it does make sense in a way. It's kind of a pain in the ass to uh, manage magma safe stuff sometimes or remember what's magma safe or whatnot. But eh, it just, that doesn't seem like something they would do. But I don't know. Maybe they did. I have no idea. Can you build stuff from underneath now? I'm not sure if they changed that. Like, it'd be cool to be able to build a wall right here at the top of this stairway right here. Um, I don't know. Let's see. I kind of doubt that they did do that, but it would be very, very cool if they did. We'll give them a second. If they didn't, then a dwarf just won't do it. They just, they will never try to do it. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing that pop up anywhere like the construct building task so i've got a feeling it's just not going to work we'll see everything is magma safe if you disable temperature calculations did someone do that um what like in in the actual game i don't know i have no idea to be fair the temperature calculations in dwarf fortress didn't really do all that much right like magma is hot which is great um ice i guess <laughs> like you know if you get burned to death in a fire in dwarf fortress then that it feels more of a like an effect of the fire than of temperature itself typically like from what i understand in dwarf fortress previously like every single tile was affected by temperature no matter what you know so like here underground it would technically be warmer than up above ground um you know in the ice and stuff but, like, you don't see that. It has no effect at all. So, like, I guess if they turned it off the temperature calculations, it really wouldn't affect anything. I wouldn't mind. Um, that being said, if they, if they did that and made everything magma safe that way, that'd be kind of lame. I don't even know what I'm talking about right now. <laughs> I just, like, look into chat and see people kind of talking about something, and I'm like, oh, they must be talking about this thing, which probably isn't even the case. These um, merchant guardsmen over here, oh, it's just the... The one swords dwarf guardsman and a merchant and a mule are just hanging out outside the fortress now. Um, I'm not sure why they don't just leave. Nothing's keeping them here as far as I can tell. But they don't seem to be fixing to leave anytime soon. Mm, having a look around, there are no dangerous things on the map right now, which I like. Certainly not griping. Hell yeah. Uh, okay. Got dwarves up here. Dwarves are doing okay. Making some horn crafts. Got a child up here doing some stuff. Um, I still remember the pedestal that kept melting in the Monster Hunter Fortress of yours. Um, uh, w which which one was that? Oh, we put a pedestal, right? We put that, um, we had a dead body of a forgotten beast on a pedestal, right? That um, melted the pedestal, right? Is, is, that, is that familiar? I don't know. I'm trying to recall. That sounds familiar, though. 
Um, anywho, you know what I want to do is I want to see the caverns. I was saying before, hey, let's go out to the caverns, but I never really followed it up with any sort of concrete plans. Let's just do it. Let's just heedlessly stride forward. Uh, and, and downward, I should say. Let's go. Heedless. The proper dwarven way to do anything. I am starting to understand the stair system, and I don't hate it. Um, it's, it's not bad. I, that really skeeves me out, this whole thing over here where I couldn't build a stairway because you have to do multiple Z-levels. Um, that's, that's kind of weird, I feel, but, you know, I guess it, I guess it works. Uh, for your current experience, how do you rate the game experience in comparison to the original Dwarf Fortress so far? Um, I, I like it. I really like it. It's really cool. You know, as a longtime Dwarf Fortress player who has my life and sent the, <laughs> everything centered around this game, like, I feel like that's kind of a big thing. I think it's really good. Um, yeah, big time. It's certainly going to be better for new people. 100%. Without a doubt. Um, and I'm talking like better than like, you know, lazy noob pack or anything like that. There's going to be, uh, there are people out there playing the Steam version who are better at playing the the game than I am. <laughs> you know, a long-time Dwarf Fortress player, just because, like, you know, I'm trying to relearn the game, essentially. It's just crazy to think about, you know. It, it seems like it'd be so easy to pick up now that I can guarantee there are people out there who are picking it up and doing so more competently than I am, you know. And that's great. I love that. I love that uh, it's going to be so much more accessible now. You know, um, I was saying before, I'm like, I'm kind of pessimistic sometimes. So, like, when... The game was announced, and you know, say it's gonna do this and it's gonna do that, all sorts of stuff. I'm like, ah, I don't know. I guess we'll see. But yeah, all, my fears have been allayed, 100%. And um, yeah, it just it's great. It's going really well. I'm trying to dig down over here, and I'm not 100% what's going on. This is a weird aquifer. I I feel, I maybe not. Maybe I'm just an an idiot, which <laughs> is definitely on the table. Let's see here. Um. Are we still digging? Is this water getting too deep? It might be getting too deep. One of seven. No, it's fine. Get down here. Get your little dwarven booty down here and start digging, huh? What's wrong with just... Who's digging? Get someone digging. I need someone digging over here, huh? Um... There we go. Okay. I wasn't sure why he wasn't making the stairs. I think I was doing something wrong there. Um, 500 hours in RimWorld and first day with DF. Hey, welcome. Welcome to Dwarf Fortress. It's a wonderful game. And I have high hopes for its future, you know. One of the greatest things about Dwarf Fortress is that it just keeps going, you know. it's It's had so many things added to it over the years. And, like, it's a slow process. Of course, it's a slow process. You got one man making the whole thing. But it's it's great. It just um, it has so much to offer in its current state, and it's just always exciting to see what is coming down the line, you know. And there's a lot. I'm pretty excited because, like, um, from what I understand, I have to imagine that like after the Steam release here, there's going to be a, 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 a list of bugs to address, maybe little fixes here and there. But then after that, um, I think they're just getting back to actual production of the game you know and i think the first thing on the agenda if i recall correctly is to finish up the villains release which came out a couple years ago and there's gonna be some neat stuff with that i guess um but then after that it's gonna be from what i understand the big weight which i'll put in quotes which that's going to be a lead up to the myth and magic release of dwarf fortress we're going to be able to see like more like of the gods and how the world was created and stuff that seems really cool what is going on here? Mist? Oh, that was mist. Oh, that was kind of cool looking. Huh. I only just barely glanced it. Um, yeah, I'm trying to get the dwarves to dig down here. And I'm looking for caverns or something. But this aquifer is really hampering efforts. Um, let's see here. I'm going to try to smooth up some of the stone so the water quits coming in like that. It's, it's, a, it's a bummer. It's a bummer. Get rid of that stuff, huh? Get to it, my dwarves. Start smoothing that stone, huh? Good job. Ah, oh, anyways, I got our meeting hall up here. How you feeling, dwarves? You doing good? How you feeling, chat? You guys doing good too? I'd certainly hope so. Um, right, I gotta unforbid some of this stuff in our trash dump over here. There you go. Everyone's just relaxing. Probably had a hard day at work today, maybe school. And now you're home. 
enjoying uh, Dwarf Fortress, maybe alongside me, even. That's that's really cool. Again, um, I just really get a kick out of that sort of stuff. <laughs> I love the ambience out here. Just that, with that wind and that weird rolling hooting sound. Really cool. Big time. I have to play that as like I sleep or something. I could probably fall asleep to that, I think. <laughs> Feeling great, good, doing great, good. Hell yes. Hell yes. Um... Wow, it looks so good. D doesn't it? It looks great, you know? <laughs> you say that as I happen to be hovering over this uh, blank white area with just a couple of bones and hunks of meat here. But yeah, it looks really good. It does. It really does. Big time. Big fan. Yeah, I really like how it all is coming together. Now, um... Let's zoom out here for a second. I want to check out this cave. We have this cave that's kind of been sitting here the whole time. You know what I'm doing? is I'm digging down over there, looking for caves. And, you know, stupid me, why don't I just go down over here? We got a Yeti corpse on the map again. Okay, over in the, in the west, that's not gonna bother us too much, I don't think. I don't think, we shall see. Um, now, I've done nothing with the military so far. I set up a squad, but that's pretty much it. They have no special orders right now, their routine is off duty. Um, okay, if I select them, I could say, uh, attack, move, a patrol order, burrow defense order. The soldiers will patrol the burrow and attack any hostile creatures. That's really cool. Uh, assign a training order. The squad must be assigned to a barrack zone with the training option set. Okay. Okay. Equip. Oh, boy. In over my head. Uh... Okay, so I hit equip, and this shows us all the people in our squad, right? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dwarves in the squad. And it's looking like maybe one, two, three, four, five, six of them have axes. Um, hmm. Details? Metal armor? Okay. Hmm. Yeah, this... This thing seems a little, uh, if I gotta be honest, a little messy still. Um, it, hmm. We'll see. Give me another second. This is literally after five seconds of looking at this screen. But, uh, okay, so here's our military screen, I guess. You got a backpack slot, got a, a drinking vessel slot, boots, gloves, helmets, pants, etc. What are these dots right here? The three dots. I figured I could, like, um, do something with that. I don't know. Hmm. Details. If I hit magnifying glass, that looks at the dwarf specifically. Um, I would like to think he'd be holding his axe, her axe, but she's not. Um, hmm. Can I set them to active duty? It used to be like you could um, set a squad to active and they would go and grab their armor and sit in a barracks. Or if they didn't have a barracks, they would just go like mill about the fortress or whatever. Maybe that's like uh, the burrow defense thing. I don't know. We'll see. Select a burrow to defend inside top four. I guess I'll confirm that. Let's see what happens. I don't know what they'll do. Game is paused. It's unpaused right now. Uh, okay. Right here we see all those dwarves just became recruits. Okay. Um, I'm hoping that means they'll go grab weapons now. Yes, we can see a dwarf just ran down here to that dump pile, grabbed an axe, and now he's holding the axe. The other ones are going to do that too, I'm sure. There they go. Yes, they're grabbing axes. Okay. Okay, and now they're off defending the, the burrow. They're just kind of like patrolling around the burrow up here. Cool. Okay. Um, Maybe we should go and check out... This cave. Now, that Yeti was over in the west. Um, I should probably be more concerned about that than I am, but I'm feeling careless. So, let's head on over to the cave, my dwarves. Let's go check it out. Uh, I'm not sure if they'll, they'll do that. I wasn't, like, selecting on the ground. Let's try it again. Uh, move over here to the mouth of the cave, please. Thank you very much. I, I think that will do it, but I am unsure. Let's have a look at the, the fortress here. Okay, there they go. They're just running out of the fortress with their axes, except this one guy is like, I don't need one, Adam. What are you doing, Ed? You should probably be holding a weapon of some variety, but... 
Proper dwarf doesn't need it, right? <laughs> yeah, sure. There they go. All heading up to the cave. Wonderful. There they go. So they're up at the mouth of the cave now. And you can see this tunnel right here, this grayish tunnel with a shale floor. This is the entrance to the cave. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. Gotta head in. Select the squad and head in. Just a, maybe, well, I guess we can go down a couple Z levels. We can explore. We've already seen down that far. Somehow it's like automatically explored a little bit down here. This is as far as we can see, though. Okay, we're going to move down to here. Okay. Okay, it doesn't really look like much down here. Not yet, anyways. Okay. Down, down. Uh, okay. Try again. I'm going to go a little bit deeper. Okay. Down to this level right here. Gonna continue going down. What is this wall? Magnetite wall. Okay. So we have access to a whole bunch of metals here. Magnetite, that's um, you know, like magnet iron. Very interesting. Let's keep going. Let's see if there's anything down here. There could be something down here. Maybe something's been sitting here in this cave the entire time, and we just haven't noticed it. Kind of spooky. But it could well be the case. We did already see a group of elk birds and a giant ulm escape from this cave. So we do know for a fact that it does connect up to the caves below. Uh, the tunnels below, I should say. Okay. Let's keep going. Let's keep going, dwarves. Okay. Very cool. Keep it up. Head on down. I mean, they're could potentially be something if it's like you know nothing's changed anyways there could potentially be something extremely bad down here that we've just by luck not encountered so far but i mean you would think that that's the case and those animals that came out of the cave would be pretty severely wounded which they weren't so maybe never mind maybe maybe it's completely fine down here yeah you know what i think we're gonna be a-okay yeah yeah Keep it up, dwarves. Keep on heading down. Uh, okay. My god, this man is still at it. I'm no man. I'm a dwarf, damn it. <laughs> Endurance like I couldn't believe. Let's keep it up. How long is this stream so far? Somebody can see that, that timer, right? I think I got started at like 9.30. I've been going, well, shortly it'll be 12 hours, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty wild. I should probably drink more water. I've not been good at that. Here. There we go. Um, surface caves are not new. I know they're not new. I'm just saying, like, if they've changed anything um, underground. If you're talking to me, that should, should be. Um, no, I, I know they're not new. If you're talking to me. I'm just talking like if they've changed anything with how these things generate like wouldn't it be cool if i was heading down here and there was like a room with like statues or like some sort of weird shrine and we were all like okay that's not how dwarf fortress works <laughs> i don't know i mean tarn has added stuff to the game before and not told anyone like little secrets and stuff and from what i understand there are some things like that added to this version as well um i don't know what but I've heard some allusions to things. Like somebody mentioned, um, maybe in the chat earlier, Koopa player had mentioned um, a couple times now that Tarn was talking about elves and how elves might have uh, some sort of access to divine metals or something like that in some fashion. And I don't know what the hell that means, but it's interesting. So I'm not sure if he did something. Oh, we've ex ex discovered an expansive cavern deep underground. Finally, okay. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Hell yes, my dwarves. Okay. Um, how do we get down here? Down here. It's kind of uh, a little screwy with these slopes. I'm trying to tell exactly how. Okay, we can access it down here. Not a not a big deal at all. Yeah, let's head down here to the bottom of the slope. We're going to be out in the caves now. There we go. Okay. So we got our small group of dwarves here down at the bottom of these caves. Let's zoom out a little bit, see what we're dealing with. 
Okay. Pretty standard cave activity, I'd say. Um, you got some water. Got some watery areas. Got some trees. Some mushroom caps. Some spore trees. Got some fungi trees. Fungi wood trees. Not too bad. Um, yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's go have a closer look, though. Maybe we'll see some other things, huh? Do 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 do. Somebody had asked earlier if I'm going to do any more streaming, and I, I don't plan on it. No, this is going to be my last stream for quite some time, I think, actually. Um, but you know, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe I could do some more from time to time or whatever. I really want to go back to making edited content. Ah! What happened? This is exactly what I was talking about in terms of dangerous things. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Um, Alright, over here we have a Cyclops just sitting amongst piles of gore and bones. Dead bodies. They have a couple of Gorlax here on the ground. Smashed apart trolls, judging by the blood. A giant cave toad mangled the corpse. The dwarves are over here, just kind of like huddled behind this pillar. They know something's going on. They can smell the rot in the refuse. The Cyclops, though, 290 years old, stressed, faint, injured. Nefak Teal wandered, the scintillating torches. Okay. Uh, really cool that we can see inside her brain. I guess it's, it's a female Cyclops. I, I was wondering, like, if it was an undead thing. You know, it doesn't say corpse, though. Um, hmm very interesting like we don't know how to fight so if we tried to fight this creature we would be a toast in pretty short order <laughs> uh, she is disgusted after ratching on a miasma she was afraid reliving experiencing trauma and mulling over the recurring memory allowed her to rethink her intellectual values and change her personal tendencies you see that that's really cool it's really cool that we can see that sort of stuff about an intelligent creature like a cyclops you know relatively intelligent anyways um, let's see She has a little difficulty with words, little patience, and poor creativity. Very interesting. Hmm. How about her health? Can I see that? She's faint. Which means she's probably had a lot of blood loss. Her coiled hair is extremely long. Oh, that's new. Coiled hair? She is tall. I haven't really had a look at some of the dwarves' descriptions. Maybe, maybe it's different across the board, huh? Uh, let me just have a, a quick look, real quick, at, say, like, this dwarf, Dodok. Um, her wavy hair is quite dense. Her very long hair is arranged in double braids. Her somewhat short head is extraordinarily broad. Uh, it all looks pretty similar. Oh my goodness, got a puppy barking in the background. Sorry about that. This puppy. <laughs> um, here, one second. Mustache is neatly combed. Yeah, the, the puppy's puppy's barking about something. I'm not sure. Probably the cat or something. Anyways, yeah, coiled hair. I don't know. I thought that was really cool. I never thought that, um, you know, little descriptor words like that would be added to the game. Hmm. Very, very interesting. It's a giant humanoid monster with a single eye set in its forehead, just in case you didn't know what a cyclops is. Uh, how about items? Uh, covered with blood all kinds of blood just soaked with blood this yeah this this cyclops is just head to toe painted with blood um flashing gray like that i don't know what that means is it because it's faint maybe do you think we can kill this hmm are we still in the ice fort yes this is the ice fort still I don't know. What do you think, dwarf? Uh, yeah, yeah, dwarves. You guys are dwarves, right? You bearded bastards. What do you think, you bearded bastards? Do you think we could take out a faint cyclops that looks to be tired from years of carnage and battle out in the caves? Or should we maybe not take it on? Maybe go train up a little bit? Be smart about things? I don't know. <laughs> OMG, the blood. I know. Isn't this crazy? Not a chance. Maybe get some armor on. I think you should try. No. Only way to find out, my friend. <laughs> for Armok, take it. Look at all the bones. LOL, don't do it. Um, hmm, do it, do it, do it. 
kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it. <laughs> you guys are funny. Um, hmm. Maybe we can be a sneaky beaky and make a little trap for this this fellow over here. Um, should we make a devious trap in which to catch this bastard? I think it'd be worth a try, right? I think so. I, I just ordered one of these cage, cage traps to be destroyed. Okay. And, um, let's see here. I'm trying to figure out how to maneuver my way around the map. How do I get back down there in a, in a hurry? Med Tob the recruit is stationed down underground now. Okay, so cool. These dwarves are just kind of sitting over here now. Over here in the east. The Cyclops is over here. Uh, faint. Not doing too great at all. Just in this giant cloud of miasma stink. Dead Gorlax in the ground. Gorlax right ear right here. Uh, giant Ulm. Mangled skeleton. Uh, I'm really hoping it doesn't sense us. We should be fine though. If I make a cage trap, what do you think the chances are that we can actually trap this creature here? You know? Hmm. I, I think we could do it. I think we do it. I'm, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be sneaky, okay? I think we could do this. <laughs> I guess we'll see. We'll see how well this goes, if at all. Um I, I'm a little scared this creature's just gonna like take off booking sprinting over to the east. <laughs> like its ears are gonna perk up and just be like <laughs> I guess we'll see um <laughs> I'm gonna build a, a cage a cage trap that is um trap a cage trap and maybe I'll just put it like down here need mechanisms I need to make some mechanisms first we'll just wait a second for this uh, this trap to be destroyed What assigned? Who's who's assigned to this? Oh, the the recruit. Sorry, yeah, you don't you don't have to be assigned to there. Sorry, uh, go about your business. Is someone doing this? Is someone getting rid of this? Someone? Anyone? Destroy this, please. Anyone? Really can do it. Attend a meeting. I oh, got Karen over here, fussing. Everyone, I guess everyone's in the military except for Karen over here, uh, who's just complaining about nothing. <sighs> okay. Um, that's okay. I'm, I'm gonna take the squad. What the hell was that? Um, I'm gonna take the squad off duty for a moment. Um, no, no, no. Here, can I, uh, right here. Cancel an order. Okay, does not affect scheduled orders. Okay, there you go. They're, they're off duty now. Uh, so they shouldn't be mucking around down below ground or anything like that now. <laughs> I'm thinking. I guess... We'll see if that pans out. I gotta set a hot key down underground so I can quickly get down there in a hurry, you know? It's a little, little bit of a pain. I'm thinking if we're very, very careful, we can make a cage trap and then maybe taunt that big bastard into, like, you know, running down the tunnel. <laughs> I don't know. That's gonna be some pure dwarven antics right there. Pure distilled dwarven antics at their finest. I think it'll be fine. Um, okay, let's see. Right over here. Here's that big bastard. There you go. There you go. Right over here. There we go. Wonderful. I, I get. I would like to go. There's a practical use for this, cause like, um, I'd like to get out in these caves safely, you know. And we can only really do that if we get rid of this big bastard, you know. Hey, look at this. This, this guy's losing health. It's actually doing worse. Pale, injured. Maybe we can kill this thing. Wounds. Um, uh, I'm thinking we could take it. I'm thinking we could. I'm, I'm not gonna. Maybe it'll just drop dead before we even get done with this trap over here. We'll see. We'll give it a second. Can someone get rid of this, please? Anyone? Slated for removal. Um. Huh? That's weird. Why is no one doing it? Hmm? One assigned. Who's assigned? There shouldn't be anyone assigned to this this borough. I'm not sure what the hell this means. Who's assigned to this borough right now? That's weird. Do 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 do
do do do do do do do do do Send the whole squad, it's now or never. You could kill it. <laughs> My asthma from the rotten losers. Yeah, make it undead, please. Brute force it. <laughs> you guys are savage. I mean, I, I asked already. A lot of people seem to be apprehensive, which... That's fair. That's fair. I understand. I understand. I didn't know there was a bunch of elves out there today, but, you know, that's fine. It's probably the smart thing to do. <laughs> it's gonna bite me in the ass. I'm gonna have to go out there and attack it. It's gonna murder all of our dwarves. It's it's pale. It's not even faint anymore. It's pale. It's actually is pale worse than faint? I don't know what's worse. I, I would think faint is actually worse than pale. I don't know. Screw it. Let's do it. All right, everyone got their drinks. Let's go. I'm, I'm gonna head out there. No more no more mucking around. We'll be fine. We got this. It's going to be fine. We got our axes. All we got to do is put a couple of cuts in this big bastard, and it's going to be uh, a dunzo, I think. You know? <laughs> Bunch of leaf lovers. <laughs> Full send it. Losing is fun, exactly. Well, now it's bleeding out. Yes, exactly. That's what I figured. It's got things got holes in it. The thing's all beaten up and stuff. It's, it's going to be fine. Watch. It'll just give him a second to get down here. It's going to take him two shakes. Get down here, you dwarves. Let's go. Come on. We'll cut all day. All of you, too. Like, I, I would really like it if all you dwarves can get down here, actually. It's going to be like um, like one of them is going to come down, and then like maybe two of them, and then like the Cyclops is going to accidentally see one of them, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to turn into a cluster immediately. I know how this stuff works. Uh, are you guys... No! Where are you going, you fool? Hey, 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 that's dumb of you. That's really dumb of you. <laughs> this kid over here, bare fist, what are you doing right now, huh? Don't go over there. Why did you even go down that way? Man, these dwarves. I will say it's a, it seems to be a bit harder to control individual dwarves in the Steam release. Um, maybe it's just because I don't know how to do it yet, but like before... Um, you would set up like a burrow and like if the burrow was turned on like all of your citizens would just run there automatically and they wouldn't do anything outside the burrow at all unless like you had two burrows on different sides of the map they can travel between them but um you know if you had just one big burrow like they wouldn't leave it that'd be it i, I don't know what these guys are doing but this guy's gonna definitely be murdered right this guy, <laughs> I told them to go down south. I don't know why this guy just decided to go run up through the north tunnel like that, but here we are. Uh, Aban, the recruit with, um, let's see, he's got a lover, Ushwir, who's soon going to be greatly aggrieved, I think. Uh, he's covered with tears, so he's, he's <laughs> is he currently crying? Why? <laughs> Running into battle, just like <laughs> crying. Oh my god. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, let's go you know best of luck to you Aban I have full faith that you're going to come through with this <laughs> oh my god Whoa. his squads turn around <laughs> we don't stand a chance no this is stupid go 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 away disband the squad I just got rid of the squad no fighting drop your axes run home go weep learn from Aban we're weak we're the leaf lovers Oh my god. What the hell? Um, let's have a look at that combat. I'm, I'm kind of curious. <laughs> Holy hell. Uh, okay. The recruit Aban Laimul Ludesh is fighting. Uh, not, not a long combat. The recruit hacks the Cyclops in the left foot with his copper battle axe. Oh, that's really cool. Actually, the Cyclops grabbed the recruit by the left foot with her right upper arm, at which point the recruit hacked the Cyclops in the foot. The Cyclops locks the recruit's left ankle with her right upper arm. The recruit loses hold of his shoe and sock, and the Cyclops scratched the recruit in the, the right lower leg, scratched with a, like a fingernail, and the severed part sailed off in an arc. The recruit fell over. The Cyclops bends the recruit's left foot with the Cyclops' right upper arm, and the left ankle collapses. 
Uh, yeah, it's a it's a bad scene. <laughs> a ligament in the left ankle had ankle has been torn, and a tendon has been torn. The recruit misses the cyclops, going downhill. The cyclops let go, grabbed the recruit by his ear. Um, but damn it, where the hell was it? I lost it. One second, one second. By his ear, with her right upper arm, like got him with the old classic cyclops ear lock. <laughs> so easily broken. This does not scare me. The Cyclops let go of the uh, the dwarf's ear. Weird. The recruit is still swinging. Punches the recruit in his leg. The leg collapses. An artery has been opened. Uh, the force of the punch pulled the left knee, which tore apart the muscle and bruised the bone. Tearing apart the muscle and bruising the bone. Um, the recruit started giving into pain at this point, just overcome by the stuff. The Cyclops grabbed <laughs> the recruit by the nose, released the nose, grabbed his arm, locks the arm, bends the right sh right uh right upper arm until the right shoulder collapses really bad really bad um I, I guess just messing with the guy until finished it off by punching him in the head and his head was rendered into a lump of gore just with a single strike right there um yeah I, to to you smart dwarves out there who said we can't fight this you're absolutely right <laughs> this is beyond us i guess um Still, I can't help but feel like if we sent out all our dwarves in one big group, uh, would have been a little bit better. But um, I guess I guess we're not gonna know because I'm, I'm not gonna do that again. Um, I'm gonna send out some dwarves. We're gonna construct a, a sneaky beaky cage trap. How's that sound again? Hey, did the did it just die? Is that it? Did it fall over? Did Abban actually kill the Cyclops? Is that what that is up there? I think that might be what that is. One second, the game's saving. I can't check it. Uh, why am I up still still up, bro? Because the night is young. It's only 8.30 right now. Oh, the sex bots. Get out of here. <laughs> Let me see here. Get out of here, sex bots. We don't need you. Hide user on this channel. The Cyclops is a big bully. You big jerk. Um, what? Yeah. Let's see here. See, um... The Cyclops is over here. Okay. You know what? We got to act quickly, dwarves. <laughs> Let's be stupid. I I, I, uh, I just came up with an idea. We could do this. Um, <laughs> this is dumb, and it's not going to work. But it'll be kind of funny, I think. We're going to go and make a fun little wall out of black cap logs. Okay. Boo -boo -boo. Boo -boo. black cap just like that and we're going to make uh, <laughs> something else a trap a cage trap I think so right here need mechanisms nobody ever finished uh, breaking up this thing over here which really kind of sucks um, I don't know why why is nobody making uh, getting rid of this thing We'll see. If somebody gets rid of it in time, then great. Otherwise, what my plan to do here is, because um, this corpse here isn't mangled. It's going to come back as a zombie, right? So if we build a wall around the corpse and then just have one cage trap right in front of it, like, it's going to go into the cage trap, right? <laughs> I think it's going to work out. We just got to be quick, dwarves. Be a bunch of speedy little beards. Come on, you speedy beards. Let's go. Um... Are we... No, we're not making that. What, what am I doing wrong? I, I feel like the dwarves aren't behaving like they should be. Um, remove this burrow. Toggle with the workshops. Like, it says one assigned to this burrow, but nobody's assigned to it right now. So I'm wondering if the burrow is having some sort of an issue right now. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this burrow. No? There we go. There's no more burrow. So... So, that should do it, right? Construct building should be the thing that I see. We have no more squads. Interesting. Burrow still active. No, I mean, I just got rid of it. It's still, uh... Can you read how the Cyclops died? Um, I don't think it'll tell me anything. It doesn't generally say if something died of blood loss, which is definitely how it died. Um... Is there a way to access the combat logs that have already passed? Do you think? Hmm. 
interrupted by a Yeti corpse. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh, okay. Was there a combat here with Bear Fist? Maybe. Let me see here. But something happened. <laughs> Ooh. A, a lot of something. Uh, we have seven dwarves in the fortress right now, which is less than we had. Right? <laughs> I think we had 10, right? Then, then it was down to 9, and now we're 2 less. Yeah, something happened. I'm not too sure what. Probably a Yeti. Boy, yeah, this is going downhill. And I noticed we have a, a named Yeti corpse on the map right now, which means it probably killed something. And it's right next to our fortress, so yeah, it's it's definitely uh, probable that there was some sort of a, a combat. Some sort of a dealing of death. Perhaps. Highly probable. Yeah, I don't know why the dwarves aren't going down and um, doing things like they should. Damn dwarves. Oh well. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I'm a little unsure as to why they aren't coming down here and, and building this wall or anything. A little strange, I feel. Uh, they're smoothing wall right now. Where is that? Okay, maybe they're just focused on that for now? Let me see if I can get rid of that task. We don't really need to be doing that right now, I guess. Uh, yes, get rid of all this. It's set as a high priority task, so maybe they'll go and build now. Store item and stockpile. Don't, don't, don't do that. I don't want you to do that. I just want you to build the damn wall down below. Is there a way to like set wall building as a high priority task? Because that's something that I would really like. I don't think so, but man, that'd be stellar. Cause like sometimes you gotta build a wall real damn quick, you know. We'll try again. Um, build constructions wall. Use closest materials, sure, I guess. Get to it, dwarves, huh? Maybe. Construct building. Okay, that's popping up all over the place. And I see somebody with a destroy building task as well. Which I have to imagine is the uh, the trap there. Yes, it's being destroyed. Finally, why is everyone just now listening to me? Oh, ah, too late. Damn it. Okay, so this this uh, this thing came back as a zombie. Now it's a zombified cyclops down in the caves. That's horrific. Um, never mind. <laughs> Nobody do anything with this. That's some bad bananas there, dwarves. Don't don't touch this guy. Uh, that being said, we could still trap him. Right. Yeah, I think so. Let's make a trap. A cage trap. Right over yonder. Is that smart? I mean, the guy... <laughs> hmm. It's not smart. Like, I know it's not smart. <sighs> Can we make a mechanism? Where's the mechanisms? I got some mechanisms on the ground, huh? Gra granite mechanisms right here. Black cap cage. It's right here. What's the ish? What's going on? Um, granite mechanisms, black cap cage. Okay. Uh, oh, wait, no, it's okay. I, I don't know. I, I can see right here there's granite mechanisms and a black cap cage on the ground. I just, I don't know why we won't use it in that trap right now. Um, hmm. Unsure, unsure. Okay, this item is tagged by a task. It will not be used by other tasks. Okay, can I remove that easily? There we go. That seems to have worked. Uh, but mechanisms. This mechanism here isn't being used by anything. I, I would think they could use that in the cage trap. Uh, we'll try again. Build. Traps. Cage trap. Okay. That seems to have worked. Okay, I'm going to put a cage trap right here. I think it's going to work really well. This couldn't possibly go wrong, actually. We're going to catch this Cyclops. We're going to be famed across the north. We're going to bring it home. We'll trade it to those traders, those haughty traders. Oh, 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 God. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, Bear Fist over here is now running from the Cyclops. He went running down. I'm not sure what his goal was, if he was the one working on the, um, the construction there or what. But he's not being chased by an undead cyclops. 
There he goes. Back up home. There you go. Run away home. Hey, he's fine. He's fine. He's thirsty. He's going to get a drink. Okay. Cool. <laughs> it's no problem. That was fine. Not even a problem. Uh, yeah, and this big idiot over here. So, I guess the um, undead Cyclops has a, a little bit a higher acuity to its senses, huh? Oh. Okay. Noted. It's not chasing anymore, which is just stellar. That in mind, I should probably remove this cage trap. Uh, Cause we don't want people coming down here anymore. But what we can do, I'm thinking, is um, build it a little bit farther away. Now that we know there's a range to like how far it can detect us away, maybe we can be a, a little bit smarter. Use that to our advantage, you know? All we have to do is just kind of like uh, tease it out of its little nook when we have the cage all ready for it, you know? Yeah, yeah, I think it's gonna work really well. Okay, so how do we get down? We're over here. Um, okay. Um, maybe if we build it over here, right? It's, it's a little bit farther away than that last one. Maybe that'll work. We're just like luring it closer and closer to the fortress. <laughs> Needs mechanisms. Oh, can you please just cooperate, huh? You a bunch of bastards. Where's those mechanisms? We need a whole slew of mechanisms, I guess. Um, I'm gonna have another of these traps be destroyed. I know we can just make a bunch of mechanisms real quick, but it's such a hassle. Like, we've got mechanisms here. We've got a couple of mechanisms we could be using. They're just not using them for some damn reason. Anywho, uh, yes, let's give that a second try. Traps, cage trap. No mechanisms. Uh, okay, fine. Fine. You want to play play hardball, huh? I'm going to make a, me a mechanic. We'll put it right over here. We're going to make a whole parcel of mechanisms. How's that sound? Get to it, dwarves. Get on it. Oh, taking a glance down here in chat. How you going? Uh, Cyclops is smart. Yes, this game is looking awesome. It is. Hi, Krug. Uh, glad to catch a stream for once. Yeah, well, I'm glad to have you here. It's going to be my last one for a while, so I guess enjoy while it lasts, which realistically isn't going to be much longer. It's nearly 9 p.m. here, and at this point, I've been streaming for more than 12 hours, which is, is insane. <laughs> What's this alert? Oh, no. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What is all this? Uh-oh. Oh, God. But I looked away for one second. Oh no, what's going on? Where, where is this undead? Oh, this this undead guy is like uh like up. Is that up? Did he go up or down? Where where are you going right now? Following. Oh, following dwarves. Oh man, that's not good. Oh no. Just really uh creaming our dwarves. That's not good at all. Uh Bearfist is doing well. That's all that matters. Bearfist is pissed. Bearfist hates it here. Um, his mom hates it here. Bearfist really hates it here, though. <laughs> mm. Interesting. Does it feel anything after seeing Nil Wheel Trample's dead body? Uh, I thought that might have been his younger sister. I've been like, you're a monster guy. What the hell's wrong with you? Um, I don't know who that was. Kind of a miserable little dwarf. I, again, I can't blame him. I suppose he's been through a lot in his very short time in this frozen hellhole. <laughs> God. This place sucks. <laughs> it was going so well for so long, but now it's, like, falling apart. Like, um... I kind of feel like that with the last one. Like, eventually we just started trying to do something that the dwarves wouldn't really cooperate with. And it just kind of, like, leads to frustration. Which, you know, that's how Dwarf Fortress goes. That's, that's how it was when you first started playing, you know? Um... Down to five dwarves now. Four, I guess. Between me over <laughs> looking up, seeing five. Uh, let me see here. Where is that that undead thing? Sedurlatast. Nefak Muwilico. Yeah, something or other. It keeps on going. Where is this thing? Where is it? Mm, mm, mm. Here it is. Yeah, it seems to be just killing any of our dwarves that come into this tunnel here. Is it 
going it's it's coming up it's coming up oh no <laughs> it knows that the living rest above and it is charging upwards towards the fortress right as we speak that's that's horrifying that's actually horrifying uh five four three two one and it's out in the wastes can we just like take a moment to appreciate this imagery here an undead cyclops bursting out of a cavern into this hellish snowy waste just soaked with blood scarred up um it's undead eye gleaming black in it's sunken pit that's just really cool i don't know that's just really neat um i gotta kick out of that exile the survivors yeah you know that's kind of what i was thinking of doing like, Bear Fist survived, his mother survived, and Ushrir, uh, the current weapon, or, uh, expedition leader is alive right now. Can I exile them all? I would like to think so. I, I, I would prefer to exile them. Oh, Bear Fist is right here by the Cyclops. Bear Fist, you don't want to be here. How can I exile you, though? Relationships, groups, military, thoughts, personality. Hmm... I know that there's a way I did this earlier, but I, I can't really recall exactly. Um, hmm. What was it? There was some sort of a screen, right? Was it, was it through here? Uh, missing citizens, reports, missions, center on four. No. Hmm. Hmm. Unsure. Place information? No. Task information? Hmm. Unsure. Unsure. Let's see here. Bottom left buttons. Famous last words, by the way. Um, I'm just looking at the chat real quick. See if anybody's got any good ideas. Bear fish is the chosen one. Save the child. Exile them all. I'm trying to. How do I exile them, though? I, I want to. I want to see if the kid can escape this place. I really like this kid. Um... And I don't want him to die. Obviously. Um, work orders? No. Labor? Oh, we're getting there. Hmm. Not too sure. Where was the exile tab? I don't know. I saw it. Remember it said like exile somebody or send them to uh, some sort of other location. Justice tab. You think that's where it was? Okay. No, this looks to be about it. Fortress guard convicts. It used to be like if you looked at a, a creature specifically like bear fist here. Well, you know what? It used to be you couldn't exile children. You have to exile their parent if you wanted to. So let's have a look at the weaponsmith iteb over here. Open that up. Um, and then you would do it from like their personality or their like, you know, their their tab here, right? Skills, rooms, labor, locations. No, no. Work animals. No. Work details. No. Personality, thoughts, military, groups, relations. Hmm. What is this? Ah, send this creature to a linked site or expel this creature entirely. Uh, yeah, get out of here. The child and Iteb. Expel, both of them. Let's see if they can get out of here. So, so those people were just exiled right there. Um, okay. Where is the child? I, I want to see the child right over here. Here's Bear Fist. I'm going to follow the child and I'm hoping he escapes and doesn't go north. Any other direction would be fine. Just run. Okay. Am I following? Yeah. Okay, went north. But it's running. Cyclops is not very speedy, and this kid is a bolt of lightning. And he's out of here. Just don't... Why are you going north, though? You could just keep going. You're exiled. You can go in any direction you want to get the hell out of this frozen wasteland. Go. Live your life. It's fine. You don't have to go north, necessarily. But he is. That's fine. Um, As for fortress dwarves, we have Ushrir... The expedition leader, who's just in, <laughs> having a great old time. A really happy dwarf here, Ushrir. Ushrir Devanish. Um, it's good to see. <laughs> really good to see. What are you doing, Ushrir? 
How are you feeling? Thirsty, tired, has a lover who I believe is dead. Aben Goldskin. Sounds like a real, real Chad. Um, let's see here. Can I exile? I can't ex exile this dwarf because it's nobility. So it's just this one dwarf now in the frozen waste trying to pick up the remains of this uh, failed fortress, I guess. And really in a great mood. Totally happy about everything. Which is weird. Um, but is the case regardless. On that note, my bearded bastards, I think we should probably start drawing things to a close. Frankly. Um, again, I've been streaming now for more than 12 hours and have not stayed poor, uh, <laughs> have not stayed hydrated or fed throughout this entire thing. I had two granola bars at one point. Um, oh, is that a dead dwarf? Is that a dead dwarf corpse? I think it was a dead dwarf corpse. No. Oh, what is that? See, it looks like a full on dwarf, but it's just an arm. That's a little distracting. <laughs> um, hmm. Okay, that's fair. That is fair. Have him fight the Cyclops. This is this dwarf would just be killed. That's pretty much it. Oh my god. So, I mean, yeah, we're, we're gonna start wrapping things up here. Dwarf Fortress on Steam. You know what? It's got it's got its little its little touches of jank, but it is Dwarf Fortress overall. I'm a big big fan, and I'm eager to see what else it has to offer. And I'm eager to see what else they do with it. Um, it's going to be great overall for the community, for Dwarf Fortress, or for Tarn and Zack. Kitbox too. What the hell? They all did a great job on this whole thing, you know? Um, I, I couldn't, be, couldn't be more satisfied, honestly. It's, it's, a, it's a great, great thing. Thank you all for being here today. I, um, it means a lot to me. Again, you know, I keep saying that, but I want you to believe me, damn it. <laughs> you got to believe me. Oh, what is that? Withered. Okay. Looks like your settlement has crumbled to its end. I guess that's 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 about right. I'm not sure what happened. I, I kind of missed it, but I think the Cyclops probably caught up with their expedition leader there. <laughs> oh, well. Well, bound to happen. Bound to happen. Ah, Dwarf Fortress. Could never get sick of you. Not in a, not in a million years, I don't think. Um, again, yes. I thank you all for joining me. And I hope you had a pretty darn good time. Pick up Dwarf Fortress, okay? Um, 30 bucks. You know, not everyone can afford 30 bucks. I understand totally, but it's worth it, you know? It's definitely worth it. And, um, you know, I think they deserve it for all the work they put in. And, yeah. Uh, thanks for joining me. And thanks for all your support today. It means an awful lot. And I will see you in... A couple of weeks, I'm going to start making some more edited content, videos and stuff, drawings and whatnot. And maybe I'll post some stuff here and there, maybe do some extracurricular pictures of things, you know, Forgotten Beasts and whatnot might be cool. Um, thanks for joining, once again. Once again, I, I, can, I couldn't say it enough, so I'll just keep saying it. Thank you for joining, thank you for watching. I appreciate having you here with me, and until next time, you bearded bastards, 